हाँ ना वॉल्यूम आ रहा होगा कर दो So good afternoon everyone. So welcome to KSG PT marathon session. So today I am going to take your economy, that is economy Indian economy for your prelims. And uh, before I start, I want to wish you a, everyone National Civil Service Day. So happy Civil Ser Service Day to all of you. So we'll begin our class on this special day. Okay, and hope you get benefit from today's class. Now. <coughs> Before we start our marathon, so you must know that Indian economy, okay, as well as I am going to cover, you can say government schemes, okay, government schemes, particularly with respect to your economy topics. Now, if you see, every year from these two portion, there are around minimum I am telling you that is 20 questions so everywhere you will find some 4-5 good questions from your government schemes and some 14-15 questions from Indian economy so every year you will find the questions from this area ok so it means the weightage of this subject is very high so your cutoff you know that in your exam is around 80, 89, 90, 100 marks Okay, so 90 to 100 marks. So around 20 questions from this area. So if you correct it, so you will get 40 marks in this. So you cannot take this, you can say subject lightly. Okay. Now what we are going to cover today, you must know that number one, we are going to cover growth topic where we talk about GDP, GNP, all those things. Okay. Or you can say national income accounting that topic is also known by this name number two so please make the list okay so i don't want that you just listen it so whatever i'm making you write or telling you so i want that you must make a freehand notes of that also okay so you must make a freehand notes of that also. Okay, number two, we are going to cover inflation. Number three, we are going to cover monetary policy. Number four, we are going to cover fiscal policy. Okay. Because structure must be in your mind that what we are going to cover. Okay. Next, we are going to cover banking. Next, we are going to cover capital market and money market. Next, we are going to cover agriculture. Okay, next we are going to cover industries and services. Industries and services. Next we are going to cover, so see there is a long list. Okay, we are going to cover infrastructure. Next we are going to cover taxation next balance of payment next international organizations so in international organizations my focus will be on basically important organizations like IMF world trade organization etc world bank
Next, we are going to cover poverty and unemployment. Okay, poverty and unemployment. So this is a complete list and last we will see the topic of planning also. Okay, so you can say Niti Ayo, we will talk about that. Okay, so these are the broad topics that we have to cover today. Okay, and uh, before I start these topics, so I just want to tell that if you listen it carefully and you can say when I am saying carefully that with full concentration and whatever I am making you write. Okay, uh, just a minute, some students are writing video, clear. Okay, so let me check it out. It's a blur. Okay. See, some are writing that video is not clear or blur. So I just request the technical team. So it may be get resolved within few minutes. Okay. So we'll continue with our lecture. No doubt your video is not clear. You are listening to me. Okay. So that is more than, that is sufficient only. Okay. So ultimately, ultimately this is a list of topics that we have to cover. Now, if you see the previous year questions, frequently they have asked a question from this area. Okay. So, ultimately, as I told you, they have asked so many questions. Every year, you get around 22 or more than 20 questions from economy. Clear? Economy plus government schemes. I am telling you this. Okay. So, although this is a topic, but order I can change. So, today, first, we will start with agriculture. Okay agriculture because agriculture is very important for your exam and this government is also focusing on so many things okay so i just want that whatever i am telling you you please make a notes of that okay you make a note of that okay so whatever i am making you write or telling you you please make a note because it will help you okay for your prelims 2023 definitely and the purpose of this class that maximum question you can solve from today's session only okay so ultimately ultimately with this objective we are going to or i am going to cover the topics okay so first we'll start with agriculture although this subject you have to understood that this subject economy is different from some other subjects or you can say different from your history polity so there you have more factual information than conceptual here more conceptual than factual okay so if you understood the concepts you will understand the logic behind the schemes also okay so be ready and be stay connected so ultimately ultimately now i am going to start with agriculture <coughs> now when you see agriculture so agriculture is a broad topic okay like it is covered in other subjects also like geography economy science and tech and your environment so first of all you must know the demarcation that with respect to economy where we have to stick like for example for example in economy we talk about certain parameters or certain dimensions so my focus is only on that so for example just i give you the dimensions of other topic like in geography you study about you can say crop and cropping pattern okay crop like in Economy also we have a crop and cropping pattern, but in geography you study about where this crop has to be grown. Okay, so for example, rice, rice for cultivation of rice, what climate temperature you need, that is a part of geography. Now, due to cultivation of rice, if there is any environmental issues, like you know, rice cultivation is responsible for greenhouse gas emission, that is a part of environment. Similarly, if there is any new rice variety, that is a part of science and tech. So, here our focus will be on economy portion only. Now, when I see agriculture for economy part, so you have to understood or you can say I divide this topic agriculture in four parts. Number one is input. Input. So, when I say input, so it means, it means to practice agriculture, what resources you need. Okay. To practice agriculture, what resources you need. So, we are going to talk about that. Okay, so ultimately to practice agriculture, what farmer needs, first of all is finance. Okay, so we are going to talk about that 
steps taken by the government with respect to this sector means how government is ensuring that farmer must have enough money with the for practicing you can say agriculture number one finance or you can say credit so for example i'll just give you example also like here we are going to talk about schemes like kisan credit card okay plus other schemes are also there second if you see another important input that farmer needs you can say seed okay so automatically if you see i can relate these topics with your you can say previous year questions also like once upsc asked one question with respect to finance like they ask a question in finance which of the following entities are responsible for responsible for providing providing credit to the farmers so their option are given scheduled commercial bank rrbs cooperative banks and you have to identify so ultimately the answer is scheduled commercial banks clear so ultimately they used to ask such questions clear so ultimately i i can relate your topics so that you will understand the relevance of these topics for your exam similarly seed when i talk about seed once upsc has asked a question with respect to seed replacement ratio okay so ultimately once they ask a question on credit that is that is which bank is giving more credit is it scheduled commercial bank okay is it you can say is it scheduled commercial bank is it cooperative bank or is it any other bank rrb regional rural bank so you must know about that similarly with respect to seed they ask a question seed replacement ratio okay so it is very important that you must know the relevance ki kaun se areas se question aate hai okay kaun se areas se question aate that is why that is why it is the first task that i am going to do for you okay clear number 3 number 3 they used to ask a question on fertilizers okay so automatically if you see the previous year question they have asked a question like on soil health card okay okay urea or you can say neem coated urea so they have asked question on those things okay fertilizers clear so ultimately you will see that they have asked question on soil health card neem coated urea etc so all these are part of your economy only okay next if you see they ask question on horticulture so ultimately ultimately right now government is focusing on horticulture also and if you see this year budget also government has emphasized on horticulture okay so you can say this is the input part okay so just giving you reference next if you see next is you can say marketing now once using various inputs farmer no doubt is going to come out with some outcome like agriculture produce now ultimate next task of the farmer is to sell it so ultimately next comes marketing so when we talk about marketing so there we will talk about apmc there we will talk about msp so these are the things okay and you know that already they have asked a question on msp okay plus plus other schemes also like pm aasha okay so this is what is about marketing okay next next if you see this is a second pillar third pillar now you know that whatever agriculture produce is there government also procure them for its various poverty related schemes like pds so this is the third so you can say government procurement of food grains for poverty related schemes so although i am giving you just some examples so when we'll do in detail so you will better understand what topics are to be covered okay so this is just introduction i am giving you okay pds okay next and the last fourth pillar is food processing food processing so here the important one is mega food parks mega food parks 
so if you see every year every year two to three questions are from agriculture okay and you will find that they are these questions are related to your economy only okay so ultimately ultimately we are going to first start agriculture so that so that this lecture help you to solve two questions from agriculture topic okay so we'll start first with finance okay we'll start first with finance clear so now again i'll say you please concentrate and make your notes okay so that you can revise it just before your exam also and your every doubt will get resolved but but first you listen it carefully okay and i'll give you a time also to ask your doubt but my humble request that whatever topic i am covering i want that you ask doubt related to that only okay no doubt if you have another doubt also that will be covered in some different topic but it is definitely covered clear now okay okay see some are saying see please you have to coordinate with my speed so i am seeing some of your doubt that board is not visible whatever topic i am covering okay so board is not visible and all those things so i understand so i have requested the technical team okay okay now we'll talk about first finance or you can say credit part now when i am talking about credit part if you see for every business economic activity either it is farming or it is a company finance is very important without finance you cannot plan anything same is for the farmer so if you want to practice agriculture finance is first and foremost thing okay example you want to plan or you want to go somewhere you want money first okay so how great plan you make but if you don't have money you cannot do anything but if you see in the case of farmer the average income of a farmer family is you can say around 7000 to 8000 per month okay so you can write the average income is 7000 to 8000 per month so this is the average income of a fam farmer's family okay clear so this is the average income i am talking about so when i am talking about average income i am taking pan india level but if you go to states like bihar there you will find that farmers are even earning less than this 2000 3000 per month but if you go to a state like haryana punjab there they are earning more than 19000 20000 per month okay so we are taking average so average is somewhere around here clear now now this government this government or you can say current government or modi government has talked about doubling of farmer income okay has talked about doubling of farmer income okay and for that they have set up one committee under the chairmanship of ashok dalwai okay or you can you can say ashok dalwai committee so please this is your second prelims question ashok dalwai committee is for what doubling of farmer income okay ashok dalwai committee so this committee they set up in 2018 and the committee has given its income uh, its recommendation and ultimately ultimately government has also set a target to double the farmers income so basically to double this income okay to double this farmers income and that is why 2022 now government has further extended the target okay so ultimately ultimately you have to remember this ashok dalwai committee so this is your prelims question okay now next now next if you see last year also government has set up one task force under the under the chairmanship of sanjay agarwal committee or sanjay agarwal task force sanjay agarwal task force 
Now, ultimately, this Sanjay Agarwal task force has been given a task to recommend government with respect to crop diversification. Crop diversification and and MSP minimum support price. Okay, so you have to remember these two committee. One is one is Ashok Dalwai committee and second is Sanjay Agarwal task force. Now ultimately, when you talk about crop diversification, that is also responsible for increasing the income of the farmer. Okay, now how? Now you suppose this is a piece of land and you are a farmer and you are cultivating rice. So for example, you are cultivating, you can say 100 kg rice from this, just taking one hypothetical number. 100 kg rice from this piece of land. Now you know the price of the rice is for example 50 rupees kg. So it means how much farmer earned? 5000 rupees from this cultivation. But if suppose instead of rice he has cultivated mushroom or any other fruits and vegetable. So for example take mushroom. Okay. Now in mushroom if suppose again mushroom he has cultivated 100 kg mushroom. 100 kg mushroom. And now, now you know that the price of mushroom is around 200 rupees kg in the market. So you purchase that box of mushroom from you can say a vegetable vendor or any supermarket. So there you find that in blue color box some mushrooms are there. So that packing is of 200 grams and that box is around 40-50 rupees. So ultimately 200 rupees per kg. Okay. So ultimately when you are growing this, so it means as a farmer you are now having a more income. Okay more income and ultimately GDP will also increase. So ultimately that is why this committee has been given a task of crop diversification. Although the recommendation of committee has to come now. Okay. But this is what you have to understood. Now moving further. Moving further. So these are the two important facts that you have to remember. Because you have seen the previous year question. UPSC used to ask. UPSC used to ask the name of the committees. So they will give you committee on one side. On other side they will ask you what is its mandate. Okay. So you have to remember Ashok Dalwai committee mandate is doubling the farmer income. So they have given some recommendations and in that one of the recommendation is they also has focused on that we have to focus on crop diversification along with crop diversification. We have to focus on food processing sector also so that we can boost the export of India. Okay, and whenever export will increase, so ultimately farmer income will also increase. Clear? Similarly, similarly, Sanjay Agarwal committee has been formed last year and that has been given a mandate. Last year means 2022. And that has been given a mandate. Mandate to okay, that has been given a mandate to give recommendation with respect to crop diversification and MSP. Okay, so no doubt we are going to talk about MSP also. Okay, don't worry about it. Now moving further, moving further, although, although if you see that government has also released some schemes for you can say credit. Like for example, number one, government has come out with a scheme like Kisan credit card. Okay, Kisan credit card. So this is the important scheme of government of India and you can say this is very very important. So I expect that this year government can ask a question from this scheme. Number two, government has also come out with interest subvention scheme. Interest subvention scheme for agriculture. Okay, so government has come out with interest subvention scheme also for the agriculture sector. This is the second scheme. Third, third, see we are talking only about credit. That is one of the important input for farming. Okay, once we'll complete this, then we'll give shift to fertilizer and seed sector. Don't worry about it. Okay, second, so please understand we are talking only about credit right now. Okay, second interest subvention scheme. Third. You have heard a very famous scheme that is PM Kisan. PM Kisan. So I know you know about that under this scheme government is giving 6000 rupees. Okay, 6000 rupees. Fourth, fourth, 
there is a scheme known as pm mandhan okay there is a scheme known as pm mandhan pm mandhan yojana okay so these are the four important schemes where the objective of the government is to provide credit okay so if you see the objective of these schemes the objective of these schemes is to provide to provide credit to government or to farmers to farmers so we are going to talk about these schemes one by one so first we are going to talk about kisan credit card scheme okay so if you see kisan credit card scheme so this kisan credit card so ultimately ultimately you have to understood the basic points in this scheme so don't try to mug up because i know that once you mug up so if i ask you tomorrow you will say we forget so i want whatever i am covering maximum lecture must be in your mind or you can say at least 60% you retain in class itself okay so please listen it carefully now before i tell you what are the features of this scheme so you also used to take a credit card okay so when you take a credit card no doubt no doubt using that credit card you can take loan from the bank but mostly that loan is of short term nature means you have to you have to whatever whatever money you have taken this month using your credit card you have to return it by next month okay same in case of farmer but there is a difference so as you use credit card in a month so you have to return that money next month so agar main simply bolu ki agar maine apna credit card use kiya is mahine mein to mereko agle mahine uski payment karni padegi okay but but in case of farmer it is not like that clear in case of farmer it is not like that so first of all you have to understood how this credit card is working so basically basically this scheme was launched in 1998 1998 where banks used to give where banks used to give loan loan to the farmers okay loan to the farmers for what purpose that is to purchase farm inputs so this is what is the intention of the scheme in 1998 so in 1998 government of india introduced a concept of kisan credit card where where banks are allowed to give loans loans to the farmer so that they can purchase farm inputs so it means if any farmer is having credit credit card that time period that is kisan credit card so they can take loans from the banks and that loan must be utilized only for one purpose that is to purchase farm inputs so if i am a farmer so it means using that loan i can purchase farm inputs like seed fertilizers pesticides etc okay but in 2004 government made changes government made changes in this scheme and they said and they said that using kisan credit card farmer can take a loan for both farm inputs farm inputs as well as as well as for non farm purpose okay for non farm purpose so ultimately see how reforms has been made clear so ultimately if you see earlier initially when this scheme was introduced so you can say loan can be given only for one purpose farm input but in 2004 in 2004 this scheme was revised and now loan can be used for both farm inputs as well as non farm purpose so 
दिस इज योर प्रिलियम्स क्वेश्चन कि थ्रू किसान क्रेडिट कार्ड फार्मर कैन टेक लोन थ्रू किसान क्रेडिट कार्ड फार्मर कैन टेक लोन फॉर विच पर्पस सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ओके नाउ कमिंग टू थर्ड पार्ट ऑफ दिस स्कीम नाउ हेयर वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर सो आई एम यूजिंग अ वर्ड बैंक सो इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वी हैव फर्दर रिवाइज दिस स्कीम इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी दिस स्कीम वॉज फर्दर रिवाइज सो वेन आई एम सेइंग इट वॉज फर्दर रिवाइज वॉट डज इट मीन सो मोदी गवर्नमेंट हैज रिवाइज दिस स्कीम सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट इज द रिविजन लाइक अर्लियर अर्लियर किसान क्रेडिट कार्ड वॉज इश्यूड बाय शेड्यूल्ड कमर्शियल बैंक एंड रीजनल रूरल बैंक बट नाउ इट इज इश्यूड बाय शेड्यूल्ड कमर्शियल बैंक रीजनल रूरल बैंक एज वेल एज एज वेल एज स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक बट रिमेंबर पेमेंट बैंक आर नॉट वाई बिकॉज वेन वील डू पेमेंट बैंक टूडे सो देर वी विल स्टडी दैट पेमेंट बैंक आर नॉट अलाउड टू गिव लोन ओके सो इट मीन्स दे कैन नॉट इश्यू क्रेडिट कार्ड नॉट इवन किसान क्रेडिट कार्ड क्लियर सो अल्टीमेटली विच बैंक आर अलाउड टू गिव किसान क्रेडिट कार्ड सो अल्टीमेटली दिस इज योर सेकेंड क्वेश्चन ऑफ प्रिलियम्स शेड्यूल्ड commercial banks okay scheduled commercial banks regional rural banks regional rural banks and number 3 small finance bank so i hope you are able to remember these facts okay payment bank is not allowed payment bank is not allowed so i am repeating again and again payment bank is not allowed okay okay so this is the thing see whatever doubts are coming let me complete this kisan credit card so like some students are writing collateral is needed or need, not needed so i'll tell you don't worry about it okay so ultimately these are the banks are allowed to give your kisan credit card now when it comes to farmer or you can say who can take this facility so it can be taken by small and marginal farmer as well as as well as as well as if you see if there is a tenant farmer also means if i am a farmer and i am and i am i does not have a land or i am landless farmer so it means i have taken land on rent and then i am practicing so in that case i am also allowed to take or take the benefit of kisan credit card so this is the second thing that you have to remember third if there is any self help group with respect to farmers they are also allowed to take but in 2020 modi government added to another beneficiaries that is if any farmer is practicing fisheries if any farmer is practicing fisheries they are also allowed to take loan they are also allowed to take loan so this is what you have to remember as well as any farmer practicing animal husbandry animal husbandry they are also allowed to take loan or you can say they are also allowed to take you can say you can say the benefit of benefit of you can say this kisan credit card so these are the beneficiaries so this is your third question that can be framed in kisan credit card so second which banks are allowed to take so this is what you have to remember third is this clear now coming for, forward coming forward if i talk about if i talk about to what limit they can take a loan so they can take a loan up to a limit of 1.6 lakh so you can say 1 lakh 60000 okay to what limit they can take a loan so they can take up to 1.6 lakh so earlier it was earlier it was 1 lakh earlier it was 1 lakh this is what you have to remember and whatever they are taking that is collateral free that is collateral free okay so means no collateral has to be given okay no collateral has to be given so collateral means that something you pledge okay that something you pledge so nothing has to be given okay so jisko aap bolte ho ki kuch saman gir bhi rakh do to aapko aisa kuch bhi nahi rakhna clear 
clear so this is what you have to remember okay okay so ultimately if you see <coughs> right now the loan can be given for farm input that is to purchase farm input as well as for your non farm purpose so if suppose farmer has some you can say personal use of that money they can use okay so for example for example if there is any marriage in the family so using kisan credit card they can raise a loan but the maximum is 1.6 lakhs okay and they can use it for non -farm, non farming purpose now now yes cooperatives are also allowed so some students are writing okay now ultimately if you see ultimately if you see for farm purpose you can use or you can say to purchase inputs you can use this money even if there is any post harvest expenses post harvest expenses means if suppose farmer whatever product he has produced he want to carry that product to the mandi so means transportation he want to store it so means storage so they are post harvest expenses so that farm you can say loan can be taken for that also post harvest expenses third third if you see that loan can be taken for produce marketing loans so can anyone tell me what is produce marketing loan without using any google so today is civil service day so you have to prove that yes you will become you will become you can say bureaucrat okay so please concentrate okay so can anyone tell me what is what is produce marketing loan so produce marketing loan is nothing but sometimes what happened farmer used to sell its product less than the market price so that is called distress sale okay distress sale means kam mein bech diya to uske liye bhi aap loan le sakte ho ki maine is saal kam mein becha to jo gap hai uske liye main loan lena chahta hu to kisan credit card se aapko uske liye bhi milega because aap jab bhi bank mein jate ho loan lene ke liye to bank aapse pehle purpose puchta hai why you want a loan or what is the purpose for taking a loan so ultimately if suppose i'll say that my product has been sold at less price so ultimately i have a gap so i want to take loan for that so you can take loan for that also clear 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 so this is what you have to remember and finally last is working and investment capital okay working and you can say investment capital so ultimately you want to purchase any machines and all those like farm mechanization so you can take for these purpose so this is about your kisan credit card okay now we move to next so if you have any doubt in kisan credit card so please post otherwise i'll proceed okay don't worry if you listen i will not or you can say aapko koi doubt aayega hi nahi tension mat karo us cheez ki because it was covered in such a way ki agar aapko doubt aayega to wo with time over ho jayega aur i have organized a lecture in such a way ki automatically aapke doubts resolve hone shuru ho jayenge timing matter karta hai ki shayad abhi na ho 10 minute baad ho ya 1 ghante baad ho ho jayega lekin wo but you have to listen it now one student is asking nabard see uh, nabard is basically the role of nabard although we'll do nabard also when we'll do the banking chapter so if you are asking the role of nabard so when it comes to uh, issuing kisan credit card from rrbs so nabard has a role that time okay because rrbs are regulated by are regulated by you can say nabard only okay nabard only so this is what you have to remember okay now student are asking sir kc see i have mentioned investment credit so definitely you can use a tractor also okay but there is a loan limit that you can take loan up to 1.6 lakh even when you pay your credit bills okay when you pay your credit bills so ultimately ultimately there is a processing fee so ultimately here there will you will find no processing fee 
here you will find no processing fee so this is what you have to remember clear clear okay so one student is writing could you please explain tb i am not understanding what is tb you are talking about okay clear so although this scheme focuses on small and marginal farmer mostly but it does not mean that ki it exclude large farmers so small and marginal farmers are those farmers which are practicing agriculture on a land less than 4 hectares clear self help group farmer means that uh, when farmers okay when group of farmers form a group that is self help group okay now come to second scheme interest subvention scheme okay interest subvention scheme now immediately if you see that in this in this uh, kisan credit card those who are beneficiary like modi government has added some more features also like those who apply for kisan credit card they will also get the debit card ultimately if you see in a broader way kisan credit card not only providing credit to the farmer it is also ensuring financial inclusion okay so when you talk about financial inclusion we used to see three things okay we used to three three, three things and you can say triple a okay that is that is first of all accessibility availability and affordability okay so ultimately you are seeing th these three things so having mere bank account or having mere credit card does not mean that you are financially included so ultimately if i have a credit card i am not able to use it why because interest rate is very high okay so ultimately 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 you can say the purpose of kisan credit card will get failed okay similarly if you see modi government has added another feature those who apply for kisan credit card they will get they will get rupee atm card also okay they will get rupee atm card also number 1 okay number 1 they will get rupee atm card also number 1 number 2 like for our atm card there are limits that you can withdraw money up to this limit in a month but in case of kisan credit card if you apply kisan credit card then you get a complimentary rupee atm card which is designed by npci national payment corporation of india limited and there are no withdrawal limits there are no withdrawal limits clear clear so this is what you have to understood now some of you are asking about that when this money has to be returned so when we'll do our second scheme that is interest subvention scheme that works in combination with kisan credit card okay now we are coming to kisan second part interest subvention scheme okay so we are going to now talk about interest subvention scheme so in interest subvention scheme basically interest subvention scheme first of all you have to understand we have two types of crops one is short term crop means which is grown in you can say cropping season okay another is another is long term crop like plantation crop which need years to grow so we are talking about short term crop here so we have two types of crop short term crop and long term crop okay so crop which can be cultivated in 3 4 months okay or less than 1 year long term which needs years for example your tea coffee etc now here we are talking about when we are talking about interest subvention scheme loan will be given loan will be given only for short term crop okay so ultimately this scheme will give loan facility only for short term crop okay so this is your first prelims question that you have to remember if scheme comes this scheme comes with respect to agriculture number 1 okay so loan will be given only for short term crop and whenever you are taking loan 
okay so for example you go to a bank and in bank the rate of interest is 8% so whatever amount you took so the rate of interest is for example 8% so government says that we will give you 2% subsidy from our side means means for farmers if farmer is taking loan if farmer is taking loan for short term for short term so it means it means if the rate of interest is 8% so government will government will intervene and says the bank that you will give a loan to the farmer at 6% okay if the rate of interest is 8% normally in a bank so government will intervene so it means government says that you will give a you can say subsidy of 2% that is what interest subvention scheme so again this is another way to ensure that far farmer can access access banks with respect to taking loan for the agriculture purpose clear so ultimately 6% now it does not mean that ki banks will be in loss so 2% rate of interest will be given by will be given by you can say 2% will be given by the government to the banks okay that is why they are offering 6% now ultimately if farmer if farmer pays the interest on time okay if farmer pays the interest on time then ultimately again farmer will get another benefit that is 3% okay so you can understand in this way suppose i am a farmer or suppose yourself as a farmer you go to a bank for a loan and that is loan for short term crop that is loan for short term crop okay short term crop and if suppose bank rate of interest is 8% okay 8% so government will intervene that to the farmer if he is taking loan for this short term crop you will give loan at 6% so banks will say banks will say who will compensate us so government says i will give it to you so government will give a 2% to the banks so ultimately ultimately banks will give 6% now if farmer repay the loan okay if farmer repay the loan on time although there is no limit okay although there is no limit so normally it is short term so loan repayment is within one year okay short term crop so loan repayment is within one year so if farmer repay the loan on time means on time means in one year itself okay then farmer will get another benefit so it's 6% loan that he has taken that will further get a benefit of 3% means further 3% subsidy to pehle 2% ki subsidy mil rahi hai uske baad 3% ki mil rahi hai but it is on condition means timely repayment timely repayment of loan so ultimately ultimately jo 8% ka loan hai farmer ko 3% ka pad jayega clear agar wo timely repay kar raha hai clear so this is for every farmer so there is no condition but here it is a condition that timely repayment so this is what you have to remember again clear now moving further <coughs> now moving further if you see if you see here farmer can take a loan for up to 3 lakhs only up to 3 lakhs so this is the maximum limit they have given up to 3 lakh and whatever loan they have taken they have to they have to return in one year okay so maximum time period is one year okay or you can say two cropping season kharif and rabi so cropping season is of 3 4 5 months okay so one year and maximum loan that he can take is that he can take is 3 lakhs clear so ultimately this is what you have to remember clear okay so this is what you have to remember so this is called interest subvention scheme so agar aap dekhoge is scheme ko kisan credit ke sath ke sath link karke dekhoge to ek tarah se ye jo sari schemes hain ye link mein kaam kar rahi hai abhi jo hum next scheme karne wale hain pm kisan okay wo bhi iske sath connection mein kaam kar rahi hai to aapko ye schemes alag se nahi dekhni hai ye scheme sari connected hai ye scheme sari connected hai 
तो अल्टीमेटली अगर मैं फार्मर हूं एंड आई नीड अ लोन ओके एंड आई नीड अ लोन अप टू थ्री लैक्स सो आई विल गेट बेनिफिट अंडर इंटरेस्ट सबवेंशन स्कीम ऑल्सो सो अब ऐसा नहीं है कि किसान क्रेडिट कार्ड के अंदर मेरे को जो लोन देना है रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट देना है वो ज्यादा देना होगा तो अल्टीमेटली अल्टीमेटली इफ आई एम फुलफिलिंग दिस कंडीशन ओके इफ आई एम फुलफिलिंग दिस कंडीशन दैट आई एम टेकिंग लोन फॉर शॉर्ट टर्म क्रॉप तो अगर सपोज कर लो मैं राइस वीट कल्टिवेट कर रहा हूं जो इंडिया में ज्यादातर फार्मर्स करते हैं तो अगर मैं राइस एंड वीट आई एम कल्टिवेटिंग ओके सो अब मेरे को क्या करना है इसमें आप ये देखोगे कि वट एवर आई एम कल्टिवेटिंग ओके सो आप यहां पर देखोगे कि अगर मेरे को लोन चाहिए उसके लिए तो आई कैन गेट अप टू थ्री लैक्स अंडर इंटरेस्ट सबवेंशन ऑल्सो सो आई विल सी दी स्कीम्स टूगेदर क्लियर नाउ कम टू नेक्स्ट पीएम किसान ओके सो इफ एनी डाउट यू कैन आस्क ओके तो अगर आप देखोगे इसमें पहले दो परसेंट की सब्सिडी मिल रही है कौन दे रहा है सरकार दे रही है भारत सरकार फिर तीन परसेंट की मिल रही है कौन दे रही है भारत सरकार दे रही है बट कंडीशन पे देगी तो अगर आप देखोगे टाइमली रीपेमेंट इज द कंडीशन तो जो भी हमारा लोन एग्रीमेंट हुआ उसके ऊपर कितना मिलेगा अप टू थ्री लैक्स एंड दैट इज फॉर वन ईयर क्लियर सो एनी डाउट यू कैन आस्क सो सम स्टूडेंट्स आर गेटिंग कंफ्यूज सर थ्री परसेंट इंटरेस्ट मिलेगा या माइनस होगा माइनस होगा थ्री परसेंट ओके ओके सो दिस इज व्हाट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टूड क्लियर नाउ कम टू नेक्स्ट प्रधानमंत्री किसान योजना सो प्रधानमंत्री किसान योजना मींस यू कैन से कृषि सम्मान निधि ओके सो प्रधानमंत्री किसान स्टैंड फॉर कृषि सम्मान निधि ओके सो के आई स्टैंड फॉर कृषि एस ए स्टैंड फॉर सम्मान एंड एन स्टैंड फॉर निधि ओके तो कृषि सम्मान निधि ओके नाउ यू नो दैट नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई लिंक दिस स्कीम विद योर किसान क्रेडिट कार्ड नाउ यू नो दैट हेयर फार्मर इज गेटिंग रुपीज सिक्स थाउजेंड पर ईयर और यू कैन से पर पर फाइनेंशियल ईयर ओके सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड एंड वट एवर फार्मर इज गेटिंग दे आर गिविंग दिस रुपीज सिक्स थाउजेंड इन थ्री इंस्टॉलमेंट्स ओके टू थाउजेंड टू थाउजेंड यू कैन से इन एवरी फोर मंथ्स ओके सो देर विल बी थ्री इंस्टॉलमेंट्स That is two thousand rupees after every four months. Okay, so ultimately this is what you have to remember. Now, if you see the objective of this scheme, so in the beginning I told you, in the beginning I told you that farmer, <coughs> that average income of the farmer family is, average income of the farmer family is seven thousand to eight thousand. So this is what he is earning. by working on agricultural fields okay by working on agricultural fields so now government is giving now government is giving additional funds okay government is giving additional funds 6000 rupees so that this additional they are giving through pm kisan pm kisan that is krishi samman nidhi that will become a additional income support okay additional income support so here i want to counter some student because i have seen that when i take class some student says sir 6000 is very less no doubt it is less but it is not the income it is the additional income support that is given in the form of grants to ek tarah se bharat sarkar ye free mein de rahi hai okay kisan ko और एडिशनल इनकम सपोर्ट ताकि फार्मर की जो एवरेज इनकम है कुछ इंप्रूव हो ओके एवरेज इनकम है वो आपकी इंप्रूव हो सो दैट इज व्हाट गवर्नमेंट इज गिविंग क्लियर नाउ दिस इज गिवन इन थ्री इंस्टॉलमेंट्स ओके दिस इज गिवन इन थ्री इंस्टॉलमेंट दैट इज टू थाउजेंड आफ्टर एवरी फोर मंथ्स सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ओके नाउ 
दिस इज गिवन ओनली टू दो फार्मर्स विच आर हैविंग लैंड और यू कैन से विच आर होल्डिंग लैंड सो वेन आई एम सेंग दो फार्मर्स विच आर होल्डिंग लैंड इट मीन्स इट एक्सक्लूड टेनेंट फार्मर्स ओके सो अल्टीमेटली दिस सिक्स थाउजेंड विल बी गिवन ओनली टू दो फार्मर्स विच आर हैविंग लैंड ओके और दे आर हैविंग यू कैन से लैंड होल्डिंग्स ओके सो अल्टीमेटली अल्टीमेटली दिस इज अ लॉजिक पॉइंट इफ इन प्रिलिम्स दे आस्क यू सो दे आर दे कैन ब्रिंग यू इन ट्रैप ओके कि इट इज गिवन टू ऑल द फार्मर्स इंक्लूडिंग टेन एंड फार्मर्स सो योर आंसर विल बी नो इट इज गिवन ओनली टू दो फार्मर्स विच आर होल्डिंग लैंड ओके नंबर वन नंबर टू इनिशियली वेन दिस स्कीम वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड initially when this scheme was introduced so that time that time so if you see when this scheme was introduced so that time our focus was only on small small and marginal farmers but now they said it is for all types of farmers okay small marginal medium semi medium and large farmers okay to aapki aapki आपको बता देता हूं हमारे पास पांच तरह के फार्मर्स हैं जिनके पास लैंड होल्डिंग होती है तो फर्स्ट इज मार्जिनल फार्मर सेकेंड स्मॉल फार्मर थर्ड मीडियम फार्मर सेमी मीडियम फार्मर and and large farmer so ultimately these farmers are classified on the basis of land holdings so if you see small farmers marginal farmers these are those farmers who are practicing agriculture on a land less than 2 hectares clear small are those who are practicing agriculture on a land around 2 to 4 hectares medium farmers those who are practicing on a land Around four hectares to, you can say, six hectares. And here, here semi-medium, those who are practicing six hectares to ten hectares. Okay, and large farmers, those who are practicing on a land more than ten hectares. So ultimately, ultimately, we classify farmers on the basis of land holdings. And if you see, and if you see that. initially pm kisan was for these two for these two types of farmer but currently but currently this scheme is for all the types of farmer okay so means any farmer irrespective of land holding okay so don't get confused to agar aap google karoge google pe purana data bhi milta hai okay ki small and marginal but now it is given to all this is what you have to remember number 1 number 2 we are not taking into consideration or you can say tenant farmers are not included so this is the another question where they can confuse you so you have to be you have to be ready with that clear apart from this apart from this there are some other types of farmer also which are not given benefit under pm kisan for example for example if there is any person okay and that person is working in any government job and he is having land also so ultimately we call them high economic status farmer okay or you can say farmer if he is paying income tax okay plus farmer or a person holding constitutional post and he is having land so that person is also not eligible for for pm kisan to usko bhi ye 6000 rupaye nahi milenge so this is what you have to remember clear clear so ultimately this is what you have to remember okay okay aur jitne bhi pm kisan ke beneficiaries hai okay means these five types except except tenant farmers or you can say farmers of high economic status so i told you what are farmers of high economic status means those who are holding any government job paying any income tax so they are of farmers of high economic status so if suppose there is any minister or tomorrow you become ias officer and you have land also so you are not eligible for pm kisan okay irrespective of land holding that you have
clear so this is what you have to remember okay so please remember these things in class itself so i hope i hope things are going inside your mind if it is not going then you can again tell me okay so we'll find out some other way for you okay so ultimately <laughs> so these are the things that you have to remember with respect to you can say pm kisan now those farmers so as i told you i related with pm kisan those who are the beneficiaries under pm kisan they will automatically get kisan credit card so this is a feature that you have to remember with respect to this thing clear 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 to ye aapke kuch features hai clear so ye aapke kuch features hai jo aapko pm kisan ke yaad rakhne hai ab ye basically scheme work kaise kar rahi hai agar main farmer hu okay aur mujhe benefit lena hai iska if i want to take the benefit i can take the benefit kaise ki as a farmer i have to do self registration okay self registration with common service centers now once i do the self registration state government will verify it and if they allow me after verification if they allow me then i am eligible for this scheme okay and to track that you are eligible or not government of india has launched pm kisan app pm kisan app so ultimately if you are a farmer you can you can and you are not excluded so you can download this pm kisan app in pm kisan app you can go for registration also okay so aap wahan par jaake self registration karoge whatever documents are needed you have to upload it okay government will verify it state government will verify it and after verification they will give you approval and automatically you can track that now you become a part of pm kisan scheme or beneficiary under pm kisan scheme and automatically this 6000 will come to your bank account so it is not like that you have to go to some offices okay so this scheme is working in this way so ultimately without going to any office okay you will or directly money will be coming to your bank account so here they are using the benefit of direct benefit transfer okay direct benefit transfer that is why modi government introduced jandhan yojana in the beginning itself so when they came in 2014 15 so they came out with jandhan yojana where every person must have a bank account so that so that whatever such initiatives are there for example pm kisan so we can directly give money into that bank account clear so this is what you have to remember see all the things whatever government has done in last 7 8 years they have connection now come to last pradhan mantri kisan mandan yojana and then we'll shift to fertilizer and seed sector mandan yojana can anyone tell me what is this scheme can anyone tell me what is the relevance of this scheme so that meanwhile i'll take water so there are some doubts also so i'll see your doubts also so already i told you kisan credit card ke benefit kaun se farmers ko milte hain to main bata hi chuka hu aapko all types of farmers are there ओके टेनेंट फार्मर्स को भी देते हैं बट किसान पीएम किसान जो है उसके अंदर सिर्फ और सिर्फ सिर्फ और सिर्फ उन्हीं फार्मर्स को मिलेगा जिनका लैंड है टेनेंट फार्मर्स को नहीं देते या फिर अगर आपके पास लैंड है और आप किसी गवर्नमेंट जॉब में हो सरकारी नौकरी ओके या फिर आप कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल पोस्ट होल्ड करके बैठे हो या आप इनकम टैक्स देते हो या आप प्रोफेशनल हो प्रोफेशनल मीन्स डॉक्टर हो सी हो ओके इंजीनियर हो सो इफ यू हैव एनी प्रोफेशनल कोर्स तो आप इन एलिजिबल हो जाते हो ओके तो उनके लेनी है क्लियर ओके तो उनके लेनी है ये सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड सी सम स्टूडेंट आर गेटिंग कंफ्यूज विद इनकम टैक्स इनकम टैक्स मीन्स द इन रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ एनी लैंड एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर डज नॉट हैव इनकम टैक्स और यू कैन से इट इज एग्जेप्टेड फ्रॉम इनकम टैक्स सो इफ सपोज आई एम अ फार्मर अपार्ट फ्रॉम एग्रीकल्चर आई हैव सम अदर बिजनेस ऑल्सो okay so it means i am paying income tax so ultimately then i become in in eligible for this scheme uh, okay agar ha mera pura ka pura livelihood agriculture hi hai chahe mere paas 20 hectare land ho okay but i am not paying any income tax so i am eligible clear 
तो यहां पर यह चीज आती है हम इस चीज की बात कर रहे हैं क्लियर ओके नाउ नेक्स्ट प्रधानमंत्री किसान मनधन योजना ओके सो बेसिकली दिस स्कीम इज ओनली फॉर ओनली फॉर यू कैन से स्मॉल एंड मार्जिनल फार्मर वेयर यू आर गेटिंग सोशल सिक्योरिटी ओके सो 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 दिस स्कीम इज बेसिकली फोकसिंग ऑन यू कैन से ओल्ड एज पेंशन स्कीम फॉर स्मॉल एंड मार्जिनल फार्मर्स okay so now you know who are small and marginal farmers so if i use this term again and again so you will not get confused small and marginal farmers okay now those now what are the common features or features of this scheme those who want to enroll in this scheme they must be they must be enroll at the age of 18 to 40 18 to 40 so if you enroll at this age you will get a monthly pension minimum monthly pension of rupees 3000 minimum monthly pension of rupees 3000 per month after the age of or you can say when you attain the age of age of 60 years okay so ultimately if you want to take the benefit of this scheme you have to register yourself with this scheme in this age so if there is any farmer of this age in this age group they can register they can register and once they register so government will ensure that when you become or when you cross the age of 60 we will give you a minimum pension minimum pension of rupees 3000 per month okay now why minimum because it depends on your contribution so every month so suppose suppose at the age of 80 i enrolled so every month or every year i am giving some money okay every year i am giving some money okay or you can say for example in this you are allowed to contribute 55 to 200 rupees maximum per month per month to government of india and that money will go into pension fund okay that money will go into pension fund and this scheme is you can say managed by or run by lic lic nahi samajh aaya koi dikkat nahi hai दोबारा समझा देते हैं ओके सिंपल है कीप इट सिंपल व्हाट इज द पर्पस ऑफ ओल्ड एज पेंशन नाउ यू नो दैट फार्मर हु इज एवरेज इनकम इज सेवन टू एट थाउजेंड पर मंथ सो यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट एज फार्मर बिकम एज्ड सो हिज कैपेसिटी टू वर्क इन एग्रीकल्चर फील्ड विल आल्सो रिड्यूस सो अल्टीमेटली वेन इट विल रिड्यूस हिज इनकम विल फर्दर रिड्यूस इन ऑर्डर टू एंश्योर सोशल सिक्योरिटी government came with this scheme where they said that if farmer those who are in the age of 18 to 40 if they enroll for this scheme if they enroll for this scheme they will get minimum pension of 3000 rupees so this is minimum amount minimum pension of 3000 rupees per month after the age of 60 years now this amount they are getting that is conditional conditional means suppose i enroll at the age of 18 okay and every month you can say from the age of 18 till i become 60 okay so you can say every month i am giving 55 rupees so it means ek saal mein kitna de raha hu main can anyone tell me one year mein kitna de raha hu main anyone c sat no around 660 rupees i am paying okay so around 660 rupees i am paying okay so jitne bhi main de raha hu so around 660 rupees i am paying so this i'll pay till the age of till the age of 60 so means in the age of 18 years i enrolled okay and continuously i am giving continuously i am giving for you can say another 32 years so for 32 years i gave 660 rupees so you can say 32 into 660 so this is the amount i'll give it to the government and this amount will give go to pension fund pension fund which is managed by lic which is managed by lic so if i do this thing then only i'll get 
minimum this much amount minimum so if i contribute more than 55 so my pension will also increase in the future so that depends so ultimately ultimately government has said how much you can contribute 55 to 200 only so in between if you contribute accordingly your pension will be this much but it is minimum 3000 or more clear it is minimum 3000 or more okay now there are certain questions which upsc used to ask okay which upsc used to ask now there are certain questions which upsc used to ask for example for example if you see if you see if suppose farmer is alive no doubt he will get he will get 3000 rupees so you can say if suppose farmer is alive till the age of 70 so it means it means for 10 years he is getting pension but if suppose something happened to the farmer then his spouse will get but but his or her spouse will get only 50 percent so if suppose i contributed 55 rupees at the age of or i started at the age of 18 18 so it means for 32 years i contributed some money okay so it means i am getting this much as a pension so if something happened to me my spouse will get 1500 rupees so this is the second question why i am telling you if you see in previous year they have asked a question on atal pension yojana on atal pension yojana and there was a and there was a question related to this only okay so they ask same same features okay although there are some other features we'll talk about that also okay so ultimately you will get 50 percent but if suppose farmer if suppose something happened to the farmer in the age group only that is in this age group 18 to 40 so if suppose as a farmer i enrolled at the age of 18 and till the 25 age i have given and after that something happened to me okay now my spouse can continue okay my spouse can continue with this okay my spouse can continue with this by paying the rest of the amount jo bhi main amount de raha tha wo de ke continue kar sakti hai okay fir usko puri amount milegi at the age of 60 but agar suppose kar lo kisi farmer ki spouse hi nahi hai tab wo paise kahi nahi jayenge wo fir government ke ho gaye okay fir government usko farmer welfare pe hi lagayegi dobara clear tab wo paise kahi nahi jayenge that will be government clear clear tab wo government ke paise hi rahenge tab government kisi ko nahi degi क्लियर तो अल्टीमेटली आपको समझना पड़ेगा कि इसका जो बेनिफिट है सोशल सिक्योरिटी का उसका बेनिफिट या तो फार्मर ले सकता है या उसकी स्पाउस ले सकती है क्लियर तो दीज आर सम ऑफ द फीचर्स दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट कैन बी आस्क इन एग्जाम क्लियर तो हमारा क्रेडिट पोर्शन खत्म हो गया तो अगर मैं समराइज करूं 5 मिनट में व्हाट वी हैव कवर्ड सो इन क्रेडिट एज आई टोल्ड यू एज आई टोल्ड यू दैट एवरेज इनकम ऑफ द फार्मर फैमिली इज 7000 टू 8000 okay and government has a task to double it so we have set up two committees also one is ashok dalwai committee second is second is sanjay agarwal committee so please remember in class only next we have seen initiatives taken by the government initiatives taken by the government so if you see the initiatives taken by the government so we have got talked about four schemes one is you can say kisan credit card kcc we have also talked about interest subvention scheme interest subvention scheme we have also talked about pm kisan and last is mandhan okay so you can expect a question from this you can expect a question from this especially if you see they can ask you a question on these or you can say committees so you can say if you remember the name of the committee that is a you can easily get a marks second you can expect a question from kisan credit card very very important and second mandan yojana second important scheme because if you see they have not talked about mandan till date but this scheme remain in use okay so you can expect a question so remember again i am telling you this scheme is for small and marginal farmers only small and marginal farmers so now you know who are small and marginal 
okay 18 to 40 maximum they can contribute 55 to 200 okay so whenever they enroll so this is what once they enroll government ensure them that they will get minimum 3000 rupees as a pension per month okay after the age of 60 okay and if something happened to the you can say farmer farmer so his or her spouse if something happened after the age of 60 so his or her spouse will get 50 percent of the pension so if suppose 3000 is the pension 1500 if suppose something happens to the spouse in the age only that is before 60 before 60 then that scheme can be continued by the spouse itself so in that case spouse will get complete amount okay <coughs> and if something happened to the farmer and there is no spouse then that money will go to the pension fund pension fund so government will not give that money to anyone clear so this is what you have to remember with respect to this scheme and this scheme mandan is managed by lic life insurance corporation so this is what you have to remember now we are coming to next part that is fertilizer and seed part so if you have any uh, question in this so i'll give you one or two minutes so you can ask so if you have any doubt you can ask if still there is no doubt you can write no doubt okay very good now we will start with fertilizer sector first we will start with fertilizer sector first can anyone tell me what are the issues in fertilizer sector Can anyone tell me what are the issues in fertilizer sector? Okay. I have already told you that KCC is given to all types of farmer including tenant farmer. Okay. Okay. Now some students are saying sir repeat although I wish to repeat but see we I have to cover lot of things okay so that is why i told you in the beginning please concentrate okay please concentrate because the more you concentrate more you will get benefit okay don't worry about it okay so ultimately you have to understood see in this exam you have to decode from where upsc is used to ask a question so every year there is a question on finance okay finance so ultimately agriculture credit is important so if you see as i told you one sample also they have asked a question so ultimately this year I am expecting either they will ask you committee or they will ask you Kisan credit card or PM Kisan Mandan Yojana. Okay. So chances are that ki you are aware of Kisan credit card but you are not aware of Mandan. Okay. So you must remember that Mandan can be asked. Now come to fertilizer. Okay. So when I am talking about fertilizer sector. Okay. So fertilizer is again important. Okay. Now first you understood what is the issues in fertilizer number one if you see first issue is with respect to production first is with respect to production okay second issue is with respect to over utilization over utilization third issue is with respect to pricing pricing okay so we have three issues in the fertilizer sector production over utilization and pricing now when i am talking about production so you know that ki our three fertilizers are very important npk nitrogen phosphorus and potassium okay so ultimately urea So India is the largest producer, largest consumer 
as well as largest importer or consumer as well as largest importer of urea okay so ultimately whatever urea we are having in our country okay whatever urea we are producing in our country is not sufficient is not sufficient so this is what you have to understood clear is not sufficient so this is what you have to understood that is why we are having a dependency on urea okay second when it comes to phosphorus 50% production is there okay so 50% production is there Fifty percent production of phosphorus is in our country, but rest fifty percent we used to import. We used to import. So this is what again you have to remember. So they can ask you in the statement form. They can ask you in the statement form. Now here you will see, or even they have asked earlier also. Okay, or if you have appeared for PT diagnostic also. so there also we have given this question okay now if you see whatever we are producing for that raw material is imported so directly or indirectly we can say phosphorus is also imported 100% okay so understand it carefully phosphorus production is done in india but that is 50% and rest 50% is imported but whatever 50% that we are producing for that we are dependent in what way that is in terms of raw material okay now potassium with respect to potassium there is no domestic production so ultimately 100% is imported so first of all you must know the status of fertilizer in india so first of all you must know the status of fertilizer in india so this is the first thing that you must know okay so this is the you can say an expected they can ask you the status of fertilizers in india especially with respect to npk okay so this is the condition now you will be so this is what you have to remember now when it comes to over utilization so you already know that farmers in india are using it whatever is required now in order to stop that practice we came with the concept of soil health card so that is why this scheme is important soil health card number 2 number 2 after soil health card if you see the next scheme that we came with you can say neem coated urea neem coated urea okay so neem coated urea is another okay number 3 number 3 after neem coated urea what is the next thing that you have to remember can anyone tell me what is the next thing that government is working you can say nano urea so ultimately some easy questions are framed in upsc steps taken steps taken to solve the problem of over utilization of fertilizer so these are the steps now when it comes to pricing so there is an issue with respect to you can say new price scheme new price scheme okay that is to decide the prices of urea and nutrient based subsidy nutrient based subsidy so this is what again you have to remember clear this is what again you have to remember so first of all we'll start with soil health card okay so these are the topics that you must know so first of all you must know about soil health card so basically if you see soil health card soil health card was 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 you can say issued or you can say came in 2015 now the objective of soil health card is to know is to know the condition of soil yes or no 
can anyone tell me yes or no so basically if you see soil health card it came in 2015 okay now here every farmer has to has to conduct a soil test every 2 years तो हर दो साल के बाद हर फार्मर को एक सॉइल हेल्थ कार्ड रिपोर्ट मिलेगी एवरी टू इयर्स विच विल कंडक्ट विच विल कंडक्ट और चेक द स्टेटस ऑफ सॉइल ऑन ट्वेल्व पैरामीटर्स कैन एनी वन टेल मी वॉट आर दो ट्वेल्व पैरामीटर्स विच विल कंडक्ट कंडीशन ऑफ सॉइल ऑन ट्वेल्व पैरामीटर्स एंड दो ट्वेल्व पैरामीटर्स आर एंड दो ट्वेल्व पैरामीटर्स आर नंबर वन पी एच ऑफ द सॉइल pH of the soil number 2 electrical conductivity so again it become important electrical conductivity number 3 organic content so please write these things organic content number 3 नंबर फोर नाइट्रोजन नंबर फोर नाइट्रोजन नंबर फाइव फॉस्फोरस नंबर फाइव फॉस्फोरस नंबर सिक्स पोटेशियम नंबर सिक्स पोटेशियम नंबर सेवन नंबर सेवन सल्फर नंबर सेवन सल्फर नंबर एट जिंक नंबर सेवन सल्फर नंबर एट जिंक नंबर सेवन सल्फर नंबर एट जिंक नंबर नाइन बोरोन बोरोन नंबर टेन आयरन नंबर टेन आयरन नंबर टेन आयरन नंबर इलेवन मैंगनीज मैंगनीज ओके मैंगनीज एंड नंबर फोर कॉपर एंड नंबर फोर कॉपर सो अल्टीमेटली अल्टीमेटली दीज आर द these are the 12 parameters okay on which on which your soil on which your soil content okay or you can say your soil health card is measured now if you see if you see now if you see the soil health card so here you can say under every village okay so you can say youths are allowed so ultimately youth of the farmers or youth of the villages youth of the villages are allowed to set up to set up soil testing labs soil testing labs okay so ultimately this will give employment to the youth also in rural india okay employment to youth also but but there is a limit that youth must not cross the age of 40 years so 40 years is the upper limit okay so you can say maximum age of the youth must not be more than 40 years so this is the maximum age okay of the youth that has been given now when whenever whenever lab will be set up so funds will be given by both center and the state government so this scheme soil health card is jointly implemented by center and state center and state so this is what you have to understood in this scheme clear in this scheme so this is about your this is about your soil health card scheme okay now moving further there is another scheme that is known as nano urea okay so can anyone tell me what is the utility of nano urea or you can say recently government came with nano urea or liquid nano urea so basically if you see 
with the introduction of nano urea or you can say government has set up the first liquid nano urea plant where can anyone tell me is there any sound issue some students are writing sound are properly ek minute i'll just check with the technical team sound are proper awaaz aa raha hai lekin student likh rahe hain okay I receive your message just now that there is sound issue. Okay, so I hope. Okay, so basically, basically, if you see that for the first time, okay, so there is no issue. So we have seen soil health card. Now come to nano urea. now basically nano urea has been introduced introduced to replace your conventional urea so you can say once you once you replace nano urea or you can say conventional urea with nano urea so our requirement for urea get reduced by 50% okay and when it get reduced by 50% it has multiple benefits like number 1 government subsidy bill will get reduced government subsidy bill will get reduced and number 2 number 2 if you see our import bill also get reduced okay so ultimately you can say current account deficit will get reduced so already india has a current account deficit more than 200 billion dollars okay third sorry it's trade deficit not current account deficit so trade deficit is more than 200 billion dollars third it will ensure nowadays government is focusing on precision farming precision farming which you can say a sub type of sub type of sustainable agriculture okay so if you introduce nano urea okay nano urea as i told you it will reduce our reduce our you can say requirement of urea or conventional urea by 50% so whatever we are consuming it will get reduced okay it will get reduced by 50% and once it will get reduced so upsc can ask you in a, in an exam the benefit of introducing urea so if they give you three statements so you have to tell yes all these three statements are correct and ultimately ultimately if you use urea effectively so it will also help to improve the productivity of agricultural produce so you can say this is the outcome of this consequences so immediate consequences will be these three which have further consequences so we are looking for immediate consequences so these are the three immediate consequences so please note down these things okay now if you see from the point of view of current affair okay so government of india has set up set up first nano urea manufacturing plant okay or you can say inaugurated by government of india that is that is in kalol gujarat okay so this is what is important for prelims only kalol gujarat and it is you can say set up by ifco okay ifco okay ifco stands for indian farmer fertilizer cooperative limited okay ifco stands for indian farmer fertilizer cooperative limited okay so although we have a topic of cooperative also because cooperative has nowadays become important for your <coughs> exam okay so you have to remember this thing okay so ultimately ultimately this is about the urea nano urea now neem coated urea is another thing okay now can you tell me what is the benefit of neem coated urea what is the benefit of neem coated urea productivity one student is asking see it is productivity of agricultural crop get increased okay productivity of agricultural crop get 
increased. So this is what about you have to remember. Okay. Now come to neem coated urea. So can anyone tell me what is the benefit of neem coated urea? Now if you see first benefit of neem coated urea is now although the main objective of neem coated urea is to avoid neem coated urea is to avoid diversion diversion of neem or sorry diversion of urea for non agriculture purpose okay so i just want to tell you that before we introduce this neem coated urea so what used to happen that that urea which is subsidized for only agriculture that get diverted for non agriculture purpose so ultimately urea is used for other sectors also like in chemical sector like in making you can say detergents and all those things okay plus there are some issues also like milk production also but but you don't write an exam just for your reference so ultimately some news channel also saying that it is diverted for that purpose also but ultimately ultimately government gives subsidy for urea only for agriculture purpose not for non agriculture purpose clear yahan par hum dekh rahe hain ki non agriculture purpose ke liye ja raha tha to ultimately government came out with one suggestion that why not we coat urea with neem so ultimately if you once you coat it so first benefit it that it will not diverted for non agriculture purpose why because neem coated urea become useless for them okay so you can say we can stop diversion so this is the first benefit apart from this what are the other benefits is that it will like when you use urea without neem coating so it is responsible for it is responsible for water contamination so when you coat the urea so it lower underground water contamination due to leaching of an area okay so leaching process aapka slow ho jata hai okay leaching process aapka slow ho jata hai so it is beneficial on that also okay so leaching get reduced otherwise otherwise when you use urea so there will be a leaching okay so leaching get slowed down and when it gets slowed down so ultimately no ground water contamination no ground water contamination this is what you have to remember next neem coated urea also serve as a natural insecticide so farmer has to use pesticide and insecticide also so neem coated urea also act as a natural insecticide okay so it act as a natural insecticide so this is what you have to again remember clear clear so these are the major advantage of neem coated urea okay neem coated urea so i hope you understood these things so any doubt till here okay now there is another famous scheme in your upsc or you can say just government introduced it that is pm pranam scheme okay pm pranam scheme so how many of you have heard about this scheme pm pranam okay pm pranam can anyone tell me what is the objective of pm pranam so if you see the objective of pm pranam pm pranam scheme has been introduced has been introduced to replace your conventional fertilizers or you can say chemical fertilizers with some alternate okay with some alternate okay so ultimately ultimately we are looking for an alternate of you can say fertilizers okay alternate of fertilizers and this task has been given to state government that if state government are able to able to find an alternate for example biocompost is an alternate okay or you can say or you can say if i say directly hum kar kya rahe hain pm pranam scheme mein 
हम जो फर्टिलाइजर अभी यूज कर रहे हैं उनका कंजम्पन को कम करवाने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं सो दिस इज वॉट दिस इज वॉट गवर्नमेंट हैज लॉन्च पी एम प्रणाम स्कीम इन द ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू ओके इन द ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू वेयर वी आर लुकिंग फॉर ऑल्टरनेट ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर्स एंड दिस ईयर बजट ऑल्सो टॉक अबाउट दिस स्कीम ओके सो इफ यू सी द बजट ऑल्सो वी टॉक अबाउट गोबर धन ओके वी टॉक अबाउट गोबर धन वी टॉक अबाउट पी एम प्रणाम ऑल्सो क्लियर सो दिस बजट ऑल्सो टॉक अबाउट दिस स्कीम ओके नाउ अल्टीमेटली इफ यू सी द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ प्रणाम सो प्रणाम स्टैंड फॉर प्रमोशन प्रमोशन ऑफ ऑल्टरनेट न्यूट्रिय फॉर एग्रीकल्चर मैनेजमेंट योजना ओके प्रमोशन प्रमोशन ऑफ न्यूट्रिय फॉर ऑफ ऑल्टरनेट न्यूट्रिय फॉर एग्रीकल्चर मैनेजमेंट योजना सो दिस इज द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ दिस थिंग नाउ वट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर इन दिस स्कीम फॉर योर एग्जाम दैट सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट हैज क्लियरली स्टेटेड that if state government is able to reduce the fertilizer fertilizer use okay fertilizer use so it means subsidy will all subsidy bill will also get reduced now whatever subsidy bill state is responsible for reducing it so 50% of that will be given to the states as a grant so ultimately states ko fayda hoga to ek aap aise samajh sakte ho ki agar aap state government ho aap pehle use kar rahe the you can say 100 kg कोई भी फर्टिलाइजर्स जस्ट टेकिंग वन नंबर बट आपने क्या किया यू फाइंड ऑल्टरनेट तो ऑल्टरनेट फाइंड करने के बाद आप अब यूज कर रहे हो 60 के जी फर्टिलाइजर रेस्ट यू आर यूजिंग सम ऑल्टरनेट तो एक तरह से आपने 40 के का रिडक्शन किया अब 40 के का जैसे ही आपने रिडक्शन किया तो सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट का सब्सिडी बिल रिड्यूस हुआ तो जितना भी सब्सिडी बिल रिड्यूस हुआ है उसका फिफ्टी उसका फिफ्टी विल बी गिवन टू द स्टेट एज अ ग्रांट सो अल्टीमेटली स्टेट्स को एक इंसेंटिवाइज किया जा रहा है स्टेट्स को इंसेंटिवाइज किया जा रहा है क्लियर सो अब यहां पर आप देखो स्टेट्स ऐसे काम कर रही है इसमें क्लियर क्लियर तो दिस इज व्हाट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस 70 परसेंट ऑफ द ग्रांट प्रोवाइडेड इन द स्कीम वो आप यूज कर सकते हो एसेट क्रिएशन रिलेटेड टू यू कैन से टेक्नोलॉजिकल एडोप्शन ओके और थर्टी आप यूज कर सकते हो 30% परसेंट आप यूज कर सकते हो फार्मर को रिवॉर्ड करने के लिए भी ओके okay, तो अब जो भी ग्रांट्स दिया जाएगा ओके okay, तो समझ गए ग्रांट्स कहां से आ रहे हैं अगर आप फर्टिलाइजर्स का कंजम्पन कम करोगे ओके okay, फर्टिलाइजर्स का कंजम्पन कम करोगे तो अल्टीमेटली सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट का सब्सिडी बिल कम होगा तो जितना भी सब्सिडी बिल आप कम कर रहे हो उसका फिफ्टी आपको दिया जाएगा क्या ग्रांट्स ओके okay, और ग्रांट्स एक बार दे दिए स्टेट गवर्नमेंट को फिर वो वापस नहीं लेंगे सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर क्लियर Now, now, whatever grants you can have, so seventy percent you can use for technology development, technology development for alternate fertilizers, for alternate fertilizers, and thirty percent, thirty percent is you can use for rewarding the farmers. बिकॉज फार्मर्स के भी तो एफर्ट्स है ना इसमें रिवार्डिंग फार्मर्स बिकॉज फार्मर हैज ऑल्सो प्लेड अ रोल सो अल्टीमेटली अल्टीमेटली यू हैव टू रिड्यूस इट अब इसमें एक चीज देखो गवर्नमेंट ने अभी पीछे एक चीज इंट्रोड्यूस करी थी पीएम प्रणाम के अंदर गवर्नमेंट ऑल्सो सेज दिस थिंग कि हमें डोमेस्टिक मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर्स भी करनी है अब डोमेस्टिक मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर करने के लिए ओके डोमेस्टिक मैन्युफैक्चरिंग करने के लिए आपको स्टेट गवर्नमेंट को इंसेंटिवाइज करना पड़ेगा अब स्टेट गवर्नमेंट को इंसेंटिवाइज क्यों करना पड़ेगा क्योंकि अगर आप देखोगे अभी मैंने आपको थोड़ी देर पहले बताया कि फास्फोरस और पोटेशियम फॉर फास्फोरस एंड पोटेशियम वी आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन इंपोर्ट अब ऐसा नहीं है कि हमारे पास फॉस्फोरस और पोटेशियम के रॉ मेटीरियल नहीं है वी हैव बट दे आर माइनर मिनरल्स एंड माइनर मिनरल्स कम्स अंडर द कंट्रोल ऑफ स्टेट गवर्नमेंट दैट इज स्टेट लिस्ट क्लियर सो अल्टीमेटली पीएम प्रणाम के थ्रू गवर्नमेंट वॉन्ट्स दैट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट मस्ट प्रमोट द डोमेस्टिक मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर गेटिंग द आइडिया तो अगर कल को स्टेटमेंट आ जाए आपको कि डोमेस्टिक मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर को कैसे प्रमोट कर रही है दैट इज थ्रू पीएम प्रणाम एंड वाई दे आर प्रमोटिंग इट बिकॉज अगर आप देखोगे फॉस्फोरस पोटेशियम आर माइनर मिनरल्स एंड माइनर मिनरल्स आर पार्ट ऑफ स्टेट सब्जेक्ट क्लियर एंड स्टेट सब्जेक्ट मीन्स दे आर कंट्रोल्ड बाय द स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर एंड स्टेट गवर्नमेंट Clear. So this is what you have to remember. Clear. Okay. So PM Pranam is 
effective in boosting your domestic manufacturing also as well as help in reducing subsidy bill okay ab aap soch rahe ho sir kaise ab dekho agar main foreign country se if i am bringing fertilizers from foreign country okay so ultimately if suppose from foreign country it is 100 rupees per unit now if same i am manufacturing in india so it is 60 rupees per unit now when i am make, bringing it from 100 you can say from foreign country so farmer is paying 30 rupees i am paying 70 rupees means central government but when you are manufacturing in your country so again farmer is paying 30 rupees but now you are paying how much 30 rupees so your subsidy bill get reduced your subsidy bill get reduced so remember that phosphorus and potassium raw material are part of minor minerals and minor minerals comes under state list so again i am telling you because there is expected that they can ask you ki which of the following is or are minor minerals so ultimately upsc never ask you direct question they will ask you indirect ki inme se kaun se minor minerals hai so remember if you find phosphorus and potassium they are minor minerals and minor minerals are controlled by controlled by your state government ओके दैट इज दे कम अंडर स्टेट सब्जेक्ट और जहां पर आपकी पैसा है तो आपने ज्योग्राफी पॉलिटी में पढ़ा होगा पंचायत एक्सटेंशन टू शेड्यूल्ड एरिया पैसा एक्ट तो आपने पढ़ा होगा पैसा एक्ट ओके नहीं पढ़ा तो यू जस्ट रेफर बुक एनी बुक सो इन पैसा एक्ट इट हैज बीन गिवन दैट सच माइनर मिनरल्स पर्टिकुलरली वेयर एवर पैसा एक्ट इज अप्लाइड पंचायत एक्सटेंशन टू शेड्यूल्ड एरिया ओके सो आई एम नॉट गोइंग इन डिटेल ऑफ दैट तो पैसा एक्ट जहां पर भी आपका पैसा एक्ट अप्लाई होता है वहां पर आप देखोगे माइनर मिनरल्स जो है माइनर मिनरल्स जो है वो ग्राम सभा के कंट्रोल में है ओके ग्राम सभा के कंट्रोल में वेयर एज जहां पर पैसा एक्ट नहीं है वहां स्टेट स्टेट के कंट्रोल में सो दिस इज व्हाट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर विद रिस्पेक्ट टू विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दिस पीएम प्रणाम सो आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू यू ये सो नो प्लीज टेल मी ओके सी सब फर्टिलाइजर इज इंपॉर्टेंट क्योंकि अगर आप सरकार का बिल देखोगे ना फर्टिलाइजर्स के ऊपर तो वो दो ढाई लाख करोड़ से ऊपर का है मतलब इसके अराउंड का है दो ढाई लाख करोड़ के अराउंड का ओके तो मतलब गवर्नमेंट हर साल हर साल दो से ढाई लाख करोड़ के बीच में या फिर बढ़ता ही जा रहा है वो आपका फर्टिलाइजर सब्सिडीज पे लगाती है ओके फर्टिलाइजर सब्सिडीज पे और ये सारी फर्टिल जितनी भी आपकी फर्टिलाइजर्स है ये सारे ज्यादातर आपके इंपोर्ट होते हैं और इंपोर्ट होंगे तो अल्टीमेटली आप सब समझ जाओ कि करंट अकाउंट डेफिशिट बढ़ रहा है एंड दीज आर इंपॉर्टेंट पैरामीटर्स फॉर द इकोनॉमी ओके सो अल्टीमेटली गवर्नमेंट इज फोकसिंग ऑन फर्टिलाइजर सो अगेन फर्टिलाइजर इज इंपॉर्टेंट क्लियर सो गवर्नमेंट ऑलरेडी एक बार क्वेश्चन पूछ चुकी है इसके ऊपर फर्टिलाइजर के स्टेटस के ऊपर तो आपको मैंने अभी बता दिया तो थोड़ा सा अगर मैं समराइज करूं आपके लिए तो ऑलरेडी मैं आपको बता चुका हूं कि अगर आप देखोगे प्रोडक्शन प्रोडक्शन का स्टेटस आपके सामने ओवर यूटिलाइजेशन में यू मस्ट नो अबाउट सॉइल हेल्थ कार्ड सो सॉइल हेल्थ कार्ड के अंदर क्विक रिवीजन तो आपका हर दो साल के बाद आपको सॉइल हेल्थ कार्ड मतलब फार्मर को रिपोर्ट कार्ड लेना पड़ता है विद रिस्पेक्ट टू यू कैन से सॉइल हेल्थ कार्ड अर्लियर इट वॉज थ्री ईयर्स बट इसको टू ईयर्स करा हुआ है नीम कोटेड यूरिया सो अल्टीमेटली इन दिस यू हैव टू रिमेंबर द ट्वेल्व पैरामीटर्स सो दे कैन आस्क यू ओके नीम कोटेड यूरिया so neem coated urea ka already i told you what is the benefit nano urea ke andar you have to remember that we have inaugurated first plant that is in kalol gujarat kalol gujarat so i told you the benefit of using nano urea also okay so ultimately we have talked about that also now come to new price scheme and nutrient based subsidy ओके नाउ कम टू न्यू प्राइस की एंड न्यूट्रिएंट बेस्ड सब्सिडी अगेन इफ यू सी दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर योर एग्जाम नाउ बिफोर न्यू प्राइस स्कीम एंड न्यूट्रिएंट बेस्ड सब्सिडी you can say these are the you can say mechanism through which government of india used to find the amount of subsidy that government will give to the farmer okay or you can say amount of subsidy that government will give to the company 
सो नॉर्मली अगर आप देखोगे सब्सिडी इज गिवन टू द बेनिफिशियरी ओनली लाइक इन केस ऑफ एलपीजी सिलेंडर देर इज अ लिमिट सो सब्सिडी डायरेक्टली गोज टू द बैंक अकाउंट ऑफ बेनिफिशियरी बट इन केस ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर्स सब्सिडी गोज टू द कंपनी वाई बिकॉज एग्रीकल्चर इज इन अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर एंड इट इज डिफिकल्ट टू रिकॉग्नाइज द फार्मर ओके सो अल्टीमेटली वी आर गिविंग सब्सिडी डायरेक्टली टू द फर्टिलाइजर कंपनी दो आर मेकिंग फर्टिलाइजर्स ओके सो अल्टीमेटली अर्ली अर वी हैव रिटेंशन प्राइस की रिटेंशन प्राइस की Using this retention price scheme, okay. Using this retention price scheme, we used to calculate subsidies for NPK. That is nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. But currently, we are not using NPK. Currently, we are not using NPK. So we are using two methods. That is new price scheme and nutrient-based scheme or subsidy. so under new price scheme subsidy is given for under new price scheme subsidy is given for only urea or you can say we calculate subsidy only for urea using new price scheme so this is your prelims question okay urea second using nbs you calculate subsidy for phosphorus and potassium okay so only for p and k only for p and k so this is what you have to remember with respect to your exam so it is expected that if they ask you that nutrient based subsidy is for all the kind of or all types of you can say fertilizer so you have to tell it is for phosphorus and potassium urea is not included although there is a demand to include urea for urea we are calculating subsidy using a new price scheme okay we are calculating subsidy for new price scheme although 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 in exam in mains they can ask you what actually these schemes are but in prelims they will not ask you in detail so you must know that it is for this only okay but now i want to another thing that i want to tell you that we can manufacture urea using natural gas okay using natural gas as well as as well as other feed stock now natural gas prices are very high so recently government is working on natural gas or to you can say to discover the price mechanism for natural gas and they have set up and they have set up you can say a committee known as kirit park committee kirat parak committee so you remember the name of this committee kirat parak committee which has been set up to recommend with respect to natural gas pricing okay or you can say natural gas pricing mechanism so again this committee is important so i have told you three committees in today's class in last two hours that is ashok dalwai committee sanjay agarwal committee and third committee is kirat parak committee so remember kirat parak committee is important for is important for recommending the prices or you can say to how to determine the price of natural gas so ultimately recently government has set up this committee kirat parak committee and we are waiting for its recommendation okay kirat parak committee so remember this committee clear clear so this is what you have to remember with respect to your you can say <coughs> fertilizers now come to seed now can anyone tell me recently seed sector is in news so can anyone tell me why before i tell you okay can anyone tell me seed sector is in news
no idea please tell me okay gm mustard oh in beginning i told you that whenever we talk about gm and all those things that is a part of science and tech so that is not a part of economy but i'll tell you some portion of gm also but before i tell you seed first of all tell me why seed is important because seed is one of the important input or you can say is the only input which will decide the efficiency and efficacy of other inputs so ultimately if my seed is of poor quality how much fertilizers i'll use it is useless okay or it is of no use so ultimately ultimately when i am talking about seeds okay so seed becomes important so there are two types of seeds number 1 certified seeds so you can say which are manufactured in a company and number 2 farmer produced seeds farmer produce seeds okay or you can say farm used or farm saved seeds bhi bolte hain isko kabhi kabhi farm saved seeds to agar aap dekhoge india ke andar india ke andar majority farmers are using farm saved seeds they are not using farmer produced seeds to agar aap dekhoge around 18 19% farmers here 18 19% farmers are using certified seeds so ultimately here you have to remember this is the first statement that you have to remember that majority farmers are using farmer produced seeds farmer produced seeds and very less and very less farmers are using certified seeds now if you have understood this thing then you you can understand the another term which upsc has asked seed replacement ratio seed replacement ratio so seed replacement ratio is nothing but you can say number of farmers using farmer produced seeds as compared to or you can say number of farmers using certified seeds as compared to as compared to as compared to farmer produced seed so ultimately ultimately seed replacement ratio is very less in india but when you see the foreign countries so their seed replacement ratio is very high so ultimately every time whenever i am practicing for you can say farming i have to purchase certified seeds but in india but in india farmer are not purchasing certified seeds they used to use only whatever seeds they have preserved from the previous farming they use that सो so, नहीं समझ आया तो आप ऐसे भी समझ सकते हो वेन एवर फॉर एग्जाम्पल मेनी ऑफ यू आर प्रैक्टिसिंग गार्डनिंग इन योर हाउस ऑल्सो सो यू यूज टू यू यूज टू पिक द सीड्स एंड यू यूज दैट सीड टू ग्रो अनदर प्लांट दैट इज फार्मर प्रोड्यूस सीड्स बट सर्टिफाइड सीड सीड्स वेन यू गो टू द मार्केट यू परचेज अ पैकेट ऑफ सीड्स एंड यूटिलाइज इट ओके दैट इज सर्टिफाइड सीड्स ओके सो अल्टीमेटली यू हैव टू अंडरस्टूड दिस थिंग ओके सो सीड रिप्लेसमेंट रेशो नाउ in the month of april itself <clears throat> there is one term used in newspaper open source seed movement how many of you have heard about it please tell me open source seed movement kitne logon ne suni hai term how many of you have heard about this term open source seed movement and if you have heard tell me what it is okay okay to so, april month mein term thi ab isse pehle aapko ek term aur samajhni padegi there is very famous act plant variety act already already upsc has asked question on this 
plant variety act now you know that there are some practices which are done by our farmers and they are very successful okay or you can say they are exclusive to our indian farmers only so we have seen we have seen some of the companies some of the companies used to copy that item and used to commercialize it so aap aise bhi samajh sakte ho ki agar suppose kar lo aap farmer ho okay aap farmer ho to aap kya kar rahe ho ki aapki koi technology hai which you only know and that is exclu exclusively for you now if i am a foreign company i came to know about it i copied it and commercialize it ab aapki technology ko protect karne ke liye ya fir aapko royalty dilwane ke liye we have introduced plant variety act plant variety act so automatically just when you have some you can say any invention so you you register your invention under patent act similarly if farmer is having any technology with respect to farming so that get protected under plant variety act okay so ultimately this is a part of you can say environment also now now your seeds are or you can say your planting method is you can say protected so in case of patent you have to go to the patent office to register but here if your technique is unique it get automatically registered so this is what you have to remember okay this is what you have to remember and this plant variety act is as per the agreement of wto that is known as trips trade related intellectual property scheme or system okay so that is known as intellectual property rights okay trips okay so this is as per the agreement so ultimately here what you have to remember under plant variety act farmers you can say farming practice if it is unique is automatically get registered and if someone is copying it if someone is copying it okay so ultimately ultimately you have to you have to provide royalty to that farmer so ultimately copy ka matlab ye hai commercialize kar di usko okay royalty to the farmers so i hope till here it is clear so this act is again important okay so you can find a question in your prelims question also as well as expected upsc will again ask a question on this okay now you know that there is one very famous case with respect to you can say farmers of gujarat or you can say gujarat farmers versus pepsico pepsi company that is making you can say ruffle lays okay so there is a very famous case with respect to you can say gujarat farmer versus pepsico now in this case it has been seen it has been seen that no doubt government intervene in the you can say with respect to gujarat farmers okay so ultimately in this case you can say some technology of pepsico company is copied by the farmers so that is why this case is registered so it is important for your mains but now i hope you understand what is plant variety act now open source seed movement now if suppose i am a farmer and i have some technology and i want it can be used by others also so i want or government want that we create one knowledge library that is open source so if suppose i have technology i want to share that technology without any royalty so i can share it this is called open source seed movement so this was in news in the month of april 2023 so this is the latest news okay so today is 21st so if you search on google also it came i think around 5th or 6th so ultimately if suppose this movement is in news so you will think what it is okay what it is so this open source seed movement is related to is related to your your you can say seed to protect your seed variety okay to protect your seed or you can say you can share your information clear without expecting any royalty so that is why it is in news clear so you have to remember this thing now now here in exam they can ask you next question that why india is having low seed replacement ratio can anyone tell me 
सो दिस कैन बी एन एक्सपेक्टेड क्वेश्चन ऑफ योर प्रीलिम्स की सीड रिप्लेसमेंट रेशो वाई इंडिया इज हैविंग लो सीड रिप्लेसमेंट रेशो ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई इफ आई समराइज वॉट वी हैव कवर्ड सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ सीड सर्टिफाइड सीड्स एंड फार्मर प्रोड्यूस सीड्स सर्टिफाइड सीड्स आर दो सीड्स विच आर प्रोड्यूस्ड इन अ फैक्ट्री ओके ड्यू टू और यू कैन से यूजिंग सम टेक्नोलॉजी फार्मर प्रोड्यूस सीड्स विच फार्मर यूज टू सेव फ्रॉम इट्स प्रीवियस फार्मिंग ओके नंबर टू नंबर टू इन इंडिया मोस्ट ऑफ द फार्मर्स आर यूजिंग फार्मर प्रोड्यूस सीड्स वेरी लेस फार्मर्स आर यूजिंग सर्टिफाइड सीड्स दिस इज नंबर टू दैट इज वाई इंडिया इज हैविंग लो सीड रिप्लेसमेंट रेशो नाउ वेन आई टॉक अबाउट लो सीड रिप्लेसमेंट रेशो इट मीन्स it means ratio of farmers or you can say farmers using certified seeds as compared to the farmer using farmer produced seeds so as i told you it is around 18 19% in india okay next next if you see we talked about open source seed movement so there i told you that there are some unique technology of farming which farmer only knows or exclusively it is known by particular community okay now there can be possibility that some private company either domestic or foreign they came to know about that technology and they commercialize it so we have plant variety act to protect the interest of the farmer now we have open source movement also open source seed movement where if any farmer or a group of farmer want to produce or want to want to share its knowledge without any royalty so government has initiated open source movement okay open source movement so this is what you have to remember okay now this open source seed movement has been given by a you can say canadian person known as t e michael okay in 1999 so government has copied that idea from there t e michael in 1999 okay t e michael in 1999 so the concept of open source is that if any farmer having some technology so for example agar aap farmer ho aur aapke paas koi aisi technology hai jisko use karke jisko use karke i can increase i can increase the productivity and now you want that other farmers in rest of the corner of india they must also use it so you want to share that information without any royalty so for government has started or government is thinking to start about open source seed movement so be ready for it that they can ask you this open source seed movement and this concept is given by te michael in 1999 okay now my next question to you why india is having low seed replacement ratio so anyone wants to answer so please tell me <coughs> so if anyone want to answer so please tell me <coughs> see when i am talking about low seed replacement ratio so first of all you can say that companies in india are producing only those certified seeds which are profitable in nature okay which are profitable in nature so ultimately india is a country where we have so many farmers growing so many crops so ultimately they are focusing only on those crops or only limited crops which gives more profit to the farmer so for example if if i talk about you can say rice so in rice there are so many variety okay basmati rice is also there non basmati within non basmati also there are so many variety so companies used to produce only basmati rice seed which gives them more profit okay which gives them more profit so ultimately limited seed production by the companies this is the first thing that you have to remember second second thing that you have to remember is when it comes to low seed replacement ratio so there are there is a circulation of duplicate seeds also duplicate seeds so ultimately there is no mechanism no mechanism to distinguish between original and duplicate so this is another concern third third these certified seeds are costly 
and already we have talked about that farmer income is very less okay so these are costly or expensive okay and farmer income is very less fourth so first i told you so one student is asking what is the first point okay so first point is that companies are producing limited certified seeds fourth if you see the fourth concept or fourth point now the shelf life of these certified seeds is very life less so when i am saying shelf life so i am talking about its expiry so expiry of certified seeds is very less so you can understand in this way agar main dukandar hu jo certified seeds खरीद के लाके फार्मर को बेच रहा हूं तो मैं वही वाले सर्टिफाइड सीड्स लेके आऊंगा जिसकी डिमांड है अल्टीमेट अल्टीमेटली जो बन रहे हैं उनमें से सिर्फ उन्हीं को ही खरीदूंगा क्यों क्योंकि मुझे पता है कि इनकी शेल्फ लाइफ बहुत कम है और मैं उसको स्टॉक में नहीं रखूंगा कम कम लेके आऊंगा ओके क्यों क्योंकि छह महीने बाद वो एक्सपायर हो जाएंगे एंड इट इज यूजलेस फॉर मी एज वेल एज फॉर द फार्मर तो अल्टीमेटली अल्टीमेटली मेरा नुकसान है तो शेल्फ लाइफ फॉर सर्टिफाइड सीड्स इज वेरी लेस ओके सो अल्टीमेटली उसके बाद कंपनी भी वापस नहीं लेगी सो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू प्रोक्योर इट इन बल्क क्लियर एंड फिफ्थ रीजन इज इफ सपोज यूजिंग सर्टिफाइड सीड्स ओके देर इज अ क्रॉप फेलियर देन हु इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल इज इट कंपनी इज इट रिटेलर और इज इट फार्मर इट सेल्फ सो अल्टीमेटली देर इज नो अकाउंटेबिलिटी सो दीज आर दीज आर द फाइव drawbacks or you can say challenges that why india is having low seed replacement ratio so last to last year they asked about seed replacement ratio so it is expected that upsc used to repeat the topic but in some different manner so they will ask you they will ask you what is what is you can say why india is having low seed replacement ratio so they will give you some options 1 2 3 and you have to select the proper answer so it is expected that they can ask you a question in this topic okay with respect to seed replacement ratio now another thing no doubt that is important for your mains but i'll introduce it here itself <coughs> although it is a pt marathon class so another thing that they can ask you with respect to seed bill okay so already government has introduced seed bill 2019 so it has not been passed in the parliament okay the day it is passed in the parliament it become again become important for your both prelims and mains okay so your prelims is on 28th of may okay so almost you can say one month is left okay one month and few days so you can say some days are left so ultimately there is no parliament session so ultimately when you are appear for mains so possibility is that this bill get passed if this bill get passed okay so it becomes important for your mains and for next year prelims okay but right now you have to remember this seed replacement ratio okay and now you know that india needs to focus on you can say food security so that is why it is important that is why it is important clear so this is what you have to remember with respect to seeds clear clear now come to next you can say horticulture sector which is again important for your exam okay horticulture sector which is again important for your exam okay now when we talk about horticulture or you can say along with horticulture i would like to take animal husbandry also okay horticulture so along with horticulture i would like to take animal husbandry also so in order to first know what is horticulture horticulture is that branch of agriculture where we talk about fruits vegetable floriculture herbal or you can say herbal plantation okay as well as we talk about ornamental ornamental crops okay so aajkal kuch क्रॉप्स आपके ग्रो किए जाते हैं ओके फॉर 
you can say for decoration purpose okay so first of all you must know about it these things fruits vegetable floriculture okay ornamental these are the things that you have to know okay so ultimately if you see government has taken initiatives in this direction also so can anyone tell me what initiatives government has taken for horticulture not animal husbandry not animal husbandry first of all can anyone tell me that how much land area is utilized for horticulture so if in exam it comes this is the amount of area we utilize in utilize for horticulture sector so can anyone tell me how much land area is utilized for horticulture so upsc used to ask a trend although they are not interested in numbers but they used to ask trends anyone can tell me so although we have covered three things finance fertilizers and your seed which is very very important because if you use good quality seeds that is certified seeds then only whatever inputs you are using okay then only you can get a better result so seed is important so normally it is not mentioned in your syllabus but upsc has asked a question so you have to be ready with that okay now latest one that i expect they can ask you either why india has have low seed replacement ratio so they will give you in statement form so i hope now you can easily solve or they can ask you open source seed movement which is given by te michael a canadian person in 1999 now government is thinking to use that so ultimately in open source there is a voluntarily contribution by the farmers means they will give their information and you can say ultimately one library will be you can say maintained okay library will be maintained and it and whatever information is there that can be accessed by everyone means means farmer can get benefit from it okay so ultimately you can say farmer you can say farmer empowerment through open source okay plus when we talk about open source it will be digital one so help to reduce digital divide between farmer and farmer and urban area okay so ultimately this is the benefit of open source also clear so more your information is decentralized more it will be beneficial clear now some student are saying 8.5% of cropped area okay so ab dekhte hain kitna area hai to agar main thoda sa baat karu numbers ke upar although no need to remember numbers but some numbers you must know for your own interest now the total geographical area of india is 328 million hectare out of that around 50% of area is given for agriculture land so ultimately 50% of this is if you go is around 160 million hectare so you can say this is the area where we practice agriculture rest of the land is given for non agriculture purpose like residential commercial so we are not interested in that so this much area is given for agriculture okay now if you see if you see out of this right now currently what is the status that we are using 25 million hectare okay 25 million hectare of land for agriculture so one student has written 8.5 okay 8.5 so if you see 10% of this 10% of this is around 16% or you can say 16 million hectare okay 10% of this okay so ultimately it is more than 10 okay to agar aap dekhoge kitna area aata hai can you tell me c60 okay can you tell me c60 so aapne jo data uthaya 8.5 that was old data so right now right now it has been doubled okay सो so, अगर आप देखोगे 15-16 परसेंट के अराउंड जो आपका एरिया है 15 टू 16 परसेंट ऑफ द एरिया दैट इज गिवन फॉर एग्रीकल्चर हाँ आप जो 18 परसेंट एट परसेंट उठा रहे हो दैट 8.5 परसेंट ओके सो दैट इज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू 
दिस मच सी सेट का गेम है याद रखना यूपीएससी स्टेटमेंट में आपको कंफ्यूज कर सकती है वेन आई टॉक अबाउट एट परसेंट ऑफ टोटल जोग्राफिकल एरिया और एट टू नाइन परसेंट देन इट कम्स टू बी दिस वन बट वेन आई टॉक अबाउट फिफ्टीन टू सिक्सटीन परसेंट ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर लैंड सो आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस नंबर क्लियर सो प्लीज प्लीज रीड द स्टेटमेंट केयरफुली ओके रीड द स्टेटमेंट केयरफुली बिकॉज यहां पर आपकी गलतियां होती है आप आके बाहर सर्च करोगे अरे यार आठ परसेंट दे रखा है आठ परसेंट ऑफ टोटल जोग्राफिकल एरिया ओके बट नाउ इट हैज इंक्रीज क्लियर नाउ इट हैज इंक्रीज तो अगर आप देखोगे रफली ट्वेंटी फाइव मिलियन हेक्टेयर एरिया तो मैंने आपको नंबर भी दे दिए और परसेंटेज भी दे दिया क्लियर तो नंबर भी दे दिए और परसेंटेज भी दे दिए तो डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज इफ स्टेटमेंट इज एट टू नाइन परसेंट ऑफ टोटल जोग्राफिकल एरिया सो आई एम यूजिंग अब टोटल जोग्राफिकल एरिया सो टोटल जोग्राफिकल एरिया इज थ्री ट्वेंटी एट मिलियन हेक्टेयर क्लियर वेन आई एम यूजिंग अब फिफ्टीन टू सिक्सटीन परसेंट ऑफ एग्रीकल्चरल एरिया देन ऑल्सो इट इज करेक्ट बट अगर मैंने नंबर चेंज कर दिए कि मतलब वहां लिख दिया मैंने यहां लिख दिया एट टू नाइन परसेंट ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एरिया तो दैट इज रॉन्ग क्योंकि नॉर्मली आपकी नॉर्मली स्टूडेंट की क्या हैबिट होती है दे यूज टू मग अप दिस नंबर ओनली दे डोंट अंडरस्टैंड इट इज परसेंटेज ऑफ वॉट ओके इट इज परसेंटेज ऑफ वॉट सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दिस थिंग क्लियर क्लियर नो वेन आई टॉक अबाउट वेन आई टॉक अबाउट यू कैन से प्रोडक्शन ओके और यू कैन से If you see the maximum production is of vegetables and then fruits, okay? Vegetable and then fruits, okay? So if you see, okay, horticulture includes so many items, but in that we focus more on vegetable, okay? So veggie, vegetable and fruits has been given importance in horticulture, okay? Vegetable and fruits has been given importance in horticulture. So this is what you have to remember. Okay. Or if you see, in India, we are in second number. In this, in India, we are in second number after China in production of in production of fruits and vegetable. Clear. So this is what you have to remember. Clear. Now next, if you see state wise. Okay. Next, if you see state wise. अगर मैं स्टेट वाइज बात करूं उत्तर प्रदेश इज अ स्टेट वेयर वी हैव मैक्सिमम और यू कैन से मैक्सिमम फार्मर्स और मेजॉरिटी फार्मर्स आर कल्टीवेटिंग और प्रैक्टिसिंग हॉर्टिकल्चर सो सबसे ज्यादा हॉर्टिकल्चर प्रैक्टिस कौन सी स्टेट में होती है दैट इज उत्तर प्रदेश यूपी सो ये लिस्ट लिखते जाओ आप मेजर हॉर्टिकल्चर प्रोड्यूसिंग स्टेट आर नंबर वन यूपी ओके सो यूपी इज नॉन फॉर द कल्टिवेशन ऑफ वेजिटेबल्स नंबर टू वेस्ट बंगाल ओके सो सेकेंड नंबर पे वेस्ट बंगाल है नंबर थ्री मध्य प्रदेश नंबर थ्री मध्य प्रदेश सो रिमेंबर सेकेंड थर्ड इज मध्य प्रदेश नंबर फोर Maharashtra, because if you understood these states, you will understand when we'll do food processing. So your majority food processing areas or food processing industries are in this this states only. Okay, Mar Maharashtra. Next, Andhra Pradesh. नेक्स्ट इज आंध्र प्रदेश नेक्स्ट गुजरात गुजरात देन कम्स कर्नाटका कर्नाटका सो एटलीस्ट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर टॉप फाइव ओके सो इन टॉप फाइव यूपी वेस्ट बंगाल मध्य प्रदेश महाराष्ट्र एंड आंध्र प्रदेश ओके okay. नहीं याद हो रहे तो आप ऐसे भी याद रख सकते हो यूपी इज इन नॉर्थ वेस्ट बंगाल दिस साइड ऑफ द मैप मध्य प्रदेश सेंटर बिलो महाराष्ट्र एंड देन आंध्र प्रदेश सो इफ यू सी द डाइवर्सिटी इफ यू सी द डाइवर्सिटी सो दिस इज व्हाट यू विल ऑब्जर्व हेयर क्लियर यू विल ऑब्जर्व हेयर क्लियर सो अल्टीमेटली अगर भूल रहे हो तो नो नम नो प्रॉब्लम यू कैन रिमेंबर इन दिस वे ऑल्सो क्लियर ओके 
Okay, now some of my students are writing Cayman Island. Don't worry, I'll tell you about the history of Cayman Island also. Okay, okay. So ultimately, if you see state-wise, so this is a thing that you have to remember for your prelims. So I have told you about the way to remember. UP, West Bengal, then you can come to Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh. So you have to remember top 5. Okay, so UP is known for vegetables. Okay, UP is known for vegetables. That is that is what you have to remember. Clear? Now ultimately, ultimately you have to know about father of Indian horticulture also. That is M H Mari Gowda. Okay, M H Mari Gowda. Okay, M H Mari Gowda. That is known as father of indian horticulture father of agriculture swami nathan okay so ultimately i am not talking about that i am talking about father of indian horticulture okay although chances are very less but it is for your knowledge that you must know that father of indian horticulture is mh mari gowda okay so ultimately you have to remember this thing okay now ultimately sometimes upsc can ask you the terms okay like pomology pomology is you can say Cultivation of fruits and nuts. Okay. Pomology is cultivation of fruits and nuts. Okay. So, this is what you have to remember. Second, olericulture. Olericulture is cultivation of vegetables. Okay, so it is cultivation of vegetables that you have to remember. Next comes, you can say floriculture. Floriculture is, you know, cultivation of flowers. Okay, floriculture is cultivation of flowers that you must know. Clear? So this, these are the things that you have to remember with respect to horticulture. Okay, no doubt there is very famous scheme also. That is mission for integrated development of horticulture. Okay. Mission for integrated development of horticulture. So in this mission for integrated development of horticulture, there are basically five components. Number one is national horticulture mission. Okay. National horticulture mission. Then there is horticulture mission for Himalayan states as well as northeast. Okay. So number one is national horticulture mission. Then you can say horticulture mission for Himalayan states and northeast. Then there is national horticulture board also. Okay. Then coconut development board. Coconut development board. And automatically in last we have central institute of horticulture Nagaland. Okay. Central institute of horticulture Nagaland. Okay. So these are the five components under this that you have to remember. Okay. So ultimately again I am telling so mission for integrated development of horticulture midh okay midh under midh there are five components national horticulture mission okay then horticulture mission for northeast and himalayan states okay next national horticulture board Okay, National Horticulture Board. Okay, and Coconut Development Board, Coconut Development Board, Coconut Development Board. Coconut Development Board. And in last, we can talk about we can talk about Central Institute of Horticulture Nagaland. Central Institute of Horticulture Nagaland. Clear? So this is about you have to understand. Clear? So this is about you can say you can say horticulture sector. Now when it comes to animal husbandry, 
okay so in animal husbandry you have to know the revolutions okay know the revolutions so ultimately ultimately we'll see some revolutions some are for you can say animal husbandry for example red revolution so can anyone tell me what is red revolution so this is a test for you red revolution anyone anyone can tell me what is red revolution okay and red revolution is for yes meat correct okay animal revolution is for meat yes correct okay second if you see second if you see there is there is pink revolution there is pink revolution so can anyone tell me pink revolution is for what prelims is coming so i am expecting some answers from you i am expecting some answers from you please tell me please tell me no idea pink revolution pink revolution is for three items it is for onion cultivation it is for prawns it is for pharmaceuticals so please write no option will not be given don't worry <laughs> so it is what you have to remember yourself okay so already i told you that red revolution is for you can say meat pink revolution is for pink revolution is for three items onion production onion production prawns and pharmaceuticals okay next yellow revolution yellow revolution is for oil seeds and in oil seeds specially it is for mustard and sunflower okay so ultimately yellow revolution for oil seeds and in oil seeds it is for it is for you can say specially mustard and sunflower okay it is for mustard and sunflower that you have to remember okay next if you see next if you see black revolution black revolution is for petroleum product although we are covering holistically both for animal husbandry and others also okay black revolution black revolution is for petroleum products so you can say non agricultural item so this is agricultural item okay next next blue revolution is for fish so i think no need to tell this revolution blue revolution is for fish so you can expect the question okay next brown revolution so can anyone tell me what brown revolution is for what brown revolution is again for three items number 1 leather number 2 cocoa that is food item then n non conventional products okay so that is okay so this is what you have to remember brown revolution so brown revolution is for leather cocoa and non conventional product next golden fiber revolution so golden fiber revolution is for jute production jute production next golden revolution golden revolution is for golden revolution is for this is for jute production golden revolution is for horticulture so when i am talking about horticulture we are talking about fruits vegetables okay fruits vegetables as well as honey production 
ओके नाउ फॉर ग्रे रेवल्यूशन देर इज ग्रे रेवल्यूशन ऑल्सो सो ग्रे रेवल्यूशन इज फॉर फर्टिलाइजर्स सो ऑलरेडी वी हैव कवर्ड फर्टिलाइजर्स सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट ग्रे रेवल्यूशन इज फॉर फर्टिलाइजर्स क्लियर नेक्स्ट सिल्वर रेवल्यूशन दैट इज मोर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू सो यू कैन से यू हैव हर्ड अबाउट एग्स सो यू हैव सीन द एग एडवर्टीजमेंट ऑल्सो देयर ऑल्सो यू वी यूज सिल्वर रेवल्यूशन ओके सिल्वर रेवल्यूशन ओके सिल्वर फाइबर रेवल्यूशन इज फॉर कॉटन सो जस्ट लाइक गोल्ड फाइबर रेवल्यूशन इज फॉर जूट सिल्वर फाइबर रेवल्यूशन इज फॉर कॉटन ओके गोल्डन रेवल्यूशन इज फॉर हॉर्टिकल्चर एंड सिल्वर रेवल्यूशन इज फॉर एग्स ओके सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दीज थिंग्स ओके एंड देन वी हैव राउंड रेवल्यूशन सो राउंड रेवल्यूशन इज फॉर पोटैटो राउंड रेवल्यूशन इज फॉर पोटैटो ओके राउंड रेवल्यूशन इज फॉर पोटैटो सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टूड सो राउंड रेवल्यूशन इज फॉर पोटैटो सिल्वर रेवल्यूशन इज फॉर एग एग्स ओके सी वन स्टूडेंट इज राइटिंग जबरदस्ती के रेवल्यूशन दिस इज नॉट जबरदस्ती के रेवल्यूशन अवर पर्पज इज दैट यू मस्ट नो दैट दीज आर द रेवल्यूशन एंड दीज आर द थिंग्स सो आई दर नो डाउट इन प्रोलेम्स may be chances that they can ask you but you can use this in mains also okay so although we can we have to segregate our preparation also but ultimately there are something which are overlapping so you must know these things okay next it comes to last revolution that is white revolution that is for milk and there is green revolution also that you know so i am not covering that okay so white revolution is for for milk okay so these are the revolution that you have to remember clear clear <clears throat> now now next when i talk about crop and cropping pattern so already if you see we have to talk about organic farming also okay so i give you one minute those who are watching the video so i just want to know with respect to organic farming what you must know from exam point of view and can you tell me the very famous scheme for organic farming green revolution is for food grains can anyone tell me about organic farming what you know about organic farming एनीवन कृषि परंपरागत योजना सो आई वॉज एक्सपेक्टिंग दिस फ्रॉम यू ओके बट अल्टीमेटली अल्टीमेटली कैन यू टेल मी हाउ वी रिकॉग्नाइज ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग इन इंडिया कैन एनी वन टेल मी हाउ वी रिकॉग्नाइज ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग इन इंडिया ओके नाउ देर इज very one famous important scheme krishi unnati okay there is very one famous scheme krishi unnati yojana which is you can say umbrella scheme of government of india where government has taken some initiatives or you can say there are some components under this so first write that then i'll connect with you okay with some things okay so write krishi unnati if you see that there is one scheme so hindi word कृषि उन्नति स्कीम ओके ओ डबल एन ए आई टी कृषि उन्नति योजना सो इन दिस कृषि उन्नति योजना देर आर सम कॉम्पोनेंट लाइक नंबर वन कॉम्पोनेंट इज 
नंबर वन कंपोनेंट इज मिशन मिशन फॉर इंटीग्रेटेड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ हॉर्टिकल्चर सो वी हैव सीन दैट सो इन दैट देर आर फाइव कंपोनेंट्स सो फर्स्ट फर्स्ट यू राइट देन आई टेल यू व्हाट बेसिकली इट इज मिशन फॉर इंटीग्रेटेड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ हॉर्टिकल्चर सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट कॉम्पोनेंट ओके मिशन फॉर इंटीग्रेटेड सो यू कैन से दिस इज द कोर स्कीम ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया विच विल टेल यू वॉट बेसिकली गवर्नमेंट अप्रोच इज फॉर एग्रीकल्चर बिकॉज इफ यू अंडरस्टूड दीज कॉम्पोनेंट यू विल अंडरस्टैंड बेसिकली वॉट इंडियन गवर्नमेंट इज लुकिंग फॉर ओके सो नंबर वन इज मिशन फॉर इंटीग्रेटेड डेवलपमेंट सो वी हैव जस्ट टॉक अबाउट दैट की इन दैट देर आर फाइव कॉम्पोनेंट for horticulture number 1 number 2 number 2 national food security mission national food security mission national food security mission number 3 number 3 National Mission on Sustainable Agriculture. Sustainable Agriculture. So please, first I'll make right all the components. Then I'll explain the relationship. He basically, this is the umbrella scheme. Next, if you see. if you see integrated scheme on agriculture cooperation so now we are going to talk about all these things integrated integrated scheme on agriculture cooperation so here we are talking about cooperatives integrated scheme on agriculture cooperation next sub mission on sub mission on agricultural extension sub mission on agriculture extension if you understood this thing you will understand the base part okay sub mission on agriculture extension next national e governance plan national e governance plan next sub mission on seeds and planting material sub mission on seeds and planting material okay this is the seventh one okay so please write it so that i'll change the slide submission on seeds and planting next if you see next is national mission on national mission on agriculture mechanization so i'll write it here you can say mission on agriculture mechanization ओके एग्रीकल्चर मैकेनाइजेशन नेक्स्ट मिशन ऑन प्लांट प्रोटेक्शन एंड प्लांट क्वारंट और प्लान क्वारंटीन मिशन ऑन प्लांट प्रोटेक्शन एंड प्लान क्वारंटीन और क्वारंटाइन mission on plant protection and plant quarantine next integrated scheme of agricultural marketing integrated scheme of agriculture marketing and number 11 and number 11 you can say integrated scheme 
ऑन एग्रीकल्चर सेंसस कॉमा इकोनॉमिक्स एंड स्टैटिस्टिक्स इंटीग्रेटेड स्कीम ऑन एग्रीकल्चर सेंसस कॉमा इकोनॉमिक्स एंड स्टैटिस्टिक्स तो इफ यू सी इफ यू लिसन दिस सो इफ यू सी दिस इज द यू कैन से वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट स्कीम ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया दैट इज नोन बाय द कृषि उन्नति योजना सो प्लीज लिसन इट केयरफुली ओके सो प्लीज नोट डाउन आई एम जस्ट अगेन रिपीटिंग फॉर यू सो देर आर टोटल इलेवन मिशन अंडर कृषि उन्नति योजना सो नंबर वन इज इंटीग्रेटेड डेवलपमेंट फॉर हॉर्टिकल्चर सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट पार्ट ओके दिस इज द फर्स्ट पार्ट ओके सो नंबर वन इज इंटीग्रेटेड डेवलपमेंट फॉर हॉर्टिकल्चर नंबर टू नेशनल फूड सिक्योरिटी मिशन नंबर थ्री नेशनल मिशन ऑन सस्टेनेबल एग्रीकल्चर नंबर फोर इंटीग्रेटेड स्कीम ऑन एग्रीकल्चर कॉपरेशन नंबर फाइव सब मिशन ऑन एग्रीकल्चर एक्सटेंशन ओके सब मिशन ऑन एग्रीकल्चर एक्सटेंशन ओके नेक्स्ट नेशनल ई गवर्नेंस प्लान सेवंथ सब मिशन ऑन सीड एंड प्लांटिंग मटेरियल, एट्थ मिशन ऑन एग्रीकल्चर मैकेनाइजेशन नाइन्थ मिशन ऑन प्लांट प्रोटेक्शन एंड प्लान क्वारंटीन सो इट्स अबाउट वॉट वी हैव इन कोविड ऑल्सो क्वारंटीन सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट ऑल्सो टेंथ इंटीग्रेटेड स्कीम फॉर एग्रीकल्चरल मार्केटिंग एंड इलेवेंथ एग्रीकल्चर सेंसस इकोनॉमिक्स एंड स्टैटिस्टिक ओके सो प्लीज नोट इट देन आई टेल यू वाई वी आर स्टडिंग दीज थिंग्स और हाउ इट इज रेलिवेंट फॉर योर प्रेलिम्स सो आई रिलेट दीज थिंग्स विद यू ओके ऑल दो इन आउट ऑफ दीज सब मिशन सब सम मिशन आर इंपॉर्टेंट ओनली फॉर योर means only but some are very very important for your prelims okay so i'll tell you how it is important okay so we are going to talk about these one by one now <clears throat> already i told you already i told you in horticulture that you have seen that out of the total area so please listen it carefully okay so there may be possibility that i'll not write on board so you have to write yourself so some points we have covered and some additional point i'll give you okay now if you see out of the total agriculture area that is around 160 million hectare we have dedicated 25 million hectare land to horticulture okay now can anyone tell me why government of india is interested in horticulture the answer is very simple because when you shift from rice and wheat cultivation to horticulture it will help in increasing the income of the farmer number 1 so we have talked about in the beginning that this government has a task to increase the income of the farmer number 1 number 2 whatever crops right now we are growing today that is responsible for that is responsible for you can say environmental issues for example as i told you in the beginning rice rice cultivation is responsible for methane release of methane gas or you can say greenhouse gas similarly rice and sugar cane which we are growing today is responsible for cultivation of you can say responsible for over utilization of water so this is the second third second thing third rice and or you can say rice and wheat has over production so that is why that is why there is a need to shift from rice and wheat cultivation to horticulture so this is the reason that government is focusing on horticulture so ultimately it will provide solution for these things as well as as well as as well as it will benefit government if farmer shift from shift from you can say rice wheat cultivation to horticulture but when we are shifting from rice and wheat cultivation we have to make sure that production of rice and wheat should not get reduced so ultimately if you want to maintain the production we have to maintain the productivity of 
राइस एंड वीट एंड दैट कैन बी पॉसिबल इफ यू इन्वेस्ट इन साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी सो अल्टीमेटली अल्टीमेटली अब मैं ये नहीं कह रहा कि अगर सपोज कर लो यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड इन दिस वे अगर सपोज कर लो दिस इज माई एग्रीकल्चर लैंड एंड इन दिस एरिया फार्मर इज ग्रोइंग राइस वीट फॉर एग्जाम्पल एंड दिस एरिया इज गिवन फॉर यू कैन से हॉर्टिकल्चर सो इन हॉर्टिकल्चर यू हैव सीन दैट देर आर सो मेनी आइटम्स फ्रूट वेजिटेबल फ्लोरिकल्चर हर्बल प्लांट सो देर आर सो मेनी आइटम्स क्लियर सो इफ फार्मर इज इफ फार्मर इज शिफ्टिंग और यू कैन से वेन फार्मर इज यूजिंग बिकॉज लैंड इज अगेन वॉट लिमिटेड रिसोर्स सो इट इज नॉट लाइक दैट कि यू कैन you can reduce the land for rice and wheat okay so ultimately if you are doing this thing so in future there will be some other problem ki rice or wheat production has reduced so we want that whatever production we have right now we must sustain it plus plus the area for the cultivation of horticulture must be increased now that can be possible if you increase the productivity of rice and wheat seed variety okay so ultimately ultimately when i am reducing the area so for example this area has been given for now horticulture earlier this is the area now i have extended the area now this area has been given to rice and wheat so i want that in this area rice and wheat production must be what i have previous and that can be possible if i increase the productivity okay so ultimately second component talks about national food security mission so they want that we have to shift to horticulture also but we have to maintain balance so ultimately balance can be maintained if government of india is going to invest money on you can say scientific research of rice and wheat okay scientific research of rice and wheat that is why in newspaper you find that scientists are coming with new new variety of rice and wheat okay similarly sugarcane also where less water is needed so ultimately they have asked a question on sugarcane variety also which need less water okay so ultimately they ask question on this so you need to have a balance between this so land is limited if you are increasing horticulture you have to ensure that whatever land get reduced for rice and wheat from that reduced land you must have production what you have earlier and that can be possible if you have productivity so i hope this concept is clear to you now now as i told you that cultivation of rice and wheat is responsible for so many challenges like they are responsible for greenhouse gas emission if you see if you see here farmers are using more and more fertilizers so use of fertilizer is also a challenge so we have to because fertilizer is responsible for pollution that is ground water pollution or contamination of ground water as well as you have studied about in in, in your environment eutrophication so that is responsible for eutrophication also clear so ultimately ultimately we need sustainable agriculture practices okay so right now upsc ask a question on integrated farming so in integrated farming you use resources in such a way that that there should be no wastage so you can say that right now we are talking about a concept of circular economy okay circular economy so we want to introduce circular economy where we focused on recycle reuse and reduce okay so you can say r we talk about multiple r's so we are we want to reduce it ultimately ultimately so i'll again come back to it okay so ultimately here in national mission on sustainable agriculture we used to talk about we used to talk about natural farming and organic farming we talk about natural farming and organic farming okay so when we talk about natural farming and organic farming so i'll 
now explain this natural farming and organic farming then i will come to you can say agriculture cooperation so here in fourth point we will talk about cooperatives okay so when i talk about natural farming and organic farming okay so in your first of all you must tell me what is the difference between natural farming and organic farming so in natural farming there is no use of input so ultimately without using input plant is cultivated or grown in a natural condition without any input so ultimately natural farming input cost is zero or very less whereas in organic farming you are using input but those input inputs are like bio fertilizers bio compost bio pesticides organic seeds okay so you are using input so first of all you have to understood this difference now in your environment you have talked about its benefit also okay its benefit also yes or no you have talked about its benefit also now i am interested here in organic farming with respect to your economy now in your economy you talked about krishi paramparagat yojana okay so ultimately when you go in detail there are other two schemes okay one is participatory guarantee system or scheme and another is national program on organic product so can anyone tell me what it is participatory guarantee scheme and number 2 is national program on organic products so we have two schemes so you have to think beyond krishi paramparagat okay so ultimately question can be framed from here only okay now when i talk about participatory guarantee scheme this scheme is introduced by ministry of agriculture ministry of agriculture and farmer welfare this scheme is introduced by ministry of commerce and industry ministry of commerce and industry so when you go to market to purchase organic products so you will find that on that packaging either pgs will be written either pgs will be written participatory guarantee scheme either pgs will be written or or npop will be written so there is a difference either pgs will be written or npop will be written so pgs is a scheme of agriculture ministry or npop is a scheme of scheme of ministry of commerce okay so there is a jaivik logo okay so jaivik means organic and in organic there are two products either it is pgs or npop so first of all we will understand what is the difference then only you will understand which is which is more organic as compared to this npop is organic or pgs so if i talk about usa usa if they have to purchase product from india organic product they will purchase only that product which is having the logo of npop they never purchase pgs okay now you are going to understand why okay now you are going to understand why clear okay now if suppose you are a farmer so understand the procedure if suppose you are farmer and you are and you are thinking of practicing organic farming so what you have to do so whatever land you have you have to register your land with commerce ministry so when i am saying registering your land with commerce ministry it means 
यू हैव टू लेफ्ट योर लैंड वेकेंट तो कुछ साल के लिए आपको अपना लैंड खाली छोड़ना पड़ेगा फार्मिंग पर्पज के लिए ओके okay, मतलब फॉर ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग के लिए खाली छोड़ना पड़ेगा मीन्स यू कैन नॉट ग्रो एनी थिंग ऑन दैट ओके नाउ वाई यू आर लिविंग इट फॉर वाई यू आर लिविंग इट वेकेंट बिकॉज जो भी इनऑर्गेनिक प्रॉपर्टीज है सॉइल की वो ऑर्गेनिक में कन्वर्ट हो जाएंगी तो इसलिए आपको लैंड को वेकेंट छोड़ना पड़ता है कुछ साल के लिए ओके okay? कुछ साल के लिए मतलब मिनिमम थ्री ईयर मैक्सिमम कैन बी एनी ईयर टिल द टाइम योर सॉयल क्वालिटी बिकम्स ऑर्गेनिक इन नेचर मीन्स देयर शुड बी नो ट्रेस ऑफ केमिकल फर्टिलाइजर इन दैट सॉइल वंस इट इज कन्वर्टेड देन ओनली देन ओनली यू आर अलाउड टू प्रैक्टिस ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग अगेन विद द परमिशन ऑफ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड नाउ यू आर प्रैक्टिसिंग ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग यू हैव टू एंश्योर दैट यू आर यूजिंग ऑर्गेनिक इनपुट्स ऑर्गेनिक इनपुट्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ बायो पेस्टिसाइड बायो फर्टिलाइजर्स क्लियर सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर विद रिस्पेक्ट टू ऑर्गेनिक इनपुट्स क्लियर नाउ वन स्टूडेंट इज आस्किंग वॉट इज एनपीओपी एनपीओपी इज नेशनल प्रोग्राम ऑन ऑर्गेनिक प्रोडक्ट ओके तो आपको नॉर्मली बुक्स में नहीं मिलती ये चीजें बट इस पर क्वेश्चन रहते हैं आपके ओके सो आप ये देखोगे ऑर्गेनिक इनपुट्स अगर आप दे रहे हो तभी आप उसके बाद इस प्रोडक्ट से इस फील्ड से जो भी प्रोडक्ट आ रहा है दैट विल बी रिकॉग्नाइज एज एनपीओपी दैट इज नेशनल प्रोग्राम ऑन ऑर्गेनिक प्रोडक्ट क्लियर सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टोड सो अल्टीमेटली यू कैन से दैट देर इज अ थर्ड पार्टी इंस्पेक्शन एवरी टाइम फर्स्ट यू हैव टू लीव द लैंड वैकेंट एंड देन योर इनपुट मस्ट बी ऑर्गेनिक इन नेचर ओके बट दिस स्कीम इज ऑफ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉमर्स सो यू कैन से थर्ड पार्टी असेसमेंट इज देयर एवरी टाइम एंड दैट थर्ड पार्टी इज That third party is, you can say, Ministry of Commerce. Ministry of Commerce. So they used to conduct a regular inspection. The day they find any inorganic product is used, means fertilizers are used. So they will cancel your license. They will cancel your license. Now come to PGS. Now in PGS, if suppose there is a group, there is a village. and in village if suppose there are 20 farmers now out of that 20 farmers majority farmers means some 14 15 farmers decided that from now onwards we will use you can say no chemical fertilizers so we will use only bio fertilizers bio pesticides so ministry of agriculture used to declare that area as pgs participatory guarantee scheme okay as pgs now if you see there you are converting your soil into organic by leaving your land vacant but here there is no such mechanism so if suppose any state or any village decided that from now onwards we will not use chemicals or we will use only organic products as input so government will declare or ministry of agriculture will declare that area as pgs so this is what you have to remember this is what you have to remember so there is no third party assessment so ultimately if you see sikkim is declared as the first state sikkim is declared as the first state to have you can say organic or you can say organic state it is not as per npop it is as per pgs so there is a difference so whatever product is coming from sikkim that will have a trademark of pgs on the packet but whatever is coming you can say in this way that will have a trademark of npop so if you see the product of npop is organic in nature as compared to pgs so in pgs still there will be some traces of chemicals so that is why us does not recognized i hope it is clear to everyone i hope this concept is clear to everyone okay so ultimately ultimately you can expect a question in prelims with respect to npop and pgs because if you see government is again focusing on organic farming okay so us used to purchase npop okay us used to purchase only those products which are having you can say recognition of npop now you understood why 
clear clear so this is you will not find in any booklet any magazines nothing okay so i hope it is clear to you clear <coughs> clear so again come back to krishi onnati yojana so again now you understood the elements of first second and third okay now ultimately uh, sometimes you find in questions with respect to conservation agriculture integrated farming so always remember they are the sustainable method and in option whatever sustainable options are there you have to mark it correct clear so if i am talking about conservation agriculture also so there i am using sustainable practices okay so my process is like that it is not harming any health and environment so ultimately this is a thing okay next agriculture cooperation okay so if i talk about the fourth pillar agriculture cooperation so you know that government right now is emphasizing on cooperative farming okay government right now emphasizing on cooperative farming now ultimately first you have to understood what is cooperative farming now when i talk about cooperative farming so ultimately if you see in in the morning i tell you that is around 12 uh, around 12 or you can say in the beginning of the lecture i told you that we have number of farmers okay or types of farmers based on land holding yes or no if you see that 82 to 86% of our farmer although when you search on google you find some different different number some says 82 83 84 so i am taking one range so you can say more than 80% or less than 90% so if you see around this much number of farmers are small and marginal in nature so ultimately can i say that that around 82 to 86% of the farmers are small and marginal so ultimately ultimately when you are practicing agriculture on a small land so there is no economics of scale so economics of scale is nothing but input output input output so ultimately my input will be more my output will be less when i am practicing agriculture on a small scale so agar mere ko farming karni hai aur mere paas chhota land hai to mere ko resource to utne hi khareedne bade land ke liye bhi khareedunga chote land ke liye bhi khareedunga तो बड़े लैंड के लिए भी मेरे को ट्रैक्टर खरीदना है छोटे लैंड के लिए भी खरीदना है तो अल्टीमेटली अगर मैं बड़े लैंड के लिए खरीदता हूं तो मेरे को कॉस्ट कम पड़ती है इनपुट कॉस्ट अदरवाइज ज्यादा पड़ती है तो अल्टीमेटली इट्स अ मैथमेटिक्स ओके सो यहां पर अगर आप देखोगे इनपुट आउटपुट तो दैट इज नॉट पॉसिबल यू कैन से इज इन स्मॉल लैंड इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल ओके सो अल्टीमेटली इकोनॉमिक्स ऑफ स्केल इज नॉट देर सेकेंड सेकेंड इट मीन्स इफ दिस इज अनारियो i cannot ensure crop diversification because to practice horticulture you need large land you need large land okay so ultimately then only you will have more income okay so ultimately because there in horticulture you are using technology now government is focusing on cooperative so if you see in last few years government has taken so many steps with respect to cooperatives although cooperative is not a new concept cooperative is a concept which started in your ancient or you can say in modern history that is british time period clear so ultimately you can again expect a question from cooperatives but i'll tell you with respect to what initiative government has taken so if you see government has added part 9b part 9b in the constitution of india that is immediately after part 9a which talks about local government and that is municipality okay that is through which amendment can anyone tell me which constitutional amendment part 9b please tell me which constitutional amendment no idea yes it is 97th constitutional amendment yes it is 97th constitutional amendment okay so this is what you have to remember 
okay this is what you have to remember next that is 97th constitutional amendment okay so government has introduced with 97th constitutional amendment apart from this it has been added in fundamental right also that is article 19 okay it has been added in fundamental right also also it has been added in dpsp and that is article 43b okay so it means this is your first question with respect to cooperatives so if they ask you what initiatives has been taken with respect to cooperatives in india so you have to tell that government of that recently or you can say government has made constitutional amendments by adding cooperative in these three areas that is dpsp fundamental right and part 9b of the constitution clear so this is what you have to remember yes article 19 sub clause 1 and under that sub clause c okay so you can say this thing clear so this is the first thing that you have to remember with respect to cooperatives second government has also framed government has also framed you can say ministry of cooperative or set up ministry of cooperative in 2000 19 and currently amit shah is the minister of this you can say ministry ministry of cooperative in 2019 so you have to remember this also number 3 number 3 you have to remember that government has also formed national cooperative policy okay national cooperative policy so this is the next thing that you have to remember clear this is the next thing that you have to remember clear now if you go back to history so in history if you see although that is a part of history but again it is relevant either it can be asked in economy or history so if you see the first cooperative that was formed in history is or you can say 1904 okay or you can say when we have indian famine commission in 1901 so government set up one committee that is under the leadership of sir edward law okay and he recommended the formation of formation of you can say cooperative society in 1904 so this is what you have to remember so first time that is you can say on the recommendation of indian famine commission so again it is a factual information indian famine commission that was set up in 1901 under the leadership of sir edward law and he recommended the formation of cooperative and first cooperative was set up in 1904 that you have to remember clear clear so can you tell me the committees related to cooperatives can you tell me the committees related to cooperatives in india now again cooperative is important topic because if you see frequently this topic comes in newspaper okay so can anyone tell me the cooperatives related to or committees related to cooperatives in india anyone okay so if you see the first committee that government set up immediately after independence so that is known as all india rural credit survey committee report okay so after independence so government has set up the first committee all india rural credit survey committee report 1954 so please write it Whew. 1954 okay so this is the first they have set up number 2 number 2 they have set up chaudhry bram bram prakash committee 
इन 1990 चौधरी भ्रम प्रकाश कमेटी इन 1990 चौधरी भ्रम प्रकाश कमेटी इन 1990 नेक्स्ट दे सेट अप मिर्धा कमेटी एटलीस्ट इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू रिमेंबर द ईयर नो इश्यू बट रिमेंबर द नेम ऑफ द कमेटी दे कैन आस्क यू विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कमेटीज आर रिलेटेड टू कॉपरेटिव ओके सो अल्टीमेटली कॉपरेटिव आर नाउ अट इज इंपॉर्टेंट नेक्स्ट मिर्धा कमेटी इन 1996, मिर्धा कमेटी इन नाइनटीन नेक्स्ट दे हैव सेट अप जगदीश कपूर कमेटी जगदीश कपूर कमेटी इन 2000, थाउजेंड ओके इन टू थाउजेंड नेक्स्ट दे हैव सेट अप विखे पाटिल ओके so it is v i k v i k h e vikhe patil so maybe i am wrong in pronunciation but you can vikhe v i k h e vikhe patil vikhe patil committee okay so there is vikhe patil committee in 2001 and last and last there is वी एस व्यास कमेटी इन टू थाउजेंड फोर ओके प्लस अगर आप देखोगे रिसेंटली दे हैव सेटअप कमेटी विद रिस्पेक्ट टू अर्बन कॉपरेटिव ऑल्सो ओके दैट इज अर्बन कॉपरेटिव बैंक दैट इज एन एस विश्वनाथन कमेटी और एन एस विश्वनाथन कमेटी एन एस विश्वनाथन कमेटी इन यू कैन से टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन ओके सो दिस इज द लेटेस्ट कमेटी बट इट इज ओनली विद रिस्पेक्ट टू यू कैन से कॉपरेटिव अर्बन कॉपरेटिव बैंक okay so you have to remember the name of the committees so i have given you some important committees so you have to remember these names okay so some students are asking kaun sa topic chal raha hai to aap on off hote rehte ho aate ho jaate ho aate ho jaate ho so just tell you we are talking about cooperative okay so within next 20 30 minutes we'll finish our agriculture topic and then we'll move to industry okay now this is about agriculture cooperatives so this is important again for your exam next is submission on agriculture extension so although this is not important but i'll tell you what it is now you know that research and development in agriculture okay so that is called as agriculture extension okay next is national e governance plan so although this topic is again important for your you can say means so there you have studied about it applications or e technology in the aid of farmers so we talk about that in e governance plan clear next submission on seed and planting material so already we have talked about seeds okay already we have talked about seeds okay so we are focusing on that okay so seeds certified seeds farmer produce seeds seed replacement ratio okay why india has low seed replacement ratio okay we have talked about plant variety act open source seed movement so these are the things we have talked about agriculture mechanization is again important for your means but again i just want to tell you what is the status of india with respect to mechanization again in india if you see around you can say less than 25% of the farmers are using machines and whatever machines they are using they are mostly using tractors that is why indian agriculture mechanization is also known as tractorization okay tractorization so ultimately when you come to use of machines we have to use machines at various intervals clear next is mission on plant protection and plant plant quarantine 
अब यहां पर बेसिकली हम बात करते हैं प्लांट को बचाने की ओके प्लांट वेराइटी एक्ट जो आपको मैंने बताया तभी वो चीज बारी बारी न्यूज में आती है और अगर आप देखोगे इसका कनेक्शन एक इन्वायरमेंट से भी है बिकॉज इन एनवायरमेंट यू टॉक अबाउट फॉरेस्ट एक्ट फॉरेस्ट एक्ट एंड प्लांट वेराइटी एक्ट दे आर सीन टूगेदर ओके दे आर सीन टूगेदर क्लियर सो उसका रिलीवेंस आप बेटर वहीं पे समझोगे क्योंकि फॉरेस्ट के अंदर क्या है ट्राइबल कम्युनिटी यूज टू लिव एंड दे हैव सो मेनी दे आर यूनिक मेथड ऑफ प्रैक्टिसिंग एग्रीकल्चर विच इज नोन टू डेम बट अगर मुझे पता लग जाए मैं उसको कमर्शियलाइज करूंगा ओके तो तो अल्टीमेटली ट्राइबल आर अन अवेयर ऑफ दिस तो हमें ये गवर्नमेंट की रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है उनको प्रोटेक्ट करना क्लियर सो दैट इज वाई यू सी दिस प्लांट वेराइटी एक्ट इन कनेक्शन विद यू कैन से ट्राइबल ड्वेलिंग्स और यू कैन से फॉरेस्ट राइट एक्ट क्लियर Now integrated scheme on agriculture marketing. Now this is important. Okay, this is important. Clear? Okay. Some are saying, break. see, break भी मिलेगा आपको क्यों tension ले रहे हो? Okay. साथ में पढ़ते रहो और enjoy भी करते रहो यार. Okay. पढ़ाई के साथ enjoy करो मतलब साथ में tea, coffee, whatever you want to enjoy, you can have. Okay. खाना वाना भी साथ में खाते रहो. Online तो देख रहे यार. I have a limitation कि मैं साथ में खाना नहीं खा सकता क्लियर सो आप लोग तो खा सकते हो ना क्लियर तो अल्टीमेटली स्क्रीन को ऑन रखो ओके और पढ़ते रहो सुनते भी रहो साथ साथ लिखते भी रहो ओके अगर कोई सपोर्ट करने वाला है तो खाना भी खिला देगा आपको ठीक है क्लियर बट मेरे पास वो ऑप्शन नहीं है अभी ओके इंटीग्रेटेड स्कीम फॉर एग्रीकल्चर मार्केटिंग ओके तो अगर मैं मार्केटिंग की बात कर रहा हूं ये इंपॉर्टेंट है अब यहां पर हम बात करते हैं जब भी वी टॉक अबाउट एग्रीकल्चर मार्केटिंग सो नो डाउट इन योर माइंड कम्स एपीएमसी और मंडीज ये सो नो बट हेयर इफ यू सी वेन वी टॉक अबाउट एग्रीकल्चर मार्केटिंग नाउ वट एवर क्रॉप फार्मर हैज प्रोड्यूस्ड वट एवर क्रॉप फार्मर हैज प्रोड्यूस्ड नो डाउट नो डाउट फार्मर हैज टू सेल इन द मार्केट बट देर इज अ मैकेनिज्म so you know that ki there are first of all local markets that is known as that is known as you can say they are unregulated second farmer has the second option to sell in apmc so you know that mandis are there and they are regulated by government third they can sell in contract farming so ultimately this topic is for your means and fourth farmer can sell its produce directly to fci okay directly to fci to agar aap yahan par dekhoge okay tab agar aap yahan par dekhoge to farmer ko product sell karne ke liye char options hai ओके सो फार्मर हैज फोर ऑप्शंस टू सेल इट्स प्रोडक्ट नंबर वन इज लोकल मार्केट नंबर टू एपीएमसी नंबर थ्री कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फार्मिंग एंड नंबर फोर एफसीआई ओके अगर मैं बात करता हूं लोकल मार्केट की लोकल मार्केट इज अनरेगुलेटेड इन इंडिया ओके सो लोकल मार्केट इज अनरेगुलेटेड इन इंडिया ओके तो अगर आप देखोगे लोकल मार्केट आपकी अनरेगुलेटेड है कहां पर इंडिया के अंदर नंबर वन नंबर टू तो फार्मर को यहां पर एमएसपी नहीं मिलता मे और मे नॉट ओके मे और मे नॉट नंबर वन नंबर टू अगर मैं यहां पर बात करूं मंडी तो यहां पर देर इज अंसेस दैट दे विल गेट एमएसपी बट अगेन इफ सपोज आई एम अ ट्रेडर इन मंडी एंड आई एम नॉट गिविंग एमएसपी सो इट इज नॉट बाइंडिंग ऑन मी टू गिव यू एमएसपी ओके सो यहां पर भी आपका एमएसपी बाइंडिंग नहीं है क्लियर तो अल्टीमेटली बट यहां पर एक उम्मीद है एमएसपी मिल जाएगा क्लियर बट बट आप फोर्स नहीं कर सकते कि ट्रेडर आपको एमएसपी ही देगा ओके सो दे कैन गेट लेस देन दैट ऑल्सो ओके ओके दे कैन गेट लेस देन दैट ऑल्सो क्लियर नेक्स्ट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फार्मिंग नाउ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फार्मिंग इज बिटवीन फार्मर एंड प्राइवेट कंपनी इन एडवांस बिफोर ग्रोइंग द क्रॉप ओके सो यहां पर आपके पहले से डिसाइड होता है अब एक आगे एफसीआई यहां पर आपको एमएसपी मिलेगा दैट इज फॉर श्योर ओके एमएसपी आपको मिलेगा अब एमएसपी है क्या एमएसपी इज बेसिकली अ मिनिमम सपोर्ट प्राइस दैट इज दैट इज बिफोर क्रॉपिंग सीजन 
government of india release a list of prices with respect to certain agriculture commodities where where they decide that this should be the minimum price that farmer must get okay must get ab isko decide kon karta hai msp ko msp ko decide karti hai aapki cabinet committee on economic affair okay msp ko decide kon karta hai cabinet committee on economic affair so which is headed by prime minister of india okay so prime minister is the head of or you can say is, is going to chair the cabinet committee on economic affairs ultimately cabinet committee of economic affairs ko kon recommend karta hai cacp cacp that is commission on agriculture cost and price ab jab ye recommend karte hai to they take into consideration certain factors number 1 they take into consideration the cost of production okay cost of production which they represent which they represent a2 number 2 family labor so ultimately you know that or you can say cost for the family labor so ultimately you know that farmer when they are practicing agriculture so no doubt along with along with their services they used to take the service of labor also but in in practical they take the service of the family itself okay so when i am saying they take the service of the family itself it means it means it means they are not paying any money to the family but here but here you will see that family labor is included by cacp now some student are writing that it is it is represented by or you can say prices are decided by cacp no prices cacp only recommend it finally it is accepted by cabinet committee on economic affairs so please remember this thing okay now family labor is also taken into consideration and last is whatever land machines that you are using for that there is some interest also if suppose you have not invested in that so they have take that into factor okay so ultimately that is represented by c2 so when you take some some total so they recommend prices and ultimately they have given it to you can say ccea and cca will take the final call okay so in this way they are working clear so you have to remember this thing now no doubt i am not going to tell you the crops so there are certain crops for which msp is decided like paddy okay raw cotton raw jute oil seeds so there are so many oil seeds so you can easily get from any sources okay so ultimately it is decided for those things so you have to understand this thing now once prices are given by the government of india before every cropping season to ek tarah se saal ke andar do bar announce karti hai kharif season se pehle aur rabi season se pehle so this is what you have to remember that is before kharif season and rabi season they used to decide clear so this is what you have to remember in in you can say with respect to msp now once it is decided farmer used to sell this in nearby mandi x or in the hope that at least he will get msp but if any trader is not giving msp so you cannot penalize that trader okay so ultimately ultimately there is no legal backing for msp so this is what the second thing that you have to remember clear now now when it comes to apmc you have to remember these things that those who are taking part in apmc as a trader they have to take license okay and license is given by district collector or district office or dc office or some places we call it district magistrate so ultimately tomorrow you get selected and i want to become a trader okay so i have to take a license from you okay so ultimately district collector office has been given the responsibility to give license to the trader next if you see next if you see in every district there must be at least at least one mandi or apmc at least if the size of the district is big so it has more than one mandi okay otherwise one okay so ultimately this apmc is a state act so central government has given a model act okay third central government wants that in every mandi there should be a proper storage facility or you can say warehouse facility this is a third feature 
and fourth there must be a testing lab testing lab means in order to check the quality of your product clear so there must be testing lab clear clear so one student is asking sir explain last point see uh, last point basically what cacp used to do like when i spend money on land so ultimately if suppose i have not spent so i am getting some rate of interest so they take into consideration that point clear <laughs> clear so this is what you have to understood okay so these are the things these are the things that you have to remember now we will come to fci okay <clears throat> okay we will come to fci but before fci if you see if you see this is what is the condition for mondays but in reality but in reality when farmer used to go into the mandi jab farmer mandi mein jayega to usko msp nahi milta and he become you can say upset or he became upset so ultimately he has no choice he has to sell at less price so humne baat kari thi distress distress sale ki isko kehte hain distress sale और उसके लिए केसीसी आपका एक क्या दे रहा है आपको बेनिफिट दे रहा है सो दिस इज व्हाट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर क्लियर नेक्स्ट अगर आप बात करो नेक्स्ट अगर आप बात करो यहां पर कि अगर अब इस डिस्ट्रेस सेल को प्रोटेक्ट करने के लिए गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ने 2016 में एक प्रोजेक्ट लेके आई ई नैम का तो ई नैम में हम क्या कर रहे हैं जितनी भी मंडीज है पूरे इंडिया में उनको एक सिंगल प्लेटफॉर्म के ऊपर इंटीग्रेट कर रहे अब इंटीग्रेट करने का पर्पज क्या है कि अगर सपोज कर लो आप मोबाइल शॉप पे जाते हो फिजिकली तो जब आप कोई मोबाइल पसंद करते हो तो वो आपको प्राइस बताता है तो आप इमीडिएटली क्या करते हो अपने ऑनलाइन चेक करते हो सो so, यहां पर भी यही चीज है कि अगर फार्मर किसी को अपना प्रोडक्ट सेल कर रहा है ओके okay, और वो प्राइस अच्छा नहीं दे रहा तो ही कैन चेक कि यही सेम प्रोडक्ट का प्राइस किसी और जगह पे कितने का मिल रहा है तो दिस इज वॉट ई नैम सो इट विल हेल्प टू इंक्रीज द बार्गेनिंग पावर ऑफ फार्मर नंबर वन नंबर टू अगर आप देखोगे अगर ऐसा हो रहा है तो वॉट विल हैपन फर्दर तो अगर आप देखोगे अभी हर मंडी के लिए मुझे अलग अलग लाइसेंस लेना पड़ता था एज अ ट्रेडर तो अगर मेरे एरिया में मेरा डिस्ट्रिक्ट बड़ा है और दो मंडीज हैं तो मेरे को लाइसेंस अलग से लेना पड़ेगा अब यहां पर यूनिफाइड लाइसेंस हो जाएगा ठीक है नंबर थ्री अगर आप जब मंडीज के ड्रॉबैक पढ़ोगे तो वहां पर मिडल का एक कॉन्सेप्ट है कि मिडल इमर्ज होता है तो अगर ई के अंदर वो मिडल भी नहीं होगा तो दिस इज द बेस्ट थिंग क्लियर तो यहां पर कई सारे बेनिफिट्स हैं ई नैम के तो गवर्नमेंट अभी इसके ऊपर काम कर रही है तो गवर्नमेंट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट को आईटी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के लिए ग्रांट्स भी दे रही है उनको इंसेंटिवाइज भी कर रही है कि आप ई नैम का पार्ट बनो क्लियर क्लियर सो दिस इज अबाउट योर ई नैम नाउ कमिंग टू नेक्स्ट एफ सी आई सो एज आई टोल्ड यू इन एफ सी आई देर आर टू थिंग्स so can anyone tell me what is the objective of fci okay can anyone tell me what is the objective of fci please tell me but obviously interstate so one student is writing that sir enam se interstate bhi bech sakte hai yes to agar dekhoge pehli sale hui thi telangana aur andhra pradesh ke beech mein interstate sale hui thi ओके, वॉट इज द रोल ऑफ एफ सी आई तो आज देखा जाए आपको कितना पता है एफ सी आई के बारे में ओके एफ सी आई के दो काम है एफ सी आई के दो काम है दो काम क्या है एक तो उनको फूड ग्रीन को परचेज करना होता है ओके okay? एक तो उनको फूड ग्रीन को परचेज करना होता है ओके okay? किस लिए कि अगर कल को मार्केट के अंदर शॉर्टेज हो जाए अगर कल को फूड ग्रेन की शॉर्टेज मार्केट के अंदर हो जाए ओके okay, तो अल्टीमेटली अल्टीमेटली जो भी शॉर्टेज हुआ है उसको हम उस वैक्यूम को हम फुलफिल करेंगे अपने स्टॉक से मार्केट में रिलीज करके क्लियर दूसरा गवर्नमेंट की कई सारी स्कीम्स हैं जिसके अंदर वो फूड ग्रेन पुअर पर्सन को देते हैं लाइक like पीडीएस तो उन स्कीम्स के लिए भी फूड ग्रेन का स्टॉक मेंटेन करना होता है क्लियर तो अल्टीमेटली यहां पर यह बात होती है तो इसके दो काम है पहला पहला मार्केट स्टेबलाइजेशन के लिए फूड ग्रेन का स्टॉक मेंटेन करता है दूसरा पॉवर्टी रिलेटेड और पुअर रिलेटेड स्कीम्स लाइक पीडीएस जिसके अंदर गवर्नमेंट फूड ग्रेन दे रही है 
ओके फूड ग्रेन्स दे रही है तो ये दो काम करता है तो आप नहीं समझ आया तो आप इसको ऐसे भी समझ सकते हो कि जब भी अगर मैं पूरा आपको होलिस्टिक व्यू दिखाऊं तो अगर जैसे अगर ये फार्मर है सो देर इज अ फार्मर हु इज कल्टिवेटिंग सम क्रॉप सो यूजिंग यूजिंग वेरियस इनपुट्स लाइक लाइक लैंड फर्टिलाइजर सीड्स ओके सो मेनी इनपुट्स वॉटर सो दे हैव कल्टिवेटेड सम प्रोडक्ट ओके क्रॉप्स नाउ अल्टीमेटली दिस क्रॉप हैज टू बी सेल सो वेन इट कम्स टू सेलिंग सो फार्मर आइदर कैन सेल इट डायरेक्टली इन रूरल मार्केट और रूरल एरिया और यू कैन सेल लोकल एरिया सो पास वाले किसी शहर में जाके खुद ही बेच आया सो so, मंडी जाने की जरूरत ही नहीं है ओके सो लोकल एरिया में सेल कर दिया नंबर वन नंबर टू ही कैन गो टू मंडी विच आर रेगुलेटेड बाय एपीएमसी सो देयर वी हैव सीन दैट व्हाट आर द फीचर्स नंबर थ्री नंबर थ्री अगर मैं मंडी से भी आगे जाऊं तो अगर देखोगे आप तो हम यहां पर भी कर सकते हैं कि मंडी के बाद अगर मैं देखूं तो हम कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फार्मिंग पे भी जाते हैं तो फार्मर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फार्मिंग में जा सकते हैं एंड नंबर फोर एफ सी आई तो अल्टीमेटली चाहे रूरल एरिया से हो चाहे लोकल एरिया से हो चाहे मंडी से हो तो आपका ये प्रोडक्ट मार्केट में जा रहा है यहां से भी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फार्मिंग से भी मार्केट में भी जा रहा है जहां पर पीपल लाइक यू एंड मी यूज टू परचेज ओके पीपल लाइक यू एंड मी यूज टू परचेज बट समाइम्स वॉट हैपन देर आर सम पीपल इन आर इकोनॉमी दो कैनॉट एफोर्ड दिस मार्केट ओके और यू कैन से प्राइस एट द मार्केट फॉर एग्जाम्पल पुअर पर्सन सो फॉर देम गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया हैज लॉन्च यू कैन से हैज द रोल ऑफ एफ सी आई ओके सो अब यहां पर एफ सी आई को दो काम दिए गए कि यू मेंटेन स्टॉक फॉर टू पर्पज नंबर वन अगर मार्केट में कभी शॉर्टेज हुआ किसी क्रॉप का ओके okay, अगर मार्केट में किसी क्रॉप का शॉर्टेज हुआ ओके okay, तो आपसे हम स्टॉक लेंगे और मार्केट में रिलीज करेंगे सिमिलरली अगर पुअर पर्सन को हमें जो फूड ग्रेन चलाने के लिए स्कीम चाहिए तो भी हम यहां से यहां लेके जाएंगे क्लियर तो अल्टीमेटली एफसीआई के दो रोल है आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू यू क्लियर टू यू तो अल्टीमेटली अगर आपके सिलेबस में भी देखोगे मेंस के उसमें लिखा हुआ है बफर स्टॉक ओके सो यहां पर बफर स्टॉक के दो काम है एक तो आपको स्टॉक मेंटेन करना पड़ता है जब भी मार्केट में किसी क्रॉप का शॉर्टेज होता है ओके तो उसकी वजह से इन्फ्लेशन होने के पूरे चांसेस है तो वो इन्फ्लेशन ना हो तो हम क्या करते हैं यहां से फूड ग्रेन्स को रिलीज कर देते हैं मार्केट में ताकि डिमांड सप्लाई बैलेंस दोबारा हो जाए सो दिस इज व्हाट वी आर डूइंग दूसरा फूड ग्रेन्स चलाने के लिए तो अभी मैं इस चीज की बात कर रहा हूं तो आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस तो मैंने देख रहा हूं कि काफी स्टूडेंट इसमें यही लिख रहे हैं कि सर पीडीएस रन करने के लिए सो इट इज नॉट फॉर पीडीएस इट इज फॉर कंप्लीट आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू यू ओके सो आई कैन नाउ एंजॉय माई टी अलॉन्ग विद योर क्लास ओके सो समर सिंह हिंदी लैंग्वेज वाला बैच सी इट इज इंग्लिश मीडियम ओनली ओके सो वो तो ऑन स्पेशल रिक्वेस्ट ऑन डिमांड फ्रॉम द स्टूडेंट्स सो आई एम यूजिंग हिंदी इंग्लिश मिक्स ओके क्लियर ओके सो यू सम आर सेइंग व्हाट अबाउट सर सर आप चाय पी रहे हो तो यू कैन आल्सो एंजॉय टी सो यू कैन टेल एनीवन की गिव यू टी ओके बट पीनी अपने आप ही पड़ेगी कोई और नहीं पिलाएगा ओके क्लियर अब हम यहां बात करते हैं पीडीएस की अब जब मैं पीडीएस की बात करता हूं तो पीडीएस के अंदर एफ सी आई हैज बिन गिवन अ टास्क to procure the food items okay fci has been given a task to procure the food items okay so ab ye jo food items hai okay ye jo food items hai aur food grains hai they will be given to state governments on their demand they will be given to state governments on their demand okay and state government will further so whenever state government will demand that we need this items okay then only this will be given and on the demand of state government 
one state government received food grains from FCI. So it will be further given to retail shops or you can say fair price shops. Retail shops here are fair price shop, which you ration shops. Bhi bolte ho. Okay, which you say what you Ration shop bhi bolte ho. Ab iske upar bhi question aa rakhe. Kis way mein aaya hua hai? They have asked a question. Ki in mein se kaun se areas hai? Okay. In mein se kaun se areas hai? Jahan par agar aap dekho ge. Aur kaun si jage hai? Jahan par agar aap dekho ge center government ne. Matab center government paise lagati hai. Aur kaha par state government paise lagati hai. Food grains kharidne ki jimme daari. Aur who has the responsibility to purchase food grains? The food grains responsibility is with Central government. So central government will purchase food grains from the farmer and store it in and store it in you can say in their FCI go down. Okay. And whenever states will demand as I told you then they will transport it to the state government. Okay. So ultimately this procurement and transportation cost is given by state government. Oh sorry central government. Okay. So procurement cost and transportation cost is given by central government. Now ultimately when it comes to giving it to the fair price shop, which is also known as Russian shop. So distribution and setting up of fair price shop as well as identification of beneficiary is the responsibility of state government. And hence, whatever cost is there, that will be given by state government. So Dubara Bolro Ikwari, whatever food grains has to be procured okay, for PDS or you can say poverty related scheme plus transporting those food grains to state government okay to state government that has the responsibility of central government so ultimately cost will be given by <coughs> central government okay so ultimately cost will be given by central government with respect to you can say procurement and transportation okay ultimately once it reaches to states so distribution plus distribution to fair price shop plus setting up of setting up of fair price shop plus plus you can say identification of beneficiary that cost will be given by state government clear so this is what you have to remember with respect to this whole process okay this whole process so this is about you can say your pds now come to next part okay agar aap dekho ke pds ke andar from fair price shop those who are beneficiary they get food grains that is per person will get 5 kg food grains that is right wheat 10 pulses 1, 2 and 3 rupees per kg ok but there is another scheme Anti Yodhya Anna Yojana ok but before coming to that central government will give you food grains only rice wheat and pulses but if state government want to add some other items like like they want to add some another food grain or food items so state governments are allowed to do but central government will not give any money for that. Okay, na to central government usko kharidegi, procure karegi, na hi usko transport karegi. Wo state government ki responsibility hai. Food items ke lava non-food items bhi de sakte hai Okay, like if suppose in Delhi there is, you can say cold. So in during cold time if suppose Delhi government wants to give, wants to give, you can say blanket to the poor person. So they can give. Okay, so under PDS, State government, if they want to add another item apart from food, apart from rice, wheat and pulses, they can add. Okay, but for that cost will not be given. And under PDS, whatever item you are giving, you are giving it to the individual. So this is what you have to remember. Now, ultimately, <coughs> sugar bhi de sakti hai, lekin sugar aapki marji hai ki, matlab, central government ni deti. Okay, so center ni deti, states apne aap procure karke deti hai. Aise kerosene bhi deti hai. Okay. Okay. Now ultimately, Anti Yodhya Anna Yojana. Ab jitane bhi poor hai, usme se poorest of poor jo hai. Anti Yodhya Anna Yojana is for them. 
पुअरेस्ट ऑफ पुअर अब मैं अगर उसकी बात करूं पुअरेस्ट ऑफ पुअर की ओके okay, तो उसके अंदर अगर आप देखोगे सबसे पहले कौन से आते हैं आपके पुअरेस्ट ऑफ पुअर में ओके okay, पुअरेस्ट ऑफ पुअर में अगर आप देखोगे जैसे कि जैसे कि जितने भी स्मॉल और मार्जिनल फार्मर्स है जितने भी वो जितने भी लोग हैं जो इनफॉर्मल सेक्टर में काम करते हैं विडोज ओके हाउस हाउसेज विच आर हेडेड बाय विडोज ओके डिसेबल टर्मिनल टर्मिनली इल पर्सन सो दो आर पार्ट ऑफ यू कैन से दे आर रिगार्डेड एज पुअरेस्ट ऑफ पुअर ओके दे आर रिगार्डेड एज पुअरेस्ट ऑफ पुअर तो अल्टीमेटली स्मॉल एंड मार्जिनल फार्मर सो दे आर रिगार्डेड एज पुअरेस्ट ऑफ पुअर ओके सिमिलरली इफ यू सी डिसेबल पर्सन ओके आइदर सिंगल और यू कैन से दे आर हेडिंग द फैमिली सो दे आर पुअरेस्ट ऑफ पुअर विडोज दे आर ऑल्सो पुअरेस्ट ऑफ पुअर तो अल्टीमेटली इन सबको हम पुअरेस्ट ऑफ पुअर में लेते हैं एंड दे हैव नो सफिशियंट सोर्स ऑफ इनकम क्लियर अब अंत योद्धा अन्य योजना के अंदर दैट इज इन दैट कंप्लीट कॉस्ट इज गिवन बाय स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ओके सेंटर गवर्नमेंट इज नॉट गोइंग टू गिव एनी मनी इन दिस सेंटर गवर्नमेंट ओनली प्रोक्योर द फूड ग्रेन एंड गिव एंड गिव इट टू द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट बट दे चार्ज फॉर दैट ओके सो अल्टीमेटली दे चार्ज ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ओनली प्रोक्योरमेंट कॉस्ट इज गिवन बाय सेंटर गवर्नमेंट इन अंत योद्धा अन्य योजना लाइक वी हैव सीन इन पीडीएस procurement and transportation but in antyodhya anna yojana only procurement cost is given by the central government rest of the cost that is transportation plus distribution plus setting up of fair price shop as well as identification of beneficiary is done by the state government so cost is given by them okay and in pds we are targeting individual that per individual you will get 5 kg but in antyodhya anna yojana we are targeting household that is 35 kg per household okay so this is what you have to understand <coughs> so i hope it is clear to you okay okay clear clear so i hope it is clear to you <coughs> now moving further see uh, when i am saying widows so it is not all widows so we are saying that widows those who are heading the household as well as single widows also they don't have You can say any sustainable source of livelihood. उन विडोज की बात करें अब ऐसा नहीं है कि कोई रिच फैमिली से है एंड दैट पर्सन और लेडीज विडो सो इन दैट केस वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट दैट एंटिटी और दैट पर्सन क्लियर वी आर ओनली टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट पर्सन हु इज नॉट हैविंग माइग्रेंट वर्कर्स अगेन माइग्रेंट वर्कर्स ओके दे आर वर्किंग इन इनफॉर्मल सेक्टर सो आई यूज अ वर्ड that person who is working in informal sector so they don't have sufficient income or sustainable source of livelihood so they are part of you can say this scheme antyodaya anna yojana clear ab inke benefit ke liye government ne ek aur scheme nikali thi one nation one ration card so ultimately a person ideally what happened that identification has to be done in one state but if a person has moved from other state so now now person is entitled to take food grains from another state also so government has come out with one nation one ration card so ultimately you are staying in any state okay but you are registered in any one of the state so you can you are entitled to take food grains from any state so this is what you have to remember clear okay clear so this is about you can say agriculture now in agriculture now in agriculture so there is you can say one very famous scheme pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana so i just want to talk about that only and then we'll shift to next topic okay so after pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana then we'll shift to next topic okay that is our industry topic so again it is interesting one okay so agar main pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana ki baat karta hu 
तो यहां पर सबसे पहले आपको पता होना चाहिए कि जब भी हम इंश्योरेंस की बात करते हैं वेन एवर वी टॉक अबाउट इंश्योरेंस सो देर आर सम बेसिक क्वेश्चन इंश्योरेंस फॉर वॉट और इंश्योरेंस अगेंस्ट वॉट सो अल्टीमेटली इफ यू सी वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इंश्योरेंस अगेंस्ट एनी नेचुरल कैलामिटी ओके वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट एनी मैन मेड डिजास्टर सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ओनली नेचुरल कैलामिटी सो इफ देर इज एनी नेचुरल कैलामिटी एंड ड्यू टू दैट नेचुरल कैलामिटी सम एरिया गेट डिस्टर्ब सो यू विल आर यू आर एंटाइटल्ड टू गेट द इंश्योरेंस क्लेम अदरवाइज नॉट ओके so ultimately any natural calamity okay and that natural calamity is responsible for responsible for damaging your standing crop standing crop means which you are cultivating or you can say which are you can say still in the field or if suppose you have cut or harvested it okay and then you are planning to take it to the mandi and if during that time also there is any natural calamity your crop get disturbed or you can say get damaged so then also you get the claim okay so you can say post harvest also okay you can say post harvest also now in order to avail this thing you have to or farmer those farmers who are interested see earlier it was voluntarily for some farmers but for some it is mandatory now a farmer who has taken a loan for them it is mandatory to register in pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana okay pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana okay so it is voluntarily to register yourself in pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana but now under this <clears throat> under this you have to pay or you can say now it is voluntarily for our, all the farmers so ye yaad rakhna ki pehle kya tha earlier earlier voluntarily for some farmers and for some farmers it is mandatory and those for those it is mandatory they have to be or you can say those who have taken agricultural loans for them it is mandatory so this is what you have to remember but now it has voluntarily for all types of farmers either it is either a farmer has taken a loan or not so it is voluntarily so it depends on the wish of the farmer they want to take the benefit of this scheme or not now under this now whenever you take insurance in life you have to pay premium also okay you have to pay premium also so when i am taking about or when i am talking about that to pay the premium okay what does it mean that for kharif crop farmer has to pay 1 point so for kharif crop it is 2% premium rest is equally shared between so for example aap bhi insurance policy karate ho to aap ne suppose 10000 rupaye diye uske against aap claim le sakte ho 5 lakh ka for example to ye jo 10000 rupaye aap de rahe ho ye aapki pocket se ja rahe hai isko hum kehte hain premium okay अब यहां पर ये बोलते हैं कि गवर्नमेंट बोलती है कि फार्मर को जो भी पैसे देने हैं उसका दो परसेंट अगर खरीफ क्रॉप है तो दो परसेंट फार्मर देगा बाकी के जो पैसे हैं वो सेंटर और स्टेट गवर्नमेंट इक्वली देंगे ओके okay, अगर राबी सीजन का है तो 1.5 परसेंट प्रीमियम फार्मर देगा ओके okay, बाकी के सेंटर और स्टेट इक्वली देंगे और अगर हॉर्टिकल्चर क्रॉप है तो उसके अंदर 5% परसेंट प्रीमियम फार्मर देगा बाकी का सेंटर और स्टेट मिलके देंगे सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दिस थिंग ओके नाउ अब जो भी क्लेम है वो किस बेसिस पे मिलेगा जो भी आप क्रॉप ग्रो कर रहे हो उसका जो भी एमएसपी है ओके okay, उसका उसका जो भी एमएसपी है वो आपको एज अ क्लेम मिलेगा जितनी भी आपकी क्रॉप डेमेज हुई है फील्ड से ओके बट देर आर सम क्रॉप फॉर विच एम एस पी इज नॉट देयर बट देर आर सम क्रॉप फॉर विच एम एस पी इज नॉट देयर उस केस में हम क्या कर रहे हैं इन दैट केस इन दैट केस वट एवर इज द 
फार्म गेट प्राइस मीन मंडी गेट पे जो भी आप बेच रहे हो उसका एवरेज लेंगे हम पूरे इंडिया लेवल पे ओके तो जो भी है उस हिसाब से आपको क्लेम मिलेगा अगर अगर इंश्योरेंस कंपनीज आपको क्लेम देने में डिले करती है तो जितना भी डिले करेंगी उसके ऊपर 12 परसेंट रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट के साथ देंगी ओके सो दिस इज द नेक्स्ट थिंग दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दिस स्कीम ओके नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट अगर आप इसमें देखोगे इंश्योरेंस कंपनीज जो है दोनों है पब्लिक भी है प्राइवेट भी है ओके okay, तो दोनों इंश्योरेंस कंपनी इसमें पार्टिसिपेट करती है अगर प्राइवेट कंपनी है तो दे हैव टू रजिस्टर्ड विद स्टेट गवर्नमेंट देन ओनली दे कैन पार्टिसिपेट क्लियर सो दिस इज व्हाट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर एंड दिस इज अबाउट एग्रीकल्चर सो वट एवर इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर दिस ईयर वी हैव कवर्ड ओके सो नाउ वी आर शिफ्टिंग टू इंडस्ट्री सो यू कैन टेक अ ब्रेक ऑफ फाइव मिनट्स ओके वन स्टूडेंट इज आस्किंग अबाउट प्लांटेशन क्रॉप ओके पीएम आशा आई टॉक अबाउट इन इन्फ्लेशन चैप्टर डोंट वरी अबाउट इट ओके पीएम आशा के बारे में बात करूंगा लेकिन इन्फ्लेशन चैप्टर में बात करूंगा ओके okay, क्योंकि उसका मेन रोल वहीं पे ही है ओके okay, तो वहां पर हम बात करते हैं या फिर पॉवर्टी की जब स्कीम्स की बात करेंगे तब बात करेंगे क्लियर 12 परसेंट इट इज बेसिकली जितना भी डिले हो रहा है ओके okay, तो वो ईयरली बेस पे होता है वो ट्वेल्व परसेंट इट इज नॉट पर मंथ ओके सो अभी हम आप पांच मिनट का ब्रेक ले सकते हो फिर हम कंटिन्यू करते हैं
सो वेलकम बैक आफ्टर अ ब्रेक ऑफ फाइव सिक्स मिनट्स ओके सो विल टॉक अबाउट अगेन इंडस्ट्री ओके सो प्लीज विल एंड आर ब्रेक नाउ विल टॉक अबाउट इंडस्ट्री now when we talk about industry so first of all i want to open this topic with some important schemes and then we'll see what is more relevant for your exam so if you see what is more important is startup india that is very much important in your industry topic okay second if you see okay second if you see apart from startup india what is important is make in india third <coughs> production link incentive scheme okay although these schemes are important for both prelims and mains but here our focus will be only on prelims okay so that is why it is a pt marathon okay so these are important apart from that there is stand up india also okay so there is stand up india also so if you see previous year question <clears throat> in your mains they used to ask issues or analysis of these schemes okay so today we are not going to see the analysis part we are only going to focus on prelims part where your question can be asked from industry okay where a question can be asked from industry okay so ultimately ultimately if you see at least i'll not say that like in agriculture i say with surety that three four questions they used to ask every year okay so if you know the areas where they are asking so i told you that finance is one thing where they used to ask in agriculture okay number 1 number 2 as i told you they used to ask question with respect to fertilizer and seeds so they are there you can say important areas these days earlier they used to ask question on like irrigation also but now the relevancy of irrigation topic in your agriculture has reduced okay so they have asked question on this because why i am telling you because upsc also has to frame a new question then only they can make a difficult exam for you so with respect to irrigation if i talk they have already covered a question like interlinking of rivers so interlinking of rivers they have already covered pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana they have already covered <clears throat> so already chances of asking question from that area are very less okay so whatever difficult level question that can be framed they have already framed so ultimately these are new areas which our government is also focusing or you can say unexplored area with respect to your upsc exam that is why i focused on that clear now moving further when it comes to industry so you know that pli is a new one they have not asked question startup and stand up india they have asked a question but ultimately when it comes to startup india okay startup india so first of all you must know the definition of startup okay the definition of startup so first of all if you see there are th three things if you want to recognize as a startup number 1 10 years number 2 or you can say formula you can remember it like this 10 years 100 crores and and innovation okay innovation so ab inka matlab kya hai 10 years means if suppose i have initiated or you can say started one company okay it must be not more than or not older than 10 years so the day i registered it 
and till date it has not crossed 10 years okay this is the first criteria second my turnover must not be more than 100 crores annual turnover so i am not talking about profit so there are two things turnover and profit turnover means that whatever product i have sold in a year that must not be more than 100 crores so maine ek saal ke andar 100 crore se zyada ke product nahi beche to agar suppose kar lo i am making this pencil okay so my number of pencils that i have sold in a year that must not be more than 100 crore or its valuation must not be more than 100 crore profit is different turnover is different clear number 3 innovation innovation means that if i have set up a company okay innovation means if i have set up a company okay or startup that must bring a positive change in the life of a people so for example for example swiggy zomato they bring a change in your life or you can say they have a positive impact on your life like earlier you have to go outside to to purchase food from the restaurant now on click food is at your home so this is innovation similarly cab ola uber so if i want to go some place so i have to go outside and wait for the auto rickshaw and cab wala but now only on a click i get a cab on my doorstep okay so this is called innovation so ultimately why i want to say because sometimes people say that ki my company is you can say not more than 10 years old number one your turnover is also not 100 crore but whatever activity you are doing that is that is nothing else or that is nothing new so ultimately you cannot say that you are a startup so if you have a startup bolna hai, okay so i can explain this to you that if suppose you open one restaurant and your turnover is less than 100 crore okay and and you are not or you can say old than 10 years so you started restaurant just two years back so ultimately you will not say that ki my restaurant is a startup why because whatever you are doing that are done by others also that are done by others also ha kuch aisa kar do ki ek minute mein khana ready okay that is what startup so that is what immediate food without compromising on quality okay so this is what startup clear example आज अगर सपोज कर लो कि कोई पर्सन ऑनलाइन कोचिंग खोलता है और वो बोले कि दिस इज अ स्टार्टअप नो बिकॉज दिस इज व्हाट आई एम डूइंग अदर्स आल्सो डू ओके नाउ सपोज आई केम विद वन इनोवेटिव आइडिया लाइक राइट नाउ यू कैन सी मी बट आई कैन नॉट सी यू ओके बट इफ सपोज आई कम विद सच आइडिया दैट आई कैन सी यू आल्सो एज वेल एज इफ यू आर स्लीपिंग आई कैन यू कैन से डिस्टर्ब यू और आई कैन गिव यू अ पिंच कि भाई सो क्यू रहो दैट इज व्हाट इनोवेटिव आइडिया that is what innovative idea means being an online you are taking a feeling of physical class okay that is what innovative then i am recognized as startup so first of all you must understand the meaning of startup so ultimately to recognize as a startup you must be not older than 10 year your turnover must be less than 100 crores and your idea must be innovative that has positive impact in an economy negative nahi hona chahiye positive impact in an economy so i hope so i hope you get the idea to agar inme se anything is missing you will not be recognized as a startup okay you will not be recognized as a startup agar main aapko example do some companies they want to remain only as a startup why because startup get so many benefits okay like in terms of taxes like if you see grofer shifted to blinkit okay so earlier grofer has some other idea blinkit has an idea that we will deliver you in 10 minutes okay so ultimately again it is recognized as a startup with innovative idea clear clear so i hope it is clear to you so first of all you must know the definition now ultimately what is the role of government ab business start karna hai aapne as a startup so ultimately it is run by you government is creating an ecosystem of startup so when government is saying that we are creating a ecosystem of startup so it means 
we will focus on three things or you can say three C. Okay. So ultimately, if I have started a if suppose I started a startup and I fulfill the definition of startup, so I need support of government. So government says we will create ecosystem for you. What ecosystem government is talking about? Government is talking about three C. Three C. Now three C means capital. So ultimately, to grow my business or to expand my business, I need capital. Or to expand my startup, I need money. So government is going to provide you capital. Number two, courage. Courage means like in startup, you come out with so many ideas. So you want to test it. Okay, either on the ground that is practical or you want to test it in a lab. So government says we will give you that support also in the form of courage. Okay, you come and test your idea. And number three, connections. Connection means every business run on network. Okay, every business run on network. So we will help you to develop your network. Clear? So ultimately, if you have seen a very famous show, Shark Tank, so there also they talk about these things. So when any investor is giving money to the startup, so they says we will give you capital. Okay, then they talk about connections also. That I have a ready-made market. If I come in your startup, so you will get benefit in this way. So connections, courage. Like some investor used to say that you develop an idea, we will support you. Okay, so you can say courage. Clear? Okay. See, some are writing that it is a method to convert black money into white. See, when you read economy, so our focus is that your intention is clear. Okay, your intention is clear. So, this is what you have to remember. Clear? So, if you have to in this to provide this thing, the government has set up 10,000 crore corpus startup India fund. So, government has set up one. Startup India Fund with a corpus of 10,000 crore. Okay. With a corpus of 10,000 crores. Okay. Now, ultimately, whenever you start a business, no doubt you have idea. So, you want to be a secretive. Okay. So, you don't want that my idea gets stored or you can say copied by someone else. Okay. So ultimately, ultimately you have a factor this thing that if I implement it, big player will copy it. So in order to bring a courage in you, so government has, government has relaxed, relaxed the patent laws. Government has relaxed the patent laws. So when I am saying government has relaxed the patent laws, it means there will be no fees for the startups to register its patent. Okay. Number two, they have relaxed patent laws as per the startups only. Clear? So this is what you have to remember. Clear? This is what you have to remember. Also, also, when we talk about insolvency and bankruptcy code, so there normally the procedure is that you have to close that procedure in 180 days. But for the startup, if suppose I opened a startup and after two years I realize that I cannot able to run it. So I want to exit from this startup. So I can sell it or I can close it through IBC and that procedure will be done in 90 days. So ultimately this is what government is giving. So ultimately before IBC which was introduced in 2016, if someone started a company and that person is not able to handle the company. So we used to see that this person has you can say ruin the life of so many people to matlab kitne logo ko barbaad kar diya kyun kyunki niche kitne sare log uske sath kaam kar rahe to agar maine startup khola aur mere niche 100 log kaam kar rahe matlab 100 employees are working with me to agar kal ko main nahi chala paya to wo sare ke sare 100 log mere pe dependent hai to i have you can say log people will say that kitne logo ko barbaad kar diye now ibc is there it means timely i can take a action ki main hi sambhal para to someone else will take so someone else will purchase my startup 
एंड दे विल रन द स्टार्टअप तो कभी कभार होता है कि मैं नहीं संभाल पा रहा तो कोई और संभालेगा तो दिस प्रोसीजर हैज टू बी कंप्लीटेड इन 90 डेज सो दिस इज अनदर थिंग दैट आईबीसी प्रोसीजर हैज टू बी कंप्लीटेड इन 90 डेज ओके इट हैज टू बी कंप्लीटेड इन 90 डेज बट बट ऑब्वियस यार एक स्टूडेंट लिख रहे सर एम्प्लॉयड गेट रूइन यस दैट इज व्हाट ओके नेक्स्ट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस स्टार्टअप आर गेटिंग मल्टीपल टैक्स बेनिफिट लाइक like you can say you can say they get exemptions for 3 years that they don't have to pay any tax on their income okay so they get exemption okay this is what you have to remember theek okay. hai they have to get exemption okay so no exam you can say exemption has been given similarly <coughs> if there is any profit also so you don't have to pay any capital gain tax don't worry we have a separate chapter taxation so there i'll talk about these things capital gain tax similarly jab bhi aap company kholte ho there are you can say some compliance so there it has been stated that it should be self compliance you have to follow means startup ko saaf bola gaya ki hum aapko tang nahi karenge means government will not disturb you okay so you can say self compliance okay self complaints okay apart from this apart from this if you see government used to conduct prarambh summit so where prarambh summit so many industries are sitting there prarambh summit and recently government has talked about startups in sc also so sco startup summit also is there so what is the purpose of seo startup summit praram summit or what is the relevance of seo startup summit that that it will provide network to the startups to sell their products or sell their idea to some big players so ultimately network so government is providing these benefits to the startups so this is what you have to remember with respect to this is what you have to remember with respect to startups in india clear so ultimately if you see question can be framed question can be framed with respect to your startup so ultimately here you have to understand what is the intention of the government government is basically creating ecosystem for the startup where they focus on 3c and in 3c this way they are focusing so either question they can ask you on definition so first of all you must know the definition of startup and second you know the features of the startup clear so if there is any question you can easily solve it now come to stand up india now can anyone tell me what is the intention or objective of stand up india so stand up india is also related to startup so can anyone tell me what is the objective no idea women encouraged okay now ultimately when i talk to stand up so ultimately if any startup is started by sc st or any women or any women so to 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 so to such startups government will help to provide bank loans so ultimately what i want to say that if any startup is initiated by either sc st or women so no doubt they get benefit from startup india scheme apart from this government has separately come out with another scheme that is known as stand up india now in stand up india what government is doing in stand up india government is basically providing bank loans to these startups so ultimately question will come who are the beneficiaries so you can say startups which are owned by sc st or women okay now under this 
now under this government will provide bank loan that is between rupees 10 lakh to 1 crore 1 crore at least at least to one borrower or you can say once they will give it to either to one this startup or this startup so in this government is giving a loan of 10 lakh to 1 crore okay 1 crore that is per bank branch at least to one SCST or you can say startup headed by SCST okay or startup headed by women okay at least so this is what 10 lakh to 1 crore at least so it is not although at least one has to be given although maximum there is no limit at least at least you can say loan in this range to these beneficiaries per branch per bank branch so assume that in your area there is any one bank so government has mandated that bank for example if suppose in your area there is only SBI one bank so government has mandated that SBI you have to give loan between this range to at least one startup which is headed by SCST and women okay so this is what it has been mandatory at least one और अगर आप नहीं दोगे तो हम आप पे पेनलाइज करेंगे तो साल में एक लोन तो देना ही आपको तो मतलब आप अपने आप क्लाइंट ढूंढोगे और दोगे ओके सो इट हैज बीन मेड मैंडेटरी क्लियर क्लियर बट जब भी वो लोन दे रहे हैं जिस भी स्टार्टअप को इट इज मैंडेटरी दैट अब ये ना हो कि सारा का सारा पैसे ये स्टार्टअप बैंक से ही ले रहे हैं सो so, इनके लिए मैंडेटरी है कि जो भी आपका स्टार्टअप है उसके अंदर टेन आप लगाओगे Okay, so 10% has to be invested by startup itself or you can say by beneficiary. So now you know who is the beneficiary. These are the beneficiaries. So at least 10% has to be invested by beneficiaries. So this is what you have to remember. Clear? Next, agar mein rate of interest dekhu. So iske andar jo rate of interest hai, that is decided by, that is decided by base rate. Base rate is here marginal cost of lending rate. Okay, so that is decided by base rate. Okay, marginal cost of lending rate plus three percent plus plus tenor premium. So when we'll do monetary policy, there we'll talk about bank rate. So bank rate, you know, repo rate, bank rate, bank rate will decide the MCLR rate. Okay, bank rate will decide the MCLR rate. MCLR further decide MCL once you decide the MCLR marginal cost of lending rate plus three percent plus tenor premium. Now tenor premium here means if you take loan for less than or you can say for one or two year, so risk is less. But if you take loan for ten years, risk is high. So ultimately, if you are taking loan for more time period, risk is high. So tenor premium will be high. Otherwise, it is less clear. So this will decide your, you can say, rate of interest for these startups. So again, I am, I am again, I am summarizing it. Stand up scheme, stand up India scheme is for you can say those startups which are headed by or owned by SCST or women. Under this, it is mandatory for the banks to give loan between this range, that is 10 lakh to 1 crore, and whenever they are giving loan. Okay, rate of interest will be decided in this way. That is whatever is MCLR plus 3% plus tenor premium. Okay, now some people think that MCLR has replaced or khatam kar diya gaya. Aisa nahi hai. Abhi hum MCLR bhi use karte hai aur external benchmark rate bhi use karte hai. Okay, to kaafi logo ko ye lagta hai ki MCLR abhi use nahi karte hai. MCLR aaj bhi use karte hai. Okay, plus benchmark rate bhi, external benchmark rate bhi use karte hai. Clear? So remember this thing. ओके क्लियर तो ये चीज याद रखना क्लियर क्लियर नाउ अल्टीमेटली अल्टीमेटली एवरी बैंक ब्रांच हैज टू गिव दिस लोन ओके एवरी बैंक ब्रांच हैज टू गिव लोन सो व्हेन आई एम सेइंग एवरी बैंक ब्रांच हैज टू गिव लोन इट मींस इट मींस वन टू एससीएसटी और यू कैन से स्टार्टअप ओन्ड बाय एससीएसटी एंड वन टू वुमेन दैट इज स्टार्टअप ओन्ड बाय वुमेन Clear? So this is what you have to remember. So these are the features of you can say stand up India scheme. 
so these schemes are related that is why i have covered it together clear now come to make in india okay now in make in india you have to remember now first of all where you get confused or where upsc will make you confused <coughs> most of the people think that make in india is for manufacturing sector but make in india is for both manufacturing and manufacturing and service sector okay remember this thing okay it is for both i hope you know the difference between manufacturing and service okay it is for both manufacturing and service sector because automatically if statement is there in upsc that make in india focus on manufacturing no doubt it focus on manufacturing but it also focus on services so it focus on both to kal ko agar statement aa jaye it focus only on manufacturing to kai logo ne yahan pad rakha tha ki only word hai to galat hoga okay no doubt yahan par to galat hi hai okay kabhi kar upsc sahi bhi de deti hai only word laga ke to ultimately ultimately when we talk about manufacturing okay so most of you think that ki make in india is for manufacturing yes it is for manufacturing plus services also now when it comes to manufacturing it is basically you can say implemented by department for the promotion of industry and internal trade internal trade dpiit okay so with respect to make in india for manufacturing it is implemented by which department that is department for the promotion of for the promotion of industry and internal trade okay now one student is asking sir if women is sc st matlab sc st women only sir see in that case it is regarded as sc st that is startup headed by sc st only clear clear dpiit okay and this services sector is implemented by make in india and service sector is implemented by department of commerce and both these department are part of which ministry that is ministry of commerce and industry both these are part of ministry of commerce and industry so this is what you have to remember now under this there are four pillars now under this there are four pillars and these four pillars are new processes number 1 new infrastructure number 2 new sectors number 3 and new mindset okay now when i am talking about new processes so in make in india there are four pillars so basically government of india welcoming manufacturing and service sector under make in india and they ensure manufacturing and service sector that we will come with new processes so when i am saying new processes what does it mean that we will bring reforms in ease of doing business so i used to say that easy entry and easy exit so easy entry means when you enter into or when you open a company you want from the government that we want minimum interference from your side means minimum regulations so it means rather than submitting you can say 10 papers okay 10 documents for opening a company i want you ask me only one document and my company get registered in you can say one or two day it is not like that ki it is taking 20 days like in usa if you want to open a company it can be opened in few hours 3 4 hours company is open or registered in your name but in india it takes around one month okay earlier it used to be more than that okay so that is why modi government sometimes used to say that earlier the rank in ease of doing business which is which is released by wto so earlier the rank was you can say if you see the rank of india in ease of doing business okay was in three digit now it is in two digits so this is a improvement or you can say achievement for india okay number 1 number 
when you talk about exit so i talked about ibc so in ibc if suppose i am not able to run the company before ibc i have no choice to exit but now i have a choice or option to exit from the company exit means i am not able to handle it someone else will handle so it is like this ki when i feel that ki i am not able to bring the company in profit to abhi no doubt loss to hona shuru hua but abhi itna loss nahi hua ki main pura hi barbad ho gaya so rather than going to that barbadi stage i have handed over the company to someone else who is expert in making it further in profit clear so this is what is the applic or you can say relevancy of ibc next when you start working in a country so no doubt there are so many so many disputes or you can say misunderstanding with the you can say government officials like in case of vodafone but we don't want it should be it should be you can say prolonged so if any dispute is there with any authority government authority it must be resolved in less time so that is why if you see government also talked about arbitration and conciliation act okay so again it is important for your exam arbitration and conciliation act okay so you can expect not in prelims but in mains you can expect a question in arbitration and conciliation act clear now moving further <coughs> now moving further this is what new process now when we talk about new infrastructure although we have a separate topic also in infrastructure now when we talk about new infrastructure so here my focus is on new infrastructure means i have to reduce my logistic cost okay that can be reduced by taking certain action so that i'll tell you in infrastructure chapter so right now my logistic cost is 14% of gdp which i want to reduce it to 10% of gdp okay so ultimately if quality infrastructure is there you will establish or you will have a companies in india so right now you know, you know that currently government is working to improve the logistic sector of or logistic things okay clear so this is what you have to understand now next new sectors so when you talk about new sector sectors it means we are talking about industrial revolution 4.0 so you know that there are four industrial revolution although fifth one is also there so we are working on that also industrial revolution 4.0 so right now if you see government of india okay even prime minister stated one thing that we cannot miss industrial revolution 4.0 so this is the third pillar in make in india okay and new mindset means we need a coordination of public private partnership ppp so we need to reform that ppp model also okay ppp model also so i can give you one example another committee i'll tell you vijay kelkar committee with respect to infrastructure okay vijay kelkar committee with respect to infrastructure he talked about or this committee talked about that that we have to we have to link ppp models or ppp projects with prevention of corruption act so ultimately what he said like for example if you are a engineer and you develop something or develop infrastructure project so there can be you can say sometimes you develop infrastructure suppose that infrastructure has a defect now that defect can be due to two reasons there may be some uninten unintentional experience or you can say practice taken by you for example for example you use some technology and due to that technology there is defect but but your intention is correct so you can say it is done accidentally second that is done deliberately you can say corruption case so vijay kelkar committee said that when it comes to infrastructure you have to differentiate between between the default is it deliberately or is it is it you can say by mistake okay otherwise abhi hum kya karte hai agar koi default aa jaye 
तो वी यूज टू अरेस्ट द इंजीनियर फर्स्ट ओके नाउ अल्टीमेटली इट्स अ चैलेंज सो वी वॉन्ट वी हैव टू डिफरेंशिएट बिटवीन द टू ओके देन ओनली देन ओनली इंजीनियर कैन वर्क प्रॉपरली और इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर कंपनी कैन वर्क प्रॉपरली सो सो डिफेक्ट कैन बी बाय मिस्टेक ऑल्सो एवरी डिफेक्ट और एवरी डिफॉल्ट यू कैनॉट से दैट इज डन डेलीबरेटली क्लियर सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टोड क्लियर सो न्यू माइंड सेट सो अल्टीमेटली मोदी गवर्नमेंट इज ट्राइंग टू टॉक अबाउट दैट कि वी विल ब्रिंग न्यू माइंड सेट सो सो दैट वी हैव अ बेटर कॉर्डिनेशन विद पब्लिक एंड प्राइवेट सेक्टर ओके और बेटर कॉर्डिनेशन बिटवीन पब्लिक एंड प्राइवेट सेक्टर सो यू कैन राइट दीज थिंग्स ऑन योर ओन ओके सो आई होप दिस इज क्लियर टू यू ओके नो डाउट इन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर विल टॉक अबाउट पीएम गति शक्ति ओके सो वट यू नो आई टेल यू मोर देन दैट डोंट वरी अबाउट इट ओके क्लियर सो अल्टीमेटली विद दिस मेक इन इंडिया आवर टारगेट इज टू सरपास चाइना और यू कैन से बिकम अ मैन्युफैक्चरिंग अब ग्लोबल मैन्युफैक्चरिंग अब बट नो डाउट चाइना हैज रीच टू दैट लेवल सो नाउ अ डेज आई वॉज रीडिंग वन आर्टिकल सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट हाइपर ग्लोबलाइजेशन in respect to china as a manufacturing hub so china has so strong hold so we have to see how government policies help to help to you can say <coughs> overcome or you can say surpass china so time will tell but right now what is the situation that i have told you clear next come to pli scheme another important scheme of you can say agriculture this industry so production link in incentive scheme you know that it was introduced after covid or pandemic in 21 production link incentive scheme so basically production link incentive scheme is an extension of make in india it is an extension of make in india so basically first understand what is the rationale behind okay so what is the rationale behind this make in india okay so first you have to understood what is the rationale behind this pli so already we have seen now basically you know that because of pandemic because of pandemic the production of a companies okay get disturbed or you can say it get reduced now ultimately ultimately government want that if you bring your pre pandemic production level and and once you bring it whatever additional you make over that okay we will incentivize you example suppose in 2019 your factory is producing 100 products okay now due to pandemic that is 2021 your production get disturbed so it has come to 40 40 products now government introduced this pli during this time where they focus that if you increase your production what you have in pre pandemic level we will incentivize you so ultimately this is a conditional based or conditional scheme so so companies will get benefit of this scheme only when they increase their production whatever they have in pre pandemic level so ultimately i will get benefit only when my production is more than pre pandemic means 2018 19 whatever so in 2018 19 my production is 100 now my production is 40 so ultimately first i have to in, first i have to come to this level once i reach to pre pre pandemic level over that whatever production i'll have whatever additional production i have so government is going to give me you can say financial support for this additional production for this additional production so i hope the base of the scheme is clear okay <clears throat> i hope the base of the scheme is clear okay so this is what you have to remember clear <clears throat> clear now under this scheme government is supporting only 14 sectors okay government is supporting only 
14 sectors so you must know what are those 14 sectors okay so under this scheme government is supporting only 14 sectors so initially it was 13 but now government has added one more sector that is 14 sectors okay now when you talk about these 14 sectors okay so first is mobile manufacturing and and specified electronic components so please remember this thing and specified electronic components so when we are talking about specified electronic components we are only talking about you can say whatever you can say spare part needed for mobile manufacturing okay so ultimately our focus is on mobiles so this is what you have to remember okay this is what you have to remember clear clear next <coughs> next is critical key starting material or you can say drugs so uh, ultimately you know there are active pharmaceutical drugs okay active pharmaceutical ingredients or you can say drugs so ultimately there are some drugs which you cannot consume directly without prescription okay so these drugs are added to make another drugs so ultimately ultimately second we are focusing on these things third we are focusing on medical devices okay third medical devices so if you see in india if you see the schemes although that is not important for your prelims so government has also set up medical device park okay medical device park so government is focusing on those areas also okay medical device this thing okay next is automobiles and auto components okay automobiles and auto components so this is what again you have to remember automobiles and auto components next is pharmaceutical drugs so whatever api you are using using that you are making pharmaceutical drugs so this is the fifth so you can remember the second third and fifth together because they are from same field okay pharmaceutical drugs next if you see steel speciality steel so you can say variety of steel where government is focusing okay speciality steels so this is what you have to remember next telecom and networking products so ultimately like your optical fiber and all those things whatever you need tower and all those things that is called telecom and networking products okay so you can say to run your mobile okay to use your mobile you need some infrastructure that is called telecom and networking you can say product next is electronic oblique technology park okay so apart from mobile phone there are other electronic products also okay apart from this we have special focus on white goods you are like white goods are your ac okay ac leds they are all are the example of white goods okay next food products so you can say we are focusing on food products or you can say processed food next there is an emphasis on textile products also so if you see this year government has set up mega textile park okay mega textile park next next you have to focus on solar pv modules
solar PV modules. Okay, and we are also focusing on advanced chemistry cell battery. Now, what is advanced chemistry cell battery? Like we talk about lithium. Now we are talking about hydrogen also, like hydrogen batteries. So ultimately, whatever advancement is there. Okay, so we are talking about that. Means whatever is the conventional or you can say non-conventional source which are used to run the batteries. Okay, so they are called as advanced. chemistry cell batteries clear and last which is added recently that is drones ok that is drones and drone component ok that is drone and drone component seventh is telecom and networking components or products drones and drone component see either if you see that there are some products which are not included like there is a demand that other product must also be included ok but like for example toys so there is a demand that toy industry should also be a part of this because if you see Modi government focused on that also ok so they are not included so ultimately ultimately you remember these 14 items so again if you see the previous year question UPSC has not asked question on PLI. So here there are chances that you can say UPSC can ask a question. Okay. Clear. Clear. Now ultimately we are going to talk in sectors ko incentivize kiya jayega. Aur kab kiya jayega? So now you know the condition. Ki whenever they increase their production above the pre-pandemic level. Now whatever production they have increased government or you can say to increase the production above the pre-pandemic level so government will give 4% to 6% so isko banane ke liye jo bhi cost hai hai ok uska 4 to 6% government will give as a incentive ok so whatever production they have increased so for example for example in 2022 I have a production of for example you can say 120 products so ultimately you can say that that there is an addition of addition of 20 products now whatever is the cost of manufacturing of 20 product so government will give 4 to 6 percent of that as an incentive and this will be given for next five years clear this will be given for next five years clear clear so ultimately some are want to see the again so again i'll tell you so some are demanding so again first is mobile manufacturing and specified electronic component second is advanced pharmaceutical ingredients or drugs okay so they are very dangerous drugs okay so there are some drugs which will you can say once you eat so like sleeping if suppose someone is not having a or not able to have a sound sleep so doctor used to give api only but only on recommendation you can consume similarly there are some api which will make your brain active okay <laughs> so this is thing also okay but you don't or you can say these drugs are taken only on the recommendation of government only or say this doc doctors only so once doctors will recommend then only okay or only you can consume it okay Next is medical devices, automobile and auto components, pharmaceutical drugs, specialty steels, telecom and network product, electronic products, white goods like AC, food products, okay, food products, okay, food products, next textile products solar PV modules, advanced chemistry cell batteries and last is drones and drone component clear so this is what you have to remember with respect to with respect to industries ok now now with respect to industry if you see coal sector is very important
can anyone tell me why coal sector is important for your prelims okay and don't expect they are going to ask you coal kaha milta hai kaise milta hai theek hai wo nahi puchne wale wo sab cheeze okay they are the past things okay pehle puchte the coal coal ka types kya hai jo aap rakhte ho fir bituminous anthracite aur ye sab cheeze okay to wo pehle puchte the coal ka cheez okay but abhi coal mein kya issue hai koi bata sakta hai अगर इजी क्वेश्चन पूछने होते यस रक्षा यादव यू हैव मेंशन आई थिंक रक्षा यस कोल्ड शॉर्टेज लास्ट ईयर ओके एंड ड्यू टू कोल्ड शॉर्टेज व्हाट इज द चैलेंज दैट पावर सेक्टर्स और यू कैन से पावर दोज हु आर प्रोड्यूसिंग इलेक्ट्रिसिटी ओके पावर प्लांट्स दे डोंट हैव इनफ कोल सो यू नो दैट still my country is dependent on thermal power plant or you can say your more than 60% of your energy is coming from thermal power plant so ultimately coal is one of the important input okay coal is one of the important input that you have to understand okay that you have to understand now in order to in order to ensure in order to ensure that there is a proper supply of coals okay proper supply of coal to power sector okay or power plant because ultimately ultimately if power plant utilize their capacity ultimately if power plant utilize their capacity then only we can ensure electricity for all so can anyone tell me what initiative has been taken with respect to coal sector so that power supply has or so that coal power plant has enough supply of coal see if you are still mugging up that data ki matlab ki coal ki types kya hai coal kahan milta hai jo aapne geography mein padha hoga to either i'll suggest you that very less chances that they are going to ask this question yes earlier they used to ask but but that time but that time our policies were also old so ultimately you can say there was nothing new in that but now government has come out with so many new policies so one of the important policy i am looking from from your side to koi bata sakta hai kaun si policy ki main baat kar raha hu yahan par anyone यस शक्ति पॉलिसी तो कोई बताएगा शक्ति पॉलिसी में क्या है ऑल दो इफ यू विल नॉट टेल आई विल टेल यू सो शक्ति स्टैंड फॉर स्कीम फॉर हार्नेसिंग एंड एलोकेटिंग कोयला ट्रांसपेरेंटली इन इंडिया स्कीम शक्ति पॉलिसी सो आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट शक्ति सो शक्ति पॉलिसी हैज समथिंग सो शक्ति स्टैंड फॉर स्कीम फॉर हार्नेसिंग ओके स्कीम फॉर हार्नेसिंग एंड एलोकेटिंग कोयला कोयला मीन्स कोल कोल ट्रांसपेरेंटली इन इंडिया ओके स्कीम फॉर हार्नेसिंग एंड एलोकेटिंग कोयला ट्रांसपेरेंटली इन इन इंडिया ओके नाउ अगेन यू नो दैट इंपोर्ट ऑफ कोल सो वेन आई एम सेइंग इंपोर्ट ऑफ कोल इट डज नॉट मीन दैट कि 100 परसेंट वी आर इंपोर्टिंग ऑल दो वी आर प्रोड्यूसिंग कोल इन आर कंट्री आल्सो बट वट वी आर प्रोड्यूसिंग दैट इज नॉट सफिशियंट ओके सो वी हैव टू डिपेंड ऑन द इंपोर्ट ऑफ कोल नंबर वन नंबर टू नंबर टू आवर पावर प्लांट्स आर यूटिलाइजिंग द ओल्ड टेक्नोलॉजी ओल्ड टेक्नोलॉजी टू प्रोड्यूस पावर सो यू कैन से यू कैन से अंडर परफॉर्मेंस और यू कैन से दे आर नॉट यूटिलाइजिंग देयर फुल कैपेसिटी 
ओके सो अगर आप देखोगे हमारे जितने भी पावर प्लांट्स है थर्मल पावर प्लांट दे आर ओल्ड दे आर ओल्ड वाई दे आर ओल्ड ओल्ड मीन्स दे आर यूजिंग ओल्ड टेक्नोलॉजीज टू प्रोड्यूस पावर ओके टू प्रोड्यूस पावर अब अल्टीमेटली हो क्या रहे अब जो आप पावर प्रोड्यूस कर रहे हो ओके okay, जो भी पावर प्रोड्यूस कर रहे हो उसके लिए आप यू कैन से दैट यू आर नाउ अंडर परफॉर्मिंग और योर पावर प्लांट इज अंडर परफॉर्मिंग अगर आप इफ इफ पावर प्लांट शिफ्ट टू लेटेस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी सो अल्टीमेटली टू थिंग्स विल हैपन योर पावर जनरेशन विल आल्सो इंक्रीज प्लस न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी रिक्वायर लेस कोल ओके सो अल्टीमेटली ड्यू टू ओल्ड टेक्नोलॉजी योर परफॉर्मेंस इज और यू आर अंडर परफॉर्मिंग ओके और यू कैन से और यू कैन से नॉट एबल टू यूटिलाइज फुल कैपेसिटी ओके सो अल्टीमेटली इफ पावर प्लांट शिफ्ट टू न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी इफ दे शिफ्ट टू न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी सो टू थिंग्स विल हैपन नंबर वन नंबर वन लेस इनपुट इज नीडेड ओके लेस इनपुट इज नीडेड लेस इनपुट इज नीडेड सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर सो आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू शक्ति पॉलिसी बट बिफोर दैट आई एम डेवलपिंग यूर बेस एक्चुअली हाउ शक्ति पॉलिसी इज वर्किंग ओके सो आई डोंट वॉन्ट दैट आई जस्ट रीड द फीचर्स एंड यू अंडरस्टैंड इन दिस वे ओके सो अल्टीमेटली वेन यू शिफ्ट टू न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी सो लेस इनपुट इज नीडेड ओके इन द फॉर्म ऑफ कोल बिकॉज ओल्ड टेक्नोलॉजी कंज्यूम मोर कोल ओके तो आपको भी पता है कि अगर आप पहले पुराना पंखा यूज कर रहे हो विच इज वन स्टार so more electricity will be con consumed now you shifted to latest technology five star so ultimately what will happen ultimately what will happen your fan will now use less energy so ultimately your bill will be less so yahan par bhi yahi cheez hai ki jab aap less input use karoge okay less input is needed plus more power generation more power generation so two things will happen clear <coughs> clear now come to shakti policy now we will understand what actually shakti policy is okay okay now what is now what is shakti policy so we will see the shakti policy now now when i am talking about shakti policy okay so there you have to understood one thing that before shakti policy government used to have purchase power agreement with power plants okay purchase power agreement with power plant to shakti policy aane se pehle हम क्या करते थे परचेज पावर एग्रीमेंट साइन करते थे किसके साथ पावर प्लांट के साथ अब पावर प्लांट क्या करते थे जितना भी उनको कोल चाहिए जितना भी उनको कोल चाहिए उसके हिसाब से उसके हिसाब से वो डिमांड करते थे कि हमें इतना कोल चाहिए तो हमें एग्रीमेंट साइन कर रहे हैं क्लियर तो पावर प्लांट को पता है कि हम पुरानी टेक्नोलॉजी यूज कर रहे हैं तो मेरी रिक्वायरमेंट इतनी है बट गवर्नमेंट वॉट दे डिड दे डिड अगर आपको कोल चाहिए हम इस पावर पावर परचेज एग्रीमेंट और परचेज पावर एग्रीमेंट को कैंसिल कर रहे हैं मतलब मतलब हम इसको यूज नहीं करेंगे तो अगर सपोज कर लो आप पावर प्लांट हो और मैं गवर्नमेंट हूं आपके साथ मैंने बिगनिंग में एक एग्रीमेंट कर लिया आपके साथ बिगनिंग में एक मैंने क्या कर लिया एग्रीमेंट जिसके अंदर मैंने बोला आपको मैं एक्स यूनिट कोल दूंगा अब मैं जब आपको एक्स यूनिट कोल दे रहा हूं इसका मतलब यह कि एक बार अगर साल में खत्म हो गया आपको दोबारा मेरे साथ एग्रीमेंट करना पड़ेगा खरीदने के लिए क्लियर तो इसके अंदर मतलब क्या है कि आप खरीदोगे उतना जितना चाहिए जितने आपके प्लांट की कैपेसिटी है और जो कितनी चल रही है अंडर यूटिलाइज चल रही है आप अपनी प्लांट की कैपेसिटी को कम यूज कर रहे हो अब गवर्नमेंट कहती है हम एक काम करते हैं गवर्नमेंट कहते हैं हम एक काम करते हैं कि हम कोल लिंकेज करना शुरू करते हैं 
कोल लिंकेज अगर आप शिफ्ट करोगे नई टेक्नोलॉजी पे हम आपको कोल प्रोवाइड करेंगे कम रेट पे ओके okay, नई टेक्नोलॉजी पे शिफ्ट करने का मतलब क्या है कि आपको लेस इनपुट मिलेगा मोर पावर यू विल हैव ओके मोर पावर यू हैव तो अल्टीमेटली शक्ति पॉलिसी व्हाट इट यूज टू से शक्ति पॉलिसी व्हाट इट यूज टू से अगर पावर प्लांट है उसको अगर कोल चाहिए तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल जितनी भी कोल माइनिंग है वो डिसाइड करेगी पावर प्लांट कितनी पास में है वो कहां पर अपनी पावर को जनरेट करके बेच रही है ओके okay. और और कौन सी टेक्नोलॉजी यूज कर रही है तो इस बेसिस के ऊपर हम आपको कोल एलोकेट करेंगे तो अल्टीमेटली कोल लिंकेज कोल लिंकेज सो अगर आप ये देखो अगर आप शिफ्ट करते हो नई टेक्नोलॉजी पे आपको कोल अब पड़ेगा एक तो कम कोल चाहिए और सरकार आपको इंसेंटिवाइज कर रही है कि हम आपको अगर नई टेक्नोलॉजी यूज करोगे जिसमें आपकी कोल रिक्वायरमेंट भी कम होगी और हम आपकी कॉस्ट भी कम करेंगे ताकि इलेक्ट्रिसिटी कम रेट पे बने क्लियर सो दिस इज वॉट दे आर गोइंग टू डू इन दिस थिंग क्लियर 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 सो दिस इज वॉट दे आर गोइंग टू डू दिस थिंग इन शक्ति पॉलिसी सो अल्टीमेटली इन शक्ति पॉलिसी यू कैन से पावर प्लांट आर गिवन कोल ऑन सर्टन क्राइटेरिया फॉर एग्जाम्पल प्लांट एफिशियंसी ओके कोल ट्रांसपोर्टेशन कॉस्ट ट्रांसमिशन चार्जेस एंड ओवरऑल कॉस्ट ऑफ पावर तो अल्टीमेटली वो आपकी तभी आएगी जब आप नई टेक्नोलॉजी को यूज करोगे क्लियर सो अल्टीमेटली द मोर यू आर द मोर यू आर यूजिंग न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी और यू कैन से द बेटर यू आर यूटिलाइजिंग योर कैपेसिटी यू विल गेट कोल एट लेस प्राइसेस ओके तो यहां पर ये तीन चार फैक्टर्स है जो डिसाइड करेंगे सो राइट अंडर शक्ति पॉलिसी ओके सो सम से हिंदी सम से इंग्लिश सो आई हैव टू बैलेंस इट सो आई जस्ट टेल यू अगेन आई रिपीट फॉर यू इन इंग्लिश नाउ शक्ति पॉलिसी इज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड टू एंश्योर टू एंश्योर दैट कोल कैन बी कोल एवेलेबिलिटी मस्ट बी देयर फॉर एवरी सेक्टर और यू कैन से फॉर पावर प्लांट विदाउट एनी डिस्ट्रप्शन सो इफ यू सी द कंडीशन ऑफ पावर प्लांट इन इंडिया और यू कैन से कोल सेक्टर so first of all we are dependent on import for the coal number 2 our power plants are underperforming now in order to in order to you can say perform better our power plant has to shift shift to latest technology and that can be possible that can be possible with shakti policy so ultimately before shakti policy गवर्नमेंट यूज टू एलोकेट तो अगर सपोज कर लो यू आर पावर प्लांट आई एम एलोकेटिंग कोल टू यू नाउ दिस इज द कोल दैट यू हैव टू यूज एंड यूज एंड जनरेट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी सो इट मीन्स देर इज नो इंसेंटिव फॉर यू टू इंप्रूव योर कंडीशन बिकॉज यू नो दैट आई एम गेटिंग कोल एट दिस प्राइस वाई शुड आई इन्वेस्ट मनी इन माई पावर प्लांट सो दैट विद द सेम कोल आई कैन प्रोड्यूस मोर Now government came with the concept coal linkage policy means if your plant is efficient means you are utilizing your full capacity okay you are utilizing your full capacity okay then we will provide you coal at less prices so ultimately your coal prices get linked to your capacity utilization okay so ultimately ultimately it is like this ki if you are studying and you are studying your to your full extent or full capacity i will give you more you can say advantage or more support so it is like this okay it is like this so here you can say right now right under shakti policy under shakti policy coal prices are determined by various factors under Shakti policy coal prices are determined by various factors and these factors are number 1 number 1 plant efficiency that is power plant efficiency number 2 coal transportation cost coal transportation cost number 3 transmission charges and number 
ओवरऑल कॉस्ट ऑफ पावर ओवरऑल कॉस्ट ऑफ पावर सो अल्टीमेटली नंबर वन इज नंबर वन इज प्लीज टेल मी प्लीज रिकॉल रिमेंबर इन क्लास इट सेल्फ दैट इज प्लांट एफिशिएंसी दिस इज द फर्स्ट फैक्टर नंबर टू कोल्ड ट्रांसपोर्टेशन कॉस्ट नंबर थ्री इफ यू सी ट्रांसमिशन चार्जेस ट्रांसमिशन चार्जेस मींस वंस यू मेड अ पावर सो यू हैव टू ट्रांसमिट टू डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सेंटर्स सो अल्टीज अल्टीमेटली यू हैव और स्टडीड अबाउट एटीएन सी लॉसेस दैट इज ट्रांसमिशन लॉसेस सो दे मस्ट बी मिनिमम सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दो लॉसेस ओके सो सच लॉसेज मस्ट बी मिनिमम ओके सो अल्टीमेटली वेन दे आर मिनिमम सो योर ट्रांसमिशन कॉस्ट विल बी लेस and ultimately overall cost of power okay so if you bring improvement in this you will get coal at less prices okay coal at less prices ab ultimately aap ye dekho isme government ko kya fayda ho raha hai government is getting benefit because because if you see government has to import the coal so ultimately ultimately import bill is increasing but when all the power plant when but when all the power plant held or you can say started utilizing their maximum capacity okay started utilizing their maximum capacity it means it will help to everyone first of all input of coal will get reduced number 1 okay so agar okay so ultimately ab isme government ko kya fayda ho raha hai to dekho ki agar shakti policy ke through through shakti policy power plant will get get coal at less price only when they use latest technology it means when they use latest technology it means input coal as a input will be less required number 1 number 2 they are able to generate more power when they are able to generate more power means electricity price will also less okay electricity price will also less okay and ultimately ultimately when all the power plant shift to the latest technology government dependence on import will reduce and ultimately domestic coal whatever we are producing that will become sufficient only or you can say if extra will be there government is able to export the coal also okay plus plus further extension of this just like in mobile phone there is mobile portability just like in mobile phone there is a mobile portability okay so if suppose you are using you can say mobile phone of one company or mobile connection of one company for example vodafone idea now you want to shift to another company for example reliance jio so you have that option similarly if i am a consumer and i am using electricity so you know that this power plants are run by private companies also so i found that nearby discom is purchasing you can say power from there so ultimately i can also say that ki i want to shift from this discom to this discom so ultimately in my area if there are so many discoms so i am living in this area and there are for example three discoms discom 1 discom 2 and discom 3 which are purchasing power from various various power plants okay so different different power plants so if i have an option to purchase energy from anywhere okay so ultimately discom also know that that we purchase power plant from that company which is offering less so that consumer otherwise we will lose our consumer so this is the connection of shakti policy and government is working over that i hope it is clear to you okay now ultimately if you see <coughs> ultimately if you see sometimes we have seen that ki there is illegal mining of coal also now in order to stop that thing government has come out with another thing that is khan prahari khan prahari scheme okay where you can where you can khan prahari khan prahari scheme okay so ultimately p r a h a h r i p r a h a h r i khan prahari scheme where if suppose i found that someone is doing 
illegal coal mining so i can click the photo and send it to the government without or government will not disclose my identity so my identity will not be revealed okay so ultimately there is these options also clear clear okay clear so this is what you have to remember similarly similarly to ensure better transportation of coal coal from from you can say coal you can say coal mining areas to power plant we have come out with another scheme known as prakash prakash so prakash basically stands for power rail coil availability through supply harmony okay power rail coil availability through supply harmony so this is what you have to remember clear see no one is going to ask you about rat hole mining or any other type of mining don't worry about it so if it is important so they have asked in previous year also because they are the old concepts to aaj tak nahi pucha to chances are very less they will ask again you but this shakti is important the shakti policy is important and once government able to achieve its target of shakti policy that every power plant shift to the latest technology then government will start with just like in mobile phone you have you have you can say you have you can say you have portability option that you can port your mobile from one company to another or shift from one company to other same facility will be there also that if suppose one discom is not giving me electricity continuous electricity and if it is giving me continuous also and that electricity is not 24 by 7 okay that electricity is not 24 by 7 or costly also so i can change my discoms also but this is only possible when all the power plant company shift to shift to you can say you can say to new technology clear now if you see the further extension of this this year or you can say last year government has come out with open access policy for renewable energy how many of you know about it open access policy for renewable energy how many of you know about it please tell me <coughs> open access policy okay see uh, again if you take upsc lightly then upsc will take you lightly these are the latest thing that you are going to expect in your question either directly or indirectly okay can anyone tell me open access policy so this open access policy for renewable energy so government has already started this thing that if suppose i am a consumer so all of you all of you are consuming electricity okay so in some areas government has started that consumer can demand from the discoms that i need green energy okay or renewable energy so you supply green energy to my house clear so ultimately ultimately if any consumer has made a request to the discom so they have to fulfill it okay so it is not like that ki hum to aapko power de rahe hain kahin se bhi de so i want green power so you have to give it give the green power to me okay and ultimately ultimately once request has been given so that request has to be fulfilled in 15 days okay that request has to be fulfilled in 15 days so this is about another thing that they can ask you in prelims okay so you can say you can say access to or you can say demand for renewable energy okay so government has come out with open access policy for renewable energy and whatever once the demand has been raised by the consumer 
consumer it has to be you can say 15 days time period will be given to the discom to supply green energy to the consumer so it can be commercial business or commercial entity or you can say non commercial residential it is for both okay it is for both so these are the new achievement that government is coming see ultimately why government is doing this thing coal 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 or you can say shakti policy and open access ultimately you know that ki we have indc target intended nationally determined tar- contribution so there we have talked about reduction of gdp per emission so gdp per emission can be reduced when our power plants which are the major contributor of greenhouse gas they will shift to new technology okay so it is not like that ki in exam you write ki we will shift to renewable energy okay in a day see shifting when you are more than 60% of energy is coming for thermal power you cannot shift to renewable energy in one day or in one year it will take time gradually you will reduce the contribution of renewable this thermal power plant and increase the renewable energy similarly if you learn from the experience of germany they shifted to renewable energy now they again shifted to you can say these methods that is coal and other petroleum products clear so you have to understood like in exam if suppose they ask you a question that although it is not economy if they ask you a question that they frame a question connected to economy and environment they ask you a question that in order to achieve indc targets that is nationally determined contribution which india has given in paris paris conference or paris climate change summit so whatever those targets are there so what economic policies reform has been brought so it is shakti policy yes okay it is open access yes similarly there is another concept re renewable purchase obligation okay so as i told you open access so in open access it is my choice or my voluntarily decision i have to purchase or not but there is one another po- one another policy that is rpo renewable energy you can say renewable energy purchase obligation renewable energy purchase obligation so in that in that we have clearly stated we have clearly stated that <coughs> that there are some entities which have to purchase which have which have to purchase you can say <coughs> you can say renewable energy okay so it is a it is a obligation on them okay to purchase renewable energy okay so you can say rpo is one of the mechanism by which state electricity regulatory committees or you can say commissions they have to oblige entities to purchase renewable energy so jitni bhi badi badi companies hai unke liye mandatory hai rpo obligate karna okay rpo obligate karna clear so it is mandatory that is why in this way government is going to increase the demand for green energy okay green energy so ultimately green growth is the another target why because we have some international commitment clear to ab kaam karoge tabhi hoga na so aapko uske liye pata hona chahiye to kal ko aa sakte hain jaise government pooch le aapse upsc mein kya initiatives liye gaye hain green energy ki market ko promote karne ke liye so usme agar aap dekhoge economic policy mein do important hai theek hai do important hai ek to open access policy and rpo clear so you can expect now one student is asking why germany did so sir see ultimately ultimately due to re- you can say shifting to renewable they are not able to produce enough energy or whatever energy is needed as per their demand that is why they have to shift okay so ultimately uh, any single source of energy cannot be your you can say whole soul means to run the country you need a combination okay you need a combination so ultimately with respect to power plants which are major polluters we are shifting them to new technology so that emission get reduced clear so this is what you have to understand okay <clears throat> i hope it is clear to you clear so any doubt in this
okay now ultimately there is another scheme okay that is you all know that is for electric vehicle and this is very important and that scheme is known as fame scheme okay and this fame scheme is you can say fame scheme and this fame scheme is basically for basic basically for increasing the increasing the market share of electric vehicle so when i am talking about electric vehicle so here we talk about two wheeler okay three wheeler and four wheeler okay two wheeler three wheeler and four wheeler now here remember one thing where upsc can again confuse you so when we talk about two wheeler it does not include electric bicycles okay it does not include <coughs> electric bicycle see my work is to tell you those areas where you can where you can say upsc can confuse you okay okay where upsc can confuse you okay so ultimately you have to remember these things okay clear so some students are asking mains question no doubt no doubt there may be possibility that ksg will conduct mains marathon also so there will discuss about those things okay so you have to understand my limitation also okay or if you are very interested to know about these facts or these concepts in detail or these issues in details okay so you can contact me by taking my number from management okay but here i will restrict myself to prelims so please coordinate okay clear so please understand or please coordinate okay now this scheme fame scheme is implemented by ministry of heavy industries ministry of heavy industries so this scheme is implemented by which ministry you have to means ministry of heavy industries okay some are saying mains marathon okay yes definitely we will support you in mains marathon also okay okay so ministry of heavy industries so this is what you have to focus now in this scheme there are four focus area number one is technology development matlab technology development with respect to electric vehicle okay so in this scheme there are four focus area number 1 technology development so when i am saying technology development so no doubt in saying that we are talking about technology development of what that is with respect to electric vehicle number 1 number 2 number 2 demand creation okay number 2 demand creation so ultimately we have to create a demand ab product to ban gaya lekin demand nahi hai so still people have a fear like like if you see the reports so there are some two wheelers okay so they get the fire so ultimately ultimately it's a concern so if as a consumer i'll think about it ki pata lage main chala raha hu jal jaye ho okay so so ultimately it's a concern for me okay so government has to create a demand next pilot projects pilot projects means before launching it government used to have or you can say companies must trial it okay or you can say end to end whatever ecosystem or infrastructure is needed so we want to develop pilot projects and fourth government focused on charging infrastructure okay fourth government focused on charging infrastructure so this is what you have to remember okay 
so government has to focus on charging infrastructure also clear so this is what you have to remember clear now this program has been implemented in two phases phase 1 we implemented in you can say from 2015 to 2019 and now we are implementing or phase 2 is implemented from 2019 to 2022 so last year it get over so definitely there are chances that they can ask you about this scheme ok so ultimately you have to remember that this scheme has been implemented in two phases phase 1 is from 2019 to sorry 2015 to 2019 and phase 2 from 2019 to to 2022 so it is 1st of april 2015 to 31st march 2019 this is your first phase and second phase is 1st of april 2019 to second uh, 31st march 2022 clear so this is again you have to remember clear so this is what you have to remember with respect to this scheme now moving further how many of you have heard about corporate social responsibility CSR corporate social responsibility how many of you have heard about corporate social responsibility CSR ok so what do you know about it ok so if you look corporate social responsibility this concept was introduced in companies act 2013 okay in companies act 2013 which says that certain companies has to spend certain amount or certain percentage of their profit on on social and environmental activities okay on social and environmental activities clear clear so ultimately this is introduced in which act companies act 2013 where it is said that you have to you have to spend some of your money okay some of your money or you can say some of the percentage of profit 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 on social and economic environmental activities social and environmental activities so next question that the, that can be asked is it spent by everyone no okay. it is spent by only you can say certain companies and those certain companies are those which are having which are having a net worth of 500 crores or turnover of 1000 crore or net profit of 5 crores so here are three conditions three if any one of the condition is there you have to you have to implement the guidelines of CSR ok so ultimately number one is your net worth is either rupees 500 crores ok so agar 500 crore ok so apne paas hote 500 crore to koi tension nahi thi clear or or annual turnover not net or annual turnover of rupees 1000 crore so automatically more is also there so this is the minimum 500 or more or net profit of rupees 5 crore or more so these three are different terms net worth annual turnover or net profit clear so again may say koi bhi ek cheej hai anyone okay if there is anyone okay so you are li or you have to spend money on csr okay or you have to implement these guidelines number one number two 
नंबर टू हाउ मच यू हैव टू स्पेंड यू हैव टू स्पेंड एटलीस्ट टू परसेंट ऑफ द प्रॉफिट ओके ओके एटलीस्ट टू परसेंट ऑफ द प्रॉफिट केमेन आइलैंड बहुत ज्यादा आ रहा है सो डेफिनेटली लेके जाऊंगा आप लोग को भी ठीक है सो अल्टीमेटली एटलीस्ट टू परसेंट ऑफ द प्रॉफिट ऑफ योर लास्ट थ्री इयर्स ओके एवरेज ऑफ लास्ट थ्री इयर्स ओके सो एटलीस्ट टू परसेंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट जो आप कैलकुलेट कैसे करोगे ऑफ प्रॉफिट दैट इज एवरेज ऑफ लास्ट थ्री इयर्स सो वट एवर प्रॉफिट आई हैव इन लास्ट थ्री इयर्स आई विल टेक अ एवरेज ऑफ दैट ओके एंड वट एवर वैल्यू कम्स आउट टू परसेंट ऑफ दैट एट लीस्ट टू सो इट इज नॉट ओनली टू अब यहां पर भी देखो ट्विस्ट कर सकती है यूपीएससी तो कभी आप सोचो सिर्फ टू परसेंट है नहीं आपको बोलती है वो एटलीस्ट टू परसेंट सो इट इज योर चॉइस यू कैन स्पेंड थ्री परसेंट ऑल्सो फोर परसेंट ऑल्सो दैट इज योर चॉइस बट एटलीस्ट टू यू हैव टू स्पेंड ओके एंड टू परसेंट ऑफ वॉट दैट इज एवरेज ऑफ लास्ट थ्री ईयर प्रॉफिट ओके एवरेज ऑफ लास्ट थ्री ईयर प्रॉफिट क्लियर नौ सम स्टूडेंट आर सिंग ब्रेक मिलेगा देखो ब्रेक तो देंगे थोड़ी देर में देंगे वो थोड़ी देर कब देंगे आपको बता दूंगा मैं क्लियर तो लेकिन पढ़ते जाओ बस एक थोड़ा सा टॉपिक है देन विल स्टार्ट मोर इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक ओके करा के ही छोड़ूंगा क्वेश्चन आपके कम से कम अगर 20 क्वेश्चन आ रहे तो कम से कम 12-13 क्वेश्चन तो आपको आज के सेशन से देख ही छोड़ूंगा मैं टेंशन मत करो क्लियर अगर आप उसको आराम से सुन रहे हो तो इस चीज को टेंशन मत करो ये टॉपिक जरूर करके जाना यार एग्जाम के लिए दे आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्लियर क्लियर सो अल्टीमेटली ये आपका सी एस आर का है ओके okay, अब लेकिन अगर आप देखोगे सी एस आर के लिए हमने एक कमेटी भी सेट करी थी वी हैव सेट वन कमेटी फॉर सी एस आर ऑल्सो केन एनी वन टेल मी ओके केन एनी वन टेल मी कि सी एस आर के लिए हमने एक कमेटी भी सेट करी थी देखो यूपीएससी में एग्जाम पेपर डी करना बहुत इजी है सारे सब्जेक्ट्स को अगर आप उसको अंडरस्टैंडिंग से लिंक करके पढ़ोगे तो ओके नो समर ओके सो सी आई एम आस्किंग अ कमेटी नेम यस समर सिंह करेक्ट The name of the committee is full name is In Jethi Shrinivas Committee. या तो देखो चीजों को रट्टा लगा लो ओके मतलब यू स्टार्ट मगिंग द थिंग्स और इफ यू अंडरस्टूड द थिंग्स ओके सो देर इज नो नीड ऑफ मगअप ऑटोमेटिकली थिंग्स विल बी इन योर माइंड नाउ वॉट हैपन इन दिस सी एस आर Now ultimately you know that company is is you can say is continuously making profit but sometimes what happened government has given this obligation that you have to spend at least 2% as csr now due to engage in their business activity companies are sometimes you can say unable to spend now when they are unable to spend so companies act make one one provision that you will be criminalized to agar suppose kar lo my company has to spend csr ओके okay, तो केमेन आइलैंड पे मेरी कंपनी है ठीक है इंडिया में भी काम कर रही है तो वहां पर मेरी कंपनी ने कमा ली दस हजार करोड़ ओके सो नाउ आई हैव टू स्पेंड यू कैन से सीएसआर बट आई एम बिजी इन केमेन आइलैंड ओके नाउ कंपनीज एक्ट यूज टू से दैट इफ यू नॉट स्पेंड द मनी ओके इफ यू नॉट स्पेंड द मनी यू विल बी क्रिमिनलाइज सो देन आई आस्क वाई सो सो गवर्नमेंट सेट अप वन कमेटी इन जेती श्रीनिवास टू लुक इन दिस मैटर सो दे सेड रिमूव दिस प्रोविजन और डी क्रिमिनलाइज दिस प्रोविजन आप फाइन लगा दो लेकिन जेल थोड़ी भेजोगे आप ओके सो दैट दैट इज वाई वी सेट अप वन कमेटी इन इन जेती श्रीनिवास कमेटी ओके इन जेती श्रीनिवास कमेटी ओके सो विच रिकमेंडेड टू डी क्रिमिनलाइज ओके डी क्रिमिनलाइज दिस प्रोविजन ऑफ सी एस आर ओके सो इफ सी एस आर इज नॉट स्पेंड इफ सी एर इफ सी एर इज नॉट स्पेंड ओके So, Samar Singh, sir, Ireland का क्या चक्कर है? क्या है? I will tell you when we'll do taxation part. Okay. Clear. So, if CSR is not spent earlier, you will be you will be behind the bars. Okay. 
now government said or you can say this committee said ki this provision should be removed okay and finally and finally you can say if i talk about in jati shrinivas committee government has recommended this this committee recommendation okay and and remove this clause so right now if you are not spending the money okay if you are not spending the money you will not be criminalized so this is what you have to remember clear okay clear so this is what you have to remember okay now another link i can give you you know although we'll talk about gift city also so which is developed in gandhi nagar and gift city there is ifsc international financial service center so right now international financial service center okay international financial service center is headed by injeti shrinivas so agar aap ifsc ka jo chairman hai md hai sorry not chairman md hai wo aapka injeti shrinivas ji hai okay so again a link i am giving to you okay although no one is going to ask you but you will now remember that the same person has you can say formed for csr okay and the same person is right now the chairperson of or md of gift city that is ifsc clear okay so this is the thing okay so this is what you have to remember next next there is another concept nowadays in news that is esg okay that is environment social and governance compliance of a company okay nowadays sebi has given it mandatory or you can say for those companies which are you can say in top 1000 listed entities of any stock exchange so you know that in stock exchange companies are listed on the basis of market valuation or m cap market capitalization so those 10000 top 1000 comp- not 10000 top 1000 listed companies okay it is mandatory for them to follow esg norms okay now this is different from csr so there are chances that they can ask you this is different from csr okay so don't think that it is ksg it is esg environment social and governance reform governance norms so ultimately you know that any business activity okay their main objective is to earn profit now when they are earning profit so we want to know how much or what or how many not much how many initiatives has been taken with respect to environment means whatever business process they follow is it environmentally friendly whatever business process they follow is it helping socially also okay and whatever business process they follow are they implementing the governance reforms or you can say governance or whatever rules of governance or rules are there that is given by the government they are implementing that so every company has to make a report with respect to for example if you are running a business there may be possibility that you are earning great profit but while earning great profit you are basically damaging the environment so this is what you are your business is not esg norms followed or compliance so you have to tell in the report that that my business is having this much environmental impact okay similarly when you are running a business so apart from government you can say government rules what additional you can say care you are giving for your employees okay or you can say social security kya aap apni taraf se koi social security wo de rahe ho so that is what you have to understand and third is with respect to governance so whatever rules and regulation given by the government are you implementing or not so this is what esg now <coughs> you can say that report has to be submitted to sebi see csr mein aap kya kar rahe ho apne profit ka kuch percent spend kar rahe ho okay esg mein kya kar rahe ho jo bhi aap business kar rahe ho uske andar you are taking care of environment society and government rules and regulation 
clear so ultimately csr is once you earn the profit so you are spending some portion esg that to earn that profit your process follow or respect environment social or governance so you have to understand this thing so third party audit will be there and accordingly if you are not doing this your market capitalization or market value will fall clear so ultimately we want companies must be you can say responsible in complete manner clear matlab business karte samay bhi aur business karne ke baad jo profit earn kar rahe ho they have to spend that also clear so this is what you have to understood okay environmental impact assessment is something else okay environmental impact assessment is is before you start any activity so you are doing impact assessment but once you start activity and you start violating it or your process whatever you are given that are harmful so you are now assessing that clear so this is the thing so both are different clear okay so this is what you have to understood okay now again last year we have added or you can say in 2018 we have introduced national financial reporting authority okay nfra so upsc has not asked question on this still there are chances that they can ask a question on this okay now you know that every company has to maintain a balance sheet okay every company has to maintain what balance sheet okay now you know that every company has to maintain what balance sheet okay so when you talk about balance sheet okay nowadays there are so many cases that companies used to manipulate their balance sheet in order to get loans investment etc okay so for example few days or you can say last year there was in the month of you can say november october or october november there was a case of go mechanic okay so so their market valuation was x so they increase it 10 times okay in in 6 month okay so it raise a concern ki how it is possible so ultimately ultimately this is done with the help of you can say professionals like ca okay now ultimately to ensure that companies follow a proper standard of accounting as well as auditing okay we frame one body that is national financial reporting authority okay so we framed one body in or you can say in 2018 now this body again derives its power from companies act okay so this body derives its power from companies act okay now so if you want to know the exact it is section 132 but no need to remember section okay so so these facts are not important you know you know the working of this now you can say so many you can say accounting scams are there so in that in that context we need this body nfra now this body is headed by chairperson which is appointed by central government okay and this body has another 15 members so maximum limit is 15 members so this body is you can say have chairperson plus 15 members which are appointed by central government okay which are appointed by what that is central government so this is what you have to remember okay so central government is there now okay now if there is any if there is any you can say fraud okay so these companies okay these companies or you can say these nfra has a authority to inspect that but but there is but there is a condition that they are going to check the accounting detail of those companies which has a minimum paid up capital of you can say 500 crore or annual turnover of more than 1000 crore 
okay so ultimately they can initiate a probe probe or you can say investigation okay for those listed and unlisted companies for those okay for those listed and unlisted companies okay listed and unlisted companies which are you can say had a paid up capital of 500 crores minimum or turnover of more than 1000 crore so this condition you have to remember okay this condition you have to remember clear so this is what you have to remember okay although they can initiate an inquiry against ca also okay so in kepas puri power okay they have a complete power so ultimately you can say they are the watchdog of balance sheets of the company okay so ultimately if they find any mismanagement okay so some are right asking what is nfra national financial reporting authority so for you i repeat it twice or thrice nfra national financial reporting authority so which was which was formed in 2018 why because there were so many you can say scams related to accounting okay or you can say balance sheet so that is why we need nfra so it came in companies act section 132 not important to remember because upsc never asked these numbers okay because it is very difficult to remember but they ask the intention of these bodies okay now this is of chairperson this comprise of chairperson plus 15 members okay and it is appointed by central government okay now the main task of this body is that if they found anyone is not following the proper accounting methods okay so means either it is listed or unlisted company but but their minimum paid up capital is 500 crore or the turnover is 1000 crore okay so they can initiate an inquiry against such companies clear clear so i hope it is easy to remember so i hope it is easy to remember by you okay so any doubt okay so any doubt in nfra please tell me okay okay now we'll come to another topic msme with that we'll end our industry with that we'll end our industry msme now earlier we used to classify msme on the basis of on the see some are asking doubts i'll give you doubt within half an hour by 6 30 i'll give you doubt don't uh, this uh, break not doubt so by 6 30 i'll give you break okay fizan i'll give you break no no issue but 6 30 sharp okay 6 30 i'll give you a break of 15 20 minutes okay so please coordinate we have to cover a lot okay msme now we'll talk about msme first of all you must know the definition of msme so we basically define earlier we used to define on the basis of investment but now we used to define msme on the basis of you can say turnover so ultimately yaha par bhi teen number yaad rakh lo aap 5 crore 50 crore and 250 crores madhe yaar hai ki hum bade bade number yaad rakh rahe hain 500 crore 1000 crore 5 crore okay like in csr csr also we talk about in crores here also we talk about in crores in nfra we also talk about crores to matlab india mein paisa bahut hai bhai okay so <laughs> that is why these numbers are there so ultimately msa micro ओके okay, तो अल्टीमेटली यहां पर हम लाखों में बात करेंगे नहीं अब अब सीधा हम करोड़ों में ही बात करेंगे क्लियर तो जब व्हेन वी विल टॉक अबाउट एनपी आल्सो नॉन परफॉर्मिंग एसेट वहां पर भी हम करोड़ों में बात करेंगे 6000 करोड़ 7000 करोड़ सो यू नो सम पीपल हैज लाइक यूके इफ आई टॉक अबाउट यूके ओके सो यूके हैज टू इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स एक तो हमारा वो कोहिनूर ले गए थे ओके okay, दूसरा हमारे माल्या साहब भी उनके पास है ओके okay. 
so ultimately <laughs> ultimately if any company is having annual turnover of you can say 5 crores okay that is called that is regarded as micro okay micro so you can say up to 5 crores if 5 crore to 50 crore that is called as small okay and if 50 crore to 250 crore that is called as medium okay that is called as medium clear okay clear so this is the thing okay okay Yes. <laughs> देखा जोश आ गया आप लोगों में भी मैं देख रहा हूं आपके कमेंट्स कि मतलब आप भी 8 8000 करोड़ की बात कर रहे हो क्लियर क्लियर तो आप ये देखोगे दिस इज द वे वी डिफाइन आवर एमएसएमई ओके दैट इज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ एनुअल टर्नओवर ओके नाउ बेसिकली यू हैव टू फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एमएसएमई इफ यू आर अर्निंग मोर देन दैट 250 करोड़ सो ऑटोमेटिकली यू बिकम अ पार्ट ऑफ हेवी इंडस्ट्रीज ओके okay, तो अगर 250 करोड़ से ऊपर का कमा रहे हो टर्नओवर तो आप हेवी इंडस्ट्रीज हो ओके okay, अब नाउ व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट दिस ओके व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट एमएसएमई सो एमएसएमई हैज देयर सर्टेन चैलेंजेस सबसे पहला चैलेंज जो इनको है दैट इज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू क्रेडिट ओके दैट इज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू क्रेडिट नाउ इफ सपोज देयर इज एनी बिग कंपनी लाइक लाइक Samsung Apple और यू कैन से एनी ऑटोमोबाइल कंपनी व्हेन दे गो टू द बैंक bank used to give them loans easily so you can say banks used to welcome them but when it comes to msme banks does not give them loan easily okay so ultimately why because most of the msme are in unorganized sector so they have challenge with respect to credit so earlier upsc has asked question so chances of asking question are very less on this first you have to remember so ultimately if i talk about credit government has framed some scheme also like recently they have come out with credit guarantee scheme for msme okay similarly we'll also talk about mudra but not here but in banking chapter okay mudra okay so mudra bank is also mudra bank is also providing loan to micro units okay micro units are those units which turnover is less than 5 crores okay so this is what you have to remember okay okay so this is what you have to remember next second thing that you have to remember is what is another challenge with respect to this thing is market now normally normally when any heavy industry is launching any product okay so you will see that before launch of the product that product get booked okay so for example if apple is coming with apple iphone so you know that people will book in advance okay kyunki aajkal social status ban chuka hai because agar mere paas apple iphone pehle hi aa gaya launch hone se pehle ya immediately on launch date so you can show that i purchase apple on day one itself okay so ultimately agar msme koi product launch kar rahi hai to aap usko kharidna to baat dur ki baat hai aap dekhoge bhi nahi abhi iti jaldi okay so ultimately they have a challenge with respect to market ab is market ke liye government has working over it so ultimately what government is doing government is basically government is basically you can say when we talk about one district one product one district one product so government is talking about that okay one district one product so government is talking about that clear 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 so one district one product is just like a branding now apart from this there is another very famous scheme one nation one standard now whenever you go and purchase msme product okay so take any msme product okay so you know that the same type so for example toys so there are so many toys industry also in msme now the same toy you are getting at for example 100 rupees the same toy you get at 500 also 
so ultimately you get confused what is the difference what is the difference now reason is that there is no fixed standard even shopkeeper is more confused than you so government says that if you want to create a market for msme there should be some minimum standard that is why if you see from last so many years they are asking questions on you can say so many you can say bodies which are responsible for standards so you can say for example isi okay isi so you know that isi mark is there okay isi mark is there so this isi mark is certified by bis bureau of indian standard okay bureau of indian standard and this is given for industrial products in india okay so basically this recognize a standard standard and for industrial product तो अगर आप पिछले साल के क्वेश्चन उठा के देखोगे दे हैव आस्क अ क्वेश्चन ऑन क्वालिटी काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया ओके सो दैट इज व्हाई व्हाई बिकॉज दिस इज द गवर्नमेंट्स मेजर एजेंडा क्लियर सो आईएसआई टॉक्स अबाउट स्टैंडर्ड फॉर इंडस्ट्रियल प्रोडक्ट सो दिस इज व्हाट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर नंबर वन नंबर टू नंबर टू एग मार्क सो इफ यू सी एग मार्क एग मार्क यूज टू standardize or give standards for agricultural products okay egg mark used to give standard for agricultural product number 3 number 3 if you see bis hallmark so you can say hallmark hallmark you know that it is given for gold okay it is given for gold or you can say precious metals like silver also okay gold and silver so ultimately if these standards are not there everyone can you can say make you fool fool okay next similarly you will see that there is there is you can say in indian organic product like jaivik bharat so already we have covered that it is npop or npop or pgs so that is also a standard because npop is a pure organic product in pgs you will find some traces of some traces of chemical chemical fertilizers okay so why because due to its procedure clear so ultimately this is what you have to understand okay this is what you have to understand clear so ultimately if you see quality council of india also so quality council of india is a body which is regulating all the bodies which are responsible for giving you can say trademarks or you can say defining the standards so for example similarly if you see there is food safety and standard authority of india also okay which is basically give standards for processed processed food and quality council of india which upsc has asked once the role of quality council of india is to is to you can say <coughs> the role of quality council of india is to you can say define the standards or you can say overlook all these bodies okay so basically they are managing or controlling all these bodies or you can say whatever you can say bodies are there for specific purpose they used to they used to define further guidelines for these bodies similarly if you see in the month of january you can say there was an issue with respect to toys also so you know that there are companies like hamle archies so they are in news because of you can say quality of the toys so ultimately you can again expect a question from this so agar aap pichle saal ke kai saar questions dekhoge you will get to know that every year they are asking question from any of these body okay similarly there is another body bureau of energy efficiency which is used to electric appliances on terms of energy consumed for example when you purchase air condition so their star marking is there when you purchase led you can say star marking is there 
okay so if five star is there so it means energy efficient product so all automatically they have asked question on be also so if you see i think in 2017 you can check 17 or 18 or most probably in 17 they have asked a question that energy efficiency like they have given some items and they asked which of the following items have star rating given by be so you have to identify it so like they have given fan led refrigerator so this way you have to identify clear so questions are simple but here my agenda is that uh, nowadays government is focusing on quality so you must know about quality so like they have asked about quality council of india also so in quality council of india the chairperson is the chairperson is appointed by prime minister of india okay on the recommendation of you can say industrial bodies okay like ceii fiki etc okay so this becomes important this becomes important that is why once they have given a question that quality council of india is headed by pm no it is not headed by pm but its chairperson is appointed by pm or jhapar prime minister of india is involved so it means automatically that body is important okay automatically that body is important clear so you have to understand clear ऐसे ही अगर आप देखोगे आजकल हम प्रोडक्ट्स को रेट करने लग गए इको ग्रीन मार्क से भी सो आई होप यू हैव स्टडीड इन योर एनवायरमेंट इको ग्रीन मार्क ओके सो वेयर यू यूज्ड टू फाइंड दैट द कंपनी व्हिच इज प्रोड्यूसिंग सम प्रोडक्ट इट इज इको ग्रीन मार्क और नॉट अगर नहीं समझ आता तो आप इसको ऐसे भी समझ सकते हो राइट नाउ यू नो दैट की वी टॉक अबाउट ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन okay we talked about brown hydrogen blue hydrogen so ultimately green hydrogen is that where we are using or we are making hydrogen using renewable energy but here you are not using renewable energy you are using your conventional source of energy only clear so ultimately ultimately your process is not clean although your outcome is clean but in green hydrogen your process and outcome both are clean so this is what you have to understand okay okay so this is what you have to understand clear clear so you can expect a question from this also okay now <coughs> now this is the thing that you have to understand now if you see the previous year question so again if you see there is one topic that is you have to you must know that how we you can say check the performance of the companies or manufacturing sector so there are two tools one is iip that is index of industrial performance and another is core industries so you must know the core industries that there are total eight core industries okay eight core industries and they become important for you in terms of their weightage also okay so upsc has asked so many times that question so there are total eight core industries so if you see the number one is number one is you can say refinery products so that has been given maximum weightage okay refinery products number two electricity also okay so electricity has been given the second weightage number three steel third number pe we have given a weightage to steel fourth coal so remember this thing coal fifth crude oil fifth crude oil sixth natural gas sixth natural gas seventh seventh cement seventh cement and eighth fertilizer rata hua aap logon ne bahut badhiya okay but isme se question aata hai okay agar rata hua hai to bahut badhiya hai nahi rata to rat lo yaar isko you have to mug up because iske piche koi logic nahi hai okay 
so government or you can say government has defined or have their weightage in this way okay so if you see that this is the favorite portion of upsc okay this is the favorite portion of upsc okay so you have no choice you have to mug up these things okay <clears throat> so this is about this is about you can say your core industries that you have to mug up okay that you have to mug up with this that is core industries and they are very important okay now <coughs> we'll shift to okay to aap logo ne apne coding mein bana rakhi hai okay that's very good ओके okay, अगर आपने कोडिंग बना रखी है तो बहुत बढ़िया ओके क्लियर ओके सो अगर आप देखोगे इंडस्ट्रीज में यहीं से आते हैं तो हमारे दो बड़े टॉपिक ओवर हो चुके हैं एग्रीकल्चर एंड इंडस्ट्री ओके अब हम बढ़ते हैं अपने दूसरे तीसरे टॉपिक की तरफ ओके दैट इज फिजिकल पॉलिसी okay so we'll have a quick revision of that okay fiscal policy so again before i start it i'll say that every year you will find one question from this okay one question from this so i can predict sub topic here okay but from any sub topic they can give you a question so number 1 so pehla jo sub topic hai or you can say sub topic 1 we'll talk about you must know that in budget there are two components that is receipts and expenditure receipts and expenditure so basically receipts if i talk about receipts receipts are further so some used to say receipts so in my class when i teach so people used to say receipts so i don't i call them it is not receipts it is receipts okay but as an indian we can have a mistake also okay or allowed to do mistake so ultimately in receipts there are two components revenue receipt and capital receipt so this must you must know similarly in expenditure there are two things that is that is revenue expenditure and capital expenditure okay now what upsc used to do upsc used to ask you what it further includes okay so whatever items are there you must know it okay so i you can check previous year questions also so many times they have asked you which of the following is or are part of revenue receipt which of the following is or are part of capital receipt which of the following is or are part of revenue expenditure and which of the following is or are part of capital expenditure so whatever items are there okay so you must know is it a there or not so I, I, accordingly you have to find the you can say you can find the answer so if you know the items you will easily find out so hum ek ek karke sabko dekhte hain now when i talk about revenue receipts so it further include tax revenue and non tax revenue okay so when i am saying tax revenue what does it mean here you are including direct tax and indirect tax so direct tax you know income tax corporate tax indirect tax best example is gst
okay non tax revenue includes non tax revenue includes your fees and fines so whatever when you appear for upsc or you can say whenever notification of upsc is there so you used to you you used to give you can say fees like some for some it is exempted but some has to give the fees okay so whatever fees you give okay that becomes that becomes the part of <coughs> so whatever fees you give that becomes a part of non tax revenue so 100 rupee fee that you used to give is a part of non tax revenue so this is what you have to remember okay similarly if you break any law or violate any law or rules or regulations so you have to give fines also second second user pay charges so whenever you use any services of the government for example you are taking you are taking or you went to any museum so you pay the ticket so there user pay charges are also there when you travel through metro so you pay user pay charges even when you get your bills also electricity bill water bill so there one charge they used to charge you user pay charges so ultimately that becomes a part of this non tax revenue third dividends and profits okay dividends and profits okay when it comes to when it comes to dividend and profits so you know that government has government has you can say invested money <coughs> invested money in psus so from psus government is receiving dividends and profit so you have to or you must know that also okay you must know that also dividend and profit number 4 okay number 4 when it comes to you can say another item so can anyone tell me so you know that government used to give loans also to state government or to another states or you can say another countries to another countries so whatever loan has been given government receive interest over that so interest received and similarly last is grants received by the government of india okay so whenever you go to any relative house okay whenever you go to any relative house okay so they give you grants although you say no no i don't need it but at the end you take it okay so that is why <laughs> similar it is like that grants okay so so for example usa gives some grants to india so it is grants received by the government of india clear so these items are part of revenue receipts clear so please write it because directly they'll ask you which of the following is our part of non tax revenue if you know these items it is easy for you to remember okay it is easy for you to remember clear now we'll come to capital receipts now in capital receipts what we have to see <coughs> in capital receipt there are two components debt creating capital receipts debt creating capital receipts which includes borrowing okay which includes borrowing or you can say loan taken by the government of india okay which includes borrowing or you can say loan taken by government of india okay loan taken by government of india okay which includes borrowing and loan taken by government of india next is non debt 
creating capital receipt which includes recovery of loan recovery of loan okay so you know that you know that government of india used to give loans so once loan time period get over or maturity period is over so they will recover it so that is called recovery of loan and second is you can say disinvestment disinvestment proceeds clear so whenever you go for disinvestment of your psu so government get the money that is called disinvestment proceeds so ultimately ultimately they can again ask you capital receipt include what so capital in receipts are of two types debt creating capital receipt which include borrowing okay and non debt creating capital receipt which include recovery of loan and disinvestment proceeds okay so i hope or i assume that please remember this in class only because directly question has been asked from this area okay and this is you can say one of the easiest question jisko main kehta hu free ke marks milte hain bhai agar aapne ye rakh rakha hai okay ye table pura clear so that is that is you can say free of cost you will get a marks okay aur do number aapke paas hai free mein okay now <coughs> now if you see if you see whatever money you are collecting from revenue receipt or capital receipt that will become a part of consolidated fund of india okay that will become a part of consolidated fund of india so whatever revenue receipt plus capital receipt that i am collecting okay that will become a part of you can say consolidated fund of india here i want to tell you one another information that whenever you go for the disinvestment or whenever government of india is going for disinvestment that money will be first collected in a special fund known as national investment fund and then the money is transferred to consolidated fund of india clear so this is what you have to remember clear okay now one student is saying sir no no sir free mein kuch nahi see mehnat kar rahe ho to hi aage milega na <laughs> so this is what i am telling you so if you do hard work then only you will get so ultimately when you know that this is the area where you get get the question so be ready for it okay to so, kai ko wait karna okay jab pata hai ki यहां से क्वेश्चन आना ही आना है ओके क्लियर क्लियर सो दिस इज व्हाट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड ओके सो अल्टीमेटली डिस इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रोसीड विल बी फर्स्ट कलेक्टेड इन टू नेशनल इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड रिमेंबर इट नेशनल इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड so this is what you have to remember so this money is collected in ni n n double nif that is national investment fund clear now we are coming to expenditure part so if i talk about expenditure so there is there is revenue expenditure so in revenue expenditure first of all you will say administrative expenses now in administrative expenses it comes salaries pension okay other departmental expenses okay okay other departmental expenses now some student are asking sir disinvestment of strategic sale and privatization mein difference bata dijiye please pataunga lekin thodi der mein batata hu okay pata dunga but thodi der mein bataunga okay because it is a part of different when we'll do capital market then i'll tell you don't worry about it okay salaries pension and and other departmental expenses clear so this is what you have to remember number 2 number 2 if you see <coughs> what further it includes so it includes you can say money spent on schemes 
so there are two types of schemes central sector schemes so central sector schemes are those schemes where 100% money is given by 100% money is given by government of india and number 2 is centrally sponsored scheme where money is shared between shared between center and state okay so where money is shared between center and state ओके, वेयर इट इज शेयर बिटवीन सेंटर एंड स्टेट्स अरे वो डाउट नहीं बोला था वो बोला था ब्रेक दूंगा साढ़े छह पे ओके फैजान ओके गलती से डाउट निकल गया था मुझसे क्लियर तो साढ़े छह पे आपको ब्रेक दूंगा गिव मी फाइव सिक्स मिनट्स देन आई गिव यू अ ब्रेक ऑफ ट्वेंटी मिनट्स सो डोंट वरी अबाउट इट क्लियर वन स्टूडेंट इज आस्किंग सर एफ डी आई आएगा भाई एफ से सरकार थोड़ी कम आ रही है ठीक है एफ डी इज अ डिफरेंट थिंग दैट विल स्टडी इन बीओपी बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट ओके तो मतलब एफ से जो पैसा आ रहा है वो कई कंसोलिडेटेड फंड ऑफ इंडिया में थोड़ी आ रहा है सो आई टोल्ड यू दैट वट एवर मनी इज कमिंग इन द फॉर्म ऑफ रिसीट दैट एज दैट इज गोइंग टू बिकम अ पार्ट ऑफ दैट इज गोइंग टू बिकम अ पार्ट ऑफ यू कैन से से कंसोलिडेटेड फंड ऑफ इंडिया एफ मतलब क्या है एक प्राइवेट सेक्टर मतलब एक फॉरन कंपनी इंडिया की डोमेस्टिक कंपनी में इन्वेस्ट कर रही है या फिर आके कोई अपना नया बिजनेस स्टार्ट कर रही है क्लियर तो वो तो एफ है अब सरकार उसमें कमीशन थोड़ी मार रही है टैक्सेस ले रही है वो अलग चीज है तो मतलब उसमें जो टैक्सेस लेगी वो एक अलग चीज है बट ऐसा थोड़ी है कि आने से पहले आप कमीशन दो मेरे को ओके okay, आने से पहले कमीशन दो जो फॉर्मेलिटी है फीस वगैरह ले रही है वो अलग चीज है बट ये थोड़ी है कि पहले मेरे को इतना परसेंट दोगे तभी आने दूंगा ओके okay, सो so ऐसा नहीं है ना उसमें क्लियर सेंट्रल सेक्टर स्कीम एंड सेंट्रली स्पॉन्सर्ड स्कीम ओके नेक्स्ट सब्सिडी बिल subsidy bill next if i talk about if i talk about okay some has written disha verma has written all okay next apart from subsidy you can say defense expenditure next next is you can say interest so we have seen that in capital receipt government used to take the loan also or borrowing so whatever loan or borrowing they have taken so for that they have given you can say interest payment okay fifth sixth sixth if i talk about interest payment after interest payment okay you can say grants grants given by the grants given by the government to states government of india to states as well as others others means foreign country so these are six items part of revenue expenditure capital expenditure money spent on infrastructure second second if you see <coughs> whenever government used to give loans loans given by the government of india to others okay loans given by the government to others okay others means either to state government or anyone else okay and government bhi loan leti hai to whenever they repay their loan amount back or repayment of loan amount to agar aap ye dekhoge these three items are part of these three items are the part of you can say <coughs> your capital expenditure okay so you will find a simple question that 
which of the following is our part of revenue expenditure which of the following are part of capital expenditure so you have to mug up these things then only it is going to help you out okay now now asta charasi i'll definitely tell you what is the difference between fiscal policy and budget so you have to wait okay don't worry whatever doubt are there i'll clear it okay <clears throat> okay so ultimately repayment of loan amount okay so this is what you have to understand okay so they can ask you now sometimes government used to use or you can say like in 2021 also they ask another thing okay like one thing they ask which of the following is or are part of revenue budget so revenue budget is a term when you take revenue receipt and revenue expenditure together that is called as revenue budget similarly when you take capital receipt and capital budget to capital expenditure together that is known as capital that is known as you can say capital budget so agar aap se kal ko puch le which of the following is or are part of revenue budget so revenue budget is nothing but you can say revenue expenditure and revenue receipts so that is revenue budget but if they ask you a question what is capital budget or what it includes in capital budget so it is your capital expenditure and capital receipt so this is what you have to remember clear this is what you have to remember clear uh rakesh you have one question so i'll take that doubt sir if government has made hospital and is working for see if government has uh, made hospital okay and working for free that is a part of revenue expenditure okay similarly raksha adav sir a business firm carrying out its work will come under which receipt see we are talking about government of india so we are talking about expenditure of government of india we are not talking about the expenditure of any business clear similarly whatever receipts we are talking about we are talking about the receipts of government of india not any other okay so government kahan se kama rahi hai agar main usko simplify karu ki government kahan se kama rahi hai so main uski baat kar raha hu okay to government kahan se kama rahi hai to main uski baat kar raha hu clear clear so this is what you have to understood okay now one student is asking hush money i think you are writing husk it is hush h u s h hush money is nothing but that is something else agar main kisi ko chup karane ke liye paise de raha hu ki kisi ke paas meri kuch information hai jisko reveal karte hi that will have impact on my image that is called hush money clear clear so this is the thing so now we will meet after a break of uh, some are saying 30 minutes so not 30 will come or we'll meet at now it is 631 in my watch so we'll meet around 650 or 651 okay so you can say break till 650 okay so 20 21 minutes ka break de raha hu aapko so milte hain break ke baad to fir dobara continue karenge kuch important topics jisme se definitely aapke questions aayenge okay and we'll meet after that
चल सो वेलकम आफ्टर अ ब्रेक सो आई होप यू एंजॉयड योर ब्रेक सो वील कॉन्टिन्यू विद आर टॉपिक ऑफ फिजिकल पॉलिसी सो विल कॉन्टिन्यू आर टॉपिक ऑफ फिजिकल पॉलिसी ओके नाउ सो टिल द टाइम अदर स्टूडेंट्स ज्वाइन इट सो वट एवर वी हैव कवर्ड सो आई टोल्ड यू दैट देर आर टू कॉम्पोनेंट्स नंबर वन रिसीट पार्ट नंबर टू एक्सपेंडिचर पार्ट ओके सो मैन आई टॉक अबाउट रिसीट्स एंड एक्सपेंडिचर ओके सो इन रिसीट पार्ट अगेन इफ यू सी इन रिसीट पार्ट सो आई टोल्ड यू दैट रेवेन्यू रिसीट एंड कैपिटल रिसीट हेयर हेयर यू विल सी टैक्स रेवेन्यू एंड नॉन टैक्स रेवेन्यू सो अल्टीमेटली हेयर टू आइटम्स आर देयर here you will see five items so you can remember in this way in capital receipt there are again three items one item is known as debt creating capital receipt that is loan or borrowing another two items are known as known as you can say <coughs> non debt creating items so total three items now when it comes to expenditure revenue expenditure here we have six items okay and here we have you can say three items clear so this is what you have to remember now some of the students are asking about i have seen your doubts that sir with respect to school okay don't worry uh, those who are asking that sir topics sare topics cover honge priyank soni don't worry about it okay everything will be covered so just maintain your patience okay although we have to be little bit fast okay so now <clears throat> if you see some students are asking for that sir स्कूल को कहा लेंगे अगर वो फ्री में पढ़ा रहा है या फिर हॉस्पिटल फ्री में सर्विस सी दैट विल बिकम रेवेन्यू सी एक्सपेंडिचर मींस इफ योर एक्सपेंडिचर इज क्रिएटिंग एसेट और एसेट क्रिएशन इज देयर दैट इज कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर अदरवाइज रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर सो यू आई कैन गिव यू वन बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल ओके सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू योर पेरेंट्स ऑल्सो लाइक दिस बजट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस इज अ बजट ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ओके सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया बजट now replace government of india india with your parents so your parents also frame a budget okay for you so ultimately your parents are also framing a budget so although i used to give in my normal classes this example so again i'll give you here now when your parents are framing a budget for you so no doubt no doubt when they frame a budget for you so it means they are also allocating money that this money will be spent on your education this money will be spent on your you can say household activities like food items and all those things but if suppose you become ias officer or you are selected as ias officer so whatever money spent by your parents on you that will become capital expenditure otherwise revenue expenditure so you can understand in this way if suppose i invested x amount on school and i am able to recover more than that okay more than that clear whatever x amount i have spent more than x amount then it is capital expenditure otherwise revenue expenditure to ab us form mein bhi dekh sakte ho okay us form mein bhi isko dekh sakte ho so i hope it is clear to you yes or no please tell me in comment section now in this way if you see upsc used to ask question on that so already i told you this is the first type of question they are going to ask you from this table which of the following are this or this or you can say if suppose they give you an option in this way that uh, that there is like they'll give you one situation based or you can say like this ki money spent on mg narega okay loan given by or you can say government of india government of india has given loan to loan to for example haryana state this is a second statement and third statement okay so first statement is money spent on mg narega number 
government uh, government of india has given loan to haryana state or any state of your choice okay why to be specific so for example haryana state then konni madara haryana se they can write their own state name okay and number 3 number 3 grants given by government of india to madhya pradesh if suppose these three statements are written in front of you and they ask you which of the following is or are part of revenue expenditure okay so what will be the answer please tell me if they ask you which of the following is or are part of revenue expenditure what will be the answer please tell me okay please tell me what will be the answer i am waiting for your reply yes 1 and 3 now i hope you get the answer तो अगर आप देखोगे ऐसे क्वेश्चन ही आते हैं आपके एग्जाम में ओके okay. तो अगर आप देखोगे ऐसे ही क्वेश्चन आपके एग्जाम में आते हैं क्लियर ओके नाउ अल्टीमेटली यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दिस थिंग सो वन टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन इज दिस ओके सेकेंड व्हाट टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन दे कैन आस्क यू सो दे कैन आस्क यू विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग एक्सपेंडिचर इज मोर विच ऑफ द इज लेस तो अगर आप देखोगे हमारे केस में इन केस ऑफ इंडिया so capital expenditure is less than revenue expenditure or i can say revenue expenditure is more than capital expenditure so if i talk about this year budget number so my total expenditure for this year is 45 lakh crore so this is the amount which i am going to spend from 1st of april 2023 to 31st march 31st march 2024 okay so this is the amount i am going to spend in this financial year that is from 1st april 2023 to 31st march 2024 so this is 45 lakh crore which i am going to spend okay now <clears throat> if you see if you see out of 45 lakh crore 35 lakh crore i am spending on revenue expenditure and 10 lakh crore i am spending on capital expenditure so it is spent it is spent in this way so capital expenditure is more than revenue expenditure oh sorry revenue expenditure is more than capital expenditure so in our case capital expenditure is very less 10 lakh crore and revenue expenditure is more 35 lakh crore so this is what you have to understand but if you see your receipts if you see your receipts so it means my receipts are it means my receipts are nothing but revenue receipt plus non debt creating capital receipt capital receipt or if i further break it these receipts are nothing but you can say tax revenue plus non tax revenue plus non debt capital creating this includes what recovery of loan plus this investment this investment so if i sum total all these items so it comes out to be 27.2 lakh crores so i hope it is clear to you what basically i want to tell you okay so ultimately this part is nothing but this part is revenue receipt so i have opened it open the formula okay and this part is nothing but this part is non debt creating capital receipt so it is 27.2 lakh crores so ultimately my total expenditure if you see my total expenditure if you see so my total expenditure is is 45 lakh crores so against that total expenditure my total collection of receipts are 
27.2 lakh crores. So ultimately there is a gap. Okay. So whatever gap is there, that I am going to take as a borrowing. And that borrowing I am going to take from, you can say... <coughs> You can say that borrowing comes out to be 17.8 lakh crores. So ultimately, ultimately, when I add 27.2 lakh crore with 17.8 lakh crore, the value comes out to be 45 lakh crores. So ultimately, this 17.8 lakh crore is around 34 to 35 percent of my total expenditure. Clear? So this is what you have to remember. So ultimately, the question that can be asked in your exam. Okay, is India's budget is surplus or deficit? So our budget is deficit in nature. So it will be surplus when you have more collection of money that is more receipt. So you can say revenue receipt plus non-tax revenue receipt plus recovery of loan plus investment is equal to more than our total expenditure. Then you can say my budget is surplus in nature. Okay, it means then you don't have to take borrowing. Okay, but right now you have to take borrowing for your budget. So that is why we have budget deficit. So this is what you have to understood. Okay. Clear. This is what you have to understood. Next. Next. They can ask you which expenditure is more. Revenue expenditure is more than capital expenditure. Now if you see, come to the receipt side. So if you see, whatever total receipt we have, that is 27.2 lakh crores. So out of that maximum collection is from you can say maximum collection is from tax revenue. Sorry. Maximum collection is from tax revenue. So if you look at it, there are components. Hai. Tax revenue, non-tax revenue, recovery of loan and disinvestment. Okay, so char, there are four components. Out of those four components, maximum collection is from you can say tax revenue and that is 23 lakh crores and that is 23 lakh crores that you have to remember. Now further if you move in tax revenue as I told you there are direct tax and indirect tax. Direct tax and indirect tax. So if I see tax wise so our tax wise more collection is from GST so our highest collection in case of tax wise is from GST. Number two, corporate tax. And number three, personal income tax. Or you can say income tax only. Okay. So, if you look at collection, then our collection is collection from GST, then GST, then corporate tax, then income tax. Se. So, you have to remember this order also. Okay. Dusra agar aap dekhoge, they can ask you that if you analyze this thing, tax wise, this is the proportion. But if you see direct tax collection is more than indirect tax collection. Because when you sum total it, that is second and third, corporate tax and personal income tax, it will be more than your GST. Okay, direct tax collection is more than you can say indirect tax collection. Okay, so this is what you have to understood. So these are the simple nature of question that UPSC used to ask in this exam. Okay, so if you remember this thing, so definitely your answer will be correct. Okay, next. Next, if you see, so ultimately if you understood the things properly, so you will become capital expenditure for your family. So I want that all of you get selected as a IAS officer. So today it is a civil service day. So again I want to wish you. Okay. And I want that you become or you get selected. All of you get selected as officer. Okay. As soon as possible. Okay. So that we will meet with you soon. As soon as possible. Now. Now ultimately next what they can ask you. If you have understood this thing. So normally. Normally, they will ask you the borrowing part. So, if you see that in our case, we are budget deficit. That is why we are talking about borrowing. 
so ultimately you must know the source of boring so if you see the source of boring so there are basically four sources number one that you can take boring from the public that is when i am saying public it means that we are channelizing the savings in an economy we are channelizing the savings in an economy clear so this is what you have to understand okay so we are <coughs> channelizing the savings in an economy number 1 number 2 printing of currency by rbi so this is a second option but here i want to say you i am talking about in general what are the options but if i talk about specific in indian economy this option is not with our country why because we have banned it and this ban has been imposed by a very famous act known as frbm act okay this ban has been or you can say this is banned by a very famous act known as frbm act so this is what you have to understood number 3 number 3 when i talk about third option so you can say government of india can take borrowing from foreign government so this is a third option or third choice that you can take borrowing from foreign government so for example government of india has a choice to take borrowing from any foreign government okay number 4 government of india used to take borrowing from foreign international organization example world bank okay example world bank so ultimately agar aap dekhoge world bank se bhi hum paise uthate okay aur world bank ne kafi sare projects pe bhi hamare fund kare to agar main baat karu world bank ki to world bank has given us money can you give me an example so for example like we have micro irrigation development fund so in that fund money has been given to us by world bank as a loan similarly if you see if you see that we are making dedicated freight corridor or freight corridor east and west so if you see in that one of the project is funded by world bank okay so world bank is also when i am saying funded it means world bank has given us loan there also okay similarly we used to take loan from imf also asian development bank also as well as as well as other international organizations okay so ultimately this is what is the thing so you must know the source of borrowing okay but out of that if if question ask on in general if they ask in general question that from where we can take the borrowing okay so you have to tell that we have four choices but out of that second choice is banned that is by frbm act okay and this is banned since 2006 so 2006 ke baad se humne कभी भी प्रिंटिंग ऑफ करेंसी नहीं करी है बोरिंग पर्पस के लिए अब देखो यहां पर ट्विस्ट है अब यूपीएससी आपसे पूछ सकती है प्रिंटिंग ऑफ करेंसी इज बैंड इन इंडिया अब ये जो स्टेटमेंट है ये पार्शियली करेक्ट है आप यहां पर बोलोगे प्रिंटिंग ऑफ करेंसी इज बैंड ओनली फॉर बोरिंग पर्पस वेयर एज प्रिंटिंग ऑफ करेंसी इज अलाउड फॉर अदर पर्पस अब डिमोनिटाइजेशन के टाइम पे भी तो हमने प्रिंटिंग करी थी सो ड्यूरिंग डिमोनिटेशन टाइम वी हैव प्रिंटेड अ करेंसी ओके तो जहां पर हमने क्या किया था पुराने नोट्स को चेंज किया था नए नोट्स के साथ मतलब रिप्लेस किए थे ओल्ड नोट्स ऑफ 1500 विद 2500 सो वहां पर भी हमने प्रिंटिंग करी थी तो आप बोलोगे प्रिंटिंग हैज बैंड ओनली फॉर बोरिंग पर्पस दिस इज व्हाट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर क्लियर अब अगर मैं बात करूं दीज ऑल सोर्सेज ऑफ बोरिंग आर ऑल्सो नोन एज इफ आई कम टू द टेक्निकल नेम डेफिशियट फाइनेंसिंग Okay, these all sorts of boring 
or came to be known as deficit financing so in exam if they ask you if they ask you that that what are the what are the you can say source of deficit financing okay so you have to tell that these are the all four sources are source of deficit financing now second if you see second if you see now when it comes to printing of currency by the rbi so we have a technical term known for it that is known as that is known as direct monetized deficit now nothing but say in exam they can ask you simple simple question what is direct monetized deficit so you have to tell to the examiner in options if it is given that printing of currency by rbi for borrowing purpose or for fiscal deficit yes you you have to tell to the examiner this point yes this is called direct monetized deficit okay similarly if they ask you what is deficit financing so you have to tell that these all the sources are known as deficit financing okay so ultimately ultimately you know all these things okay now next as i told you that when it comes to source of borrowing so in general there are so in exam if they ask you in general ki what are the source of borrowing for government so here it is not talking about government of india so you have to mark all the four all the four options or all the four statement but if they ask you what are the source of borrowing for government of india so this is specific so when they are asking only for source of government with government so it means they are not interested or you can say they are not focusing on government of india they are focusing in general okay but they are saying that government of india it means they are specific clear so with government of india only three choices are there so already i told you next next <coughs> if you see as i told you that there are four sources number one is you can say public so public means channelizing the savings of the public okay number two is you can say apart from public second if i come to it is rbi printing third if i talk about this rbi printing after that rbi printing what is the next source <coughs> that is foreign government and last is foreign organizations like world bank and this now next they can ask you the impact impact of such borrowings now when we study about impact there you will see that they used to ask <coughs> in that they used to ask one very basic question jab hum impact ki baat karte hain ki if suppose all the borrowing is taken from the public what will be the impact so that will lead to crowding out effect okay crowding out effect jab main crowding out effect ki baat kar raha hu it means what it means what ki crowding see government securities wagera all i'll cover don't worry about it okay government security is you can say just a way or means to take borrowing okay don't worry about it we'll cover government securities also in capital market money market so when we'll do that okay uh one student invincible you are asking sir specific mein kaun kaun sa hoga okay so i am not getting what is your doubt specific mein matlab jahan par hum government of india ki baat kar rahe hain agar jab hum baat kar rahe hain to government of india तो अगर वो स्पेसिफिकली मेंशन कर रहा है क्वेश्चन में गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया तब आपको बोलने की हमारे पास तीन ही सोर्स है बोरिंग के ओके और यू कैन से थ्री डेफिशिएट फाइनेंसिंग वेज ओके नाउ क्राउडिंग आउट इफेक्ट मींस व्हाट जब आप व्हेन यू हैव अ यू नो दैट सेविंग्स आर लिमिटेड इन नेचर ओके सो अल्टीमेटली दीज सेविंग्स आर नीडेड बाय गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया आल्सो फॉर इट्स एक्सपेंडिचर एंड सिमिलरली दीज सेविंग्स आर नीडेड बाय for private sector also for its business activity so ultimately for this limited savings both the two parties are dependent but if suppose majority savings are taken by the government of india so ultimately private sector is left with less saving less money 
that is known as crowding out effect or that term is known as or that situation is known as crowding out effect so simple say rakhna ki in our economy savings are limited and for such limited savings two people are looking for one is government on one side another is another is private sector okay so if majority savings are taken by the government of india okay so private sector is left with very less money okay so that is called that is called crowding out effect okay now rbi printing what is the impact if suppose rbi started printing money for borrowing purpose so again i'll mention it that printing is allowed for other purpose but for borrowing purpose it is not allowed in india but if suppose assume that ki it is allowed so in that case in that case what you will see that it will lead to increase in the money supply in an economy and whenever money supply will increase it will lead to increase in prices of a commodity or you can say inflation and ultimately inflation also has stages okay so it is a mild inflation okay or high inflation so definitely it will lead to high inflation and high inflation has consequences <clears throat> and high inflation has consequences clear so this is the thing clear so this is what you have to understood okay so students are very smart they are replying answers also that's very good so it's a quick revision for you so ultimately ultimately your time for economy re economy revision gets saved okay so ultimately you listen the class so at the end you don't need to revise it again because concepts will be in your mind okay next foreign government so when you take money from foreign government or foreign institutions so there will be a con consequences like there will be effect on exchange rate now can anyone tell me what will be the effect is it appreciation or depreciation of a currency please tell me i am waiting for your answer is it yes hyperinflation no doubt so high inflation here means we are talking about the situation of hyperinflation <coughs> is it appreciation or depreciation mix answers are coming those who are saying depreciation can i know why okay i just want to make your concept clear here again now this is the economy now in every economy there is limited foreign currency so for example assume that there is only one foreign currency dollar forget about any other foreign currency so we talk about only one foreign currency for example dollar okay so you know that in every economy dollars are limited in nature okay so ultimately ultimately assume that assume that my dollars are receive my economy is receiving for example x dollars so how your economy receive x dollars for example for example if your country is exporting products if foreign direct investment is coming similarly you are taking foreign borrowings so suppose this is the condition similarly same x dollars are going out of out out to your country out that is from out from your country they are going out for example when imports are increasing or you can say through imports okay or you can say you are giving foreign borrowing outside okay or you can say indians are investing outsides that is fdi for other country yes or no so ultimately if this is a situation that the number of dollars that are coming in your country through these activities the same number of dollars are going outside suppose this is a situation when this is a situation 
so at that time the exchange rate is for example 50 rupees now suddenly suddenly government of india added more dollars more dollars so for example y dollars so x plus y is the new supply of dollars but but assume that the dollars which are going outside are x only so ultimately whenever supply of dollar increased as whereas on the other hand the dollars which are going outside they are either same constant or reduced okay so in that case you can say we have more supply of dollar but demand for dollar going outside is less when this is a situation that led to appreciation of currency but if it is opposite that dollars are limited in your economy means supply of dollar is limited but more are going outside then it is then it is depreciation so here if you see in our example we have to assume that whatever dollars going outside that demand is constant okay that demand is constant okay but dollars coming in your dollars that are coming in your economy that has increased as compared to the demand so demand is constant but supply of dollar has increased why because foreign why because indian government has taken borrowing from foreign government as well as foreign institution so that will lead to appreciation of currency clear i hope it is clear to you so concept must be clear okay <coughs> okay so concept must be clear so i hope now it is clear when we say appreciation and depreciation so is there anyone jisko abhi bhi doubt hai doubt rakhega to bhai exam se bahar hoga doubt nahi rakhne ka bilkul bhi nahi samjhe see here we are just assuming that ki those who are responsible for sending dollar outside they are they are you can say they are sending constant dollars but those who are responsible for bringing dollars okay so we have seen that has increased okay so then it is appreciation clear okay see we are not showing we are not uh, interested in what is the impact of depreciation and appreciation on exporter importer that we will talk that we will talk in bop chapter don't worry about it okay so this is what again a second type of or you can say question can be asked so first they will ask you deficit financing second they will ask you the impact so i hope if question comes with respect to deficit financing question comes with respect to you can say ap apart from deficit financing what is direct monetized deficit and what is the impact you are in a position to answer it clear now come to another thing sometimes they are used to ask you some things like what is fd so you have to tell that fd is nothing but you can say total expenditure minus minus revenue receipt plus non debt creating capital receipt so your total expenditure is so if i take this year 45 lakh crores cash apne paas iska 1% bhi hota to mere ye lag hota zindagi ka okay okay so 45 lakh crores minus this is the value that i have given you 27.2 lakh crore so it comes out to be 17.8 lakh crores so can i say that this is the total borrowing that i have to take this is the total borrowing that i have to take okay so fd is nothing so if i say in simple language fd is the total borrowing needed by the government needed by the government of india for upcoming financial year so ultimately you know that budget is presented on 
1st of Feb every year. So like this year the budget is again presented on 1st of Feb 2023. Okay. So 1st Feb 2023. So on 2023 finance minister clearly mentioned that this is my total expenditure 45 lakh crore and for that my receipts are or receipts are 27.2 lakh crore. So ultimately <coughs> Ultimately, this is the borrowing that I need. Okay, so it means our running financial year, which starts from, or you can say, which start 20 days back. So we are going to take this much amount as a borrowing. So this is my total borrowing. So FD is equal to total borrowing needed for upcoming financial year. Now come to revenue deficit. Revenue deficit is revenue expenditure minus revenue receipts okay revenue expenditure is revenue expenditure minus revenue receipt now if you see my total revenue my total revenue expenditure is 35 lakh crores okay my total revenue receipt which include tax revenue and non-tax. So it is around 25 lakh crores. So when I subtract it, it comes out to be 10 lakh crores. So it means, it means that, it means that for my total, you can say for my revenue expenditure also I have to take a borrowing. Okay. For my revenue expenditure also I have to take a borrowing. So ultimately I can say how much borrowing is needed. That is 10 lakh crores. For my revenue expenditure also I have to take a borrowing and that is 10 lakh crores. So ultimately can I say that out of 17.8 lakh crores, 10 lakh crore will be given to revenue expenditure. And I am now left with 7.8 lakh crores which will be utilized for capital expenditure. So you have to understand this too. That total, I am taking so much borrowing, 17.8 lakh crores. Where is 10 lakh crore from that? For revenue expenditure. Baki jo bachagi 7.8 lakh crore that I will use for that I will use for capital expenditure. Clear? Clear? Okay. So this is what you have to understood. Next. Next. If you see. If you see next they can ask you effective. Revenue deficit. So if you see effective revenue deficit that was introduced in 2012. Okay, that was introduced in 2012. So what is the formula for effective revenue deficit? RD minus grants given to states. for asset creation okay rd minus grants given to states for asset creation so ultimately whatever grants i am giving for asset creation means which are going to give me returns but not to me but not to government of india but to state government okay grants given to the states for asset creation okay so whatever expenditure or you can say whatever amount or grants are given so you know that grants are part of revenue expenditure so from that we take grants and we exclude it from revenue deficit whatever value comes out that is known as effective revenue deficit now here you have to see the relationship fd will always be more than rd so you can say fd either more than rd or equal to rd but rd cannot be more than fd okay okay similarly similarly RD is always or equal to ERD. So in ke beech mein relation hai. So you have to remember this relation also. Okay. So you have to remember this relation also. Clear? Jab bhi mein paise ki baat karta ho na ki kaash iska 1% bhi ho ye sab ho. 
तो आप लोग लिखना लग जाते हो कमेंट में केमेन आईलैंड केमेन आईलैंड आई हैव टू आई आई थिंक आई हैव टू चेंज माय प्लेस फ्रॉम केमेन आईलैंड आई विल गो टू सम अदर आईलैंड नाउ क्लियर नहीं तो नहीं तो यू मेक मी फेमस लाइक दिस कि वो एक इंस्टीट्यूट में एक सारा इकोनॉमी वाले वो केमेन आईलैंड चले गए ओके नहीं तो अदरवाइज इफ सपोज खान सर इज सींग दिस वीडियो सो डेफिनेटली हिल गोइंग टू आस्क मी आफ्टर क्लास कि भाई ये केमेन आईलैंड क्या है ओके सो अल्टीमेटली अल्टीमेटली यहां पर हमें यहां पर हमें चेंज करनी पड़ेगी लगता है जगह केमेन आईलैंड के अलावा हमें कहीं और भी जाना पड़ेगा ओके नाउ मूविंग फॉर दैट समार सिंह कुरिल आईलैंड ओके okay. no, no, कुरिल वुरिल नहीं जाएंगे यार हम कोई अच्छी जगह जाएंगे डोंट वरी ओके ओके सो अल्टीमेटली रिमेंबर दिस रिलेशन दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ कम टू प्राइमरी डेफिशिएट नाउ प्राइमरी डेफिशिएट इज एफ डी माइनस interest payment so if you see basically the value of primary deficit will tell some are saying thailand okay thailand is you can say place for youngsters it is not for play <laughs> for me okay to meri age ja chuki hai wahan jaane ki clear okay north korea kyun bhej rahe ho bhai mujhe क्लियर सो अल्टीमेटली अल्टीमेटली पीडी इज इक्वल टू एफ डी माइनस इंटरेस्ट पेमेंट ओके सो यहां पर हम बात करते हैं कि जो मैं टोटल बोरिंग ले रहा हूं उस टोटल बोरिंग में से कितनी अमाउंट में इंटरेस्ट पेमेंट के लिए दे रहा हूं मींस आउट ऑफ द टोटल बोरिंग हाउ मच अमाउंट आई एम गिविंग टू फॉर इंटरेस्ट पेमेंट सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर सो आउट ऑफ द टोटल बोरिंग हाउ मच amount is given for interest payment so here you have to remember that value okay <coughs> clear so this is what see if now there can be two things if i take hypothetical value one is pd is equal to zero one is another is pd is equal to fd so which one is good for the economy please tell me in comment section ओके समर सिंह सर अभी तो कूल टूट दिख रहे हैं हम ओके एज होगी एज ओके आई लुक लाइक अरिजीत सिंह ओके सी आई राइट नाउ आई एम टेकिंग योर क्लास फ्रॉम वेरी हैपनिंग प्लेस सो इफ यू हैव विजिटेड टू बैंगलोर दैट इज कोर मंगला सो so where you can say kg center is in bangalore also which is surrounded by so many happening items so if you get a time after class search kor mangla then you will understand and today is <coughs> today is you can say friday also okay okay so i have given you one question now come to the topic okay so i have given you which one is good for which one is good for economy is it is it fd is it pd is equal to 0 or fd or pd is equal to fd see if pd is equal to 0 it means what that whatever total borrowing that i have taken so 17.8 lakh crore that has been spent in interest payment that has been spent in interest payment so pd is equal to 0 is not good for economy but if pd is equal to fd it means whatever total borrowing i have taken i don't have to pay any interest payment so ultimately ultimately the more the value of pd is is near to fd it is good for economy but if it is near to 0 then it is not good for economy clear 
क्लियर <laughs> अरे टेंशन मत लो आज खत्म करके जाऊंगा आपके टॉपिक चाहे बच जाए रात के बारह चाहे बच जाए दो ओके खत्म करके जाएंगे चाहे हमें पढ़ते पढ़ते यहां सोना पड़ जाए पढ़ाते पढ़ाते ओके <laughs> so ultimately ultimately remember this thing okay now come to next part of the topic okay so this is what we have to remember so ultimately rd agar rd is zero hoga that is good for economy but agar pd is, is zero that is not good for economy remember this thing okay pd agar zero hoga that is not good for economy rd agar zero hai to that is good for economy clear so remember these things clear okay so this is what you have to remember now moving further now moving further if i talk about <coughs> if you see so again i summarize for you so number 1 you have to remember the you can say receipts and expenditure so one question asked from this i also told you the numbers also that which is more which is less so you have to remember this thing but remember another thing which i forgot so i i introduce now agar aap revenue expenditure dekhoge Our major revenue expenditure is on interest payment. Number one, number two, it is central sector scheme, and number three, centrally sponsored scheme. So in this way, we are spending on. In this way, we are spending on revenue expenditure also. So ultimately, if they ask you overall schemes, if they if we club these schemes together. then you will say that expenditure on scheme is more than interest payment otherwise if i break these things like as it is given in your budget also so their interest payment as maximum expenditure then central sector scheme and then centrally sponsored scheme so this is what you have to remember then we have seen then we have seen the source of borrowing source of borrowing then we have seen its impact also third we have understood the concept of fd rd erd and pd so i told you that pd must not be zero because it is bad for economy rd must be zero because it is good for economy and the value of fd will always be more than rd or equal to rd so rd cannot be more than fd remember this thing and similarly rd is always more than erd or equal to erd so now you understood this relation also i think okay i hope it is clear to everyone okay <coughs> clear so this is what you have to remember now come to next part now there is a concept of <coughs> now there is a concept of public debt now in public debt there are two component internal debt and external debt now here first of all understand the word what is public what is debt okay first understand word what is debt see okay see if you ask what is debt see now here when i talk about fd fd is for future borrowings that i am going to take debt means whatever already i have taken so it means first feb so if suppose today is first feb finance minister is presenting that i need this much borrowing so it means she is talking about fd so nirmala sitaraman ji is talking about fd but if she is talking about that this is the already borrowing which my country or which my government has taken in past either by my same government or by some other government but still current government is paying the interest payment for that that is known as debt okay nahi samajh aaya to understand like this ki now you started handling the your father company so when you started handling your father company so you make a budget for your company so you will tell i need this much borrowing to run the company 
but you have seen that already your father grandfather and your grandfather father you can say forefather has taken some borrowing for which your company is still paying debt or for which company is still paying interest payment that is known as debt okay so this is a debt so ultimately when we talk about public debt so i am coming to the word public also when i talk about internal debt we used to maintain the record of what government of india has taken from what whatever debt that government of india has taken from internal sources so in internal sources we have two sources one is public plus rbi printing of currency so ultimately ultimately there may be possibility that in 2000 whoever is running the government they have taken money from the rbi by printing and they have promised to return it after 30 years so it means still that money still the current government is paying interest for that yes or no or although printing has been banned after 2006 okay so ultimately internal source external source here means government of india has taken money from foreign government and foreign institutions as well as you can say resident of india so people like you may you and me has taken money from non resident so we used to maintain that record also in external debt okay now here you are maintaining the record of public also that is why we call it public debt but but only only in that case where where you can say that money has been taken by indian person that is from outside clear is it clear is it clear please tell me in comment section okay to agar aap dekhoge yahan par jo resident of india hai okay they have taken money from non resident so this is what you have to remember now why we include this thing because agar if any indian person defaulted who has taken money from outside then then there is a contingent liability on the government of india to return that money okay then there is a contingent liability on the government to return that money okay clear so every time if you see if suppose you need a borrowing you have to take permission from the finance ministry then only you can take borrowing from outside although when you are taking money from within the country there you don't have to take permission okay but whenever you are planning to take borrowing from outside you have to take permission from government of india okay so this is what you have to remember clear and whenever government of india has given you permission so it means they are taking guarantee for that ki this person will return the money otherwise otherwise liability comes on the government of india clear so that is why we include so agar question i public debt kya hai to public debt includes <coughs> includes internal debt and external debt so in internal debt we maintain a record that that how much borrowing has been taken by the government of india or how much past borrowing or debt is there on government of india from internal sources where is in external debt there are two components borrowing taken by government of india from foreign organizations or foreign government plus resident of india has taken borrowing from non resident and this record of public debt is managed by or maintained by rbi is managed by rbi so there was a debate also that from rbi this task has to be given to a special body known as public debt management authority but but government formed this authority but this task is still with the rbi why because rbi is a statutory body we you can say which is made by rbi act but public debt management authority is not a statutory body so it is a you can say passed by executive order 
that is why that is why debt of government of india or you can say public debt is a very sensitive information which cannot be given to anyone which is not having any legal backing clear so that is why this information or you can say it is not given to public debt clear clear that is why it is not given to pdma i hope it is clear to you now come to the next thing frbm act now before i talk about frbm act so we have seen that when we talk about budget so we talk about receipts expenditure borrowing that is which are we are going to take but when we talk about public debt so we are talking about debt or you can say already borrowing taken so this is the new borrowing that we are going to take public debt is already borrowing taken so no doubt whatever 17.8 lakh crores that we are going to take okay is going to become debt next year okay so when next year budget will be presented so it is going to become a debt next year or you can say part of public debt clear now apart from this <clears throat> you will see that whatever we have studied in receipt part okay that will be that will come under consolidated fund of india similarly government used to raise money through some saving schemes like <clears throat> like provident fund sukanya samriddhi yojana that money become a part of public account okay that become a money a part of public account so that money is not a part of you can say consolidated fund of india similarly there are other saving schemes like kisan vikas patra okay plus you know that government used to collect money through some schemes like atal pension fund or atal pension yojana okay similarly we have talked about in agriculture pradhan mantri kisan mandhan yojana so there also there also money is collected okay there also money is collected so all that money as i told you it goes to pension fund and ultimately it is a part of public account like provident fund is collected in provident fund first and then it is a part of public account so ultimately ultimately whatever money is collected by the government through its multiple schemes in public account they are known as other central liabilities other central liabilities so this is what you have to remember so they are known as what other central liabilities clear <clears throat> so ultimately if you see ultimately if you see government of india okay or rbi used to present one annual report with a title known as public debt and other central liabilities so you must know this thing okay so report is annually presented by rbi and that is known as public debt and other central liabilities clear okay some are saying largely yojana okay yes you can say that also okay clear some are advising sir health is wealth please work out definitely if i get a time i'll, I'll have work out don't worry about it clear okay but you get selected first okay please tell me any doubt i don't want you carry any doubt okay now moving further 
so other central liabilities next <coughs> if you see ronaldo definitely i'll play i'll definitely i'll play football with you once you get selected okay now come to frbm act so first of all frbm act so frbm starts for fiscal responsibility and budget management act so full form is fiscal responsibility and budget management act so this act was introduced in 2003 okay 2003 number 1 and we started implementing it from 2004 number 2 number 3 this act has some salient features now what are those salient features number 1 it talks about target that is target in terms of fd and rd target in terms of fd and rd so if you see okay so if you see that fd and rd okay if you see fd and rd so it frbm act used to give a targets in terms of fd and rd so ultimately in 2003 initially when this act was introduced in the parliament so they have given a target for fd that is 3% of gdp and rd target is zero so in 2003 4 they have given that government must achieve a 3% of gdp gdp by 2009 10 similarly rd must be zero which has to be achieved which has to be achieved again by the same time period 2000 9 10 so this is what you have to understood so ultimately ultimately if you observe this number what it says that government can take a total borrowing but that total borrowing must not exceed 3% of gdp clear number 1 number 2 whatever total borrowing that you are taking that must be utilized only for capital expenditure not for revenue expenditure so this is what it is talking about clear clear so this is what you have to remember clear okay so i hope it is clear to you okay now second thing now second thing that you will focus here if you see second thing it imposes ban on printing of currency so already i told you printing of currency for borrowing purpose since 2006 so ultimately if you want again want to borrow money by printing okay if you again want to borrow money through printing so you have to amend the frbm act number 3 it imposes limit on the government with respect to other central liabilities okay it imposes limit ki government kitna central liabilities ko le sakti hai third number 4 government has to submit quarterly report quarterly report with respect to receipts and expenditure with respect to receipts and expenditure so this is again you have to remember clear clear so i want that everyone should focus on i am seeing your com comments so please focus on you can say concept that is more important than you fight for gym or not okay that is not important clear so ultimately quarterly report has to be given okay so when i am saying quarterly report it means quarterly report with respect to what is the status of receipts and expenditure 
that you are going to collect in financial year okay so for example if i am saying that 45 lakh crore has to be spent in one year so it does not mean that you spend 45 lakh crores okay it does not mean that you spend 45 lakh crores in one go okay so aap ek mahine mein nahi kharch karoge usko pure 12 mahine ke andar kharch karoge that is in a complete financial year okay next if you see fifth fifth government has to submit three annual report now one annual report is with respect to fiscal policy fiscal policy statement another is fiscal policy strategy statement and third is macroeconomic framework statement macroeconomic framework statement so you have to submit these three reports annual report and the fourth report we added in 2012 and that is known as mid term expenditure framework framework statement okay so there are total four reports but if suppose upsc ask you how many annual reports were there initially so initially three reports fiscal policy statement fiscal policy strategy statement and macroeconomic framework and the fourth report was added in 2012 and that is known as macroeconomic framework sorry mid term not macro mid term expenditure framework mid term expenditure framework clear so this is what you have to remember okay next 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 so this is our, with respect to frbm act now to review the frbm act nk singh panel or committee was formed by the government of india in 2016 and it has recommended that rather than or you can say government must focus on debt to gdp ratio debt to gdp ratio and he has given the concept of general debt now general debt is nothing but you can say debt of you can say central government debt plus state government debt central government debt and state government debt so when i talk central government debt and state government debt it means central government debt is okay central government debt plus state government debt together known as general debt so nk singh said in 2016 it is 68% of gdp so ultimately states and center together has a debt of 68% clear see uh, 15th finance commission head is also okay so some are saying bottle hai so hata dete okay so if you see <coughs> if you see 15 finance commission head is also nk singh but there is separate committee that is known as nk singh committee so he has talked about he has talked about debt to gdp ratio so he said that rather than focusing on future borrowings no doubt you focus on future borrowings but you have to take care of past borrowings also which you have already taken past debt so he came out with a number that the past borrowing of both center and state together known as general debt so it comes out to be 68% of GDP in 2016-17 when he has given the report. So he wants that it has to be reduced to 60% of GDP by 22-23. Clear? So this is what recommendation he has given. Clear? Now come to <coughs> last point. Then we will shift to new chapter. This is monetary policy. <coughs> now when I talk about you can say budget if you see that after 2015 there were so many changes in made in budget sabse pehle what we have done railway budget is merged with railway budget is merged with general budget so earlier before 2015 16 
you can see that two separate budgets are there railway budget and general budget but now there is only one single budget number two number two <clears throat> apart from this railway budget what another changes advancement of budget date advancement of budget date so ultimately ultimately earlier budget was presented third or fourth week of feb but now it is presented on first of feb every year number 3 <coughs> number 3 government has removed vote on account or you can say vote on account concept is removed so this is a part of polity vote on account has removed okay so vote on account is nothing but earlier budget used to be or budget budget used to took a time of 50 60 days so ultimately budget is presented or budget process goes till the month of you can say april and automatically financial financial year start from 1st april so department needs money to spend so what government used to do or what parliament used to do they give 1/6 of the budget as a vote on account clear or you can say 1/6 of the total budget so that is known as vote on account clear <coughs> clear next we have done away with plan and non plan expenditure so earlier there were concept of plan and non plan but now there is no concept of plan and non plan expenditure clear so this is what you have to remember and in 2021 we introduced e paper or e budget that is paperless budget so tabs are given okay paperless budget so this is what you have to remember okay now last concept here or last fact here you know that financial year is starts from 1st april to 31st march so there is a demand that this financial year must be shifted to calendar year so calendar year is 1st january to 31st december so that is called calendar year so there is a you can say recommendation of one committee which which says that it should be shifted from 1st april to 1st january that is that is 1st january to 31st december and the name of that committee is shankracharya committee okay so name of that committee is shankracharya committee clear so this is what with respect to fiscal policy so if you have any doubt you can ask so i'll give you 2 3 minutes so want to so you want to ask any doubt you can ask with respect to only fiscal policy so that so that you want to know some concept i'll reply you financial sector legislative reforms commission is important for your uh, you can say kamal nayan is important for your mains you will never find any question from this so if you have mains marathon there i'll tell you shankracharya committee has given recommendation that financial year your current financial year starts from first of april to 31st march so it should be shifted from here to that is that is you can shift it to uh, you can say 1st january to 31st december clear now uh, okay 
Don't worry, an honest, an honest man, everything will be cleared. Sir, my growth chapter is weak. How much time it will take to start? No, it will start now. You will listen to all of it, so it will be better. Because the economy is, you can say, interlinked. Okay. Clear? Any doubt you can ask? See, Gita Krishnan committee has nothing to do with, uh, you can say, Kamal Nayan. So we are talking about fiscal policy. It is with respect to, you can say, frauds and all those. Clear? Ultimately, ultimately, when it comes to Gita Krishnan, so, so no doubt they talked about expenditure reforms. So ultimately, it's again suggestions. So nothing to do in this topic. So again, means ke liye important hai. Job board or financial sector legislative reforms or yeh sab Gita Krishnan. They are important for means only. Okay, Kamal Nayan. I hope you understood. Okay. Don't worry, Invincible, I'll tell you the factual part also, index and all those, wherever it is needed. Okay. So, I'm seeing your doubts. Clear. So, now we'll move further to the next topic. clear see ritika uh, ritika mandal mg narega is not going to generate revenue for the government see i hope i understand why you are asking this question again come to your basic concept you are thinking that revenue asset is created for a individual means government is giving salary to the person but here we are talking about that is it creating return for the government of india so we are talking about, you can say, returns for the government of India, not we are talking about returns for the individual. So if the government is giving me money, I will give it a little bit of money to the government. Okay, so ultimately, ultimately we are talking about the returns for government of India, not with respect to individuals. Clear? What is your doubt, anonymous man? Okay, agriculture year. See, basically when you are saying that uh, financial year must be shifted to calendar year, the purpose is to link your link your budget session or you can say budget with agriculture year only. Abhi kya hota hai, agar mein aapko do minute mein samjhau, abhi kya hai ki 1st April ko aapka financial year start hota hai, to departments tak paise jo hota hai na, May June tak aane shuru hota hai. Ultimately, jab wo schemes implement karte hai, tab tak khari season nikal jata hai. Okay, so if they get the money from January 1st, then ultimately they can have a better management. Clear? That is why it is demanded by Shankaracharya Committee to... to... Shankaracharya Committee to shift to calendar year. Clear? Okay. See, impact I have already covered, but still I tell you, that whenever you are taking from foreign organization, it is going to appreciate your currency. Okay. Now moving further to the next chapter, that is monetary policy. Okay. So quickly we will cover the monetary policy also. Now in monetary policy, 
द इंपॉर्टेंट सब टॉपिक इज टूल्स टूल्स ऑफ मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी ओके टूल्स ऑफ मॉनिटरी पॉलिसीज अगेन वन ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक सो अगर मैं टूल्स की बात करूं तो आपके पास दो तरह के टूल्स हैं क्वांटिटेटिव टूल्स एंड क्वालिटेटिव टूल्स ओके तो हमारे पास दो तरह के टूल्स हैं क्वांटिटेटिव टूल्स एंड क्वालिटेटिव टूल्स ओके सो क्वांटिटेटिव टूल्स इंक्लूड बैंक रेट सो यू कैन नोट डाउन सो क्वांटिटेटिव टूल्स इंक्लूड बैंक रेट ओके रेपो रेट रिवर्स रेपो रेट मार्जिनल स्टैंडिंग फैसिलिटी सो एल राइट फुल मार्जिनल स्टैंडिंग फैसिलिटी ओके देन कैश रिजर्व रेशो ओके स्टैट्यूटरी लिक्विडिटी रेशो एस एल आर ओके सो दीज आर द थिंग्स वेर एज क्वालिटेटिव टूल्स सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट बैंक रेट इज देयर रेपो रेट इज देयर रिवर्स रेपो रेट इज देयर वन मोर इज ऑल्सो देयर मार्जिनल स्टैंडिंग फैसिलिटी ओके कैश रिजर्व रेशो फिफ्थ सिक्स एंड सेवेंथ इज ओपन मार्केट ऑपरेशन ओ एमओ ओपन मार्केट ऑपरेशन ओके एंड स्टैंडिंग डिपॉजिट फैसिलिटी स्टैंडिंग डिपॉजिट facility so there are total 8 quantitative tools okay so the standing deposit facility is used by rbi in april 2022 or you can say april may 2022 they introduce this okay clear clear now when it comes to qualitative tools when it comes to qualitative tools so qualitative tools include basically your moral suasion so it is again important so isko halke mat lena kabhi ki ye cheez to aati nahi hai okay moral suasion number 2 direct action number 3 credit credit rationing or rationing of credit sometime use as rationing of credit also okay so direct action red credit rationing margin requirement margin requirement and the next is consumer credit control or regulation कंज्यूमर क्रेडिट कंट्रोल एंड रेगुलेशन तो अगर आप देखोगे तो अगर आप देखोगे तो इसमें से इसमें से आपके तीन तरह के क्वेश्चन फ्रेम होते हैं टूल्स में से सो देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ क्वेश्चन दैट कैन बी फ्रेम इन टूल्स नंबर वन दे यूज टू आस्क अ लिस्ट ओके लिस्ट सो दे विल गिव यू अ लिस्ट लाइक दिस दे विल गिव यू अ लिस्ट लाइक दिस कि कि विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज और आर क्वांटिटेटिव टूल्स और क्वालिटेटिव टूल्स और दे विल गिव अ लिस्ट लाइक दिस कि विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर टूल्स ऑफ मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ऑल दीज थिंग्स ओके यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ऑल दीज थिंग्स क्लियर सो ऑल द लिस्ट 
that is what your qualitative and quantitative okay so what it includes that is qualitative and quali quantitative what it include so you have to remember this list second they will ask you the meaning of these tools so this is the second type of question that can be framed and third they can ask you they can ask you the application part they can ask you the application part so this is what you have to remember okay yes uh, kamal nayan market stabilization scheme so when you are using tools that together is known as market stabilization scheme okay okay kamal nayan clear so use of quantitative tool itself is a market stabilization scheme clear so that is a term when you are using tools so basically you are using stabilization so you are stabilizing the currency clear so ultimately if you see three types of question has been asked so i have given you the list so if you remember this names so one type of question is easily you can solve clear chandrashil rao rajput i am not able to get your doubt what you want to ask sir ang ke kitna paisa le sakti hai at repo rate पर करते हैं अभी बात ओके okay. करते हैं बात अभी कितना क्या लेते हैं डोंट वरी अबाउट इट सो वी आर हेयर फॉर दैट ओनली ओके सो अल्टीमेटली लिस्ट क्वेश्चन इज वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन सो अगेन मैं कहूंगा कि फ्री के मार्क्स होते हैं इसमें अगर आपको लिस्ट याद है नाउ कम टू द मीनिंग ऑफ टूल्स तो फर्स्ट विल सी द बैंक रेट और यू कैन से चेंज द स्लाइड सो विल सी द मीनिंग now when you talk about bank rate so bank rate is a rate at which you can say your commercial banks used to take loan commercial banks used to take loan from the rbi okay and that is for long term and whenever they are taking the loan so no collateral is needed okay no collateral is needed so this, that is called you can say bank rate so i can say that banks commercial banks are taking loan from the RBI, okay, and such loan has been taken for long term. So that is called that is called you can say bank rate. Now, whenever you are taking loan from the RBI, or you can say whenever commercial bank is taking loan from the RBI, no collateral is needed. Third. bank rate will further <coughs> bank rate will further help to decide the minimum lending rate of a banks so whatever banks are giving you okay whatever banks loan that you take from the banks okay whatever loan that you take from the banks okay so banks used to <coughs> banks used to decide their lending rate on the basis of bank rate now some people used to create a confusion like this ki agar aap dekhoge minimum lending rate can be decided in two ways one is mclr and another is external benchmark rate okay in mclr you are taking into consideration the factor of bank rate and in external benchmark rate no doubt you take for example you take t bills or you can say you set your you can say rate of interest in a bank with the help of t bills but ultimately again t bills whatever rate in the form of discount value or face value although no doubt i am going to cover that that is decided again on the basis of bank rate okay that is decided again on the basis of bank rate so ultimately factor of bank rate is indirectly in t bills also ab ab some people used to get confused in that ओके भाई टी बिल का भी तो रेट बैंक रेट से ज्यादा ही होता है हमेशा ओके सो इट इज नॉट सेपरेट इट इज कनेक्टेड टू दैट ओनली सो आरबीआई जिस रेट पे टी बिल्स को सेल करती है ओके दैट इज दैट इज यू कैन से दे आर गिविंग मोर देन बैंक रेट ओनली क्लियर सो आपको आपको इस चीज समझनी पड़ेगी कि एक्सटर्नल बेंचमार्क रेट में यू टेक सम फैक्टर्स लाइक वन इज टी बिल्स ओके सो दैट इज अगेन हैज अ फैक्टर ऑफ बैंक रेट 
क्लियर तो आपको पूरा लिंकेज पता होना चाहिए इसका पूरा लिंकेज पता होना चाहिए ऑल दो नॉट फॉर प्रिलिम्स बट आई एम टेलिंग यू इन जनरल ओके तो आपको पता होना चाहिए टी बिल्स का भी रेट कैसे आता है बैंक रेट से ज्यादा होता है तो आई हैव सीन दैट सम पीपल यूज टू डिनाइट कि नहीं नहीं ये अलग है ये अलग है ओके okay. ये अलग नहीं है ये उसके बाद आप देखोगे बैंक रेट से ज्यादा ही रहेगा चाहे आप कैलकुलेट कर लो एमसीएलआर से चाहे टी बिल से तो यहां पर कुछ अलग फैक्टर्स है यहां पर कुछ अलग फैक्टर है लाइक like, एमसीएलआर के अंदर आप लेते हो एवरेज ऑफ दीज रेट्स जो हम पढ़ेंगे अभी रेपो रेट रिवर्स रेपो रेट बैंक रेट ओके सो यू यूज टू टेक दैट रेट ऑल्सो यू यूज टू टेक टेन और प्रीमियम ऑल्सो प्लस नेगेटिव कैरी ऑन सी so all the no doubt to uh, no need to worry but ultimately these are the those rates which will further decide the lending rate so minimum lending rate is the rate which banks used to charge from its client people like you and me clear so this is what you have to remember okay next if you see <coughs> bank rate is aligned to msf so ultimately when i am saying msf so so either either bank rate is more than msf or equal to msf but not less than msf so it is aligned to msf so this is what you have to remember this is what you have to remember okay so bank rate is aligned to msf okay clear so this is what you have to remember now come to next रेपो रेट नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल रिमेंबर रेपो रेट एंड रिवर्स रेपो रेट दे आर पार्ट ऑफ पॉलिसी रेट ओके पॉलिसी रेट एंड एम एस एफ टूगेदर आर नोन एज लिक्विडिटी एडजस्टमेंट फैसिलिटी ओके सो दे आर ऑल्सो नोन एज लिक्विडिटी एडजस्टमेंट फैसिलिटी क्लियर सो दिस इज अगेन यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट रेपो रेट रिवर्स रेपो रेट टूगेदर नोन एज पॉलिसी रेट ओके एंड पॉलिसी रेट प्लस एम एस एफ टूगेदर नोन एज लिक्विडिटी एडजस्टमेंट फैसिलिटी सो आई कैन से रेपो रिवर्स रेपो एंड एम एस एफ टूगेदर नोन एज लिक्विडिटी एडजस्टमेंट फैसिलिटी एल ओके so first of all you must clear about this okay anul i'll come i'll whatever doubt is there i'll come you can say once let me finish the topic then i'll come to that again don't worry about it because basically i'll tell you mclr and uh, external bench rate once once i'll cover the t bills so don't worry about it i'll tell your all doubt if still it is not clear okay clear now when we talk about repo rate repo rate again you will see that it is a rate okay it is a rate at which commercial bank used to take borrowing from the rbi okay borrowing from the rbi and that is for and that is for short term and whenever they are taking borrowing from the rbi they used to give they used to give you can say collateral and those collaterals are rbi approved securities okay so those collateral are rbi approved securities so collateral means something has been given as a something has been given as a you can say something has been given as a mortgage okay and that collateral must be you can say rbi approved securities okay rbi approved securities now come to reverse repo rate now reverse repo rate is opposite of opposite of repo rate but we never use a word that rbi is taking loan so we used to say that when commercial bank are depositing their money to the rbi that is called as reverse repo rate so repo rate mein hum kya kar rahe hain commercial bank loan le raha hai kisse rbi se so money is going coming from rbi to rbi to commercial bank and commercial bank in return is giving what government securities क्लियर यहां पर हम क्या कर रहे हैं रेपो रेट रिवर्स रेपो रेट के अंदर कि अब बैंक्स पैसे दे रहे हैं किसको आरबीआई को तो आप ऐसे भी समझ सकते हो रेपो रेट में हम क्या कर रहे हैं अगर सपोज ऑन वन साइड आरबीआई इज देयर ऑन अदर साइड कमर्शियल बैंक इज देयर 
तो हम क्या कर रहे हैं आरबीआई रेपो रेट के अंदर पैसे दे रहे हैं किसको विल मेक अ साइन ऑफ रूपी ओके किसको दे रहा है बैंक को एंड बैंक इन रिटर्न क्या दे रहे हैं आरबीआई अप्रूव सिक्योरिटीज ओके आरबीआई अप्रूव सिक्योरिटीज क्लियर क्लियर आरबीआई अप्रूव सिक्योरिटीज नेक्स्ट इफ यू सी इफ यू सी रिवर्स रेपो रेट में हम क्या कर रहे हैं ऑपोजिट कर रहे हैं सो इल चेंज द कलर सो बैंक इज गिविंग मनी टू द आरबीआई सो वी विल नॉट यूज द वर्ड लोन बैंक इज गिविंग लोन टू द आरबीआई बैंक इज डिपोजिटिंग देयर मनी टू द आरबीआई ओके एंड अल्टीमेटली RBI is giving securities. RBI approved securities. So reverse repo rate is opposite of repo rate. And repo and reverse repo rate are also known as ready forward contract. They are also known as ready forward contract. It means it is like this: if suppose I have given you something, okay, at thirty thousand, or you can say ten thousand rupees. So I will come back after some days and take back my, you can say whatever I have given you, take back my that thing and give your money back with rate of interest. ओके सो सपोज अगर 10 परसेंट रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट है एज्यूम कर लो तो मैं आपको दस हजार रुपए दे रहा हूं अभी दस हजार ले रहा हूं आपसे और उसके बदले कुछ प्रोडक्ट दे कुछ आपके पास मॉडगेज रख रहा हूं कुछ टाइम के बाद आऊंगा वो अपना आइटम लूंगा और आपको ग्यारह हजार लूंगा क्लियर सो दिस इज कॉल्ड वी आर डूइंग इन रेपो एंड रिवर्स रेपो रेट ओके नाउ ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दैट रिवर्स रेपो रेट इज लेस देन रेपो रेट okay reverse repo rate is always less than repo rate so this is what you have to understand okay chandrashil rao wait for a time i'll cover your doubts also let me complete it okay i know that you know things but you have to maintain your patience here okay so let me go with the flow so whatever doubts are coming to in your mind you can ask me once i finish the topic okay so ultimately i hope reverse repo rate is clear now next <coughs> we'll talk about we'll talk about marginal standing facility in marginal standing facility also you can say banks are taking loan from the rbi and whenever they are taking loan okay so they have to they have to give some collateral and those collateral are rbi approved securities now you will see that in repo rate also we are taking loan in msf also we are taking loan so what is the difference here that msf is always more than repo rate okay and in repo rate and msf there is a limit so if suppose i am a bank i need borrowing from the rbi so ultimately i can access rbi but but there is a limit so under repo rate i can take money up to certain limit only if i have exhausted that limit so i have to move to msf in msf also there is a limit if i have exhausted that also then i have to move to bank rate but in bank rate there is no limit why logic is very simple rbi is known as lender of last resort so ultimately agar usme bhi humne limit laga di limit laga di to bank kahega ki aapne to limit laga di to then why you are regarded as lender of last resort so ultimately there is no limit on bank rate but in repo rate and and msf is there is a limit so ultimately ultimately you have to understood under repo rate if rate of interest is 4% so msf will be more than that for example 5% and bank rate will further more than you can say 5% that is 6% so there is a relationship repo rate more than msf msf more than bank rate but recently if you see recently msf and bank rate are same so this is due to certain reasons okay so that i'll tell you later okay so if you see recently due to disturbance due to disturbance bank rate and msf are same okay so due to you can say global disturbance bank rate and msf has been deliberately maintained same so i'll tell you the logic also but ultimately if you see normal times when there is no any global disturbance or glo no economic disturbance at global level as well as such disturbance does not have any impact so there you will see that bank rate and 
that is bank rate msf or this is the relationship between that now ultimately if you see reverse repo rate is less than repo rate so there is a relation okay now reverse repo rate further decide the deposit rate in a bank okay reverse repo rate further decide the deposit rate in a bank now bank rate further decide the lending rate of banks so ultimately when you go to a bank so you have seen that when you put your money in saving account they used to give they used to give you the you can say some deposit rate for example 2 or 3 percent but when you go to the same bank for loan they charge you a lending rate of 10 percent 11 percent so there is a gap so this gap is only responsible for generating profit for the profit for the bank agar ye dono equal ho gaye deposit rate aur lending rate so ultimately aapka purpose dissolve ho jayega matlab bank loss mein kaam karega fir clear to bank profit ke liye kaam karta hai to ultimately okay ultimately this is what you have to remember okay oh sorry ulta kar diya correct keh rahe ho so reverse repo rate is less than please correct it so i'll make a sign like this reverse repo rate is less than repo rate repo rate is less than msf msf is less than bank rate okay so correct it please clear okay <coughs> okay by mistake apologies okay so ultimately this is a relationship between these three okay that is reverse repo rate repo rate msf and bank rate clear now <coughs> now assume that assume that money supply is x so when x money supply is there so you can say repo rate at that time is 4% for example okay so now we are going to see the application part okay so when x money supply is there repo rate is 4% okay now suddenly money supply increased that is from x plus y immediately what will be the action of you can say what will be the change in our repo rate you will increase the repo rate you will increase the repo rate means means from 4% you will make it for example 5% now what is the objective of making it 5% because you want to snatch this money snatch this money from the market okay when you make it 5 no doubt msf and bank rate will also increase and ultimately lending rate will also increase so ultimately when lending rate will increase it means banks are not going to give money in the future or you can say very less people are going to take loan from the banks at high lending rate because when 4 is the lending rate then then when 4 is the repo rate lending rate was less now lending rate has increased why because repo rate has increased so ultimately at new lending rate no company is going to take borrowing because now borrowing has become expensive so they will again wait that repo rate will again shift to 4% then only we will take boring okay now now it means whatever money supply y is there that will come to the banks why because deposit rate has increased why because deposit rate has increased now banks will say what should i do with this excess deposit because no person is coming and taking loan at such high lending rate why because you have increased repo rate now rbi will say that whatever repo rate whatever deposits you have you give it to me in the form of reverse repo rate and i'll give you rate of interest so this is what you have to remember clear nahi samajh aaya to ek aur chhota sa example leke samjhata hu now you know that assume karo repo rate is 4% assume that repo rate is 4% reverse repo rate is 3% okay and your msf is 5% and when it comes to bank rate bank rate is 6% now when this is the situation deposit rate is 2% assume it and lending rate is for example make it 7% so this is the situation okay now at this situation money supply in the market is for example x rupees 
okay so when this is the situation we are happy now ultimately ultimately suppose money supply increased so it means there is a supply of money in an economy now ultimately the task for the rbi is to extract that money supply so that money supply will be extracted by increasing the repo rate so ultimately the new rates will be 5% 4% 6% and 7% so automatically we change the repo rate other rates will also change and this will become 8% and this will become 3% now ultimately when loans will be costly means 8% it means companies will suppose yahan par koi 1 2 lakh ka loan to le nahi rahe yahan par loan le rahe for example 10 crore to 10 crore pe agar pehle 7% pe mil raha tha now it is on 8% so 1% mein kafi value change ho jayegi so ultimately company which is looking for loan of 10 crore they will stop or they will change their decision or they will wait again that whenever repo rate will reduce will take the borrowing okay so ultimately borrowings are costly it means no new money supply will increase from the banks plus whatever money supply has increased that will come into the banking system why because now banks are giving increased deposit rate now in this scene or in this situation banks will say where to spend this money no one is going to come a loan for us so what to do so so banks will give this money to rbi under reverse repo rate so in this way we are working okay in this way we are working so ultimately if you see there is a relationship between rate and money supply whenever rates are increased money supply get decreased in the market and vice versa okay so there is a inverse relationship between rates and money supply to aapko agar nahi bhi samajh aaya to remember this table okay remember this thing so whenever you increase the money supply or whenever money supply is increased so repo rate you have to decrease the rates so aapke questions aate hain exam ke andar ki if there is increase in the repo rate what will happen to the money supply no doubt if you see this relation it will decrease or if they will say that we want to increase the money supply in an economy so what action must be taken by the banks so ultimately rbi or monetary policy committee so you will say that you want to increase the money supply it means repo rate bank rate they have to be reduced clear so you have to remember this relation so ultimately application part will be solved okay application part will be solved clear so this is what you have to remember okay so i hope it is clear to you okay so i hope it is clear to you please tell me is it clear or not see uh, chandrashekar chand it's chandrashil rao rajput if you see uh, that is a defect in monetary policy ki banks kam nahi kar rahe okay ya bada nahi rahe okay so that is an issue उसके लिए हमारे पास क्वालिटेटिव टूल्स है ना ओके सो आपको मैंने बोला कि आपके तीन तरह के क्वेश्चन आते हैं लिस्ट एप्लीकेशन एंड एंड योर योर मीनिंग्स ओके सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दो थिंग्स ओके नाउ कम टू सी आर आर एंड एस एल आर सो यू नो दैट एवरी बैंक यूज टू हैव डिपोजिट or you can say they collect deposits so deposits are of two type current account and saving account which is known as demand deposits plus fixed deposit and rd which is known as time deposit so deposit is according to you but if you see but if you see deposits from the point of view of government of india or you can say from banks not government of india these deposits are liabilities okay demand liability and time liability 
ओके डिमांड लाइबिलिटी एंड टाइम लाइबिलिटी सो वंस यूपीएससी इज आज का क्वेश्चन ओके वन यूपीएससी वंस यूपीएससी आज का क्वेश्चन दैट वॉट इज डिमांड लाइबिलिटी एंड टाइम लाइबिलिटी और डिमांड लाइबिलिटी एंड टाइम लाइबिलिटी इज रिलेटेड टू वॉट सो दे आर रिलेटेड टू योर बैंकिंग सेक्टर सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर नाउ वेन वी टॉक अबाउट सी आर आर एंड एस एल आर वेन एवर सर्टन परसेंटेज ऑफ दीज टोटल डिपॉजिट दैट बैंक हैज टू गिव टू आर बी आई दैट इज नोन एज सी आर आर बट हेयर परसेंटेज ऑफ डिपॉजिट so we call net deposit so some deposit we used to adjust from total deposit so like given to someone else like some other bank okay so when you take into net deposit okay percentage of net deposit but for your exam you don't have to confuse between total or net so ultimately you remember like this ki proportion of deposit that banks give it to the rbi that is known as crr proportion of deposit that banks keep with themselves that is known as slr so you don't have to become a banker कुछ लोग इसके अंदर डिटेल में चल जाते हैं नॉट रिक्वायर्ड बिकॉज अगर डिटेल देखोगे तो इसमें काफी चीजें हैं ओके सो आज तक तो पूछी है नहीं कि यूपीएससी जब से हो रहा है इफ यू सी द पास्ट ईयर क्वेश्चन तो अभी भी नहीं पूछेगा डोंट वरी अबाउट इट ओके ओके तो आपको पेपर को डी करना आना चाहिए अब कई एक्सपर्ट होते हैं हमारे यहां तो वो कर देते हैं इस पर कि मतलब कि आप इस पे अगर देखोगे कई स्टूडेंट मेरे को बोलते हैं सर ये भी करना है ये भी करना है इसके सो नो नीड टू लाइक लाइक वन स्टूडेंट इज आस्किंग कितनी लिमिट है भाई अब मैं कहना चाहूंगा नाम है स्टूडेंट का अगेन एल भूल भूल गया हाँ चंद्रशील चंद्रशील राव राजपूत ऑल दो आई एम नो इशू इन टेलिंग यू द लिमिट ऑल्सो बट क्यू इंफॉर्मेशन कैरी करके लेके जाना चाहते हो टेल मी वन रीजन की वाई यू वॉन्ट टू ओवरलोड योर अगर इकोनॉमी का एक भी क्वेश्चन दिखा दो अगर वो नंबर पूछते हैं तो क्लियर तो अल्टीमेटली यूपीएससी नंबर्स पूछता ही नहीं है हाँ अगर आप बैंकिंग वैंकिंग के पेपर दे रहे हो देन यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ओके सो अल्टीमेटली हेयर आई एम फॉर पीटी मैराथन एंड फॉर यूपीएससी क्लियर ओके क्लियर डोंट वरी अगर कुछ इंपॉर्टेंट नंबर होगा तो आई टेल यू क्लियर ओके तो so, अगर यहां पर आप देखोगे एसएलआर के अंदर परसेंटेज ऑफ डिपॉजिट दैट बैंक टू कीप विद देम सेल्फ दैट इज नोन एज दैट इज नोन एज एसएलआर बट वेयर एज परसेंटेज ऑफ डिपॉजिट दैट गोज विद आरबीआई दैट इज नोन एज यू कैन से सीआरआर सो हेयर हेयर इट इज इन कैश फॉर्म हेयर इट इज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ यू कैन से कैश ओके आरबीआई अप्रूव सिक्योरिटीज सो कैन एनी वन टेल मी वॉट आर आरबीआई अप्रूव सिक्योरिटीज and third you can say gold and we also take into account interbank account so if one bank has given money to another bank that is also taken as slr okay interbank account okay now rbi approved securities okay are those securities which are approved by rbi so if you see there are you can say t bills which we call treasury bills rbi approved securities cash management bill they are also rbi approved securities third if you see apart from this okay apart from this t bills cash management bill third if you see <coughs> dated government securities and fourth when we talk about this thing so there is state development loans also they all are rbi approved securities so this is what you have to remember <coughs> okay so agar kal ko question aata hai upsc mein rbi approved securities kya hai to ye charo ko hum rbi approved securities bolte hain okay whereas municipal bonds they are not rbi approved securities they are not rbi approved securities okay now come to open market operation that is the next term okay
रेपो रेट पे चंद्रशील कभी भी अनलिमिटेड पैसा नहीं मिलता ओके okay, याद रखना रेपो रेट पे हमेशा लिमिटेड पैसा है ओके okay, रेपो रेट्स पे कभी भी अनलिमिटेड पैसा नहीं मिलता बैंक्स को याद रखना ओके रेपो रेट पे हमेशा लिमिट है क्लियर ओके क्लियर सो दिस इज व्हाट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ओके नाउ मूविंग फर्दर ओके नाउ मूविंग फर्दर If I talk about open market operation, so open market operation is nothing but buying and selling of government securities by the RBI directly in the market. That is known as open market operation. Okay, that is known as open market operation. Clear? So this is what you have to remember. Okay. That is known as open market operation. Now, one student is asking incremental CRR. See, incremental CRR concept we have introduced in 2016 during demonetization time period. So, in that time period, we have seen in during demonetization time period, we have seen that हमने करा क्या था demonetization में कि immediately during the demonetization time period, banks have banks have deposit with them. So, whatever deposit they have only during demonetization time period. So, for that For that, RBI has said that whatever you are getting, hundred percent, you give it to us. Okay, only only during that time period. So, 8 November को हमने demonetization decide किया था, मतलब announce किया था, और 10 दिन का time दिया था notes को replace करने के लिए. For example, so whatever deposit you have in this time time period, for that hundred percent CRR is allowed. Okay, why? Because if we have not done this thing, so banks will be flooded with deposits. and ultimately interest rate will fell so that is why to pro, to avoid that event we come with a concept of incremental crr clear clear chandrashil uh, definitely i want to resolve your doubt here only but i have to cover other things also so i request you that uh, you can take my number from management okay not today but tomorrow so you can call me definitely i'll solve your doubt okay so i'll wait for your call <coughs> clear because because i am not getting you are talking about this thing okay okay now come to moral suasion moral suasion is like when any bank is not implementing the monetary policy rates means whenever repo rates are changed so we expect that banks also change their lending rate and deposit rate when they are not doing so so we call it we call it we used to have you can say we used to say that banks or rbi used to conduct a meeting with such banks that is called moral suasion so informally bula ke samjhata hai now come to next direct action in direct action basically इन डायरेक्ट एक्शन एस डी एफ बता देते यार ठीक है इन डायरेक्ट एक्शन बेसिकली वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वॉट डायरेक्ट एक्शन के अंदर इफ सपोज स्टिल आफ्टर नॉट यू कैन से इंप्लीमेंटिंग मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी आरबीआई यूज टू इंपोज अ फाइन कि आप मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी नहीं कर रहे इंप्लीमेंट तो डायरेक्ट एक्शन होता है ओके नेक्स्ट अगर आप देखोगे मार्जिन रिक्वायरमेंट नाउ वेन एवर वेन एवर यू गो टू अ बैंक सो समाइम्स बैंक गिव यू लोन विदाउट एनी को लेटरल Sometimes bank used to charge a collateral. Now, for example, if suppose I have taken just taking one small number, so if I have taken a loan of hundred rupees, either bank will say that there is no collateral needed, or bank will say that yes, you have to put a collateral of hundred or in between. Okay, suppose suppose bank demand be collateral of forty rupees. Okay, so ultimately margin requirement is gap between the loan amount that you are taking and the collateral amount. That you have or collateral that you have kept with the banks. Okay, so वो जो gap होता है उसको हम कहते हैं margin requirement. Clear? Next, 
नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट सर दिस चंद्रशील राव राजपूत यू कैन गेट नंबर फ्रॉम मैनेजमेंट ओके सो डेफिनेटली देल गिव यू माय नंबर ओके जस्ट टेल देम आई एम चंद्रशील राजपूत राव तो आई विल टेल देम की गिव यू माय नंबर डोंट वरी अबाउट इट ओके नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट इज क्रेडिट रेशनिंग now in credit rationing what we are doing we are giving loan to certain sectors okay we are giving loan to certain sectors but for some sectors the loan rate has been deliberately kept less that is called credit rationing okay now consumer credit regulation what is consumer credit regulation in consumer credit regulation whenever you go to a bank or whenever you go to take purchase any mobile phone so you know that there are some person they are talking about that you have to pay this much down payment and that rest of the payment you can take as a loan and whatever loan you have taken that you have to return in this this time period that is known as that is known as consumer control regulation so jo bhi guidelines hoti hai with respect to emi down payment when it has to be returned that is decided or you can say okay that is known as consumer credit regulation now some student are asking credit rationing so credit rationing is nothing credit rationing basically kya hai aapka jab bhi aap loan lene jate ho theek hai credit rationing kuch nahi hai jab bhi aap loan lene jate ho to aapko main example deta hu priority sector lending to psl ke andar kya hai कि आप कम रेट पे लोन लेते हो ओके कुछ सेक्टर्स को डेलीबेटली कम रेट पे लोन दिया जाता है तो वही हम क्रेडिट रेशनिंग में कर रहे हैं कि इस सेक्टर को इतने में लोन दोगे इस सेक्टर को इतने में दोगे क्लियर सो दैट इज कॉल्ड एज क्रेडिट रेशनिंग क्लियर क्लियर ओके नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट एस अब अगर मैं एस की बात करूं तो इसको हमने इंट्रोड्यूस किया था आरबीआई ने अप्रैल में 2022 में ओके okay, अब आपको पहले कंडीशन समझनी पड़ेगी व्हाट वाज द मार्केट कंडीशन नॉर्मली नॉर्मली इफ यू सी आइदर आइदर अ सिचुएशन इज लाइक दिस कि मनी सप्लाई बहुत ज्यादा है तो जब मनी सप्लाई ज्यादा होती है तो हम फॉलो करते हैं हम रेपो रेट को बढ़ाने की कोशिश करते हैं मतलब हम रेपो रेट बढ़ाते हैं एंड वेन यू आर इंक्रीजिंग द रेट आइदर रेपो रेट बैंक रेट और एनी रेट so you call it that i am following contractionary monetary policy otherwise jab bhi money supply kam hoti hai okay tab aap kya karte ho tab aap expansionary monetary policy ko use karte ho ab hua kya in the month or in financial year 2022 what was the situation ek side money supply increase ho rahi thi dusri side companies jo hai demand raise nahi kar rahe the means loan nahi le rahe the matlab market confidence down tha तो अल्टीमेटली गवर्नमेंट के पास दो चैलेंजेस थे मनी सप्लाई भी कम करनी है और मार्केट कॉन्फिडेंस बढ़ा के उनको कहना है लोन लो और प्रोडक्शन बढ़ाओ सो so, अभी हमने देखा पीएलआई स्कीम सो पीएलआई स्कीम अपनी प्रोडक्शन बढ़ाने के लिए मेरे को लोन लेना ही पड़ेगा बट अगर मैं रेपो रेट बढ़ाता जाऊंगा तो लोन रेट महंगा होगा तो ऑलरेडी मेरा कॉन्फिडेंस लो है तो इट विल फर्दर गेट रिड्यूस्ड ओके अब दो चैलेंजेस थे कि एक तरफ कुछ सेक्टर्स को पैसे देने हैं दूसरी तरफ मनी सप्लाई इंक्रीज करनी है तो अब आरबीआई ने एक रास्ता निकाला मिडल पाथ हम क्या करते हैं कि एमएसएफ और बैंक रेट को बराबर कर देते हैं ओके और जब हम रेपो रेट बढ़ा रहे हैं तो नो डाउट एमएसएफ बढ़ रहा है बट बैंक रेट इज इक्वल टू एमएसएफ फॉर अ टाइम बी टेम्परेरी बेसिस पे और रेपो रेट को बोलते हैं कि आप रिवर्स रेपो रेट को कुछ टाइम के लिए डीलिंग कर दो डीलिंग मतलब यूज मत करो फिर क्या यूज करे एस तो अगर आप अभी डेटा खोल के देखोगे रेपो रेट कहीं तीन परसेंट के अराउंड ही है सॉरी रिवर्स रेपो रेट इज थ्री थ्री परसेंट के अराउंड है लेकिन रेपो रेट छह परसेंट के अराउंड है ओके एस भी कहीं ना कहीं छह परसेंट के अराउंड है और यह भी छह परसेंट के अराउंड है मतलब माइनर डिफरेंस है ओके तो इट इज लाइक दिस ये 6.5 है ये दोनों 6.75 है और ये अराउंड 6.25 है और बट रिवर्स रेपो रेट ये तो अल्टीमेटली एस को हमने बोला 
कि कुछ टाइम पीरियड के लिए आप जो एक्सेस लिक्विडिटी है मनी सप्लाई है उसको एब्जॉर्ब करो तो मतलब बैंक को हमने बोला रिवर्स रेपो रेट को यूज मत करो डिपॉजिट रेट डिसाइड करने में यू यूज यू यूज यू कैन से एच डी एफ टू डिसाइड डिपॉजिट रेट एंड अल्टीमेटली अल्टीमेटली हमने लेंडिंग रेट भी कम रखा ताकि जो मार्केट कॉन्फिडेंस कम है वो कम ना हो वो बल्कि अप हो जिनका ताकि हमें प्रोडक्शन भी बढ़ानी है तो हमने इसलिए एच डी एफ को इंट्रोड्यूस किया था तो एच डी एफ अगर आप सर्च करोगे इट इज रिगार्डेड एज अ टेम्परेरी टूल क्लियर क्लियर तो अल्टीमेटली हम कह सकते हैं कि नॉर्मल टाइम्स के अंदर किसी भी बैंक के पास एच डी एफ स्टैंड फॉर स्टैंडिंग डिपॉजिट फैसिलिटी एच डी एफ स्टैंडिंग डिपॉजिट फैसिलिटी क्लियर सो आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू यू इफ स्टिल नॉट क्लियर प्लीज टेल मी ओके सो एक तरह से दोबारा आपको आराम से समझाता हूं नॉर्मली क्या होता है फॉर गेट अबाउट एस टी एफ फर्स्ट नॉर्मली वी हैव सीन दैट आई दर मनी सप्लाई हैज इंक्रीज सो जब भी मनी सप्लाई इंक्रीज होता है हम रेपो रेट बढ़ाते हैं एंड रेपो रेट के साथ में सारे रेट बढ़ते हैं नंबर वन नंबर टू अगर मनी सप्लाई कम होती है तो हम रेपो रेट कम करते हैं तो सारे रेट कम होते हैं तो सारे रेट का मतलब है कि लैंडिंग रेट और डिपॉजिट रेट भी कम होता है नंबर टू बट अगर सिचुएशन ऐसी आ जाए कि कि हमें प्रोडक्शन बढ़ानी है अब प्रोडक्शन बढ़ानी है तो मुझे रेपो रेट मतलब मुझे बैंक रेट कम रखना पड़ेगा ताकि लैंडिंग रेट कम हो बट एट द सेम टाइम मनी सप्लाई भी बढ़ी हुई है ओके तो मुझे दोनों चीजें क्लियर करनी है आर ए सिंह दोबारा समझा रहा हूं सुन लो आराम से ठीक है तो मुझे दोनों चीज पे फोकस करना है ओके तो मैं दोबारा बता रहा हूं आइडली क्या होता है कि अगर मनी सप्लाई बड़ी होती है तो हम रेपो रेट बढ़ाते हैं जिससे सारे रेट बढ़ते हैं मतलब इंक्लूडिंग लैंडिंग रेट एंड डिपॉजिट रेट अदरवाइज मनी सप्लाई कम होती है तो हम कम करते हैं दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर बट अगर ऐसी कंडीशन हो कि एक तरफ हमें प्रोडक्शन भी बढ़ानी है दूसरी तरफ हमारे पास एक्सेस मनी सप्लाई है दोनों कम करनी है मतलब मनी सप्लाई भी कम करनी है और प्रोडक्शन बढ़ानी है अब ये दोनों चीजें पॉसिबल नहीं है क्यों क्योंकि अगर मेरे को प्रोडक्शन कम बढ़ानी है तो मुझे लैंडिंग रेट डेलीबरेटली कम रखना पड़ेगा क्लियर वो तभी होगा जब रेपो रेट कम होगा ओके दूसरा दूसरा अगर मुझे मनी सप्लाई कम करनी है मार्केट से तो मुझे रेपो रेट बढ़ाना पड़ेगा अब ये दोनों सिचुएशन एक साथ में आ गई अब आरबीआई ने अपना दिमाग लगाया आरबीआई ने बोला एक काम करते हैं रेपो रेट बढ़ाते हैं और रिवर्स रेपो रेट को हटा दो रिवर्स रेपो रेट की जगह हम ले आए एस अब एस वो काम करेगा जो रिवर्स रेपो रेट करता था मीन्स रिवर्स रेपो रेट से आपका डिपॉजिट रेट लिंक होता था अब एस से आपका डिपॉजिट रेट लिंक होगा क्लियर अब अब जैसे ही रेपो रेट बढ़ेगा एस बढ़ेगा और एस के अंदर आपको कोलेटरल नहीं चाहिए तो मतलब जब भी बैंक्स अपना पैसा दे रहे हैं आरबीआई को जैसे रिवर्स रेपो रेट में देता था तो अल्टीमेटली बैंक्स को कोलेटरल देना पड़ता था बट एस में कोई कोलेटरल नहीं देना क्लियर बैंक्स को तो अल्टीमेटली अल्टीमेटली आरबीआई को कोई कोलेटरल नहीं देना जब भी आप एस के थ्रू बैंक अपना पैसा डिपोजिट कर रहे हैं आरबीआई के पास क्लियर तो आरबीआई को कोई कोलेटरल नहीं देना क्लियर तभी एस को बोला जाता है टेम्परेरी टूल है जहां पर आपको कोई कोलेटरल नहीं देना नंबर वन दूसरी तरफ बैंक ने क्या किया आरबीआई ने क्या किया जैसे रेपो रेट बढ़ाया एस तो बढ़ा बट एम एस बढ़ा और बैंक रेट बढ़ा उनको बराबर कर दिया ताकि लैंडिंग रेट कम रहे तो आज की टाइम में अगर कंडीशन देखोगे तो क्या कंडीशन है अगर रेपो रेट मेरा 6.5 परसेंट है एमएसएफ 6.75 है ओके एंड बैंक रेट भी सेम रखा है मैंने ताकि मेरा लैंडिंग रेट आगे कम रहे क्लियर और मैंने एच को रखा है 6.25, जस्ट टेकिंग वन नंबर बट मेरा रिवर्स रेपो रेट अगर आप सर्च करोगे आज भी 3 परसेंट के अराउंड है तो हम ये चीज कर रहे हैं ओके अभी हम ये यूज नहीं कर रहे अब किसी भी बैंक के पास अगर पैसा आता है तो आपने देखा होगा एस 6.25 है तभी आपका आज डिपॉजिट रेट बहुत हाई है तो तभी आप देखोगे आज डिपॉजिट रेट आपको 3 परसेंट से ऊपर मिल रहा है सेविंग अकाउंट के ऊपर तो वो रिवर्स रेपो रेट की वजह से नहीं मिल रहा एस की वजह से मिल रहा है क्लियर
Yes, Anul, you can rely on this part because in marathon I am covering most important topics. That is why I told you that 12-13 question I will stop you. Okay. Clear? Okay. So I think Chandra, Chandra Shil Rao Rajput, this doubt is clear. Okay. I think this concept of SDF is clear to everyone. Okay. Now moving further. So this is what you have to understand. Tools are very important. Apart from tool, okay, they used to ask the question on, you can say, the role of RBI. So if you look at RBI, what is the work of RBI? RBI is a government bank, RBI is a monetary policy bhi implement. Karta hai. Okay. Okay, RBI is a government ka bank. Bhi hai. RBI, RBI, government bank hai means government ki policies, government ko jab bhi borrowing chahiye to arrange karega. RBI lender of last resort bhi hai, RBI printing of currency ke liye bhi responsible hai. To agar aap dekho ke lender of last resort pe kai baar question puchha hoa hai. To aapko functions of RBI pata hoa chahiye. To there are some 5-6 functions that you must know. Clear? So this is what you must know about it. Clear? Next, next monetary policy committee. तो जब हम मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी कमेटी के बात करते हैं तो आपको पता होना चाहिए मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी कमेटी 2016 में आई थी सो आई विल बी लिटिल बिट क्विक सो 2016 में आई थी ओके सेकंड इट इज इट इज यू कैन से केम ऑन द रिकमेंडेशन ऑफ उर्जित पटेल कमेटी सो सेकंड थिंग दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर थर्ड ओके Urjit Singh, Urjit Patel Committee. Third, Monetary Policy Committee mein six members hai. Three members are from RBI and three members are from government side. RBI side se kaun kaun hai? RBI governor who is the chairperson. Okay. Number two, deputy governor in charge of, deputy governor in charge of, you can say, monetary policy department. See, no need to remember the names ki kaun hai bhi deputy governor. Because abhi tak to nahi puchhe hai, to nahi aage puchhe ga. Okay. Because here you have to focus on concepts only. Number three, you can say one person, one RBI official appointed by RBI board. So these are from three, you can say government, RBI side. Government side say, there should be a person having a special knowledge in the field of banking. <coughs> having a special knowledge in the field of banking, economics and finance. And these three person are appointed by appointment, uh, that is selection. Search come selection committee. Okay, so three, three, total six people. Three year, three year, three year. So RBI ke side se three people. RBI governor, RBI governor, deputy governor in charge of <coughs> deputy governor in charge of you can say okay, deputy governor in charge of you can say your <coughs> monetary policy and RBI board. RBI board. Okay, appointed by RBI official. Three, they are having special knowledge in the field of economics, banking and finance. Clear? So this is what you have to remember. Next, these three person are selected by search come selection committee. Okay. Now, these three person from the RBI, they will be in the or they will remain as a member of monetary policy till the time they hold the post. Okay. Okay, so uh, see whenever conceptual part is there, I'll reduce my speed. Don't worry about it. Okay, so here is the factual part. Hai. Okay, so these three people will remain until they are holding their RBI post. So if today the RBI governor is retired, then RBI governor will retire. Hai, to ultimately, he will stop. He will not be the member of you can say monetary policy. Okay, so ultimately until then. But these three people, hai, which is selected by search come selection committee, that is from government side, they will be there for four years for four years and they are not eligible for reappointment clear and not eligible for reappointment so this is what you have to remember ab ye jo search come selection committee hai iska chairperson kaun hota hai iska chairperson jo aapki dream post hai abhi cabinet secretary okay cabinet secretary iska chairperson hai so this is what you have to remember clear clear this is what you have to remember 
आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू यू आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू एवरी वन Please tell me. Okay. Okay, that's very good. If it is clear. Okay. so i'll take break of 5 minutes okay okay 10 minutes so i'm taking break of 5 10 minutes then we'll continue <coughs>
करे स्टार्ट जाके मेरा टाइम पर ब्रेक नहीं दिखाता चलो और है ना ओके हां सो वेलकम बैक आफ्टर अ ब्रेक शॉर्ट ब्रेक नाउ अगेन वील टॉक अबाउट यू कैन से वी हैव सीन दैट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रेम्ड ऑन टूल्स देन क्वेश्चन इज फ्रेम्ड ऑन फंक्शन ऑफ आर बी आई सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ओके नेक्स्ट थर्ड इफ यू सी देर इज वन कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ मनी सप्लाई ओके सो यू हैव studied about you can say measurement of money supply or money supply aggregates so there are m1 m2 m3 m4 so basically if you see m1 <coughs> m1 so when i talk about m1 m1 is currency with the public so you can say currency in cash that is with you plus demand deposits okay plus demand deposits okay tarun you have raised some hand if you want to ask something or say something you can post it out okay currency with public plus demand deposit so we have seen current account saving account plus other deposit with rbi so other deposit with rbi is basically you can say government's money okay you can say government of india's money okay plus sometimes as i told you that they are you can say government bank so they used to manage government of indian state government money okay so ultimately other deposit with rbi now this is m1 okay this is m1 clear now when you talk about when you talk about m2 so m2 is m1 plus money in post office so you have to remember this formula that is savings with post office m3 m3 is m1 plus time deposit with the banks okay so you have to remember this also and m4 agar main m4 ki baat karu m4 is m3 plus all the deposits of post office so it means saving and whatever other deposits they have okay so this is what except national saving certificate or excluding national saving certificate so basically you exclude national saving certificates okay because national saving certificates hum exclude nahi kar rahe yahan se hum exclude kar rahe hain kyunki otherwise it will be double counted because we have already taken Here in other deposits. So इसलिए post office के पास जितने भी national saving certificates होते हैं उसको हम exclude करते हैं So this is what you have to remember. Clear? Now this M1 and M2 is known as is known as narrow money. M3 and M4 is known as broad money. Okay? Narrow money and broad money clear so this is what you have to remember okay now now we'll talk about m not okay so chandrashil rao you are ahead than me okay or ahead than me so means the topic which i am going to cover you already put in a doubt session okay that's good okay so this shows that you are well prepared for prelims 2023 okay now m not m not is nothing but m1 plus you can say all the deposits with rbi okay all the deposits with rbi clear so all deposit means now rbi used to have deposits of banks also in the form of crr so you have to remember so that is m not so m not is known as high powered money high powered money so ultimately if someone will ask you high powered money so you must know what is high powered money now next if you see 
there is a concept of money multiplier okay so money multiplier and m not has reverse relation inverse relation so this is what you have to remember okay so whenever you increase crr so remember this thing okay or whenever other deposit with rbi which include banks deposit also whenever it is increased money multiplier will reduced and vice versa so agar kal ko exam mein aapke question aata hai although iske piche there is so many concept okay but ultimately ultimately here i have to take care of other topics also but i can tell you that if you apply this logic that m not and mm so money multiplier so i can give you an example also so that you understand this relation so whenever crr is high or you can say for example if suppose today the crr is 4% and you make it 10% so ultimately immediately you are rbi is extracting money supply from the market so ultimately money multiplier will reduce to maine aapko kya bola ki agar agar aap crr badhaoge to jo kiska component hai m not ka to agar rbi ke paas deposit badhte hai zyada jaise hi crr badhaoge deposit badhenge to money multiplier kam hoga market mein okay to aap aise samajh sakte ho paise se paisa banana jab market mein paisa hi nahi hai to paisa kahan se banega okay so money multiplier will reduce बट अगर आरबीआई के पास डिपॉजिट कम होंगे वो कब होंगे जब वो सी रिड्यूस करेगा तो अल्टीमेटली यहां पर होगा तो ऑल दो देर इज अदर थिंग्स ऑल्सो बट फॉर योर एग्जाम यू रिमेंबर दिस थिंग ओनली मनी मल्टीप्लायर इज इन्वर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल टू एम नॉट तो अगर ऐसा क्वेश्चन आता भी है आप देखोगे इन प्रीवियस ईयर यूपीएससी इज आज का क्वेश्चन सो योर क्वेश्चन विल बी करेक्ट क्लियर ठीक है योर क्वेश्चन विल बी करेक्ट clear so this is what you have to understood now now this is the concept of money multiplier so this is about you can say monetary policy okay so if you have any doubt you can ask otherwise i'll shift to new topic okay so i think uh, uh, chandrashil in m1 you take only those deposits with the rbi which are of government so rbi is acting as a government bank plus rbi is having crr also so when you are taking only those deposits which are of government that is included in m1 otherwise in m0 you take all the deposit means government deposit as well as others clear so i hope it is clear so any doubt in this topic monetary policy so any doubt operation twist you are talking about but operation twist is a old concept but itna bata deta hu ki jab bhi matlab operation twist ka jo concept aata hai open market operation ke context mein aata hai to agar aap dekhoge jab bhi iska relation agar aap dekhoge aap yahan par agar aap yahan par agar aap dekhoge definitely sanjay prem you can rely on uh, marathon so our focus is here that purpose of kg pt marathon is that maximum question should be covered okay so you can focus easily okay so i am covering all the important topics okay money money supply and money multiplier are different okay see you can say when more money supply in the market then only money multiplier is possible so money can be made only when money supply should be there otherwise not so we are talking about that ki matlab money multiplier is responsible for increasing the money supply if money supply is more but agar money supply hai nahi to money multiplier effect kam hoga clear clear so this is about you can say monetary policy क्लियर ऑपरेशन ट्विस्ट अगर आप बात करो जैसे चंद्रशील राव इज टॉकिंग अबाउट इट सो वेन एवर वेन एवर यू टॉक अबाउट मनी यू कैन से ऑपरेशन ट्विस्ट सो ऑपरेशन ट्विस्ट में आप बेसिकली ओपन मार्केट ऑपरेशन से रिलेटेड है तो अगर मैं यहां पर बात करूं तो जब भी अगर आप देखोगे यूएस यूज टू यूएस यूज टू रेज द रेपो रेट सो वहां पर आप देखते हो कि 
ऑपरेशन ट्विस्ट का एग्जाम्पल होता है तो अल्टीमेटली अल्टीमेटली दिस वॉज अगेन वी हैव कंडक्टेड इन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी सो दिस इज नॉट अ रिसेंट टॉपिक सो डोंट वरी अबाउट इट चांसेस आर वेरी लेस टू आस्क फ्रॉम ऑपरेशन ट्विस्ट नाउ समर सिंह एम पी सी इन ब्रीफ सी मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी कमेटी के अंदर आपको मेंबर्स पता होने चाहिए छह मेंबर्स है ओके थ्री मेंबर्स आर फ्रॉम आरबीआई साइड एंड थ्री मेंबर्स आर फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट साइड सो दिस इज वॉट यू मस्ट नो क्लियर सो मैंने आपको ऑलरेडी बताया जो तीन मेंबर्स है आरबीआई साइड के वो तब तक रहेंगे जब तक वो जॉब में है ओके और यू कैसे टिल द टाइम दे आर होल्डिंग देर पोस्ट इन आरबीआई टिल दैट टाइम दे आर मेंबर्स जैसे ही वो रिटायर होंगे तो देर मेंबरशिप ऑल्सो गेट एंडेड बट अगर आरबीआई बट अगर गवर्नमेंट साइड से देखोगे दे विल बी देयर फॉर फोर ईयर्स ओनली आफ्टर फोर ईयर्स दे आर नॉट एलिजिबल फॉर री अपॉइंटमेंट सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड क्लियर so any other doubt <coughs> so this is about your monetary policy okay now come to next topic inflation so when i talk about inflation so first of all you must know so inflation although important for your both prelims and means so if you see with respect to prelims okay very you can say very less topics are there so first of all you must know the types of inflation so there is you can say creeping inflation trotting inflation galloping inflation runaway inflation hyper inflation okay so there are five types of inflation okay so ultimately Ultimately, you must know the classification. Why we have classified? So, if suppose your inflation is in the rate of two to four percent, that is creeping. अगर इससे थोड़ा सा ज़्यादा होता है per year or per annum. So, if rate of inflation is more than four percent, or you can say up to six seven percent, okay, or you can say six to ten percent, you can take it briefly, okay. So that is trotting. If it is around ten twelve percent, that is galloping. If it is more than fourteen, fifteen percent per annum, then it is, then it is, okay. Then it is. You can say we can have, we can have. So if you see, then you will have runaway inflation. And finally, and finally, if you have per month inflation, that is known as hyperinflation. so you must know that there are five types of inflation creeping trotting galloping runaway and hyper so creeping 2 to 4% per annum trotting 6 to 10 percent. So although little bit in range, that can be plus minus one to you can do. Okay. Next. Next. Okay. Next. यहाँ पर कई student English Hindi को लेके divide होते रहते हैं. अरे भाई पढ़ लो यार Hindi English को लेके. Okay. मतलब you want to you have Apple iPhone but Hindi में बात करो. ये क्या यार sense है यार. so you must maintain decorum of the class clear okay 11 to 12 percent okay 11 to 12 percent okay ab wah shame nahi hogi inko yaar okay runaway inflation 14 percent okay and this is 20 percent per month clear so this is what you have to understand okay this is types of inflation now if you see the reasons for inflation <clears throat> so reason is demand pull inflation so whenever money supply get increased whenever money supply get increased okay so in that case you can say the reason for that inflation is known as demand pull inflation okay तो आप देखोगे डिमांड पुल इन्फ्लेशन का बेसिक रीजन ही क्या है मनी सप्लाई सो वेन एवर मनी सप्लाई गेट इंक्रीज सो डिमांड पुल इन्फ्लेशन इज देयर क्लियर 
क्लियर ओके सेकेंड इज कॉस्ट पुश इन्फ्लेशन जब भी आपके फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन का प्राइस बढ़ता है ओके okay. जब भी आपके फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन का प्राइस बढ़ता है उसको हम कहते हैं कॉस्ट पुश इन्फ्लेशन ओके सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ओके सो जब भी फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन का प्राइस बढ़ता है उसकी वजह से जो महंगाई होती है दैट इज नोन एज कॉस्ट पुश इन्फ्लेशन सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर क्लियर क्लियर सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर क्लियर नेक्स्ट इज नेक्स्ट इज स्ट्रक्चरल इन्फ्लेशन ऑल्सो नोन एज बॉटल नेक इन्फ्लेशन स्ट्रक्चरल इन्फ्लेशन ऑल्सो नोन एज बॉटल नेक इन्फ्लेशन नाउ वेन एवर देर इज अ लैक ऑफ क्वालिटी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर दैट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर दैट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर स्ट्रक्चरल इन्फ्लेशन ओके सो अगर पुअर क्वालिटी ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर है जैसे मैंने आपको सुबह बताया था कि फोर्टीन परसेंट ऑफ योर लॉजिस्टिक कॉस्ट इज फोर्टीन परसेंट ऑफ जी डी पी वेर एज इन अदर कंट्रीज इट इज लेस देन फोर्टीन परसेंट सो दैट इज नोन एज स्ट्रक्चरल इन्फ्लेशन सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर क्लियर आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू यू ओके नाउ वन स्टूडेंट इज अगेन एंड अगेन आस्किंग कमल नायन दैट वॉट इज मार्केट स्टेबिलाईशन बॉन्ड सो आई एम जस्ट इंटरप्टिंग फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक सी मार्केट स्टेबिलाईशन बॉन्ड इज नथिंग जब भी गवर्नमेंट इंटरवेन कर रही है ओके okay, इंटरवेन कर रही है एक्सेस लिक्विडिटी को एब्सॉर्ब करने के लिए इंक्रीज करने के लिए ओके okay, उसको मार्केट स्टेबिलाईजेशन स्कीम बोलते हैं सो अल्टीमेटली इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ दैट ओनली तो नॉर्मली इसमें आप ओपन मार्केट ऑपरेशन यूज करते हो सो दैट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ दैट क्लियर तो इसमें मतलब ओके okay, तो अल्टीमेटली मैं आपको बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट में एक टर्म बताऊंगा स्टरलाइजेशन तो वहां पर भी आपको यूज करूंगा सो डोंट वरी अबाउट इट ओके नेक्स्ट स्ट्रक्चरल इन्फ्लेशन तो अगर आप देखोगे ये तीन मेजर रीजन है फॉर इन्फ्लेशन तो जब भी पैसे अगर बढ़ रहे हैं मनी सप्लाई अगर आपकी मार्केट में बढ़ रही है तो इन्फ्लेशन होगी एंड दैट टाइप ऑन एंड दैट यू कैन से दैट ऑल्सो बिकम अ रीजन और उसको हम कहते हैं डिमांड पुल इन्फ्लेशन सो दिस इज फर्स्ट रीजन सेकेंड कॉस्ट पुश इन्फ्लेशन अगर सपोज कर लो लेबर स्ट्राइक पे चली गई तो अल्टीमेटली सप्लाई साइड आपकी कम हो जाएगी तो, तो भी इन्फ्लेशन होगी डिमांड इज कॉन्स्टेंट बट सप्लाई साइड हैज रिड्यूस्ड थर्ड इज स्ट्रक्चरल इन्फ्लेशन तो अगर मैं स्ट्रक्चरल इन्फ्लेशन की बात करूं ओके स्ट्रक्चरल इन्फ्लेशन की बात करूं तो यहां पर अगर मैं बात करूं स्ट्रक्चरल की ओके okay, तो अगर आपके पास पुअर क्वालिटी ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर है उसको हम स्ट्रक्चरल इन्फ्लेशन कहते हैं इसके अलावा अगर आप देखोगे स्पेक्यूलेशन तो इफ सपोज देर इज अ स्पेक्यूलेशन विच वी कॉल र्यूमर्स सो दैट इज ऑल्सो रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर इंक्रीजिंग द प्राइसेस ऑल दो फॉर शॉर्ट टाइम पीरियड बट दे आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल नेक्स्ट होर्डिंग सो यू हैव सीन इन ओल्ड मूवीज देर आर बिग लालास ओके दे आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर दे आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर यू कैन से इलीगली स्टोर सम प्रोडक्ट इन ऑर्डर टू डिस्टर्ब द मार्केट सो दैट इज कॉल्ड होर्डिंग नेक्स्ट इफ यू सी there is nowadays another practice by businessman cartelization so if suppose two or three companies together theek hai they form a group they form a group and they decided to increase the price of a commodity so that is called as cartelization so there was a famous case of cement company also okay cement cement company where group of cement companies in 2011 12 they increased the price of cement bag so cement is important or essential commodity so ultimately that is known as cartelization now if you see if you want to manage demand pull inflation you need the role of monetary policy as well as you can say govern or you can say government okay government means you can say fiscal policy as well as administrative role kyunki agar aap dekhoge money supply ek to aapke legal tarike se badi jaise ki bahar se paisa aaya ओके okay, फॉरेन से पैसा आया आपकी इकोनॉमी में तो मनी सप्लाई बढ़ी लीगल तरीके से बट अगर इलीगल तरीके से आपकी आपकी इकोनॉमी में मनी सप्लाई बढ़ी है सो फॉर एग्जांपल फॉर एग्जांपल ब्लैक मनी फॉर विच आरबीआई हैज नो रिकॉर्ड 
okay even government has no record for example money laundering for example you can say fake notes counterfeit notes okay for ex these are what okay for example smuggling smuggling ki wajah se aapki country mein ek bani aage dollars aage okay to kahi kisi ne bahar smuggle kiya koi item aur dollars aage to jitne bhi ye cheeze hain iski wajah se badh rahi hai to yahan par agar aap dekhoge we need a role of administration okay so ultimately ed cbi role is there clear but whenever money supply increased due to legal method so we you can say monetary policy plays a role ab cost push or chai structural ho uske liye fiscal policy has a role okay and again here for these three administration play a role for example speculation okay for speculation we have it act so if suppose someone is indulge in speculation so it act will be invoked clear ओके बट ऑब्वियस है वन स्टूडेंट आस्किंग सर लास्ट वाले जो पॉइंट्स है वो बट ऑब्वियस अगर होल्डिंग करके बैठे हो आप लाइक अनियन के केस में सो so अनियन के केस में अगर मैं होल्ड कर लू तो उसका इंपैक्ट आता तो है दैट इज वाई दैट इज वाई गवर्नमेंट और यू कैन से पुलिस बिकम प्रो एक्टिव दैट टाइम कि अनियन के प्राइस बढ़ रहे हैं तो कोई होल्ड करके तो नहीं बैठा क्लियर क्लियर होर्डिंग जब भी होर्डिंग होती है तो वी हैव असेंशियल कॉम्युनिटी एक्ट Essential Commodity Act and for cartelization to stop the practice of cartelization, we have Competition Commission of India. Okay, we have Competition Commission of India. So this is what you have to remember. Clear? Clear? So these are the things that you have to remember with respect to inflation. Okay. उसके बाद अगर आप देखोगे inflation को measure करने के लिए हमारे पास डब्ल्यू है सीपीआई है ओके डब्ल्यू में कितनी आइटम्स है 697 आइटम्स है ओके okay, कितनी आइटम 697। वो पहले 676 आइटम्स थी सो दिस इज व्हाट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर क्लियर क्लियर सेकेंड सी इफ एनी स्टूडेंट हैज मिस एनी टॉपिक सो दिस वीडियो विल रिमेन ऑन your youtube only like uh, shubhi chauhan is writing sir i missed monetary policy tool so shubhi chauhan please understand my situation also i cannot go back and again explain the same thing because i have to cover other things also okay so please cooperate okay now some want to know my qualification definitely i'll tell you in the end don't worry about it okay 697 items okay नेक्स्ट ओके नेक्स्ट इफ यू सी इफ यू सी दिस डब्ल्यू पी आई इज मेजर्ड बाय ओके दिस डब्ल्यू पी आई इज मेजर्ड बाय मेजर्ड बाय डिपार्ट यू कैन से मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री एंड इन मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री there is office of economic advisor okay and and office of economic advisor come under dpiit okay office of economic advisor come under dpiit so you can say it is measured by dpiit okay jiske andar kaun sa department hai or you can say kaun sa office hai office of economic advisor and ultimately ministry of commerce and industry this is what you have to remember and finally and finally if you see when i talk about this thing <coughs> when i talk about this thing so if you see it is published on monthly basis monthly basis ke baad aapko next thing jo isme yaad rakhni hai monthly basis ke baad ki agar main wpi ki baat karta hu theek hai wpi mein jitni bhi items hai wo kitni hai sari kya hai goods hai sari aapki kya hai goods hai okay there is no services in that okay plus if you see the base year for WPI is 2011-12. Okay, 2011-12. Okay. So ultimately, this is an important fact that you have to remember. Okay, this is an important fact that you have to remember. Now, if I talk about CPI, then CPI has different variants. Like CPI, Agriculture, Labor. Okay, CPI is Agriculture, Labor. 
सीपीआई इंडस्ट्रियल वर्कर सीपीआई रूरल लेबर सीपीआई रूरल सीपीआई अर्बन एंड सीपीआई कंबाइन तो अगर आप इसमें आइटम्स देखोगे 260 सिक्सटी आइटम्स आर हेयर 260 सिक्सटी आइटम्स आर हेयर 260 सिक्सटी आइटम्स आर हेयर 460 सिक्सटी इन अर्बन एंड 448 फोर्टी एट आइटम्स इन रूरल क्लियर एंड अल्टीमेटली इन सीपीआई कंबाइंड दिस आइटम इज इंपॉर्टेंट अगर ये नहीं भी याद रखोगे चलेगा बट सीपीआई कंबाइंड याद रखना सीपीआई कंबाइंड में 200 हंड्रेड आइटम्स है ओके okay, ये जरूर याद रखना इन सीपीआई कंबाइंड देर आर 200 हंड्रेड आइटम्स क्लियर क्लियर ओके सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर नाउ इन 200 हंड्रेड आइटम्स देर आर बोथ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस नाउ सम आर आस्किंग दैट इंपोर्टेड गुड्स भी होंगे इसमें यस yes, होते हैं भाई अब आप एक बताओ ना क्रूड ऑयल आप पूरा मंगवा रहे हो बाहर से तो उसको प्राइस नहीं लोगे सो डेफिनेटली यू आर गोइंग टू टेक सी If you apply common sense, some question are based on common sense only. Okay, fertilizers. तो मैंने आपको बताया जब fertilizers किया तो हम fertilizers के लिए dependent है Like potassium के लिए तो 100% dependent डिपेंडेंट है अब ऐसा तो है नहीं विदाउट पोटेशियम हम कोई प्रोडक्ट ग्रो कर रहे हैं तो उसका प्राइस भी हम लेते ही है क्लियर सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड क्लियर आई होप द क्वेश्चन हैज बीन आस्क बाई एनोनिमस मैन ओके सो एनोनिमस मैन इफ यू पुट योर नेम then it will be best for me to call by your name so it seems anonymous man is like okay so i am talking to any alien okay so ultimately 200 items are there okay <clears throat> so goods and services now next if you see next if you see jab hum iski baat kar rahe hain cpi ki तो सीपीआई के अंदर भी अगर आप देखोगे अगर मैं एग्रीकल्चर लेबर और रूरल लेबर और इंडस्ट्रियल वर्कर की बात करूं तो इट इज पब्लिश्ड बाय लेबर ब्यूरो लेबर ब्यूरो विच कम्स अंडर मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ लेबर एंड एम्प्लॉयमेंट विच कम्स अंडर मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ लेबर एंड एम्प्लॉयमेंट ओके क्लियर विच कम्स अंडर मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ लेबर एंड Employment, but अगर मैं बात करूं last तीन की rural, urban and combined, so these are you can say compiled and published by which department? That is, can you tell me? National Statistics Statistic Office, which comes under which Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, so we called it MOSPI. ओके okay. यहां पर मैं थोड़ी सी आपको एक चीज और बताना चाहूंगा कि अगर आप पुराने क्वेश्चंस देखोगे तो वहां पर कभी कभार सीएसओ लिखा होगा सेंट्रल स्टैटिस्टिक ऑफिस ओके तो दिस वाज अर्लियर अर्लियर एनएसओ वाज नोन एज सीएसओ बट नाउ इट्स नेम हैज बीन चेंज और यू कैन से एनएसओ हैज बीन क्रिएटेड बाई मर्जिंग एनएसओ एंड दैट इज सीएसओ एंड एन डबल एसओ ओके सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर लाइक आकांक्षा साउ इज राइटिंग सीएसओ CSO was an old name. Now it is NSO. Clear? 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 Chandrashil. Although अभी तक तो खैर items नहीं पूछी but अगर आप ये देखोगे इसमें 200 items आइटम्स है और उसमें सिक्स नाइनटी सेवन आइटम्स है तो काफी गैप है ओके बट इतना जानते हैं कि यहां पर गुड्स है ओके होलसेल लेवल पे प्राइसेस लेते हैं और यहां पर क्या है आपके रिटेल लेवल है क्लियर सो दिस इज द थिंग अगर आपको जानने है कौन सा आइटम है तो मैं आपको दोबारा ये कहूंगा कि आप कांटेक्ट कर लेना मैं आपको लिस्ट दे दूंगा सो यू कैन मगअप दो लिस्ट क्लियर क्लियर सी इस एग्जाम में सबसे पहले आपको रेलिवेंसी पता होना चाहिए क्या क्या रेलिवेंट टॉपिक्स है ओके okay. अल्टीमेटली अगर आप इन रेलिवेंट टॉपिक्स की तरफ पढ़ोगे तो आई कैन टीच यू मेरे को कोई लिस्ट बताने में कोई बड़ी बात नहीं है ओके okay. उसमें कोई लॉजिक नहीं है क्लियर नेक्स्ट ओके okay, दे दूंगा फिर आप याद भी नहीं कर पाओगे इतनी लंबी लिस्ट 
तो यूपीएससी को भी पता है कोई जीके का एग्जाम नहीं आ रही ओके नेक्स्ट डेफिनेटली आई वुड लाइक टू टॉक टू यू तो आप नंबर ले लेना बात करेंगे आपसे ठीक है नेक्स्ट अगर बात करी जाए तो अगर बेस ईयर देखें हम इसका बेस ईयर देखें तो पहली बात आपको ये देखना होगा कि ये सारे के सारे डेटा मंथली बेसिस पे पब्लिश होते हैं ओके तो मंथली आप देखोगे हर महीने डब्ल्यू पी का डेटा आपको मिलेगा ओके हर महीने डब्ल्यू और सीपीआई का डेटा आपको मिलेगा पहली बात दूसरी बात इसमें अगर आप बेस ईयर देखोगे तो जो लास्ट के तीन है सीपीआई रूरल सीपीआई अर्बन एंड सीपीआई कंबाइंड इसका जो बेस ईयर है वो है 2012 ओके वो है 2012 क्लियर बट अगर मैं बात करूं सीपीआई ए एल आई डब्ल्यू एंड आर एल तो इसका जो बेस ईयर है ओके okay, इसका जो बेस ईयर है तो अगर मैं उसके बेस ईयर की बात करूं तो अगर अगर मैं ए एल और आर एल की बात करता हूं फॉर ए एल एंड आर एल द बेस ईयर इज 86, 87. बट अगर मैं बात करूं आई डब्ल्यू की सो so अगेन बोल रहा हूं ए एल और आर एल का जो बेस ईयर है 86, 87 है आई डब्ल्यू का है 2006, 16, 2016. थाउजेंड सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर क्लियर Clear? So I hope again it is clear to you. Okay. So this is about you can say now normally UPSC used to ask the difference between CPI and WPI. So can anyone tell me what is the difference? Normally UPSC used to ask a difference. So can anyone tell me what is the difference? ओके okay. तो अगर मैं डिफरेंस की बात करूं ओके okay. तो अगर मैं बात करूं डिफरेंस की तो सीपीआई के अंदर आइटम्स कम है ओके एज कंपेयर टू डब्ल्यूपीआई तो दिस इज द फर्स्ट डिफरेंस ओके सो सीपीआई के अंदर आइटम्स कम है एज कंपेयर टू डब्ल्यूपीआई नंबर वन नंबर टू नंबर टू सीपीआई Talks about both goods and services. WPI only talks about goods. Number three, number three, CPI के अंदर हमने food items को ज़्यादा weightage दिए. WPI के अंदर हमने food items को कम weightage दिए. Okay, so this is the third thing that you have to remember. Next, अगर आप देखोगे, अगर आप देखोगे, जब हम बात करते हैं CPI की, तो CPI में जो हम prices लेते हैं, वो हम लेते हैं consumer level पे. ओके okay, तो उस कंज्यूमर लेवल पे भी आल्सो इंक्लूड द प्राइसेस और यू कैन से इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस ओके सो वी इंक्लूड इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस सो दिस इज व्हाट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर क्लियर वेयर एज डब्ल्यू में आप इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस की बात नहीं करते और यू कैन से प्राइसेस आर एक्सक्लूडिंग इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस क्लियर नेक्स्ट अगर आप देखोगे जो महंगाई भत्ता जिसको हम बोलते हैं डीएरएनएस अलाउंसेस और डीए दैट इज डिसाइडेड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ सीपीआई ओके वेयर एज डब्ल्यू का WPI has no role in that. Next अगर आप देखोगे next अगर आप देखोगे जो major आ, मैं देख रहा हूं आप लोग difference भी लिख रहे हैं okay आप लोग difference भी लिख रहे हैं but ultimately ultimately there is one more important difference monetary policy से we are targeting headline CPI पी तो आपने देखा होगा फोर प्लस माइनस टू परसेंट so this is the inflation we have to maintain with the help of monetary policy okay so monetary policy has been given a target to maintain inflation in this range okay so ultimately ultimately here if you see here if you see that that inflation target Inflation target is linked to CPI only, whereas WPI is not linked. So this is the last difference that you have to know. So if you look at the last three, four, five years of the paper, so there are many questions that come up. Every year, at least one question comes from WPI or CPI. Clear? So this is what you have to remember. Clear? Clear? See, if you talk about the base year, then the base year is going to change the change of the base year. So there may be possibility by next year or you can say within next two years, government will shift the base year. 
clear so that is what you have to know now now this is what about your inflation topic okay this is what you know have to know about your inflation topic clear now come to next topic balance of payment so if you see question has been asked from balance of payment also okay question has been asked from balance of payment also now in balance of payment first of all you have to know so normally you have studied that there are two component current account capital account now in current account we talk about two items visible invisible okay visible invisible capital account there are you can say foreign or you can say investment foreign investment borrowings and okay borrowings and in last i can say banking capital transaction okay banking capital transaction okay no no we i am not going to take any break okay so we'll continue okay banking capital transaction okay next apart from these two component there are another component that is forex reserve is also a part of or regarded as component of bop and last is net error and omission नेट एरर एंड ओमिशन तो अगर आप यहां पर देखोगे जब हम बात कर रहे हैं विजिबल्स की सो इन विजिबल्स वी टॉक अबाउट एक्सपोर्ट एंड इंपोर्ट ऑफ गुड्स विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज मर्केंडाइज ट्रेड ओके एक्सपोर्ट एंड इंपोर्ट ऑफ गुड्स विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज मर्केंटाइज ट्रेड क्लियर क्लियर सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर सेकेंड second if you see when we talk about invisible so we are talking about export and import of services we talk about factor income or you can say net factor income so basically factor income is that what you earn by investing okay to agar suppose kar lo maine yahan par ek factory kholi main bahar se aaya aur maine kisi country mein factory kholi okay so or so whatever i have invested so that is starting giving me return so usko main bolunga factor income okay next is transfer payment so if i say in simple words what is transfer payment means i am giving you money but in return you are not giving me anything okay that is known as transfer payment for example i have given you any gift in cash okay but in return you are giving me or you are saying me only thank you so there is no exchange or you can say money has been given but in return no i am not getting anything okay gift similarly grants okay gifts grants and remittances all are part of transfer payment so one type of basic question that they ask you ki what is or you can say what current account includes so you have to tell to the examiner or they will give you in option form so you have to identify now when it comes to capital account so here we have fdi and fpi okay so here we have fdi and fpi <coughs> okay so here we have fdi and fpi next when we talk about borrowings 
when we talk about borings so in borings if you see we have ecb okay external commercial boring okay apart from this can you tell me what it includes tell me what it includes i am waiting for your answers especially those who used to ask me a question online so i am waiting for their answers no reply okay so i'll tell you external assistance okay external assistance and in last trade credit okay trade credit so this is what you have to know now banking capital transaction so what it includes i'll tell you so agar ek ek karke dekhe to yahan par hum goods ki baat kar rahe hain ki matlab ek saal ke andar aur in one financial year how much goods we have or how much export we have and how much import india have so when you are maintaining that record you call it visibles or mercantile trade similarly in invisibles you are talking about <coughs> you are talking about trade in services तो अगर मैं विजिबल्स की बात करूं तो इन विजिबल्स आवर कंडीशन इज नेगेटिव नेगेटिव मींस वी आर इन डेफिशिएंट ओके जब मैं इन विजिबल्स की बात करूं सो वी आर इन पॉजिटिव ओके वी आर इन पॉजिटिव और जब मैं फैक्टर इनकम की बात करूं तो फैक्टर इनकम और ट्रांसफर पेमेंट टुगेदर इफ यू सी अगेन वी आर इन पॉजिटिव बट बट आई एम सम टोटल इन विजिबल सो वट एवर टोटल इज देयर दैट इज लेस देन दिस ओके सो इट इज लाइक दिस की माई गैप इन ट्रेड इन विजिबल इज अराउंड माइनस टू हंड्रेड बिलियन डॉलर बट वेन आई सम टोटल इन विजिबल इट इज टोटल अराउंड वन ट्वेंटी बिलियन डॉलर बट ओवरऑल माई करंट अकाउंट डेफिशिट इज माइनस 80 billion dollar so this is the situation so ultimately right now india is having current account deficit okay current account deficit now investment there are two types of investment fdi and fpi so if i talk about fdi so whenever you purchase fdi okay whenever you purchase or you can say fdi is coming in your country so in no doubt they are purchasing asset as well as control तो अगर मैं किसी कंपनी में लगा रहा हूं तो मैं उस कंपनी के शेयर्स तो खरीद रहा हूं बट उस कंपनी का कंट्रोल भी खरीद रहा हूं मींस मींस आई विल पार्टिसिपेट इन द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ दैट कंपनी ओके दैट इज एफडीआई तो एफपीआई और यू कैन से फॉरेन इन्वेस्टमेंट एफआईआई कैन बिकम योर एफ सो फॉरन एफ क्या होती है आपकी तो देर आर टू थिंग्स एफ डी आई एफ पी आई के अंदर हम क्या कर रहे हैं हम सिर्फ और सिर्फ परचेज कर रहे हैं शेयर्स but we are not controlling the management of the company so this is what you have to understood so fdi ke andar aap shares bhi purchase kar rahe ho aur control bhi kar rahe ho company ko but fpi ke andar aap sirf aur sirf shares khareed rahe ho clear to aap control nahi kar pa rahe clear <coughs> so this is what you have to remember <coughs> ab agar main baat karu agar main baat karu fdi aur fpi ki ओके okay, तो इनमें डिफरेंस क्या है तो डिफरेंस एक में क्या कि आप परचेज कर रहे हो और मैनेजमेंट भी है और एक में नहीं है बट अगर एफपीआई की मैं बात करूं एफपीआई एफडीआई बन सकती है एफडीआई एफपीआई नहीं बन सकती सो वंस एफडीआई विल बी देयर इट विल रिमेन एफडीआई ओनली एफपीआई कैन बिकम एफ वो कब होगा अगर अगर किसी भी लिस्टेड कंपनी में मैंने अगर दस से ज्यादा शेयर खरीद लिए तो माय इन्वेस्टमेंट विल बी ट्रीटेड एज एफडीआई तो अगर मैं फॉरनर हूं और मैंने किसी कंपनी के अंदर 10 परसेंट से ज्यादा शेयर्स खरीद लिए ओके तो माय इन्वेस्टमेंट विल बिकम एफडीआई सो दिस वाज एज पर मयाराम कमेटी सो देर वाज वन कमेटी मयाराम पैनल और मयाराम कमेटी इन 2014 दिस पैनल हैज गिवन दिस रिकमेंडेशन
okay this panel has given recommendation so you have to remember this thing okay you have to remember this thing so mayaram panel okay i hope it is clear to everyone okay so mayaram panel <coughs> so i can take water so that give some rest to my throat ओके okay. अब लेकिन एक चीज इसमें याद रखना यूपीएससी कहां पर आपको ट्रैप में लेगी ये जो 10 परसेंट वाला क्लॉज है दिस 10 परसेंट क्लॉज इज ओनली फॉर लिस्टेड कंपनी बट अगर आप अनलिस्टेड कंपनी हो तो ये 10 परसेंट वाला क्लॉज नहीं मैटर करता क्लियर तो ये जो 10 परसेंट वाला क्लॉज है ये सिर्फ लिस्टेड कंपनी के लिए अगर अनलिस्टेड कंपनी हो आप वहां पर अगर आपने आधा परसेंट भी इन्वेस्ट कर दिया या कुछ भी इन्वेस्ट कर दिया वो एफ ही ट्रीट होगा क्लियर तो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर क्लियर अब अगर मैं FDI की बात करूं तो FDI दो तरह की है ग्रीन फील्ड और ब्राउन फील्ड तो अगर आप कोई ऐसी इन्वेस्टमेंट कर रहे हो कि आप स्टार्टिंग से उसके अंदर बिजनेस को डेवलप कर रहे हो लाइक like Amazon तो Amazon का पहले कोई बेस नहीं था ओके okay. Amazon का पहले कोई बेस नहीं था ओके okay. बट अब Amazon का बेस है ओके okay. बट अब क्या है Amazon का बेस है ओके okay. तो अल्टीमेटली पहले जब इंडिया में आई थी एमेजोन तो कोई बेस नहीं था तो वो क्या ग्रीन फील्ड है बट अगर मारुति सुजुकी की बात करूं मारुति ऑलरेडी वॉज देयर इंडियन कंपनी सुजुकी केम एंड इन्वेस्टेड सो उसको हम कहेंगे ब्राउन फील्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट ओके तो दो तरह की इन्वेस्टमेंट है आपकी ग्रीन फील्ड एंड ब्राउन फील्ड अब उसके बाद नेक्स्ट आता है आपका <coughs> अब उसके बाद नेक्स्ट आता है आपका नेक्स्ट FDI के रूट्स रूट्स ऑफ FDI। तो अगर मैं पहले ग्राउंड ब्राउन फील्ड और ग्रीन फील्ड की अगर मैं बात करूं तो इंडिया में सबसे ज्यादा आपकी ग्रीन फील्ड एफ आती है एज कंपेयर टू ब्राउन फील्ड सो ये आपको याद रखना पड़ेगा ये स्टेटमेंट अब मैं अगर रूट्स की बात करूं तो मेरे पास दो रूट है एफ आने के ऑटोमेटिक रूट एंड एंड यू कैन से गवर्नमेंट रूट सो इन ऑटोमेटिक रूट यू जस्ट हैव टू रजिस्टर योर सेल्फ बिफोर कमिंग टू इंडिया एंड यू कैन स्टार्ट और इन्वेस्ट इन इंडिया बट अगर मैं गवर्नमेंट रूट की बात करूं तो यहां पर आपको अप्रूवल लेनी होती है ओके okay, यहां पर आपको क्या लेनी है अप्रूवल सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टूड क्लियर दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टूड क्लियर सो आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू यू ओके सो आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू यू ओके नो सम स्टूडेंट वन स्टूडेंट इज से राकेश रेस्ट लेना चाहिए ऑल दो लेंगे रेस्ट लेकिन सिलेबस पहले खत्म करा ले फटाफट आपका ओके सो ऑटोमेटिक एंड गवर्नमेंट अप्रूवल रूट क्लियर नाउ नाउ देर आर सम एरिया वेयर एफ डी आई इज रेस्ट्रिक्टेड ओके वेयर एफ डी आई इज रेस्ट्रिक्टेड तो सबसे पहले अगर आप देखोगे कौन से एरिया है जहां पर एफ डी आई रिस्ट्रिक्टेड है सबसे पहले तो आप देखोगे एटोमिक एनर्जी क्लियर एटॉमिक एनर्जी में एफडीआई रिस्ट्रिक्टेड है अब आप में से कुछ लोग कह सकते हैं कि सर देर इज अ प्लांट इन कुदान कुलम ओके कुदान कुलम में भी प्लांट है ठीक है वहां पर तो रशिया है रशिया सी रशिया वहां पर टेक्निकल सपोर्ट दे रहा है इन्वेस्टमेंट नहीं कर रहा तो देर इज अ डिफरेंस कि मैं अगर आपको टेक्निकल सपोर्ट दे रहा हूं ओके okay, तो वहां पर अगर आप देखोगे रशिया सिर्फ और सिर्फ टेक्निकल सपोर्ट दे रहा है ओके इन कुदान कुलम प्लांट सो इट इज नॉट गिविंग एनी यू कैन से so it is not you can say about कि वहां पर कोई investment नहीं कर रहा okay second railway operations so अगर मैं बात करूं railway की तो railway के अंदर हम क्या कर रहे हैं कि railway operations की अगर मैं बात करूं तो मैं railway की भी अगर बात करूं तो हम railway में क्या कर रहे हैं basically रेलवे प्लेटफॉर्म बनाना है तो ठीक है रेलवे ऑपरेशन हम बोलते हैं कि जब ट्रेन आपकी एक रूट से दूसरे रूट पे जा रही है वो है रेलवे ऑपरेशन तो वहां पर एफ डी आई अलाउड नहीं है फॉरन डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट सिमिलरली सिमिलरली यू कैन से बेटिंग लॉटरी यू कैन से लॉटरी बिजनेस कैसीनो इन सब में फॉरन डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट अलाउड नहीं है सिमिलरली चिट फंड एंड निधि कंपनी चिट फंड एंड निधि कंपनी सो यू हैव सीन हेरा फेरी मूवी लक्ष्मी चिट फंड ओके 
so automatically you know what is state fund okay clear सिमिलरली अगर मैं एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर की बात करूं तो एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर में जो हमारे मेजर फूड ग्रेन्स है लाइक राइस व्हीट शुगर केन कॉटन वहां पर एफडी अलाउड नहीं है बट यही अगर हॉर्टिकल्चर फ्लोरिकल्चर बी कीपिंग मशरूम कल्टीवेशन अगर यहां की बात करूं तो यहां पर अलाउड है ओके तो यहां पर अलाउड है सीड सीड मैन्युफैक्चरिंग यहां पर अलाउड है क्लियर सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर क्लियर यस पैसा ही पैसा होगा रोनाल्डो ओके क्लियर सो दिस इज व्हाट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड ओके सो एग्रीकल्चर के अंदर कुछ ही एरियाज में अलाउड है ओके बट जो मेजर क्रॉप्स है वहां पर अलाउड नहीं है क्लियर नेक्स्ट अगर आप देखोगे एफडीआई प्रॉपर्टी भी नहीं खरीद सकते इंडिया में ओके okay, अल्टीमेटली क्या होगा अगर प्रॉपर्टी खरीद ली उन्होंने तो फिर एक टाइम आएगा वो कहेंगे अब ये हमारा एरिया हो गया ओके सो अल्टीमेटली प्रॉपर्टी दे कैन नॉट परचेज प्रॉपर्टी सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर नाउ कम टू एफ पी आई एफ पी आई में दो चीजें एक है आपका एक है आपका एफ आई आई दूसरा है आपका डिपोजिटरी रिसिप्ट एफ आई आई की बात मैं करूं तो एफ आई आई के अंदर क्या है बेसिकली ओके एफ आई आई के अंदर बेसिकली वॉट इट इंक्लूड अगर कोई फॉरेन इन्वेस्टर इंडिया की स्टॉक मार्केट में इन्वेस्ट कर रहा है तो उसको मैं कहूंगा एफ आई आई बट उनको इन्वेस्ट करने से पहले रजिस्टर कराना पड़ेगा अपने आप को सेबी से क्लियर अब दूसरी चीज अगर आप देखोगे दूसरी चीज अगर आप देखोगे कि एफ आई आई को हम हॉट मनी भी बोलते हैं क्यों क्योंकि दे आर वेरी वॉलेटाइल इन नेचर ओके तो अभी अगर आप देखोगे अगर उनको कहीं और अच्छा प्राइस मिल रहा होगा तो दे विल शिफ्ट देयर बेस्ड टू दैट कंट्री तो यहां पर यह चीज आपको याद रखनी पड़ेगी क्लियर नेक्स्ट अगर आप देखोगे ओके नेक्स्ट अगर आप देखोगे ओके नेक्स्ट अगर आप देखोगे कि अगर मैं एफ की बात करता हूं ठीक है एफ में इनको रजिस्टर करना पड़ेगा तो अल्टीमेटली अगर मैं डिपॉजिटरी रिसिप्ट के ऊपर आऊं तो आपके पास तीन तरह की डिपॉजिटरी रिसिप्ट है एडीआर जीडीआर एंड आईडीआर एडीआर जीडीआर एंड आईडीआर क्लियर सो दिस इज व्हाट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर एडीआर का मतलब क्या है अमेरिकन डिपॉजिटरी रिसिप्ट ग्लोबल डिपॉजिटरी रिसिप्ट एंड इंडियन डिपॉजिटरी रिसिप्ट तो एक समझाऊंगा बाकी के सब में सेम क्लॉज है अब एफ में क्या हो रहा है फॉरेन इन्वेस्टर इंडिया में आता है शेयर मार्केट में इन्वेस्ट करता है ओके तो उस शेयर मार्केट से इंडियन कंपनी को पैसा मिलता है क्लियर तो ये हो रहा है अगर सपोज कर लो इंडियन कंपनी के पास कोई फॉरन इन्वेस्टर नहीं आ रहा थ्रू शेयर मार्केट तो इंडियन कंपनी भी फॉरन जा सकती है कैसे इंडियन कंपनी फॉरेन जैसे अगर सपोज कर लो इंडियन कंपनी किसी अमेरिकन बैंक को कॉन्टैक्ट करेगी अमेरिकन बैंक आफ्टर चेकिंग ऑल द क्रेडेंशियल्स इफ दे अलाउ इफ दे अलाउ तो वो क्या करेंगे उनके बिहाफ पे एडीआर इश्यू कर देंगे कहां पर न्यूयॉर्क स्टॉक एक्सचेंज में अब अमेरिकन पर्सन अप्लाई करेगा एंड इन दिस वे इंडियन कंपनी विल गेट मनी ओके दिस इज कॉल्ड एडीआर सिमिलरली जीडीआर के अंदर आप बेसिकली इट्स अ ग्लोबल टर्म और यू कैन से ग्लोबल सो हेयर इफ सपोज आई वॉन्ट टू रेज मनी फ्रॉम यूरोपियन यूनियन ओके और यूरोपियन स्टॉक एक्सचेंज सो इंडियन कंपनी कैन गो देयर ओके एंड इन आईडीआर ऑपोजिट विल हैपन सो अगर एनी कोई फॉरनर कंपनी है वो इंडियन स्टॉक मार्केट से पैसा उठाना चाहती है तो दे विल कॉन्टैक्ट इंडियन बैंक एंड ऑटोमेटिकली इंडियन बैंक इफ दे अलाउ दे विल दे विल यू कैन से दे विल यू कैन से लिस्ट द स्टॉक ऑफ फॉरन कंपनी ऑन आईडीआर सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर क्लियर सो आई होप इट इज क्लियर टिल हेयर प्लीज टेल मी इन कमेंट सेक्शन इज इट क्लियर और नॉट
Is it clear or not? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So this is what you have to remember. Now, <clears throat> now moving further, there is concept of P notes. So basically if you see P notes, okay, so there are some foreign investors, they don't want to get registered themselves in Indian stock market. So as I told you that if you want to invest in Indian stock market, you have to get yourself registered with government of India, okay, or you have to, not government, SEBI, you have to get registered yourself with SEBI, but sometimes these investors are not interested. So, if you see, if someone invests with you, then when you open the DMAT account, then they won't register for you. You will be registering for yourself. Okay. So, when you are registering for yourself, so when you are registering for yourself, clear? So, what is it basically? If you open the DMAT account, then the registration itself is. Now, normally, what happens is, once you open the DMAT account, तो डीमेट अकाउंट में जब आप पैसे डाल रहे हो उस पैसे को मतलब आपने बैंक से पैसे डालोगे उस पैसे को आप शेयर मार्केट में लगाओगे अब जब आप शेयर मार्केट में कोई शेयर खरीदोगे और बेचोगे तो वो पैसा दोबारा डीमेट अकाउंट में आएगा अब डीमेट अकाउंट से यहां पर लाना इट्स अ कॉम्प्लेक्स प्रोसेस तो फॉरनर पर्सन क्या करता है कि दे डोंट वॉन्ट टू ओपन द डीमेट अकाउंट वाई बिकॉज देयर मनी गेट ब्लॉक हेयर सो वॉट दे यूज टू डू थ्रू सम अदर इन्वेस्टर दे यूज टू इन्वेस्ट इन द मार्केट ओके, सो सपोज आप फॉरनर हो और मेरा अकाउंट रजिस्टर्ड है यहां पर मैं सेबी रजिस्टर्ड हूं तो आप मुझे पैसे दोगे और आपके बिहाफ पे मैं शेयर मार्केट में इन्वेस्ट करूंगा ओके मैं आपको उसके बदले में पी नोट्स दूंगा इसको ये चल रहा है आपका पी नोट्स के अंदर सो दिस इज द मैकेनिज्म दैट हैपन्स इन पी नोट क्लियर 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 Clear? So this is the thing. Okay. So this is the thing. Chandrashil Rao, you are saying, sir, dar lag raha hai. Kis cheez se dar lag raha hai, Okay. Okay. Clear? So this is what you have to remember. Okay. This is what you have to remember with respect to P notes. Okay. So this is about you can say concept of P notes. Okay. P notes koi offshore derivative instrument bolte na. Offshore means it is coming from outside. Okay. It is coming from outside. Okay. Adhyan Mittal. Okay. So this is what you have to remember. Okay. So, यहां पर अगर मैं बात करूं यहां पर अगर मैं बात करूं तो यहां पर आपका ये पी नोट का कॉन्सेप्ट है ओके पी नोट का कॉन्सेप्ट है क्लियर ओके क्लियर डोंट वरी अगर कॉन्सेप्ट के साथ समझोगे तो हर चीज याद रहेगी क्लियर तो ये आपका पी नोट का कॉन्सेप्ट है यहां पर ओके तो अल्टीमेटली Ultimately, we have covered investment part. Now, if I go to borrowings, so external commercial borrowing here means that borrowing, <coughs> that borrowing is taken for, or you can say taken by the, you can say private companies. Okay, usko hum kehte external commercial borrowing. Okay, usko hum kehte external commercial borrowing. So, jab bhi borrowing hum le rahe private sector ke liye. Okay. प्राइवेट सेक्टर अगर बाहर से बोरिंग ले रहा है उसको हम कहते हैं एक्सटर्नल कमर्शियल बोरिंग अब इसमें एक चीज याद रखना जब भी बोरिंग लेगा प्राइवेट सेक्टर तो मिनिमम थ्री इयर्स के लिए लेगा मैक्सिमम देर इज नो लिमिट ओके मिनिमम थ्री इयर्स के लिए लेगा ही लेगा ओके okay, और जब भी लेगा विद परमिशन ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ओके जो इसमें मार्केट रेट है वो डिटरमाइन जो इसमें रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट है वो मार्केट डिटरमाइन करती है इंटरनेशनल मार्केट सो देर इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लंडन लंडन इंटर ऑपरेटर बैंक रेट लिबोर 
ओके सो जो भी लिबोर है लिबोर के बेसिस पे हम डिसाइड करते हैं आपका मार्केट क्लियर क्लियर सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ओके दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर क्लियर सो दिस इज अबाउट यू कैन से यू कैन से फॉरेक्स रिजर्व और सॉरी यू कैन से ईसीबी अब एक्सटर्नल असिस्टेंस की बात करें एक्सटर्नल असिस्टेंस जितने भी आपकी गवर्नमेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है मतलब गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया और एनजीओ दे यूज टू टेक बोरिंग फ्रॉम आउटसाइड एट वेरी लेस रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट एंड दैट इज फॉर लॉन्ग टाइम ओके सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल जैपनीज गवर्नमेंट हैज गिवन मनी टू द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट फॉर फ्रेड कॉरिडोर ओके सो उसको हम कहेंगे उसको हम कहेंगे एक्सटर्नल असिस्टेंस सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ओके उसको हम कहेंगे क्या एक्सटर्नल असिस्टेंस ओके अब यहां पर देखो यूपीएससी आपको कंफ्यूज कर सकती है ऑल दो दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू आस्क यू एक्सटर्नल असिस्टेंस दे विल आस्क यू वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन और यू कैन से एक्सटर्नल असिस्टेंस एंड ग्रांट तो अगर सपोज उन्होंने स्टेटमेंट में दे दिया एक्सटर्नल असिस्टेंस इज अ पार्ट ऑफ करंट अकाउंट और कैपिटल अकाउंट सो मोस्टली यू मार्क आंसर करंट अकाउंट वाई बिकॉज यू थिंक दैट इट इज अट इज अट ऑफ ग्रांट सो देर इज अ डिफरेंस क्लियर तो एक्सटर्नल असिस्टेंस को हम सॉफ्ट लोन भी बोलते हैं एक्सटर्नल असिस्टेंस को हम सॉफ्ट लोन भी बोलते हैं रिमेंबर दिस थिंग नाउ कम टू बैंकिंग कैपिटल ट्रांजेक्शन तो जब मैं बैंकिंग कैपिटल ट्रांजेक्शन से बात कर रहा हूं तो अगर बैंकिंग कैपिटल ट्रांजेक्शन की अगर मैं बात करूं तो अगर यहां पर देखो कि अगर कोई फॉरनर अगर कोई फॉरेन कंपनी है दे हैव देयर प्रेजेंस इन इंडिया आल्सो, सो दे यूज टू हैव अ डेली ट्रांजेक्शन डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज विद वोस्त्रो वोस्त्रो नोस्त्रो दैट इज डिफरेंट थिंग ओके तो अगर कोई डॉलर्स में मैं अकाउंट मेंटेन करता हूं इंडिया में तो उसको हम कहेंगे बैंकिंग कैपिटल ट्रांजेक्शन क्लियर सेकेंड अगर आप देखो कि अगर कोई टूरिस्ट इंडिया में आ रहा है वो भी क्या करेगा छह महीने सात छह महीने सात महीने या एक साल के लिए आ रहा है ओके तो अल्टीमेटली दो तीन महीने के लिए भी अगर आ रहा है तो उसको डॉलर्स को कन्वर्ट करेगा रुपी में और वो यहां पर एक अकाउंट मेंटेन करेगा ओके तो वो भी आपका बैंकिंग कैपिटल ट्रांजेक्शन होगा क्लियर सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर तो एक तरह से कह सकते हैं अगर कोई फॉरन एंटिटी और नॉन रेजिडेंट इज मेंटेनिंग बैंक अकाउंट इन इंडिया आइदर इन इंडियन रुपी और इन डॉलर तो वो पार्ट किसका बनेगा बैंकिंग कैपिटल ट्रांजेक्शन का दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर Now come to forex reserve, our next component. <coughs> so forex reserve की अगर मैं बात करूं तो अगर मैं forex reserve की बात करूं तो forex reserve के अंदर okay, forex reserve की अगर मैं बात करूं तो forex reserve के अंदर आपके फॉरेक्स रिजर्व का सबसे पहले पर्पस बताओ क्या होता है एनी वन कैन टेल मी वॉट इज द पर्पस ऑफ फॉरेक्स रिजर्व कैन एनी वन टेल मी वॉट इज द पर्पस तो देखो फॉरेक्स रिजर्व में कुछ नहीं है फॉरेक्स रिजर्व की जगह मैं बात करूं तो फॉरेक्स रिजर्व का दो पर्पस है पहली बात कि जब भी आपकी करेंसी एप्रिशिएटेड डेप्रिशिएट कर रही होती है तो फॉरेक्स रिजर्व को हम यूज करते हैं स्पेशली अगर मैं डेप्रिशिएट की बात करूं तो अगर करेंसी डेप्रिशिएट कर रही है तो फॉरेक्स रिजर्व में से हम डॉलर्स को निकाल के मार्केट में डालते हैं ताकि एक्सचेंज रेट को हम दोबारा स्टेबल कर सके ओके नंबर वन और जब भी करेंसी एप्रिशिएट कर रही है इसका मतलब यह कि डॉलर की सप्लाई बढ़ गई है तो हम डॉलर्स को एब्जॉर्ब करते हैं और फॉरेक्स रिजर्व में लेके जाते हैं तो आप कभी भी देखना जब भी करेंसी डेप्रिशिएट कर रही होगी तो अगले दिन न्यूज आती है फॉरेक्स रिजर्व डाउन हो गया रिड्यूस हो गया सिमिलरली जब भी करेंसी एप्रिशिएट कर रही है तो न्यूज आती है फॉरेक्स रिजर्व आपका अप आप हो गया तो अल्टीमेटली देर इज अ रिलेशन ओके सेकेंड फॉरेक्स रिजर्व को हम यूज करते हैं जब भी कोई बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट क्राइसिस हो बट बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट आपकी कंट्री में रोज रोज नहीं आ रहा ओके सो रिमेंबर दिस थिंग ऑल्सो सो इट इज एन एमरजेंसी सिचुएशन सो नॉर्मली Normally the you can say forex reserve is used whenever there is whenever there is crisis. Okay, whenever there is you can say exchange rate fluctuation. Or second is in the time of crisis. So if I see forex reserve, see forex reserve, you can maintain it in four forms. Number one, 
अगर मैं फॉरेक्स रिजर्व की बात करूं सबसे पहले तो आप फॉरन करेंसी में मेंटेन करते हो तो देर आर फाइव फॉरन करेंसी विच आर कॉल्ड एज हार्ड करेंसीज सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल यूएस डॉलर यूरो येन पाउंड एंड यूआन ओके अगेन आई एम रिपीटिंग यूएस डॉलर यूरो येन यूआन एंड पाउंड ओके सो देर आर फाइव हार्ड करेंसीज यू मेंटेन इट इन इट सेकेंड गोल्ड थर्ड स्पेशल ड्रॉइंग राइट दैट इज ऑफ आई एम एफ एंड फोर्थ इज रिजर्व ट्रांच ओके जिसको हम गोल्ड ट्रांच भी बोलते हैं अगेन दैट इज अ कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ आई एम एफ ओके तो इन चार फॉर्म्स में हम मेंटेन करते हैं आपका फॉरेक्स रिजर्व ओके अब आता है नेक्स्ट आपका नेट एरर एंड ओमिशन ओके नेट एरर एंड ओमिशन तो अगर मैं नेट एरर एंड ओमिशन की बात करूं ओके नेट एरर एंड ओमिशन की अगर मैं बात करूं तो इसके अंदर आपको पता है कि आपकी कंट्री में पैसा भी एंटर होता है थ्रू स्मगलिंग और यू कैन से और यू कैन से सू काउंटर फिट नोट तो वो जो वो जो पैसा ऐड हो रहा है तो उसका भी कहीं ना कहीं आरबीआई को एक एक्सपेक्टेड अनुमान होता है मींस ऑब्जर्वेशन होती है कि इतना कुछ ना कुछ एस्टिमेट होगा कि इतना पैसा आया है तो वो नेट एरर एंड ओमिशन का पार्ट बनता है क्लियर सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर विद रिस्पेक्ट टू बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट नाउ अनदर पार्ट इन बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट इज दैट यू हैव टू नो द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ एक्सचेंज रेट so basically there are two types of exchange rate तो यहां से भी आपका question आता है कि India कौन सा exchange rate follow करता है तो एक तो होता है आपका fixed exchange rate दूसरा होता है आपका flexible exchange rate तो अगर मैं fixed exchange rate की बहुत बात करूं तो यहां पर गवर्नमेंट इंटरवेन करती है टू डिसाइड द एक्सचेंज रेट गवर्नमेंट इंटरवेंशन फ्लेक्सिबल एक्सचेंज रेट इज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ मार्केट डिटरमाइंड सो यू कैन से मार्केट डिटरमाइंड मींस मार्केट फोर्सेस डिमांड एंड सप्लाई ऑफ डॉलर दैट विल डिटरमाइंड अगर मैं इंडिया की बात करूं इंडिया यूज टू फॉलो मैनेज एक्सचेंज रेट तो मैनेज एक्सचेंज रेट के अंदर ओके okay, मैनेज एक्सचेंज रेट के अंदर अगर मैं बात करूं वी आर यूजिंग अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ फिक्स्ड एंड फ्लेक्सिबल सो जब मैं फिक्स्ड और फ्लेक्सिबल के कॉम्बिनेशन की बात कर रहा हूं जब मैं फिक्स्ड और इसके बात कर रहा हूं तो अल्टीमेटली एक रेंज तक अल्टीमेटली एक रेंज तक यहां पर मैं बात कर रहा हूं कहीं ना कहीं कि अगर इस रेंज के अंदर है तो यू कैन से इट इज डिसाइडेड बाई फ्लेक्सीबल बट अगर इस रेंज से बियॉन्ड जाएगा तो इट इज डिसाइडेड बाय फिक्स्ड क्लियर सो दिस इज अ थिंग दिस इज अ थिंग सो वी यूज टू कॉल इट मैनेज तो अगर मैं ऐसे आपको समझा सकता हूं कि आप इसको ऐसे समझो कि अगर आपकी करेंसी इस रेट के अंदर है 50, 40 टू 70, तो दिस वट एवर प्राइस इज इन बिटवीन एक्सचेंज रेट इज इन बिटवीन दैट इज डिसाइडेड बाय यू कैन से फ्लेक्सीबल अदरवाइज इट इज फिक्सड क्लियर सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर क्लियर Yes, you can say dirty floating also. Okay. Now again, I am taking. You can take a break of 15 minutes. So I just want to give rest to my throat. Okay. So I'll continue after 15 minutes, sharp at 10:45. Okay. So we'll again connect.
यहाँ बच्चे अभी भी हैं एक मिनट में सो वेलकम बैक सो वेलकम बैक सो वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट एक्सचेंज रेट नाउ विल कम टू कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डेप्रिसिएशन एंड एप्रिसिएशन सो इन कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डेप्रिसिएशन एंड एप्रिसिएशन यूजली देर आर टू क्वेश्चन वट फर्स्ट दे आस्क द रीजन फॉर डेप्रिसिएशन एंड एप्रिसिएशन एंड देन दे आस्क द इम्पैक्ट so here where they used to confuse you here where they used to confuse you first i want to tell you <clears throat> that when you talk about reasons so ultimately as i have explained you earlier also in today's class itself in marathon session that every economy has limited foreign currency or you can say dollars okay so every economy has limited foreign currency or dollars okay now now if you see <clears throat> now if you see dollars so whenever there is increase in the supply of dollars that is responsible for appreciation and whenever there is a decrease that is responsible for depreciation so first of all if i ask you what is appreciation and depreciation so normally in case of depreciation you says that the value of that the value of that the value of you can say value of you can say indian currency has reduced so rather than saying that value of indian currency has reduced you can say that dollar has become costly so ultimately suppose 1 dollar is 50 rupees and tomorrow 1 dollar becomes 60 rupees so that is a case of depreciation so you will you can easily say that you can easily say that now dollar has become costly or dollar is costly now okay dollar is costly now whereas when 1 dollar is you can say 40 rupees so there you will say that now dollar has you can say the price of dollar has reduced or you can say it has become cheap so that is appreciation okay so that is what appreciation so this is what you have to remember clear clear so this is what you have to remember clear now ultimately if you see <coughs> now ultimately see when you talk about this thing okay so ultimately you have to see that those who are responsible for supplying the dollars in an economy so it is exporter fdi foreign investors investing in share market okay and if suppose indian companies are using adr gdr so they are responsible for this if foreigners are coming to india and they are opening bank account in india so banking capital transaction so all these are responsible for increasing the dollar supply so whenever they play a more role so it means currency is going to appreciate but if suppose assuming that those who are responsible for increasing dollar supply they are constant or you can say they are putting constant supply of dollar but now demand has increased for the dollars so ultimately who are responsible for increasing the demand importer okay if suppose fdi is going outside if suppose foreign investors we call hot money is going outside so like like in year 2021 there was black swan event so they are responsible for you can say appreciation or depreciation now whenever there is a depreciation so it is you, you can say going to benefit exporter but in case of appreciation importer is going to benefit so this is what you have to remember but if you see if you see that if your country is net importer like in case of india so india is a net importer so india is a net importer so in case of net importer you will see you will see your current account deficit is going to increase but if country is a net exporter so in that case in that case current account deficit is going to move toward current account surplus so india jo hai india net importer hai okay and and that is why agar aap dekhoge jab bhi currency depreciate hoti hai to our current account 
डेफिशिट फर्दर इंक्रीजेस ओके बट अगर इंडिया नेट एक्सपोर्टर होता तो हमारा करंट अकाउंट सरप्लस में जाता क्लियर तो ऑलरेडी ऑलरेडी यू कैन से इफ आई सी विद रिस्पेक्ट टू इंडिविजुअल एक्सपोर्टर ओके इट इज गोइंग टू बेनिफिट ओके इन केस ऑफ डेप्रिसिएशन बट इफ आई सी विद रिस्पेक्ट टू अ कंट्री इफ कंट्री इज नेट इंपोर्टर इट इज गोइंग टू यू कैन से बैड फॉर द कंट्री सो फॉर इंडिया डेप्रिसिएशन इज नॉट गुड ओके बट फॉर चाइना डेप्रिसिएशन वेयर द यूज अवर डी वैल्यूएशन इज गुड क्लियर सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर नाउ मूविंग फर्दर ओके नाउ मूविंग फर्दर नाउ now you have to understood this thing that sometimes due to inflation also so for example if inflation is in my economy you will please understand it clearly okay if you want to understand the concept of real exchange rate and nominal exchange rate so if in my country there is inflation but in other countries or you can say rest of the world there is no inflation or you can say you make their inflation constant ओके okay, तो अगर यूएस की मैं बात करूं या और कंट्रीज की बात करूं वहां पर जो प्राइसेस है वही है बट मेरी कंट्री में किसी भी कारण से प्राइस बढ़ गया जैसे ही मेरी कंट्री में प्राइस बढ़ेगा तो जो यहां पर हमारे इंपोर्टर्स हैं ये क्या करेंगे बाहर से प्रोडक्ट बनाना शुरू मंगवाना शुरू कर देंगे एंड अल्टीमेटली क्या होगा अल्टीमेटली क्या होगा करेंसी डेप्रिशिएट कर जाएगी ओके okay, अल्टीमेटली करेंसी डेप्रिशिएट कर जाएगी और जब अभी करेंसी डेप्रिशिएट कर रही है ओके सो यू कैन से करेंसी डेप्रिशिएट किसकी वजह से कर रही है इन्फ्लेशन की वजह से कर रही है किसकी वजह से इन्फ्लेशन की वजह से कर रही है अब अब ये जो करेंसी डेप्रिशिएट कर रही है इन्फ्लेशन की वजह से ओके okay, ये जो करेंसी आपकी डेप्रिशिएट कर रही है इन्फ्लेशन की वजह से ओके okay, ओके okay, ये जो आपकी करेंसी डेप्रिशिएट कर रही है इन्फ्लेशन की वजह से ओके okay, तो आप ये देखोगे आप ये देखोगे इस एक्सचेंज रेट को आप कहोगे नॉमिनल एक्सचेंज रेट ओके और अब इस नॉमिनल एक्सचेंज रेट का दूसरी चीजों पे भी इफेक्ट आएगा करंट अकाउंट डेफिशिट ओके बट अगर मैं इसको जो इन्फ्लेशन से पहले थी इन्फ्लेशन के अकाउंट से मतलब नॉमिनल एक्सचेंज रेट को अगर मैं एडजस्ट कर दू विद रिस्पेक्ट टू इन्फ्लेशन तो वो जो आएगी वो मेरी होगी रियल एक्सचेंज रेट तो इसके अंदर यही कॉन्सेप्ट है तो आपके इसी पे क्वेश्चन आते हैं नॉमिनल एंड रियल के क्लियर डेप्रिसिएशन मींस इंक्रीज इन एक्सचेंज रेट नहीं डेप्रिसिएशन मींस दैट नाउ डॉलर हैज बिकम कॉस्टली और यू कैन से द वैल्यू ऑफ रुपी हैज रिड्यूस्ड सो अल्टीमेटली दैट इज डेप्रिसिएशन तो तो आप इसको ऐसे याद रख सकते हो एक से कि जैसे करेंसी डेप्रिशिएट हो रही है और आई एम यूजिंग डेप्रिसिएशन इट मींस डॉलर हैज नाउ बिकम कॉस्टली सो अर्लियर डॉलर वाज फिफ्टी रुपीज एंड नाउ इट इज यू कैन से एट्टी रुपीज सो इट मींस डॉलर हैज नाउ बिकम कॉस्टली ओके तो अब यहां पर याद रखो जब भी इन्फ्लेशन की वजह से एक्सचेंज रेट होगा और वो कब होगा कि जब मेरी कंट्री में इन्फ्लेशन है बट दूसरी कंट्रीज में नहीं है तो अल्टीमेटली हमारे जो इंपोर्टर्स है वो क्या करना शुरू करेंगे इंपोर्ट करवाना शुरू करेंगे ओके okay, और जब वो इंपोर्ट कर रहे हैं तो करेंसी डेप्रिशिएट कर होनी शुरू होगी और जब करेंसी डेप्रिशिएट होगी तो आपका जो एक्सचेंज रेट आएगा नया ठीक है आफ्टर डेप्रिसिएशन उसको हम कहेंगे नॉमिनल एक्सचेंज रेट अब मैं जब इस नॉमिनल एक्सचेंज रेट को एडजस्ट करूंगा इन्फ्लेशन के हिसाब से उसको कहूंगा रियल एक्सचेंज रेट सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर क्लियर तो आपको अगर ये कॉन्सेप्ट समझ आ गया ओके सी एनोनिमस मैन जब भी आप ये कॉन्सेप्ट पढ़ते हो तो आपको अदर फैक्टर्स को कॉन्स्टेंट रखना पड़ता है अगर आप इकोनॉमी में अपने प्रिलिम्स में क्वेश्चन सही करना चाहते हो तो जस्ट लाइक मैथमेटिक्स ओके जस्ट लाइक मैथमेटिक्स सो व्हेन यू स्टडी क्वाड्रेटिक इक्वेशन सो देयर यू टॉक अबाउट टू वेरिएबल्स कीपिंग अदर वेरिएबल्स कॉन्स्टेंट यहां पर भी आप जब बात कर रहे हो इन्फ्लेशन और एक्सचेंज रेट की तो आपको दूसरे वेरिएबल्स कॉन्स्टेंट रखने पड़ेंगे तभी आप क्वेश्चन को सॉल्व कर पाओगे क्लियर सो दिस इज द लॉजिक ओके दिस इज द लॉजिक दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ओके अब लास्ट इसमें एक कॉन्सेप्ट है 
कन्वर्टेबिलिटी का एंड देन विल टॉक अबाउट ग्रोथ चैप्टर अब लास्ट इसमें एक कॉन्सेप्ट है कन्वर्टेबिलिटी ओके तो अगर मैं कन्वर्टेबिलिटी की बात करूं ओके okay, कन्वर्टेबिलिटी की अगर मैं बात करूं तो कन्वर्टेबिलिटी में कन्वर्टेबिलिटी में अगर मैं बात करूं तो कन्वर्टेबिलिटी को अगर मैं सिंपल लैंग्वेज में बोलूं इट इज यू कैन से परमिशन टू कन्वर्ट योर करेंसी और यू कैन से परमिशन एज वेल एज देर इज नो रिस्ट्रिक्शन सो अल्टीमेटली अगर मैं बात करूं जब मैं करंट अकाउंट की बात करता हूं फॉर एग्जाम्पल एक्सपोर्ट एंड इंपोर्ट ऑफ गुड्स सो देर इज नो लिमिटेशन आई कैन एक्सपोर्ट एंड इंपोर्ट एन नंबर ऑफ और यू कैन से कितना भी मैं एक्सपोर्ट और इंपोर्ट कर लू मेरी कंट्री मेरे पे लिमिट नहीं लगाएगी कि बस आपको इतना ही एक्सपोर्ट और इंपोर्ट करना है बट अगर मैं बोरिंग लेता हूं तो मेरी कंट्री मेरे पे लिमिट लगाती है आप इतनी ही बोरिंग ले सकते हो ओके सो जहां पर लिमिट लग गई मतलब वहां पर आपकी करेंसी कन्वर्टेबल नहीं है बट जहां पर लिमिट नहीं लगी वहां पर आपकी करेंसी फुल्ली कन्वर्टेबल है तो अगर आप देखोगे इंडिया में करंट अकाउंट इज फुल्ली कन्वर्टेबल ऑल दो इन नॉर्मल केसेस यू इंपोज अ बैन ऑन एक्सपोर्ट एंड इंपोर्ट बट दैट इज रेयरली यू इंपोज बट बट इन नॉर्मल टाइम्स देर इज नो सच बैन क्लियर बट ऑब्वियस अगर वन डॉलर वन रुपी के अराउंड हो गया देन इट विल बी लीथल फॉर अस ओके और यू कैन से डॉलर और रुपी आज बराबर हो गए ओके तो मतलब पचास डॉलर आप पचास रुपए में खरीदो बट ऐसा कभी होगा नहीं सो दैट इज अपोथेटिकल केस क्लियर सो उसके लिए आपको कर, अपनी इंडियन रुपी को इंटरनेशनलाइज करना पड़ेगा ओके okay? जो गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया भी ट्राई कर रही है बट स्टिल देर आर चैलेंजेस वो बताऊंगा आपको कैसे है तो अल्टीमेटली अगर आप कन्वर्टेबिलिटी की बात करते हो तो करंट अकाउंट पे कन्वर्टेबिलिटी कन्वर्टेबिलिटी फुल्ली अलाउड है बट कैपिटल अकाउंट पे देर आर लिमिट्स ओके सो दैट इज पार्शली कन्वर्टेबल ओके कैपिटल सो दैट इज वाई वी से दैट कि इंडिया बीओपी इज पार्शियल कन्वर्टेबल ओके इंडिया बीओपी इज पार्शियल कन्वर्टेबल सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर अब तारापुर कमेटी हमने फॉर्म करी थी तारापुर सो रिमेंबर द नेम ऑफ दिस कमेटी तारापुर कमेटी अब तारापुर कमेटी कहती है कि हमें फुल्ली कन्वर्टेबल की तरफ शिफ्ट हो जाना चाहिए बट वो आप तभी शिफ्ट हो गए जब आपका फिजिकल डेफिसिट थ्री परसेंट हो ऑफ जीडीपी हो इन्फ्लेशन आपकी स्टेबल हो ओके नंबर थ्री नंबर थ्री आपका बैंकिंग सिस्टम फंडामेंटली स्ट्रांग हो तभी आप फुली कन्वर्टेबल की तरफ जा सकते हो ओके सो दीज आर मेजर पैरामीटर्स ओके बट अगर मैं तारा अगर मैं देखूं जब मैं बात कर रहा हूं ओके जब मैं बात कर रहा हूं यहां पर इसकी इंटरनेशनलाइजेशन ऑफ रुपी जब मैं इंटरनेशनलाइजेशन ऑफ रुपी की बात कर रहा हूं ओके तो उसके लिए आपको फुली कन्वर्टेबल होना पड़ेगा तो जब तक आपकी इकोनॉमी फुली कन्वर्टेबल नहीं होगी तब तक आप इंटरनेशनल रुपी की बात कर ही नहीं सकते इंटरनेशनलाइजेशन ऑफ रुपी ताकि अगर आप देखोगे डॉलर का जो सप्लाई है पूरे वर्ल्ड में ज्यादा है और इंडिया रुपी का हमारा बहुत कम है तो अगर आप चाहते हो वन डॉलर वन रुपी के अराउंड हो तो आपको रुपी का भी सप्लाई बढ़ाना पड़ेगा या फिर डॉलर की सप्लाई कम कर दो दैट इज नॉट पॉसिबल ओके सो अल्टीमेटली इट इज ओनली पॉसिबल इफ यू इंटरनेशनलाइज योर करेंसी ओके तो आपकी करेंसी जितनी स्ट्रांग होगी मतलब जितने आप कन्वर्टेबल हो गए आपके जितने जो मैक्रो पैरामीटर्स है जितने स्टेबल होंगे तभी आपकी करेंसी आपकी कंट्री वहां जाएगी इंटरनेशनलाइजेशन ऑफ रूपी की तरह ओके नाउ कम टू नेक्स्ट ग्रोथ तो ग्रोथ के अंदर अगर मैं बात करूं ओके ओके नाउ सम स्टूडेंट आर आस्किंग परचेजिंग पावर पैरिटी सिर्फ परचेजिंग पावर पैरिटी कुछ नहीं है तो अगर मैं परचेजिंग पावर पैरिटी की बात करता हूं ओके okay, तो अगर मैं परचेजिंग पावर पैरिटी उसके अंदर आप सिंपल सा इसको कॉन्सेप्ट को ऐसे याद रखना कि इंडिया में मैं 
कितने रुपए में जो बेसिक प्रोडक्ट्स खरीदता हूं फॉर एग्जांपल अगर इंडिया में ये बास्केट है या दस आइटम्स है कितने रुपए में खरीद रहा हूं सेम प्रोडक्ट मैं फॉरन कंट्री में कितने के खरीद रहा हूं ओके okay. मतलब डॉलर स्पेंड करके कितने के खरीद रहा हूं तो आप जब बोलते हो जैसे समटाइम्स यू हैव लिसन दैट सम पीपल यूज टू से दैट इंडिया में मेरे को सरवाइव करने के लिए पर मंथ फिफ्टी थाउजेंड चाहिए फॉर एग्जांपल यही अगर मेरे को यूएस में रह रहा हूं तो मेरे को वहां पर इंडियन करेंसी के हिसाब से मुझे डेढ़ लाख रुपए चाहिए वन लाख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड तो ये क्या है मेरा ये क्या है मेरा परचेजिंग पावर पैरिटी क्लियर नाउ कम टू ग्रोथ चैप्टर ओके ऑल दो सम आर आस्किंग क्वेश्चन सो योर योर सम ऑफ योर क्वेश्चन आर यू कैन से मीन्स ओरिएंटेड सो सी आई हैव टू कवर ओनली हेयर इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन जहां से आपके क्वेश्चन ज्यादा आते हैं क्लियर अब हम बात करते हैं ग्रोथ चैप्टर की जहां पर हम बात करेंगे जीडीपी अब सबसे पहले अगर मैं जीडीपी की बात करूं ओके okay, सबसे पहले अगर मैं जीडीपी की बात करूं क्लियर तो जीडीपी के अंदर जीडीपी के अंदर जो आपकी कंट्री है तो अगर मैं देखूं तो कंट्री में जितने भी फाइनल गुड्स प्रोड्यूस हो रहे हैं फाइनल गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज जब मैं उसकी मॉनेटरी वैल्यू ले रहा हूं इन अ पर्टिकुलर टाइम पीरियड ओके दैट इज इन फाइनेंशियल ईयर दैट इज जीडीपी अब नो डाउट इन एग्जाम नो वन इज गोइंग टू आस्क यू दिस थिंग But you have to remember this thing. Whenever you are calculating GDP, you does not take into does not take into account intermediate goods. Intermediate goods. Second, you does not take into account second-hand goods. <coughs> you does not take into account second-hand. goods so this is what you have to remember number 3 number 3 okay number 3 if you see second hand goods number 3 if you see when we are calculating gdp you does not take into account you can say lottery betting transfer payment etc So, जो भी आपने ट्रांसफर पेमेंट और इसमें हमने पढ़ा है लॉटरी बेटिंग ट्रांसफर पेमेंट हम इसको नहीं लेते नंबर फोर यू डज नॉट टेक इन टू अकाउंट सेकेंडरी शेयर और यू कैन से शेयर इन सेकेंडरी मार्केट ओके सो वी डोंट टेक इन टू दिस अकाउंट ओके सो रिमेंबर दिस थिंग सो हम चार चीजें नहीं लेते हैं ओके okay. क्यों नहीं लेते क्योंकि इंटरमीडिएट गुड्स की वैल्यू ऑटोमेटिकली फाइनल गुड्स में होती है तो इसलिए हम नहीं लेते सेकेंड हैंड गुड्स को भी इसलिए हम नहीं लेते क्योंकि इनकी वैल्यू हम ऑलरेडी पुराने सालों में कंसीडर कर चुके हैं तो अगर सपोज कर लो मैंने 2020 में कार ली ओके और 2022 में मैंने बेच दी ओके तो जब मैं बेच रहा हूं तो मैं उसको नहीं कंसिडर करूंगा क्लियर क्योंकि उससे भी तो मैं पैसा ही कमा रहा हूं तो फाइनल गुड्स बेसिकली वो गुड्स होते हैं जो अब इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी से बाहर जा चुके हैं ओके प्लस उनको आप काउंट कर चुके हो तो सेकेंड हैंड गुड को मतलब कार को आप ऑलरेडी 2020 में काउंट कर चुके हो तो 2022 में जब मैं बेच रहा हूं तो उसको काउंट नहीं करेंगे क्लियर लॉटरी बेटिंग और ट्रांसफर पेमेंट सो नो डाउट व्हेन समवन इज गिविंग मी सम मनी सो इन रिटर्न आई एम नॉट प्रोड्यूसिंग एनी गुड फाइनल गुड एंड सर्विसेज सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर सो दैट इज वाई वी डोंट टेक इन कंसिडरेशन ओके सिमिलरली सेकेंड मार्केट सेकेंड सेकेंडरी मार्केट So, आप जब शेयर्स खरीदते हो तो वो पहले आईपीओ बनते हैं उसके बाद उसको सेल करते हैं सेकेंडरी मार्केट में इसलिए सेकेंडरी मार्केट में जो शेयर्स होते हैं वो सेकेंड हैंड शेयर्स होते हैं बट हाँ जब भी आईपीओ निकल रहे हैं वो नए शेयर्स हैं उनको कंसीडर करते हैं तो आईपीओ को कंसीडर करते हैं बट आईपीओ को जो फर्दर सेल कर रहा है उसको नहीं कंसिडर करते सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर क्लियर दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर क्लियर सो दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट ओके सो दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू हैव टू कंसीडर क्लियर सो ये हम आइटम्स को नहीं लेते तो ये आपको याद रखना है इसके अलावा अगर आप देखोगे इसके अलावा अगर आप देखोगे 
तो अगर मैं बात करता हूं तो जितनी भी अगर सपोज कर लो इंडिया के अंदर कितनी सारी फॉरेन एम्बेसीज है तो उन फॉरेन एम्बेसीज के अंदर उन फॉरेन एम्बेसीज के अंदर जो भी आपकी जो भी आपका एक्टिविटी हो रही है उस एक्टिविटी को भी हम फाइनल गुड्स में नहीं लेते क्यों क्योंकि वो जो एक्टिविटीज है वो उन उनकी कंट्री में ऐड होती है सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर आप वीजा अप्लाई कर रहे हो तो उसके लिए आप फी पे करते हो तो वो भी क्या है फाइनल सर्विस है ओके बट अल्टीमेटली उसकी वैल्यू हम अपनी जीडीपी में नहीं लेते क्यों क्योंकि वो फॉरेन कंट्री की जीडीपी में काउंट होगा हमारा प्रोडक्ट नहीं है हमें पैसे नहीं मिल रहे उसमें क्लियर सो दिस इज वॉट यू टू रिमेम्बर दैट वट एवर इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी इन एम्बेसी सो वी डोंट टेक इन टू कंसिडरेशन ओके सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर विद रिस्पेक्ट टू जीडीपी नाउ जब हम जीएनपी की बात करते हैं तो जीएनपी का जो रिलेशन है वो क्या है जो आपने फॉर्मूला देखा होगा जीडीपी प्लस माइनस नेट फैक्टर इनकम सॉरी प्लस आएगा नॉट माइनस प्लस नेट फैक्टर इनकम सो बेसिकली व्हाट इज नेट फैक्टर इनकम जीडीपी प्लस नेट फैक्टर इनकम मींस इनकम अर्न बाय इंडियंस आउटसाइड इंडिया इनकम अर्न बाय इंडियंस आउटसाइड माइनस इनकम अर्न बाय फॉरनर्स विद इन इंडिया ओके सो अल्टीमेटली अल्टीमेटली इन आर केस इन आर केस दिस इज लेस दिस इज मोर सो अल्टीमेटली जीडीपी माइनस सम वैल्यू विल बी देयर वाई बिकॉज इनकम अर्न बाय फॉरनर्स विद इन इंडिया इज मोर एज कंपेयर टू इनकम अर्न बाय इंडियंस आउटसाइड so ultimately gnp in our case is always less than gdp so this is what you have to remember okay this is what you have to remember okay so ultimately if you see gnp in gdp we talk about the monetary value of final goods and services whereas in gnp we talk about what all indians together are earning the income that is gnp clear तो सारे इंडियंस मिलके कितना कमा रहे हैं चाहे इंडिया के अंदर चाहे बाहर उसको हम कहते हैं जीएनपी तो बेसिकली हम वो देख रहे हैं इसमें अब एक कॉन्सेप्ट होता है डेप्रिसिएशन सो यू कैन से मेंटेनेंस कॉस्ट इसको कह सकते हो वियर एंड टीयर तो जब आप इसको सो नो डाउट आप जब अपनी जीडीपी ग्रो करती है तो देर इज यू कैन से डेप्रिसिएशन ऑल्सो दैट इज मेंटेनेंस कॉस्ट सो वो कितनी है उसको जब आप जीडीपी से माइनस करते हैं तो आपके पास मिलता है एनडीपी ओके okay, फिर उसके बाद देर इज जी एन पी माइनस डेप्रिसिएशन इट इज कॉल्ड एन एन पी सो ऑल्सो दिस इज नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट सो मच अब जो इंपॉर्टेंट है अब जो बताने जा रहा हूं वो इंपॉर्टेंट है आपका हमारे पास दो तरह के प्राइसेस हैं ओके okay, एक है आपका फैक्टर कॉस्ट एक है मार्केट प्राइस अगर इनके बीच में रिलेशन देखोगे तो क्या आता है मार्केट प्राइस इज इक्वल टू फैक्टर कॉस्ट प्लस इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस सो अल्टीमेटली फैक्टर कॉस्ट इज अ प्राइस एट द गेट ऑफ फैक्ट्री तो मतलब किसी प्रोडक्ट को बनाने का जो प्राइस आया उसको हम कहते हैं फैक्टर कॉस्ट ओके उसको हम कहते हैं क्या फैक्टर कॉस्ट क्लियर बट बट मार्केट प्राइस इज द फाइनल प्रोडक्ट ओके सो यू कैन से मार्केट प्राइस जो आप फाइनली परचेज कर रहे हो उसको हम क्या, क्या कहते हैं मार्केट प्राइस अब फैक्टर कॉस्ट प्लस इनडायरेक्ट टैक्स इज इक्वल टू मार्केट प्राइस बट इन सम केसेस वी आर गिविंग सब्सिडीज आल्सो सो देयर वी सब द सब्सिडीज तो अल्टीमेटली ये आपका रिलेशन बनता है मार्केट प्राइस और फैक्टर कॉस्ट में अब जीडीपी बेसिकली अगर आप देखोगे जीडीपी हम कैसे कैलकुलेट करते हैं जीडीपी जब हम कैलकुलेट करते हैं तो हम क्या करते हैं जितने भी प्रोडक्ट है मल्टीप्लाई बाय प्राइस तो इस तरह से हम कैलकुलेट कर रहे हैं तो अगर मुझे पता कि मेरी इकोनॉमी में अगर सपोज कर लो एज्यूम कर लो देर आर देर इज ओनली वन कंपनी एंड दैट इज मेकिंग कार तो जितनी भी कार प्रोड्यूस हुई है एक साल में उसके प्राइस से मैं मल्टीप्लाई करूंगा अब मेरे पास दो तरह के प्राइस है एक तो कार बनाने का प्राइस जो फैक्ट्री के अंदर है उसको मैं कहूंगा फैक्टर कॉस्ट एक प्राइस क्या है जो मेरा मार्केट में कंज्यूमर पे कर रहे हैं जब टैक्सेस लग रहे हैं तो वो हो गया मेरा मार्केट प्राइस सो अल्टीमेटली अगर मैं जीडीपी कैलकुलेट करता हूं फैक्टर कॉस्ट पे तो मैं उसको बोलूंगा जीडीपी एट फैक्टर कॉस्ट अगर मैं जीडीपी करता हूं मार्केट प्राइस पे 
तो मैं उसको बोलूंगा जीडीपी एट मार्केट प्राइस क्लियर क्लियर अब मैं अगर बात करूं अब मैं अगर बात करूं तो आप समझ गए फैक्टर कॉस्ट है और दो प्राइसेस है मार्केट प्राइस अब इसमें भी अगर मैं देखूं दो तरह के फर्दर प्राइसेस है अब अगर मेरे को एक्चुअल में जीडीपी निकालनी है तो मेरे को बेसिकली जीडीपी के थ्रू में क्या देख रहा हूं कि मेरी एक्चुअल प्रोडक्शन कितनी हो रही है ओके मेरी एक्चुअल प्रोडक्शन कितनी हो रही है क्लियर तो मैं अगर अपनी एक्चुअल प्रोडक्शन देखता हूं ठीक है वो मेरे को तभी मिलेगी जब मेरे पास बेस ईयर के प्राइसिस होंगे तो जीडीपी कैलकुलेट करने के लिए मेरा बेस ईयर है टू थाउजेंड तो जो मेरे बेस ईयर के प्राइसेस होते हैं उसको मैं कहता हूं कांस्टेंट प्राइसेस और कांस्टेंट फैक्टर प्राइसेस सिमिलरली मेरे पास एक है कांस्टेंट मार्केट प्राइस और जो मेरा प्रोडक्ट है उसका करंट प्राइस है ओके okay, उसको मैं कहूंगा करंट फैक्टर कॉस्ट सिमिलरली करंट मार्केट प्राइस आप इसको ऐसे समझ सकते हो जस्ट आई टेक वन एग्जाम्पल सपोज कर लो आई एम मेकिंग और यू आर हैविंग अ फैक्ट्री एंड यू आर मेकिंग पेन So, आज इस पेन का जो प्राइस है यू कैन से फैक्टर कॉस्ट आज जो करंट इसका जो प्राइस है करंट फैक्टर कॉस्ट जो है इसका फॉर एग्जांपल लेके चलो वो है फिफ्टीन रुपीज बट बेस ईयर सो आज क्या आपका 2023, हजार तेईस ओके बेस ईयर तो 2011 हजार ग्यारह बारह तो 2011 हजार ग्यारह बारह में अगर मैं लेके चलू पेन का प्राइस था टेन रुपीज तो ये मेरा हो गया कांस्टेंट फैक्टर कॉस्ट अब सपोज कर लो इस साल फॉर एग्जांपल लगा लो कि आपकी इकोनॉमी में एक ही पेन बन रहा है ओके okay, आपकी इकोनॉमी में सिर्फ एक ही प्रोडक्ट बन रहा है दैट इज पेन ओके दैट इज पेन तो अगर मेरी इकोनॉमी में एक ही पेन बन रहा है ओके okay, तो उस केस में मैं क्या करूंगा उस केस में मैं क्या करूंगा तो अल्टीमेटली लगा लो कि एक ही कंपनी है पेन बना रही है तो सपोज कर लो बेस ईयर में 100 पेन बने तो मेरी जीडीपी क्या थी बेस ईयर में 100 इंटू थाउजेंड हंड्रेड इंटू टेन मीन दिस इज माई जीडीपी इन बेस ईयर अब मेरे को कंपेयर करना है आज से तो अगर सपोज कर लो आज 200 पेन बने और मेरे को देखना है कितने पेन बने और कितने फाइनल गुड्स बने तो अल्टीमेटली अगर मैं उसको फिफ्टीन से करता हूं तो मेरी जी कितनी आ रही है तो ये आएगी आपकी नॉमिनल जीडीपी क्योंकि इसमें क्या है फिफ्टीन रुपीज प्राइस इन्फ्लेट है सो so ये कितना आएगा थ्री थाउजेंड अगर मैं कंपेयर करूंगा तो यू विल से दैट थाउजेंड से थ्री थाउजेंड जीडीपी इंक्रीज होगी ओके थाउजेंड से थ्री थाउजेंड आपकी जीडीपी इंक्रीज होगी बट अगर मैं रियल जीडीपी देखता हूं मीन्स प्रोडक्शन तो मैं इस साल की देख रहा हूं कि दो पेन बने बट प्राइसिस में ले रहा हूं पुराने वाले टेन ये मेरे को एक्चुअल फिगर देगी ओके okay, तो आपको पता है कि कुछ दिन मतलब लास्ट ईयर एक फिगर चल रही थी 3.5 ट्रिलियन डॉलर इकोनॉमी तो ये मेरी नॉमिनल जीडीपी थी ये मेरी नॉमिनल जीडीपी थी तो इस नॉमिनल जीडीपी को अगर मैं चाहूं अगले महीने इंक्रीज कर सकता हूं अगर मैं थोड़े थोड़े हर प्रोडक्ट का प्राइस इंक्रीज कर दू अगले दस दिन के अंदर तो नॉमिनल जीडीपी इंक्रीज हो जाएगी ओके okay, बट हमें क्या देखनी है रियल रियल विल टेल यू द एक्चुअल फाइनल प्रोडक्शन क्लियर सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टोड तो यहां पर हम क्या करते हैं जब रियल जीडीपी लेते हैं तो हम बेस ईयर वाले प्राइसिस को कंसिडर करते हैं रिमेंबर दिस थिंग और जब हम नॉमिनल जीडीपी लेते हैं तो हम बेस ईयर वाले नहीं हम करंट ईयर के प्राइसिस को कंसिडर करते हैं क्लियर अब एक बेसिक प्राइस भी होता है अब जब आप प्रोडक्ट बना रहे हो ओके okay, तो आप इलेक्ट्रिसिटी यूज कर रहे हो लैंड यूज कर रहे हो ओके वाटर यूज कर रहे हो प्लस अदर रॉ मटेरियल्स यूज कर रहे हो ओके तो इन प्रोडक्ट के जो प्राइसेस है ये आप एज्यूम कर रहे हो बिना टैक्सेस के ओके बिना टैक्सेस के अब अब आप क्या कर रहे हो ओके अब आप क्या कर रहे हो इन प्रोडक्ट को बना के इनडायरेक्ट टैक्स भी लगा रहे हो या आप ऐसे समझ लो कि ये जो प्रोडक्ट है इनके ऊपर भी टैक्सेस है क्लियर प्लस इनडायरेक्ट टैक्स लग रहा है जैसे जीएसटी उसको हम कहते हैं प्रोडक्ट टैक्स उसको हम कहते हैं क्या प्रोडक्ट टैक्स क्लियर तो ये जो प्रोडक्ट टैक्स लग रहा है आपका ओके okay. ये जो प्रोडक्ट टैक्स लग रहा है 
क्लियर इसको हम कहेंगे जीएसटी ओके अब आ जाओ यहां पर एक प्रोडक्शन टैक्स भी होता है ओके okay, एक प्रोडक्शन टैक्स भी होता है क्लियर तो वो प्रोडक्शन टैक्स क्या है आपका ओके okay, तो जैसे आपने इलेक्ट्रिसिटी और इसको भी दिया तो जब आप इसको निकाल देते हो तो जो वैल्यू आती है मतलब मतलब आप अपने फैक्टर कॉस्ट में से जब इन प्रोडक्शन टैक्सेस को निकाल देते हो ओके okay, या फिर उसको जो प्राइस आएगा उसको हम कहेंगे बेस प्राइसेस और उस पर जो हम कैलकुलेट करते हैं उसको हम कहते हैं जीबीए क्लियर तो अल्टीमेटली यहां पर हम प्रोडक्शन टैक्सेस की बात करें तो अल्टीमेटली किसी भी प्रोडक्ट के अंदर प्रोडक्शन टैक्स होगा ठीक है प्रोडक्शन टैक्स होगा प्रोडक्ट टैक्स होगा प्लस प्लस रॉ मेटेरियल की कॉस्ट होगी तो अल्टीमेटली ये सब मिला के आपका आता है बेस प्राइसेस ओके एंड यूजिंग दैट वी कैलकुलेट जीवीए ओके बट आपको याद रखना है ज्यादातर आपसे जीडीपी फैक्टर कॉस्ट पूछा जाएगा या रियल जीडीपी पूछा जाएगा या फिर या फिर नॉमिनल जीडीपी सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दिस थिंग ओके नाउ देर इज वन क्वेश्चन वेन दे कैलकुलेट जीडीपी एट कॉन्स्टेंट प्राइस हाउ आर देर कंपेयरिंग सी देखो जीडीपी का अल्टीमेट पर्पज ही क्या है आपको फाइनल प्रोडक्ट देखने कितने तो वो आपको तभी मिलेगा ठीक है क्लियर डिस्पोजेबल इनकम बेसिकली वो होती है कि जब आप अपने टैक्सेस वगैरह दे देते हो क्योंकि यहां पर क्या कि इनडायरेक्ट टैक्स को हम लेके चल रहे हैं जब आप सरकार को अपने टैक्सेस दे देते हो ओके okay, या फिर आपको रेमिटेंस वगैरह भी आ रहे हैं उसको ऐड कर देते हो तो जो इनकम एक्चुअल में आप अर्न कर रहे हो वो डिस्पोजेबल इनकम है मतलब सारे अगर सपोज कर लो मैं पचास कमा रहा हूं पांच मैंने टैक्स दे दिया और उसके बाद किसी रिलेटिव ने मेरे को गिफ्ट दे दिया दस का तो मेरी डिस्पोजेबल इनकम क्या है फोर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड प्लस टेन थाउजेंड तो ये मेरी डिस्पोजेबल इनकम है क्लियर बट जीडीपी में हम लॉटरी बेटिंग गिफ्ट ट्रांसफर पेमेंट इसको नहीं लेते हैं क्लियर क्लियर तो अल्टीमेटली दिस इज व्हाट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड ओके सो अगर आप देखोगे जीडीपी में हम सिर्फ वो देख रहे हैं कि फाइनल गुड्स प्रोड्यूस करके कंट्री कंट्री में कितना पैसा आ रहा है कितना पैसा है ओके okay, उसके बाद अगर हमें ग्रांट्स भी हम अगर कंसिडर कर ले तो जीडीपी प्लस ग्रांट्स वो ज्यादा ही निकलेगा आपका अमाउंट ज्यादा होगी क्लियर तो जीडीपी का मतलब ये नहीं है कि इतनी मनी सप्लाई चल रही है ओके तो उससे ज्यादा ही चल रही होगी आपके पास क्लियर क्लियर सो दिस इज व्हाट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टूड नाउ देर आर टॉपिक लाइक टैक्सेशन इंटरनेशनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन planning poverty and unemployment okay so these are some topics that are left clear <coughs> that are left so ultimately for these topics i will provide you handouts so if there is any issue with students and if they demand so definitely we'll conduct a session also okay but understand my situation also okay so i'll definitely want to teach but point is this these topics are you can say factual only so you will get my own personal notes with respect to this okay so i'll give you my own personal notes okay so by tomorrow or by day after tomorrow or you can say latest by tomorrow only by evening you will get the notes so i'll give it to the organization so if still you have a doubt you can connect with me okay you can connect with me on my facebook okay so if you search on facebook so there you will find id with respect to himanch okay so many people know me by himanch name although my name is himanch dhingra so himanch dhingra so you can meet me there okay and still you have any doubt so ksg team is there to help you out and if you want you can take my number from the management so in delhi you will find one person with name mr jaswinder so you contact him okay and they'll talk to me and if i'll allow they will give my number to you so 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 you can contact the office 
so there is one person jaswinder okay mr jaswinder so you can contact mr jaswinder so he is he will be available in old rajendra nagar branch old rajendra nagar branch of uh, you can say old rajendra nagar branch ksg so right now i am in bangalore so if any student of bangalore want to meet personally if you have any doubt with respect to economy or any other subject if you want to meet any teacher so you can come to ksg bangalore that is located in kor mangla okay that is located in kor mangla so you can come there okay and if you want to meet me so i'll be i'll be in delhi around or you can say after 6 6 of may so specially for those students those who are appearing in 23 and if you have any problem with respect to economy subject so you can meet me after 6 of may i'll be in delhi only okay so ultimately i can meet you there clear and those who are appearing after or you can say in 24 25 they can also meet but ultimately first my focus will be on those those who are giving attempt this year clear 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 no doubt chandrashil chandrashil you want to contact me you can take number from ksg okay so definitely i'll contact mr jaswinder tomorrow so if any student want a number so i'll tell him okay so don't worry about it so you can take the number from him okay and notes also don't worry for notes also it will be attached just below this video by tomorrow evening don't worry about it clear so we will meet soon if you have any doubt you can ask your any question or any query with respect to economy so i hope this today long session or marathon help you help you in so many ways okay still you have any doubt although you have to understood my limitation also as well as class limitation okay so ultimately we'll meet soon till then jai hind and have a nice day and all the best for your life